we will begin our acquaintance with the city of Lenshin. The weather is bright outside now. In front of us is the Chin family's house. This is one of the greatest and most influential families in the city of Linshui. There is a rule in our area. If you want to become a warrior, you need to awaken the warrior soul within you. With the help of the soul, you can establish a connection between heaven and earth, receive supernatural powers and improve yourself. Now the proud people have gathered to watch one of these processes. In the middle of the square, an ancient place was founded for the manifestation of the warrior's soul. Now we can observe one of the warriors who is sitting in the lotus position, waiting for the manifestation of power. The souls of warriors come in four types. Heavenly, earthly, miraculous, and golden. Each level is divided into ten classes, and it differs in the color of the aura. And the higher the level, the faster the warrior's strength and potential increases. Also, in the future, he can gain the strength of a real warrior. The guy who was sitting in the middle of the square waiting for the power to awaken. His name was Chin Chang Kun. As we can observe, the hands are brought together, fingers crossed. Thanks to its concentration, a small golden glow was formed. Snowy white tiger with a terrifying look. It opens its mouth and growls loudly. Sharp claws are ready to dig into someone's flesh. Chin Chang Kun spreads his arms to the sides like a true master of his craft. Streams of wind scatter to the sides. A golden whirlwind curls into the sky. The teacher's face shows shock mixed with surprise. These are five rays of golden light. He has the beast soul of a gold-level fifth-class warrior. The crowd shouted after the boy. Chin Chang Kun is a genius. He managed to awaken the golden soul of a fifth-class warrior. A new hero has been born into the Chin family. The spectators continued to rejoice. The smile on the guy's face indicates that he successfully completed the task assigned to him. I am now the most talented in our family. Chin Chang Kun said and added, Chin Nan is now a complete nobody. It's unlikely that we'll be able to show better results than mine. He's just a loser. Chin Chang Kun continued, Next student, the teacher shouted. Chin Nan, it's your turn to show off your skills. Your future future depends on it. In front of us stood a handsome, long-haired brunette. It was Chin Nan. He collected his thoughts before starting the task. Purpose and concentration were visible in his eyes. Black hair fluttered in the wind. Chin Chang Kun continued to glance sideways at Chin Nan. The grin never left his face. He was clearly unhappy with the boy. Questions from excited spectators flew in the air. What kind of warrior soul do you think the young master can awaken? Chin Nan took the designated place to awaken the warrior spirit. Exhaling, Chin Nan said, The day has finally come. Everyone keep quiet, the teacher shouted loudly. Keep quiet. Anyone who dares to interfere with the awakening of the young master's soul will be punished, he threatened. All the spectators suddenly fell silent with surprise on their faces. No one dared to disobey the teacher's order. But the soul of a warrior is predestined by heaven. Everything else is just nonsense, Chin Chang Kun objected. He did not believe that anyone could interfere with the awakening of the warrior's spirit. It's not that easy to awaken the soul of a gold-level fifth-class warrior. Chin Chang Kun continued to boast. The disciples stood silently, waiting for Chin Nan's introduction. From their faces, it can be assumed that they were not all confident that Chin Nan could surprise them. Chin Chang Kun continued the dialogue with himself. Come on, Chin Nan. You will definitely awaken the soul of a warrior below the fifth grade. The process of manifestation of the warrior's soul has finally begun. The wind began to spin around Chin Nan, and the glow of golden rays began to engulf the guy. Suddenly, a huge pillar of golden light shot into the sky far beyond the clouds. It was amazing and extremely beautiful. All the assembled spectators opened their mouths in an instant. The surprise had nowhere to disappear from their faces. A large, fiery sword formed above Chin Nan's head. He radiated incredible power. Flames engulfed the center of the square. The guy was focused on waking up. His eyes were closed. His thoughts were as clear as the light he emitted. What does it mean? The teacher said, just one ray of golden light. What is this, gold level first class? The students began to whisper to each other. Gold rank first class? They repeated after the teacher. Has Chin Nan awakened the soul of a warrior of the lowest class? Incredible! 
A small drop of sweat ran down the boy's cheek. What you would expect. Scarlet Flame Sword, First Class Golden Soul Warrior. Chinnan thought a little disappointed. Despite the fact that the guy got to his feet, the sword continued to hang above his head. But this did not surprise the crowd. It only caused laughter. Chin Chung Kun looked at the boy arrogantly and said, I would never have thought that you were such a non entity, Chin Nan. What a genius you are! You are real trash! Chin Chung Kun shouted, pointing his finger at the boy. I am the only one and the best in the Chin family, the bully continued to boast. The main talent of Lin Shui City. No one can crush me now. The soul of a first class warrior, the Crimson Flame Sword, remains the soul of a warrior. For most people, the warrior soul often awakens at level two or higher, but not in the case of Chin Nan. After the crowd of disciples stopped mocking Chin Nan, they began to silently condemn their recent comrade. It was in vain to be friends with him. I thought he was talented. His soul is only first class, real trash. The students continued to talk. Chin Nan continued to stand motionless. The flames gradually began to fade. Suddenly, someone from the crowd shouted, a first-class soul is simply humiliating. The crowd picked up insults again and began to humiliate Can Nan again, shouting, Garbage! Garbage! Get out of the family! The teachers couldn't do anything about the crowd. They themselves were extremely shocked by the failure of the main talent, Chin Nan. Who would have thought that the main talent of our family would turn out to be worthless? The teacher's gaze shifted slightly to the side. But I told you, Chin Chang Kun said. Warrior souls are predestined for every person. Even if you create techniques yourself, it will not prevent you from being trash. Seeing this handsome man, namely Chin Chang Kun, the girls began to whisper and say how good he was. People continued to discuss Chin Nan's failure. Even a pig is stronger than a boy with a gold level first class. How can he be the future head of our family? Exactly. The bald guy picked it up. Chin Nan cannot be the head of the Chin family. He's not worthy. The student continued to scream. Chin Chang Kun is the main talent of our family. Let him become the future head of our family, one young girl suggested. The narrative takes us to a slightly different place, namely to an establishment where teachers like to drink tea. Two men sat at the table, discussing over a cup of tea the failure of Chin Nan, the main talent of the Chin family. How is this even possible? One of the old men noticed. He was a talented guy with a great future. And now what to take from him? Nothing is impossible, the second old man objected. We don't have many cases where talented guys ended up like that. Shaking his head from side to side, the old man sighed. He was truly genuinely upset by our hero's failure. Next, we find ourselves in the courtyard of the Chin family. The weather was sunny outside. It was a beautiful day. Improvement includes ten limits, the very first of which is the hardening limit. The so-called hardening limit involves the absorption of supernatural forces. Taking the sword in his hand, Chin Nan thought. Of course, the soul level of a warrior is very important. If Chang Kun had trained for three hours as intensively as I did, he would have already reached the first level of hardening. It's so good that I awakened the soul of a first-class warrior. If it had turned out differently, it would have been completely sad. The boy continued to talk in his head. Chin Nan's memories washed over him. He remembered how, at the age of 14, he left home to train and improve. Day and night in the scorching sun or in the rain, I always continued to train. There was no stopping me. During one beautiful summer thunderstorm, I was struck by red lightning, after which my life changed completely and inevitably. After this incident, another warrior soul appeared in my body. She is simply huge. Red armor protects her. Her name is the peerless soul of a warrior. She has incredible power. I will continue to meditate, Chin Nan said. Golden flames surrounded him. The wind scattered to the sides. If you want to get the soul of the god of war, the guy continued to think. The only way is to sacrifice your own soul. Chin Nan took his usual position. He crossed his fingers. But the higher the class of a warrior's own soul, the lower the chance of awakening the soul of the god of war. Chin Nan was overwhelmed with thoughts. And with a first-class golden soul, you can definitely awaken the soul of the god of war. With a smile and confidence in his abilities, the boy looked at his sword. The sincere smile of the purposeful warrior changed to a sly one. So all the conditions are met and I can try it. Gathering all his strength, Chin Nan shouted, Show up, Scarlet Flame Sword! 
His eyes were full of confidence. Did not work out. I overdid something, Chin Nan thought. We need to try again. Attempt number two. Okay, you need to concentrate. The guy again gathered all his will into a fist. He closed his eyes and got ready. A few seconds later, a scarlet flame sword appeared in the space in front of Chin Nan. The guy confidently reaches out and takes it. Holding the sword with his right hand, Chin Nan runs the fingers of his left hand along its blade. Sacrifice! The boy shouted. As soon as he said this word, the sword began to crack into small pieces and fly apart. After which the sword turned into a stream of energy and entered Chin Nan's stomach. The guy, clenching his teeth tightly, tries to hold back the pain, but it is simply unbearable. A bright white glow was fixed on the belt and began to slowly fade away. What just happened? This was the only question in Chin Nan's mind. He still did not understand what exactly happened to him. His body was shaking, sweat running down his face. Chin Nan tried to catch his breath after such an event. He definitely felt tired. While our guy was trying to catch his breath, a bright light flashed behind him. It was she, the soul of the god of war. Eyes as red as lava. The fearsome armor was bright red. Flames enveloped him from all sides. Turning around, Chin Nan saw his war god's soul and said, Finally it worked. His eyes slowly began to close. He fell exhausted to the ground. Chin Nan had never seen or done anything like this before. Clearly, he lacked strength. That same day, the same gazebo Chin family courtyard, a couple of hours later, Chin Nan regained consciousness. Rising up, he touched the back of his head and said, What a headache. Why am I lying here? What was that strange old voice in my head? Okay, it doesn't matter, Chin Nan said. First, let's see what kind of god of war is there. Concentrating and immersed in meditation, Chin Nan again saw the soul of the god of war. The boy was simply shocked by the size of his war god's soul. Golden soul of a sixth grade warrior? The war god's soul is truly amazing. Chin Nan burst into a smile. The news is, of course, amazing. It is necessary to check the result of cultivating the soul of the god of war. Having gathered all his accumulated knowledge from years of training and the energy of the war god's soul, Chin Nan was filled with concentration and perfection. Whirlwinds of wind enveloped Chin Nan. Hair blew in the wind. Power just came from all directions. Wow, said Kan Nan. The speed of his development was impressive. He was very surprised at this growth rate. It is ten times stronger than the Scarlet Flame Sword. I feel the power coming to my fingertips, and the fists are gaining power. Only three hours have passed, and I have already reached the first level of hardening. That's so great. Deeds await me definitely, thought Chin Nan. Yes, the soul of the god of war is simply amazing. I cannot express my delight in words. Now let's see what they tell me about this. We'll be a great team, Chin Nan thought. I think no one will laugh at all now. And most importantly, Chin Nan will be able to realize his main dream, to become the strongest on the entire continent. The next day the weather was also sunny. The birds in the trees sang their songs. The breeze blew the leaves of the trees. A young girl walked to meet Chin Nan, holding in her hands a tray on which stood a ceramic container. A new offering for you, young master, she said. Drooling began to flow from the guy's mouth. What flavor? Quickly give them to me. Like a man possessed, he tried to reach out to the girl. With screams, young master, you are disgusting and vile. The girl throws it straight at the guy. Chin Chin, Chin Nan shouted after the running girl. You misunderstood me. I was talking about the cure, not you. But she was already running away. Chin Nan was sincerely upset due to the misunderstanding with Chin Ching. He became even darker than the cloud for a few seconds. The boy took the container that the maid was bringing him with medicine. There really was an extremely pleasant aroma coming from it. I wonder what it was. He poured a dozen red balls into his palm. There are so many of them here, said Chin Nan. These were hardening tablets, extremely rare and precious. They are used to improve hardening limits. All ordinary sons in the Chin family can only get one for a month. I, who awakened the soul of a first-class warrior, turned from genius to trash in an instant. The head of the family certainly couldn't give me that many pills. So this is the father, Chin Nan thought. Chin Nan's gaze was filled with determination and self-confidence. Father, I will definitely not let you down, the guy said. Taking one pill in his hand, Chin Nan brought it to his mouth and slowly swallowed it. 
In just a matter of seconds, the energy from the tablet was released inside Chin Nan's body. What's happening? Some strange force absorbed the energy released from the hardening tablet. Chin Nan thought, was it really the soul of the god of war? Does she really need hardening energy just like I do? Many questions were spinning in the boy's head. Without thinking for a long time, Chin Nan took another pill and popped it into his mouth. He wanted to check whether it was actually the soul of the god of war that absorbed the energy. My guesses were confirmed. Indeed, the soul of the god of war can absorb power and energy from pills and potions. That's it, I've decided, said Chin Nan. I'll give him these pills, let him consume them, and we'll see what happens in the end. All the pills that our hero had with one movement of his hand ended up in his mouth. A few seconds after Chin Nan swallowed the pills, he was enveloped in golden flames, energy bulging out from all sides. The war god's soul had increased its level thanks to these pills. I can't wrap my head around it. Chin Nan hesitated. The god of war can absorb pills and through this increase the class of the warrior soul. Incredible! The soul of a warrior is given by heaven at birth, and if you awaken it, then it is with you until the end of your days. You won't be able to get rid of it. Eureka! In other words, if I stock up on tempering pills, then I can ensure the god of war continues to grow and develop. Reaching a miraculous level no longer seems out of reach. Calm is just calm. The main thing is to remain calm. Spreading his arms to the sides, inhaling and exhaling deeply, Chin Nan said to himself, before our hero had time to calm down and regain his breathing, a loud explosion was heard behind him. Behind the column of smoke, you couldn't immediately tell what it was. It was Chin Xiao, blue-haired guy. He shouted, Chin Nan, get out of this house, otherwise you will know all my power. Silence hung in the air for some time. The students stood and looked into each other's eyes, eagerly awaiting the opponent's attack. What do you want, Chin Xiao? Chin Nan asked the uninvited guest with a serious expression. He was wary of him. I've come to pick up your hardening tablets. They will not help such a non-entity like you, but they are just right for me. They will bring benefits, said Chin Xiao. Do you really think that it will be so easy for you to take my pills? I won't just give them to you. This Chin Xiao is an extremely vile person. I remember there were times when he served me when everyone recognized me, followed me on my heels. He brought me tea. Yes, and I treated him normally. I definitely didn't expect this from him, that after I woke up, he would immediately rush to take away my hardening tablets. He really is worse than the enemy. Chin Nan, don't test my patience, Chin Xiao shouted. I can easily defeat you despite the fact that I did not have time to develop and awaken the soul of a third-class warrior. Picking his nose, Chin Nan says, I would love to give them to you, but I can't. I've already swallowed them. Should I burp them? The boy mocked his opponent. Chin Xiao suddenly jumps up, screaming. You don't understand at all. You are no longer the main talent of the Chin family. Now you will experience the difference between the first class and the gold level. Chin Nan frowned and said, Why are you making me defend myself? Are you really that impatient to humiliate me? Gathering all his strength into one blow, he raised his fist to parry Chin Xiao's attack. Low-level combat equipment rift fist, Chin Nan shouted. With one powerful punch, the opponent was sent flying into the air. The attacker's sword was broken into small pieces. Chin Xiao flew straight onto the steps, landing directly on his back. All this was accompanied by loud screams and screams. The boy lay on his back in bewilderment. How could he reach the first level of the hardening limit? My soul is a third-class war, and I haven't reached that yet. But how could you? It's impossible, Chin Xiao shouted. Go away! The rage in Chin Nan's eyes cannot be taken away. I took my things and left, Chin Nan repeated, with a dull expression on his face. Chin Xiao quickly left Chin Nan's house. The sounds of his tears accompanied his departure. Well, who will repair the door? He came, made a mess, and ran away. A strange man, Chin Nan thought as he scratched his head. I'm tired today. I feel my strength is running out. This means that the training is definitely over for today. I'll go and rest. Although, no, I think I can climb to the second floor of the technician's palace. I'm learning new techniques, and tomorrow I'll train with renewed vigor. In front of us is the Palace of Technicians. This is a four-story building, a treasure trove of the Chin family's martial techniques. On the first floor, there is equipment of the lowest level. At the second level, the average level. On the third, the highest level, and on the fourth, legendary techniques. 
Boldly opening the doors of the first floor, Chin Nan entered the Temple of Martial Techniques. He doesn't lack confidence. He was met by a gray-haired old man. Chin Nan, what brought you to court? The old man asked in surprise. Leaning slightly, Chin Nan put his fist to his palm, thereby greeting the elder. I want to go up to the second floor of the technician's palace. Chin Nan, don't think that our good relationship with you will allow you to go up to the second floor. Anyone wishing to get to the second floor must achieve the second level of hardening. Our hero doesn't need to ask for long to demonstrate the skill he acquired today. Gathering all his strength into his palm, Chin Nan placed it on the floor in front of the teacher. A golden glow enveloped her. The elder's eyes filled with surprise and misunderstanding. He also raised his gray eyebrows high. Have you reached the first level of hardening? How is this possible? Your soul as a first-class warrior is simply incapable of developing to the first level of hardening. It was enough for the elder to demonstrate my first level hardening. He did not detain me and allowed me to go to the second floor of the technician's palace. Climbing further up the steps, moving one foot after another, one could hear the creaking of old boards, since the temple itself was ancient. On the second floor, there were a huge number of racks and shelves with books. The smell of old books was in the air. Chin Nan was faced with a huge question. What should he choose? There are so many books that you simply can't count them. Chin Nan just went up to the floor as his name is already. I didn't think that a loser like you with such a weak soul could reach the first level of hardening. It seems that those ten tempering pills from the head of the family were beneficial for you, said Chin Yu, Chin Xiao's elder brother. The result is truly impressive. I trained a little and already managed to beat your younger brother. Chin Nan's eyes filled with energy. How dare you hit my brother? Chin Yu was seriously angry. He winced a little at what he heard. Your brother has forgotten about our friendship. He broke into my house, opened his hands, and wanted to take my hardening pills. I just hit him once and let him go. Otherwise, there would be no empty space left of him. Are you mocking? Chin Yu asked. You say respect for former friendship, right? Why didn't you just give them to him? You don't need them. He continued to scream. Both you and your brother are both vile and disgusting. It is impossible to build normal, friendly relations with you. Chin Yu was seriously angry, so repeat what you said, loser, he told him. You dare to be insolent to me? You've become so stupid that you've even lost your hearing. You and your brother, you deserve each other, I say. Chin Nan repeated. Before Chin Nan could finish speaking, Chin Yu had already begun to release his energy and warrior soul. He raised his fist to strike Chin Nan. The boy's squabble was interrupted by the loud old voice of the elder. Fights are prohibited in the technician's palace. I repeat, prohibited. Chin Yu, if you break this rule, the technician palace will be closed to you forever, without the right of recovery. Did you hear me? The old man added. Elder, I apologize. I do not intend to violate the rules of the technique palace in any way. Chin Yu quickly hesitated to apologize. You can consider yourself just lucky. Better stay out of my sight next time. Otherwise, I will break all your limbs. You will become even more worthless than you are now. Without delaying his answer, Chin Nan said, I wanted to tell you the same thing, Chin Yu. If I see you again, I will make you crippled. By the way, when time passes, there is no need to beg me for mercy. Chin Yu clenched all his emotions into a fist and silently began to leave the second floor. The time will come and we'll see who will kneel. Finally, this scoundrel has left and no one bothers me. I can sit quietly and study techniques. Let's see what we have here. First book, Soaring Walk. When used, the body flies up, dissipating without a trace, becoming undetectable to the enemy. The next book is the Jade Palm. When used, the palm will become stronger than stone. Fire or water cannot break it. A knife cannot enter it. The third book is the Lonely Whistle of a Sword. And the fourth is the techniques of a mountain crusher. Mid-level techniques are so powerful and interesting. Much better than a low-level technician. But none of this suits me. Chin Nan's attention was drawn to an old, worn-out book. It lay alone in the UG and was covered in dust. And this book was called Rolling Thunder. Almost nothing remains of the cover. I wonder how long she lay there. While reading the description of the technique, Chin Nan found something that might interest him. These were techniques that could actually fit his technique. A blade like thunder, lightning speed. Chin Nan's eyes were filled with delight. This was what he needed. 
At the age of 16, I created a sword technique, but it is too weak. I haven't developed it since then, and the peals of thunder are already more powerful. I will develop my own technique. This suits me for sure. Chin Nan was returning home. The sun was still shining brightly. The birds continued to delight everyone with their singing. The doors are already in place. Everything was repaired so quickly. It's curious who managed to do this, Chin Nan thought. Chin Tian, this is Chin Nan's father, head of the Chin family, the only one who has reached the heavenly limit, the strongest in the family. Have you reached the first level of hardening? Is it true? The father asked Chin Nan. Yes, father, Chin Nan answered. All thanks to the hardening tablets you left me. I am very grateful to you for your concern. Of course, the power of pills is great. But you also only have a first-class golden soul? How did you manage to develop so quickly? The father asked in surprise. I was just lucky. I don't think the secret is my talent, father. Why did you come to us today? Chin Nan asked. Meanwhile, the soul of the god of war pops up in Chin Nan's mind. This is my biggest secret. Under no circumstances should you tell anyone about him. Even if this is my closest person, I can't tell you everything. Otherwise, I will put myself in mortal danger. Chin Nan thought in his head. I see you even broke the door. Are you sure everything is okay? Should I not worry? If this happens, tell me. Nobody dares to offend my son. Father, don't worry, Chin Nan answers. Your son can handle such trifles himself, Chin Nan assured with a smile on his face. To be honest, I came to support you and tell you to never give up in the face of the difficulties that arise on your way. If you need toughening pills, be sure to contact me. I believe in you. You will become the strongest warrior in our family. Father, I want to ask you to do something for me, Chin Nan said. The old man, in turn, focused his attention on what his son wanted to ask him for. He was interested in it. I need tempering tablets, hundreds of them. If possible, I'll take 200, the more the better, Chin Nan said. I understand perfectly well I'm asking too much, but I really need these pills. Chin Nan continued his request, thoughts in Chin Nan's head. If with just ten pills, the war god's soul had evolved from the sixth to seventh level golden soul, what will happen if I eat a hundred or two hundred pieces at once? Surprise never left Chin Tian's face. Why do you need so many hardening tablets? asked the father. A small bead of sweat ran down Chin Nan's face. He was silent because he did not know what to answer his father to his specific question. I won't tell him that I will sell them. Okay, don't bother. 500 tablets is not enough. I can't provide them to you right now. Give me a couple of days. I'll think of something. Three days later. The weather was pleasant and sunny outside. The rays of the sun warmed the leaves of the trees. Chin Nan continued his intense training. Every minute he became stronger. This can be seen by the color of his aura. It has become much richer. Delight and joy filled Chin Nan. I have finally reached the second level of hardening. I feel overwhelmed with strength. There are ten levels of hardening in total. As you develop, it becomes more and more difficult to reach a new limit. It also requires too much supernatural energy. The golden soul of the war god had already reached the seventh grade. The rate of improvement has doubled compared to what it was before. However, to reach the second level of hardening, I had to spend three days. The warrior's path is incredibly difficult. Chin Nan thought. But this is just the beginning. I understand that everything is in my hands. You can't relax. You need to continue training even more intensely. Next, we are taken to the large meeting hall of the Chin family. Four people gathered in the meeting room. At the head of the meeting, Chin Tian sat in the center. The bald old man is the third elder. The man with the colorful hair, Chin Teba, was the eldest of the Chin family, the father of Chin Chang Kun. The third elder was wearing a blue robe. He was of advanced age, but his mind did not leave him, which allowed him to manage the affairs of the family. While drinking warm sake from a porcelain cup, Chin Teba began the conversation. The head of the family himself visited us today. What brought him here? He asked Chin Tian. I called you all to a meeting to inform everyone of my intention to transfer 1,000 tempering pills to my son, Chin Nan, to improve on behalf of the family, Chin Tian replied sharply. Chin Chang Kun's father could not contain his emotions and spat out the contents of his mouth directly into Chin Tian's face. 
Chin Tian, have you gone crazy in your old age? Chin Tiba objected. Do you want to waste a thousand precious pills on some loser? A grin appeared on the old man's face. If the elder does not agree to this, five hundred will be enough, Chin Tian said. Not anymore. I completely disagree with this. Why did you decide to give your stupid son five hundred body-hardening tablets? You can't even dream about it, Chin Teba objected. Master, we also cannot agree. Five hundred pills are also important for all the sons of the Chin family for the next five months. When you took ten pills for Chin Nan last time, we remained silent, the elder answered. The face of the head of the Chin family frowned and became much more serious. Today, I did not convene you for advice and opinions. The decision has already been made. You can distribute my monthly rations among the other sons. I refuse it, Chin Tian said. I disagree, Chin Koba continued to repeat. No matter what you say, you can't give that many tempering pills to your loser son. Chin Teba continued to object rudely. The decision has already been made. Bow your knee before him, I command you. I am the head of the Chin family, Chin Tian. The elders understood that there was no point in arguing, so they had to bow down. We return to Chin Nan. As we can see, he is again spending his time in intensive training. A golden aura surrounds him. Despite the fact that the strength of the soul and body increases evenly, during improvement, it is better not to rush and do everything gradually. Chin Nan thought in his head. The human soul and body are just skin and meat, muscles and bones, heart and blood. Now my skin and meat have already become stronger. I can now begin to harden my muscles and bones. Chin Nan closed his eyes and continued to cultivate and temper his body parts and spirit. He was still in the lotus position and meditating. Well, I have reached the third level of hardening. Chin Nan screamed with delight. The golden soul of a seventh grade warrior is not a toy. I'm curious how things are going with my father regarding the extraction of hardening tablets. But since he made me a promise, then he will keep it, Chin Nan thought. In the meantime, my father is busy with important work. I'll go to the mountains and practice. It is not enough just to improve in meditation. Practice in combat is also necessary. This is the path to becoming the strongest. An eagle was flying in the sky. Snow-white clouds slowly crawled towards the horizon. The mountains were covered with dense tropical forests. With a slight movement of his foot, Chin Nan flew up. The tree-climbing technique was one of the simplest methods of high-speed travel. Hiding on a branch of one of the trees, Chin Nan sat down to watch the white rabbit. This cute creature had very beautiful red eyes. Chin Nan heard someone or something approaching him. Surprise froze in his eyes. It's extremely dangerous in these places, the guy thought. A white rabbit who was peacefully eating grass was being hunted by a large green snake. The rabbit looked so defenseless. Without thinking for a long time, the green snake suddenly jumped out from behind the bushes at the rabbit. He, in turn, tried to jump away and run away from the predator. The rabbit never managed to escape from the green snake. The mountains are full of animals and monsters, a great place to hone your military equipment, Chin Nan thought. In the rolling thunder technique, the emphasis is on speed of movement. This is a second burst of energy. If you need to practice this technique, there is no better place. Jumping further along the branches, Chin Nan continued to think. Approaching the river, our hero tried with all his might to cut through the water, but unfortunately he did not succeed. With a light jump, Chin Nan lands on a huge stone that was located in the middle of the pond. The guy is very dexterous, so this was not a problem for him. So it is necessary to collect your thoughts and concentrate, Chin Nan decided. I thought with my hardening it would be easier to cut through this river. The water only wet Chin Nan. He still lacked the energy to summon the soul of the war god, to continue training and practice. Finally, she woke up. A huge knight in red armor appeared behind the boy. This was his war god soul, which he has been improving all this time. With a swing of his sword, Chin Nan released energy. Fire simply turned water into steam. Happened, Chin Nan shouted. This is the real power of the rolling thunder technique? Impressive! The boy stood and watched as his blow cut the river into two parts. Its bottom was even visible. A huge paw with sharp claws stood firmly on the ground. Blue flames enveloped it. 
It was a huge white tiger. It was visible how he hid in the bushes with the aim of attacking our hero. But Chin Nan sensed his energy and turned around. Striped tigers are quite common in these mountains. They have the power of the third level. Its power is comparable to the hardening level of the third limit. The guy was still standing on a stone in the middle of the river. The striped tiger looked at him as if he were cornered prey. The tiger decided not to wait any longer and attacked Chin Nan. He opened his huge mouth, saliva splashed around, the trees shook from his roar. Chin Nan put his sword in front of him. Holding it firmly with his hands, he prepared for defense. The size of the tiger's claws was simply terrifying. With one precise move of his sword, Chin Nan cut the striped tiger in half. Splashes of blood scattered everywhere. Standing in front of the beast's carcass, Chin Nan continued to admire. Yes, this is amazing. Among all the mid-level techniques, Rolling Thunder is probably the coolest. Confidence filled our hero. Raising the sword behind his back, Chin Nan continued the dialogue with himself. I am only at the very beginning of a long journey of improvement. I still have to hone this technique and hone it. Without having time to rest from the fight with the striped tiger, Chin Nan sensed the presence of another creature nearby. Turning around, Chin Nan saw a huge gorilla in front of him. The shaggy monster was ready to tear him to pieces. Quickly jumping up, Chin Nan raised his fist. Well, let's see what you're capable of. Energy enveloped the boy's hand. Confusion appeared on the primate's face. He was planning to attack Chin Nan after all. The monkey did not understand exactly what was happening now. The gorilla was just going to stand still and struck back. Their fists collided in the air. The size of the gorilla's paw was colossal. It seemed that this time the battle would end with one blow, but this time it was definitely not from Chin Nan's blow. He was flying high up the mountain. Blood spattered onto his clothes. Gritting his teeth, Chin Nan overcame the severe pain. She penetrated him from head to toe. Sweat ran down his cheeks and his heart beat fast. Gathering all his strength and concentrating in flight, Chin Nan landed on his feet. He balanced with great difficulty. Chin Nan didn't have time to stop when a gorilla flew at him from above. Violet flames enveloped her. The red eyes haunted me. The gorilla fist was rapidly approaching Chin Nan. Something needs to be done. If I continue to stand for revenge like this, I will definitely be in trouble. Chin Nan jumps back sharply, and the gorilla's fist simply destroys the ground, leaving a huge dent. It's time to retest what the rolling thunder technique is capable of. Chin Nan swung his great sword and rushed into battle with shouts. But the monkey was not easy. She easily deflects Chin Nan's powerful blow. Purple and golden energy merged in battle. Chin Nan goes to fly to the ground again. The strength of this gorilla is not at all level three. This monster is already at level four. Chin Nan shouted as he flew away. While running away from the gorilla, an understanding of his further actions came to Chin Nan's head. I just started learning my rolling thunder technique, but now it's beyond my capabilities. It's time to get out, Chin Nan thought. But the monkey was not going to just let our hero go. She quickly caught up with him and prepared for the next attack. A powerful series of blows hit the ground without hitting Chin Nan in vain. He managed to jump away. The story stood like a pillar. Pieces of earth and grass scattered everywhere. Stop chasing me, Chin Nan shouted. He landed deftly on a flying boulder. Pushing off from the ground, Chin Nan quickly walked towards the gorilla. He could not help but leave, without striking at least one successful blow. But the monkey could not be moved. She stood firmly shielding herself from Chin Nan's strong attack. The guy stood leaning on one knee, with his hand holding a sword stuck into the ground. Streams of wind dispersed the dust of battle. The gorilla took a running start and decided to jump with his whole body on Chin Nan, while he stood still. And this time, Chin Nan manages to dodge the powerful attack of the gorilla. He moves deftly despite being injured from the monkey's previous attacks. If a gorilla had hit him, it would have been very sad. A huge hole was left in the ground from such a powerful attack. The gorilla let out a powerful roar. Drool flew everywhere. Since you can't escape, you will have to fight. A few seconds later, Chin Nan summoned the soul of the god of war. The gorilla was unstoppable. She tried to kill Chin Nan again and again. Raising his fist, the monkey continued to make a loud roar. But this time, everything did not go according to the gorilla's plan. With a slight movement of his sword, Chin Nan cut off the monkey's paw. The primate's face was disconcerted. 
Panic and only panic sparkled in his eyes. Throwing away his paw, the gorilla began to run away from Chin Nan. She definitely did not expect such resistance. Does she want to run away? Chin Nan thought. Blood oozed from the cut lip. But the smile did not leave the guy's face now. Chin Nan catches up with the victim and chops the mutant gorilla in half. Now he definitely won't run away anywhere, he thought. Landing on the grass, Chin Nan expertly stabbed his sword into the ground. It was clear that he was wounded and beaten, but his face was calm. This mutant gorilla is very strong. Even the soul of the god of war could not save me from injury. In my current state, any monster of the gorilla level or higher threatens me with certain death. I need to find some medicine and rest. This is the only way I can get out, Chin Nan thought. Strange smoke began to reach our hero. A strange smell emitted from this yellow smoke. There don't seem to be any monsters nearby. Such a thick trail, Chin Nan thought. There must be an interesting thing somewhere ahead. Curiosity crept in unnoticed. The trail is coming from that side. You need to go and check what exactly is emitting such a strange smell. Wow, what a find, Chin Nan said. This is the source of supernatural power. I'm lucky. I definitely didn't expect this. That I would stumble upon a magical spring. Now I can easily heal my wounds, Chin Nan thought. Everything was fine until Chin Nan saw these two. Confusion appeared on his face. Brother, are you sure that this magical source is here? Making their way through the bushes and branches, two brothers communicated. Of course have. I saw it on one ancient map somewhere ahead it is located, he answered sharply. That is great. I am a magical source. You and I can break through to a new level, and then Chin Nan will definitely be in trouble. Chin Nan stood with his arms crossed over his chest. Smiling, he asked, Are you kidding me? Seriously? Chin Nan, how did you end up here? The brothers were outraged by such an unexpected meeting. They look at each other. Who cares why he's here anyway? The elder answered. Do you have so much courage, Chin Nan? Every time you bring trouble on yourself. Now let's see what you are like. The older brother stood up and shouted, second level of hardening. Blue tongues of energy enveloped the guy's fist. The younger brother also repeated after his brother and stood up and shouted, first level of hardening. We haven't seen each other for a couple of days, but these two are making excellent progress in cultivation. If we had met a few days ago, I would have been in trouble. Chin Nan thought. His hair fluttered in the wind. The smile never left his face. What can I really do? You'll never know. You will pay for your actions. There is nowhere to run and no one will stop us. Screaming, you are dead! The elder brother shot an arrow at Chin Nan. Her speed was unusually great. It was very difficult to dodge such a shot. Stay aside for now, Junior. I can handle this Chin Nan myself. It's in our hands. He will pay for beating you. I really want to take revenge myself. I have my own plans for him. Back then, in the technician's palace, he allowed himself to speak out too arrogantly. With a smile on his face, Chin Nan continued speaking. Take revenge yourself. There's nothing you can do to help yourself. I'm sure you won't even be able to get close to me. Raising his hand upward and releasing the energy of the warrior's soul, the younger brother shouted, Now I have also reached the first level of hardening. You were just lucky last time. The elder stood with his arms crossed. This is a mid-level technique. It fits perfectly with my brother's warrior soul. Amazing power. At the first level of hardening, we have no equal. Prize your defeat, Chin Nan. These techniques of yours are no match for my skills. If you are so itching, the battle will begin, Chin Nan said with a smirk on his face. With just one blow from his fist, Chin Nan managed to stop his younger brother's attack. Their energies also entered into battle. From such a powerful blow, the younger brother's cultivation energy simply cracked. The sword in turn shattered into pieces. A huge hole formed in the little brother's stomach. Splashes of blood scattered everywhere. The guy was defeated. There was no doubt Chin Nan was indeed very strong. Confidence was visible in his eyes. The energy of the soul of the god warrior in all its glory. The elder brother stood with his mouth open. In bewilderment, he could not utter a word. His younger brother was defeated. How dare you kill my brother? With shouts, the elder brother charged his bow with the energy of the warrior's soul. Resentment and hatred simply tore him to pieces. His ice arrow flew straight towards Chin Nan. She made a loud whistle. It seemed like every second she was getting faster and faster. 
With a deft movement of his sword, Chin Nan deflects his elder brother's arrow. The resounding sound of a blade cutting steel sounded in the air. Confusion and fear were visible in the eyes of the older brother. How is this possible? I asked myself this question over and over again. What is possible? I just began, Chin Nan said. So far I'm very disappointed with you. I just waved my sword. What's wrong with that? Waved a sword? Have you really reached the peak of the third level of hardening? No, it is impossible. You are a loser with a first-class golden soul. How could you reach the third level of hardening so quickly? The guy was perplexed. Chin Yu, do you really think that my soul is only a first-class warrior? Today I will give you a glimpse of my true warrior soul power, Chin Nan said. After releasing his war god soul energy, Chin Nan began to slowly walk towards Chin Yu and speak. Now I will show you which of us is a real loser. Is your warrior soul already seventh grade? But what kind of nonsense is this? Chin Yu shouted. He was amazed at how quickly he was able to improve his soul. And which one of us is the loser now? Answer my question, Chin Yu. A golden aura surrounded Chin Nan. Where did he get the seventh grade golden soul from? Chin Yu wondered. Now I definitely can't beat him. If we continue fighting, I will definitely end up like Chin Xiao. While running away from Chin Nan, the elder brother continued to ponder. I better retreat now. I'll come back and tell my father, you'll regret being born. Looking away, Chin Nan said. Are you planning to run away? Do you think I'll just let you go? Just a couple of jumps later, Chin Nan caught up with Chin Yu. Here I am, he said. It just won't end like that. Chin Nan swung his fist and hit him with great force. All his power was concentrated in his fist. It was a truly incredible blow. Chin Yu crashed straight into a tree. The cracking of wood could be heard throughout the forest. It seemed as if his bones were completely broken. Without giving any time to rest, Chin Nan continued to strike at Chin Yu. It seemed that he did not have a single intact bone left. Large cracks were left from the impact on the tree trunk. Leaves continued to fall to the ground. With one last powerful blow, Chin Nan sent Chin Yu flying into the air. He braked against the trees with his body. A powerful roar echoed through the forest. The birds took flight from such a sound. Clouds of dust hovered in the air and slowly settled to the ground. Chin Yu tries to get to his feet. After such strong blows, not everyone can get up. The dust continued to settle. I ask you, Chin Nan, calm down your ardor. In blood and tears, Chin Yu begged for mercy. It was a mistake to fight with you. Sinking to the ground, Chin Nan asked Chin Yu, Where did your insolence go? You threatened to give me some kind of lesson. Do you really think you are stronger than me? Chin Yu asked. I consider you a genius. I saved your life. Don't make me kill you. Seriously? Are you kidding me? Chin Nan asked mockingly. I killed your brother, haven't you forgotten? Maybe you can still avenge him. What are you doing? Chin Xiao himself came at you with a weapon. Calm down. I won't take revenge for him. I won't even tell anyone that you killed Chin Xiao. I'll come back and say that wild animals ate him. You're forcing me. With anger in his eyes, barely moving, Chin Yu tried to approach Chin Nan. How can you be so pathetic and vile at the same time just to stay alive? He even refused to take revenge for his own brother. You don't deserve mercy. Gathering all the remnants of the warrior's soul energy that he had. Chin Nan, award your death! Chin Yu shouted, drawing his bow, sending ice arrow after arrow. Chin Yu tried to hit Chin Nan. Hundreds of arrows flew towards our hero. For a few seconds, it seemed like Chin Nan didn't know what to do. Confusion froze on his face. At first glance, Chin Yu is holding up well. He continues to continuously attack Chin Nan. All the arrows that Chin Yu fired were successfully blocked by Chin Nan. With their arms crossed, they jumped away from him one after another. A stream of blood oozed from Chin Nan's broken lip. He tried to keep track of every arrow that was heading his way. Chin Yu continues to attack Chin Nan with his thousand ice beams technique. But the same attack doesn't do much good. Chin Nan spread his arms to his sides and shouted loudly, Soul of the God of War, protect me! The golden aura became even stronger. The golden fire simply melted all the ice arrows that were approaching Chin Nan. Again, a huge column of dust and steam rose up. The flames sparkled to the skies. Chin Yu stood exhausted on his knees. Despair and hopelessness were eating away at him. Chin Nan slowly approached his elder brother, who could no longer resist. He, in turn, looked at his sharp sword. No, it's simply incomprehensible how you were able to defeat me, Chin Yu asks with the last of his strength. 
With tears in his eyes, covered in blood, Chin Yu asks, Not to kill him? I'll do whatever you say, just don't kill me. He begged Chin Nan. I warned you not to fall to your knees and beg for mercy. You disobeyed me. The way you two brothers acted in public, always arrogant, rude, and angry. No one will regret your death. So that's it. There's no need to chatter, Chin Nan shouted. Go to your brother! With one blow of the sword, Chin Yu Yu's chest was cut. Chin Nan left the battlefield. In the background lay Chin Yu's bloody corpse. The guy was completely defeated. Finally, no one will interfere with the effect that the magical source will give, Chin Nan thought in his head. A strange smell continued to emanate from the source. The transparency of its waters amazed me. Chin Nan walked into the magical spring and assumed the lotus position. All his wounds began to miraculously heal, and he is gaining strength again. This source is still full of supernatural powers. I can get a good workout. Maybe I'll even reach a new level. Now my code and meat, bones and muscles have acquired initial hardening. All that was left were the internal organs and blood. You need to use the magical power of the source to harden your internal organs. Let's see, maybe I'll even reach the fourth rank of hardening. The magical power of the source began to penetrate Chin Nan's body. His internal organs began to harden. After three hours of meditation, Chin Nan managed to temper his internal organs. He regained all his strength. With a sharp jump, Chin Nan jumped from the source of supernatural power. Standing on dry land with both feet, Chin Nan exhaled a sigh of relief. I have finally reached the fourth level of hardening. Delight and joy filled Chin Nan. He was able to achieve a clearly defined goal. I can't wait to go on my way to adventure. I really want to test my new strength in action. Gathering supernatural strength into his fist, Chin Nanya struck the tree trunk. You could hear the cracking of wood. We need to try again to strike. Chin Nan raised his fist again. The second blow manages to demolish the tree. The barrel flew to the side and fell to the ground with a roar. All that was left was a stump. This is the power of the fourth level of hardening. My low-level technique suddenly turned into a mid-level technique. It's just incredible. Chin Nan turns around sharply and begins to look intently at the heavens. It's like he's trying to look for something. I couldn't even imagine that in just two short days in the mountains I would achieve such fantastic results. I'm very pleased with myself, Chin Nan said. I think it will still take my father some time to get the 500 hardening tablets that he promised me. So when I return, I will be tired of training even more intensely. I'll stay in these mountains for a couple more days. I still need combat practice. Chin Nan begins to imagine in his head how he runs through the forest in search of adventures and rivals in the form of mutant animals. By killing mutant beasts, I will gain more and more experience. This way I will become stronger and stronger. Opening his eyes, Chin Nan saw a huge fiery wolf in front of him. He looked straight at Chin Nan, licking your lips in anticipation of your meal. The wolf turned out to be very agile and fast. But Chin Nan was not inferior to him in movement speed. He deftly jumped from place to place, dodging his attacks. While flying, Chin Nan delivers a single blow with his sword to the body of the fire wolf. Our hero sheathes his sword behind his back. The wild fire wolf was level 5, nothing special. I didn't even feel any strong resistance on his part. The rolling thunder technique gets stronger and stronger with each use. Looks like I'll be leveling up again soon. No one can improve that quickly. The only logical explanation is the soul of the god of war. The sound of hooves came from somewhere deep in the forest. Someone was approaching and quite quickly. The sounds of several horses could also be heard. If the soul of the god of war speeds up class advancement and can increase tempering levels, then it is needed not only to intimidate enemies. Ever since Chin Nan reached the fourth level of hardening and strengthened his body from the inside, he realized that his vision and hearing had become much sharper. Now he could distinguish any breath of wind within a radius of 20 meters. The thunder of hooves did not subside, and he was getting closer and closer. Chin Nan decides to go see what is going on there and who is coming. There were four horsemen. There was one girl with purple hair with them. The other three were her servants. Such a sweet lady, and what did she forget in such terrible lands? I don't think she should be here, Chin Nan thought. Fang Shu is the youngest daughter of the head of the Fang family, one of the main families of Lin Shui City, like the Qin family. He also owns a lot of treasures and will raise a huge number of children. In terms of power, 
it will be even stronger than the Chin family. Why haven't we arrived yet? Do you three have a normal map? Or not? If we get lost, don't ask me for mercy. Miss, there's nothing wrong with the card. Apart from the abandoned cave that we recently encountered, there are no other inhabitants. It's possible the card is fake, though. How can my card be fake? Fang Shu screamed in anger. Quickly begin your search while I am still good. Yes, milady. We are already starting to carry out the order. Everything will be done in the best possible way. The servants nodded their heads. Now everything is clear, they came for the treasure. I wonder what kind of treasure Fang Shu is looking for, since she took so many people with her. Chin Nan was a little careless, and had the carelessness to step on a branch that was lying near the tree behind which Chin Nan was hiding. One of the riders shouted, There is someone on the other side, to arms! We need to go check behind that tree. He takes his emerald dagger and throws it at a tree. Chin Nan deftly jumped to the side. The rider's dagger was embedded directly in the tree. A little more and it would have hit me, the guy thought. How did you manage to find me? Chin Nan asked the rider. Is this really some kind of talent or ability? From the moment Chin Nan's internal organs reached the fourth level of tempering, he gained the ability to control his breathing in a way that made it very difficult for enemies to detect him. The ability of my warrior soul is thick grass, although the level is not high, but within a radius of ten meters I can detect any things. Surprise froze on Chin Nan's face. There are such souls in the world. Of course, there are really a great many of them. You need to be careful. You should not rely only on your own strength, thought Chin Nan. Who are you? How dare you spy on our lady? The horseman guarding Fang Shu shouted. The lady was sitting astride a white horse. Purple hair lay neatly on her shoulders. Chin Nan, is that you? The young lady shouted. You have nothing to do. You can't sit at home. You run through the forest and follow me. Fang Shu continued to scream. The guards kept their eyes on Chin Nan. Whether I'm home or not shouldn't matter to you, Chin Nan answered rudely. I don't care about you. I was just passing by and saw you. I guess it's time for me to go. Fang Shu spent a lot to get this ancient treasure map. After two hours of continuous searching, the lady was already upset by the lack of results. After Chin Nan's rudeness, her patience came to an end. How dare you, loser, talk to me, Fang Shu, in such a tone. Quickly get on your knees and beg for mercy. The girl screamed, bowing and begging for mercy, picking his ear. Chin Nan asked Fang Shu. His face looked like a tomato. I said, I don't care about you. I was just passing by. Why should I do this? Is there something wrong with your head? If not for your status as a young master in the Chin family, you would not even be worthy of bowing. You pathetic loser. Immediately on your knees and beg for mercy. Fang Shu continued to scream. With a smirk on his face, Chin Nan retorted to the girl. What else? What can you do for me? I understand that you were looking for your death here, so I will help you with this. The young lady continued to be angry. With a smile on her face, she gave the command to cut off all of Chin Nan's limbs, but don't let him die. I want to enjoy his suffering longer, Fang Shu said. I am neither your friend nor your enemy, Chin Nan answered. You just want to mutilate me for your pleasure? You're definitely not right in the head. The riders jumped off their horses and quickly rushed to the attack. Three against one, not a very fair fight. But Chin Nan had no choice. Chin Nan was seriously angry and said, Do you really think that I will just let you cut off my limbs? The guy shouted to him. Strong gusts of wind tossed the young lady's hair in the wind. They were all surprised by Chin Nan's might. They continued to look at the guy who was slowly approaching them. How can he have the fourth level of hardening? They were surprised, Fang Shu shouted loudly. Kill him, kill him quickly, she commanded in confusion. The guards quickly joined forces to confront the young warrior. Having launched three attacks at the same time, he could not stop them, the horsemen shouted. A green protective ball formed above the guards. Their strength increased exponentially in the blink of an eye. Gusts of wind rushed around. Wow. Chin Nan was surprised. The souls of the warriors suddenly merged into one? I've definitely never seen anything like this before. Very interesting. By uniting the souls, their strength increased to my fourth level, just like mine, Chin Nan thought. Now it's clear why they are guarding Fang Shu. What talents they have. Stop standing like a pillar, the guard shouted, rapidly approaching Chin Nan. Green auras surrounded them. Swinging his sword, Chin Nan shouted, You still won't even be able to touch me. The guards hesitated and stopped in place, because... 
Chin Nan used his cultivation energy. Tongues of flame flew towards them. A huge, fiery splash brought the end of these guards' journey closer. Wonderful weather for practice, Chin Nan thought. Chin Nan's powerful blow pierced all the attackers at once. They screamed in pain and their moaning did not stop. Blood splashed all over the green grass. Fang Shu was also hurt by Chin Nan's attack. She was thrown back strongly and crashed into a huge stone that lay nearby. Kneeling, Fang Shu said in confusion, This is simply unthinkable. How can a loser like you have such great power? Chin Nan could no longer be stopped. He warned Fang Shu that he was not her enemy, but she disobeyed him. What do you want to do? Fang Shu shouted. Do not come to me! But Chin Nan had no time for her screams. He continued to slowly approach her. Are you afraid? So you know the feeling of fear. I remember you recently wanted to cut off all my limbs. I think your guards are unlikely to comply, Chin Nan said with a sneer. Fang Shu begged the guy to forgive her. Don't kill me. I won't lay a finger on you again. I beg you. The girl continued to sob. Chin Nan pointed his blazing fire sword at her and said, You no longer have a future. You won't even have the strength to open your eyes. They will close forever. You simply cannot kill the daughter of the head of the Fang clan. My father will never forgive you, and my brother has already awakened the soul of a sixth grade warrior. He will definitely find a way to take revenge on you for me. I haven't heard anything about your brother awakening the soul of a sixth grade warrior. Chin Nan objected. As I understand it, your family is up to something if you hide this fact so much. You are a loser, you dare to offend me, Fang Shu shouted. This was your main mistake. Quickly get on your knees and bow to the ground a hundred times. Then I'll be nice and cut off only your limbs. You still have the courage to threaten me, Chin Nan answered. It's not your place to tell me such things. We are now far from the city in the mountains. If I kill you, who will know about it? The realization of the situation shocked young Miss Fang Shu. No, he won't kill me. The last hope remained at the mercy of Chin Nan. And yes, I'm not at all afraid of your father because my father is also the head of the family. Also, don't scare me with your brother. I don't think the soul of a sixth grade warrior is anything special. Chin Nan said, I will show you the truly flawless soul of the god of war. Behind Chin Nan, his soul formed. Fang Shu saw Chin Nan's real soul. How can you have a seventh grade golden soul? So, have you awakened the soul of a seventh grade warrior? Blood oozed from the girl's broken lip. Fang Shu didn't have time to finish. With one powerful attack, Chin Nan cut Fang Shu in half. A fountain of blood splashed onto the guy's clothes. His big sword was also covered in the girl's blood. Chin Nan put the sword behind his back and said, Death from the sword of the god of war is the highest reward. Fang Shu's bloody body lay in front of him. She lay lifeless. The guy's attention was drawn to a small scroll sticking out from the dead girl's belt. Curious what this is? Chin Nan thought. We need to search her. I see she was rich. Six tempering tablets and an ancient treasure map. Chin Nan unrolled the scroll. On it was drawn the path to get to the treasures that were hidden in these places hundreds of years ago. I heard Fang Shu and the guards talking about a cave they found nearby. But it turned out to be too old and abandoned. There were no treasures there. Need to check, Chin Nan thought. Now I have nothing to do anyway, so I'll go into that cave and have a look. Maybe I'll find something interesting. Moving briskly along the path indicated on the map, Chin Nan quickly reached the old cave. The entrance to the cave was blocked with stones and overgrown with moss. Indeed, there was no smell of treasure here. Most likely this card is just a high-quality fake, Chin Nan thought. There's not even anything to see here. There's nothing for me to do here, Chin Nan said. Having literally taken a couple of steps, a strong wind blew and scattered the grass a little from the stones that littered the cave. Chin Nan turned around sharply and looked at the stone wall. The trace of a human hand caught his eye. Taking the sword in his hands, Chin Nan pressed the imprint, but nothing happened. Most likely it's just a mark left during a fight or training, the guy thought. While our hero was sad from his failure, his soul of the god of war suddenly appeared. She had never appeared before. I don't understand, Chin Nan said. How is this possible? The war god's soul appeared on its own, in some unknown way. Chin Nan's cultivation energy merged with the imprint on the stone. What is this happening? I feel some kind of terrifying energy. She is simply of extraordinary strength. 
It seems that the treasure that the map was talking about is this imprint. Fang Shu and her guards had too low a level, so they were unable to detect him. If it weren't for the soul of the god of war, I wouldn't have noticed it myself. This palm print contains the cultivation knowledge of Wu Wan, the ancient founder of the dynasty. Qin Nan stood unwaveringly and looked at the palm. His mind was focused like never before. Suddenly, someone's huge hand appeared from the darkness. She carried enormous power and slowly approached Qin Nan. It seemed like she wanted to smack the guy. Suddenly, the spirit of the god of war began to emit fiery rays. It seemed that they would simply burn through these stones that lay at the entrance to the cave. The huge palm was smashed by a stream of golden rays. She materialized in the current of thoughts that flowed into Chin Nan's head. Chin Nan calmed down and with all his heart and mind surrendered to this stream of thoughts. Inside him, a rebirth was taking place to a completely me level. After Chin Nan absorbed the palm energy, he was able to emit golden rays from his eyes. This was a unique skill that our hero has now learned to master. Even stones crack from such a powerful force. Uvan's power knows no bounds. I just became imbued with his thoughts and immediately grew to an unprecedented level. If only I could fully comprehend his thoughts, Chin Nan thought. However, my sword technique improved in the process of uniting with Uvan. I need to try what my rolling thunder can do now, Chin Nan thought. Rolling Thunder's attack left a huge crack on the ground. Such power is truly awe-inspiring. There was a feeling that this sword was tied to my soul. Even if this is only the fifth level of hardening, it will be difficult to repel it, that's for sure. This time, the fruits of my training in the mountains were quite productive. Quite a long time has passed. My father must have already obtained hardening tablets for me. It's time to go home, Chin Nan said. After some time, we find ourselves near the Palace of Technicians. It was very light outside. The sun warmed the foliage of the trees. Stretching, Chin Nan walked across the square. Finally, I'm home, he said. The rest of the family could be seen having one-on-one -on -one exchanges. Looking around, Chin Nan also began to notice how everyone else was looking at him. Chin's sons and daughters looked sideways at Chin Nan and whispered something in each other's ears. These people look at me as if my father really got 500 hardening tablets for me, Chin Nan thought. Our hero slowly walked away into the distance. The whole street looked after him. A tall young man stood in Chin Nan's way. He was blocking his way. Who is this? And what does he need from me? Thought Chin Nan. It was Ti San, father's closest guard. He is the strongest in the family after Chin Tian, dear friend and confidant. He was holding a wooden box in his hands. Young master, these are the tempering pills given to you by our family. Tai San handed the box to Chin Nan. Thank you very much, the guy replied. My father's bodyguard opened the box, and it actually contained 500 hardening tablets. They shone brightly and emitted a pleasant smell. There are so many of them. Chin Nan was happy. Real clots of power that will soon all be inside me. Uncle San, where is my father? You saw him? Chin Nan asked. I recently returned from training and have not seen him yet. Tai San abruptly turns his back to Chin Nan and begins to leave. He's at a family meeting right now. The guard's face showed concern. Of course, I don't know what you're up to, but now you're just a loser who is setting up your father. You know what your father went to for your idea? What happened to him? Chin Nan shouted. Confusion formed on his face. At the elders meeting, Chin Chang Kun and others accused your father of misconduct and it's all because of your 500 tempering tablets. The guy was inflamed by the huge tongues of the tribe. They want to deprive my father of his position, Chin Nan shouted. I won't allow this. Seeing Chin Nan's hardening level, he was confused. How can you, a loser, have a fourth level of hardening? Tai San asked. Chin Teba and Chin Chang Kun. Where did you get so much courage that you dared to remove my father from his position? Do they think they can deal with us that easily? Chin Nan shouted. In front of us is the meeting hall of the Chin family. There are two guards at the entrance. People slowly approach the gate. Inside the meeting hall, the elders were already sitting and Chin Tian was sitting at the head of the meeting. The head of the family, I, Chin Chang Kun, being the main talent of the Chin family, only receive ten tempering tablets every month. I have a question. On what basis are you giving this loser Chin Nan? 500 tempering pills at once. Just because he's your son? Chang Kun's father looked at his son with pride. 
how he chose the words to address the head. Yes, I gave him hardening tablets because he is my son. In return, I gave my share of the monthly resources. The Chin family will not be harmed by this exchange. As the head of the family, you use tempering pills not to encourage the main talent but to your own loser. I believe you no longer have the right to hold the position of head of the clan. Everyone present was shocked by what was happening. They whispered to each other. Do you want to remove me from my position? Chin Tian clarified loudly. Elders, are you serious? I'm not kidding. The head of the family began to glow with bright rays. Let's check what you are capable of. Do you have the strength to remove me? Chin Tian shouted loudly. I, Chin Tian, am the only one in their family who has reached the heavenly limits. And you dare to contradict my decision? Is this how you resolve all conflicts? Chin Teba asked. You rely only on your own power, not paying attention to your family. Do you really think we'll just let you abuse your power? By the way, I have good news for you. Chang Kun took a closer look at the wonderful elders. They had already chosen him as a student. Moreover, they will soon come to Lin Shui, where the selection of disciples will take place. The elder continued. Everyone started discussing the news. The wonderful elders are one of the four main clans of the Luohei kingdom. Their power exceeds the power of the entire kingdom. Getting to them is the dream of any young man. Elder, is this true? They asked from the crowd. The wonderful elders conduct selections every three years. Since the last selection, there have only been two. This time the selection was postponed, the elder answered. For reasons unknown to me. Listen up, everyone, Chang Kun shouted. The head of the Chin family confused personal relationships and work. He gave 500 tempering pills to his son, a loser. After this, he simply has no right to hold his position. So I propose that he be removed from office right now. Chang Kun continued. He is only interested in personal gain and not in the affairs of the whole family. Gentlemen, although I gave 500 tempering tablets to my son, I gave up my own monthly portion of tablets as compensation, Chin Tian objected loudly. Besides, five years have passed since I became the head of the family. I devoted all my strength and free time to the development of our family. I know for sure that under my rule the Chin family has become much stronger. That's all I wanted to convey to you. I hope you will continue to support me. There is no need to make a scene with this current situation. One young gentleman from the crowd could not restrain himself and shouted, I support Chang Kun! Let's overthrow Chin Tian! I support Chang Kun too, another student chimed in. Chin Tian, you can no longer remain the head of our family. Get out! I didn't like you before, Chin Tian. And then he gave his loser son 500 hardening tablets. Get lost, the crowd chanted. We don't understand how our family's development is related to you, Chin Tian. This is all our hard work, the students continued to shout. Chin Tian faced the current situation and said, So you are ready to talk? Well, I can only agree. As soon as Elder Chin Tian finished speaking, someone rushed into the meeting hall. A loud noise came from the door. It seemed that there was nothing left of the doors. It was Chin Nan. He entered the hall where the meeting of elders was taking place. Do you want to overthrow my father? He asked. Those present were not prepared for such a spectacular appearance by Tsvant Nan. They were extremely surprised. How dare you interrupt our meeting, you insolent! Chin Teba shouted. Have you decided to stop us? Nan turned to Chin Tian's son. This is not the place to rush into like that. Go home quickly. You don't belong here. Chin Nan ignored his father's words and said, I'll say it again. Do you want to overthrow my father? The guy shouted loudly. Where has it been seen that a loser with a first-class golden soul shouts in the meeting hall? Chang Kun shouted. Chin Tian, if your son doesn't leave immediately, don't complain later about our unfriendliness, Chin Teba said. Why did this loser of the court come? It was stupid for the ships to come. What impudence. He also dared to break the doors of the meeting hall. They shouted from the crowd. It's time to remove Chin Tian from his position. Dissatisfied spectators continued to shout. If Chin Tian remains the head of the family, who knows what can be expected from him? Father closed his eyes and said, Chin Nan, go away. You shouldn't be here. Chin Tian has always been distinguished by his wisdom and patience. Father, calm down. If I'm here, they won't overthrow you. This is what I promise you. Since you sacrificed your reputation for my request, I appreciate it very much. Chin Nan said, My affairs don't concern you. Chin Tian objected. So no need to interfere, go away, the father asked again. 
If you want to leave, it's not that easy, Chang Kun said with a grin. You're getting tired of fixing the doors, loser. I really don't understand how Chin Tian became the head of the family. The fact that your father decided to give you 500 tempering tablets is a real waste. Give me the pills. A loser like you won't need them, especially in such quantities. You impudently burst into the meeting hall and broke the doors. This is not worthy behavior. Get on your knees and quickly apologize. Otherwise, I'll chop it into pieces, Chin Chang Kun threatened. You made me laugh, Chin Nan answered. You want me to return the hardening pills and apologize to boot? Why would I do this? Who are you that I should obey you? Chin Chang Kun, you constantly insult me and call me a loser. But you have no idea how insignificant you are in my eyes. These words made Chin Chang Kong very angry. He released his warrior soul and lashed out at Chin Nan. Chin Tian also became alert and released his energy. He wanted to stop the fight between Chang Kun and Chin Nan. Your son impudently burst into the meeting hall and did not take into account the opinions of his elders. He must be punished. Or are you going to cover it? Chin Teba asked. Father, don't worry, Chin Nan said confidently. He prepared to parry his opponent's attack. You better watch me destroy him. Blue and yellow energies merged in a powerful duel. Everyone who was in the hall fell silent. They watched what was happening. Our hero is not so simple. He sends Chang Kun flying into the air with one powerful punch. His strength was truly amazing. Wo Ying Teba's face twisted a little. Elder Two and Three were also greatly shocked by what was happening. Lying on the floor, Chang Kun asked Nan, How did you manage to jump to the fourth level of hardening? You're just a loser with the golden soul of a first-class warrior. How did you suddenly end up at the fourth level of tempering? Father Tian was very dumbfounded. He didn't think his son was capable of this. This was out of character for him. I spent the last few days in the mountains, in constant training. It was there that I reached the fourth rank of hardening. I just didn't have time to inform you. Now everything has fallen into place, Elder Tian said. This is my son, who now has the courage to call him a loser. You thought I was incapable of anything. They thought that my father had gone crazy when he decided to give me the hardening pills, and so they decided to overthrow him. So behold my true power. I didn't think that such a loser as you would get lucky. Well, never mind. The fourth level of hardening doesn't mean anything. A loser is always a loser. Are you still itching to give up your life? Chin Nan asked loudly. I relaxed a little and missed your blow. Although you managed to reach the fourth level of tempering, your warrior soul is simply pitiful. So get on your knees and apologize immediately. If one blow was not enough for you, then let's continue our fight. I will not kneel down, and I will not ask for forgiveness either. I will help you taste death. Now you will understand our difference in strength. Chin Chang Kun released the warrior's soul. It was a huge striped tiger. I offer you a deal, Chang Kun said. If you defeat me in this fight, we will leave your father as the head of the family. I accept your terms, let's fight, Chin Nan shouted. They both released their warrior souls. Blue and yellow flames enveloped the students. Stop, Chin Nan, the father shouted. Chang Kun has the golden soul of a fifth-class warrior. Even with the fourth level of hardening, you are no match for him. That's enough for today. I made my father happy. But I don't care about the position of head seven. Even your father doesn't want you to fight me. It doesn't matter what you found there in the forest. Well, your level is high. So what? Just as you were a loser, you will remain a loser. Before Qian Chang Kun could finish speaking, Chin Nan's fist appeared near his face. The bully flew to another part of the meeting hall. You attacked me again when I was not ready for it. How dare you hit me? Chen Kun was filled with anger. He was disgraced in front of everyone present. Chang Kun unleashed his top-level technique, White Tiger Fury. Sharp fangs were ready to tear the enemy into pieces. The audience was shocked by Chang Kun's skills. His strength was simply amazing in its power. They say that it is extremely difficult to master the highest level of technology. The white tiger was rapidly approaching Chin Nan. But our hero stood motionless. He was waiting for something. The elders looked at Chang Kun's technique and admired it. It was as if she had been created especially for him. They spoke. The crowd continued to mock Chin Nan. You're too arrogant, you can't compare with Chang Kun's technique, they shouted. 
My father was horrified when he saw the white tiger technique. Chinan, be careful. This is a very dangerous attack. Chian Tabe blocked Elder Chian Tian's path and said, Let the kids figure it out themselves. We shouldn't interfere. Kan Nan was almost in the white tiger's mouth, but he continued to stand motionless. Everyone around was discussing the fight. Die! Chang Kun shouted. He attacked Chin Nan with anger in his eyes and kept shouting, Die! Die! Chin Nan suddenly picks up his big sword and uses his war god spirit energy. With a cleaving blow, Chin Nan cuts the white tiger. Chang Kun's attack never reached our hero. Eventually, the powerful attack penetrated Chang Kun's stomach. He was wounded. He didn't think he would be defeated in this fight. Chang Kun was defeated. He lay on the floor and gradually crawled back. Everyone in the meeting hall froze in anticipation. This is the legendary combination of a man and a weapon. How did Chin Nan manage to get to know her? The elders shouted in surprise. Nian turned to Chin Tian's son. You truly confirm to everyone that you are my son. I'm proud of you. Only my son could achieve such amazing sword skills. Even though you have not yet fully mastered the technique of unification, you are already taking the first steps. Now let's see if anyone dares to say that my son is a failure, Elder Tian said. Chin Teba froze in place. The rest of the elders didn't know what to say. This is simply impossible. I can't lose to a loser like you, Chang Kun said, barely getting to his feet. Covered in blood, Chin Chang Kun shouted towards Chin Nan. You're a loser and I'm a tarantula. I'm talented, he repeated. In my eyes, you are just an ant that can be easily crushed. You shouldn't extol the soul of a third-class, fifth-class warrior so much. There will always be someone better than you. Hatred filled Chang Kun. He couldn't do anything because he was too badly injured. Gritting his teeth, he held back the intense pain. We are leaving holding hands, said Chang Kun. They were defeated. The deal he made with Chin Nan was lost. Who else here wanted to remove my father from his position? Do you still think that the hardening tablets you gave me are a waste of time? Chin Nan Yan asked loudly. How is this possible? It turns out that the head of the family supported the main family talent, and that's really true. Conversations began in the crowd. There is a perfect sentence, the students shouted. For Chin Nan, 500 tempering tablets are not enough. Let's give him the same amount. Chin Nan remains the main talent of our family. Therefore, spending more tempering tablets on him is a good thing. Elder Chin Tian walked up to his son and said, Let's go. Here today our business is finished. Please wait just a few minutes. I have something to say to those here, Chin Nan said. All the members of the Chin family. You have been fucking examples and mentors to me. However, I saw your true nature. Shame was visible on the elders' faces. Our family has evolved to where it is today thanks to my father. Chin Nan continued to speak. Your attitude has completely disappointed me. You have completely forgotten what my father did for each of you. You were all overjoyed that Chang Kun would become the disciple of the miraculous elders. But hear me, this will not happen. I've already spent too much time and energy on you. You have every right to choose. I understand that Chin Teba and Chang Kun will not agree with this. I'll tell you one last thing. Once you make your choice, don't regret it. I said everything. Chin Nan graduated. The weather was sunny. Birds flew merrily in the clouds. It was already evening, the Chin family's training ground. In front of us stood a young guy, his name is Chin Hai. He has a fourth-class golden soul. In terms of strength, he is second only to Chang Kun. You wanted to tell us some news. Let's talk. We are listening to you carefully. Now at the family meeting, Chang Kun and his father are trying to overthrow the head of the family, Chin Tian. It seems his reign has come to an end. Don't forget that Chin Tian is the best warrior of our family. It all sounds extremely crazy. Chin Tian definitely cannot hold the position of head of the family. After all, Chang Kun has already become a disciple of the miraculous elders. The students continued to gossip. Did the wonderful elders really take a liking to Chang Kun? That's right. Because Chin Tian gave 500 tempering tablets to his loser son, he is not worthy to lead our family. If elder Chin Tian loses his position, then difficult times will come for Chin Nan. This is what I promise you. Suddenly, the dialogue warms up with a student with disturbing news. This just happened there. Chin Nan rushed into the meeting hall and defeated Chang Kun with one blow. Confusion froze on the faces of the gossipers. Just a couple of minutes ago, they were happy that Chin Nan was in trouble.
After hearing the news, their joy ended. Meanwhile, the story takes us to the courtyard of Chin Chang Kun. The weather was sunny outside. I'm going to kill him. I won't leave him empty. How dare he humiliate me? Chang Kun screamed at the top of his voice. Calm down, Chin Teba said sharply. In five days, the wonderful elders will already be in our famine. Bai Heng will take you as a student. The time will come when we will take revenge for today's ridicule. Hatred pierced Chin Chang Kun's eyes. You don't have long to live, Chin Nan, he continued to scream. Next, we find ourselves inside the Sun family's secret room. This is a dark place somewhere underground. Before us is the head of the Fang family, Fang Li. He is Fang Hui's father. This is a big bearded man with a fan. He has a serious look on his face. So they are discussing something important. Elder Bai Heng will arrive in three days. The young gentleman answered. He had a cute face and purple hair. The young master is Fang Rulong, Fang Li's son and Fang Hui's older brother. Elder Bai Heng told the Qin family that he would arrive in five days. I think in these two days we will have time to prepare. That is great, Fang Li answered rudely. I really want to see the Qin family destroyed as soon as possible. The voice was filled with the rage of the head of the Fang family. Father, I don't fully understand what your plan is. If you're worried about Chang Kun, then he's no match for me. I can easily demonstrate this. This is not the only issue, Fang Li answered. Some of their family's students possess the golden soul of a fourth and fifth grade warrior. They are the future of the Qin family. Our goal is to prevent the Qin family from strengthening. Father understands you. I think our plan will be implemented in the best possible way, Fang Rulong answered. I heard rumors that Qin Nan won the duel with Qin Chang Kun. This is true? You know something about this, the elder asked. How could a loser like Qin Nan with the soul of a first-class warrior defeat Chang Kun? Qin Nan has no right to even be called an opponent. I think you're right. I agreed with Fan Li's son. It is unlikely that a loser like Qin Nan could defeat Chang Kun. It seems like I'm worrying for nothing. By the way, have you heard the news from your sister? Fang Li asked. The guy was a little confused by the question. Fan Rulong answered, turning his head around. Unfortunately, no, father. I don't know anything about her. She left for the treasure and was never seen again. Your sister is becoming uncontrollable. She can finish the game this way. It is dangerous to walk through the mountains in search of treasures. Okay, you can go, Father Fang Li said. Be sure to prepare well. I want to see you defeat the members of the Qin family. Next, we move to Qin Tian's residence. Father's guard apologizes to Qin Nan. Forgive me, young master, for my rude words. I hope you don't hold it against me. It's okay. Chin Nan answered with a smile. Uncle San, I understand that you were just worried about my father. Chin Nan, even if Wu Yin Teba did not achieve his goal today, this tells us that we cannot relax. Chin Tian's father said, In five days, the mystic elder sect will arrive to receive Chin Chang Kong, and then I will definitely not be able to hold on to the position of head of the Chin family. Father Chin Tian continued to think. Now that you insulted Chang Kun, they definitely won't give up easily and will try to take revenge on you and me. With the Mystic Elders sect, they will come after you, and I'm afraid I won't be able to help you then. Concern formed on the Elder's face. He was always prepared for difficulties in advance. Foresight was one of his virtues. Father, I won't run away, Chin Nan answered firmly. Even if it's Chin Taba or Chang Kun, let them take revenge on me. I'm not afraid of either of them. There's no need for you to worry so much. I have a plan, and I'm definitely not going to give in to these two after which our heroes went their separate ways. I'm very curious what grade my war god soul can reach with so many tempering pills. Check it out for now, Chin Nan thought. He swallowed a couple of tempering pills. Suddenly, golden rays enveloped Chin Nan. His aura was not as glorious as last time. It was clear that our hero had grown in strength. What if we eat a couple dozen more of these pills, Chin Nan thought. The soul of the god of war watched the guy. Normally, when the war god's soul appeared, it would emit the aura of an emperor. Just like before, she released incredible power and absorbed the power of the tempering pills. Literally ten tablets were not enough for the soul of the god of war to increase its level. Chin Nan thought, I understand. It seems that if the soul of the god of war increases its level, then more pills are needed for the next improvement. I think we need to use more tablets and find out how much more she needs. Chin Nan picked up the pills and began to consume them one by one. 
until he only had ten pieces left out of five hundred. But nothing happened. It doesn't cost me anything as soon as I finish them. Maybe then the soul of the god of war will make a breakthrough, Chin Nan thought. As soon as the young man finished all the hardening pills he had, eight golden rays sparkled around him. A very beautiful sight. With a smile on his face, Chin Nan shouted. It finally worked. His war god soul had increased its level. Taking a closer look, Chin Nan saw that his war god soul had transformed and mutated. My vision has become much clearer and more powerful. I think the tempering pills can not only increase the level of a warrior's soul, but also strengthen the internal organs and body parts. Increasing my understanding and cultivation can only have a positive effect on my body. In fact, the soul of the war god completely changed my body. She's simply amazing. Chin Nan's face darkened. He wondered how he would become the strongest warrior in the whole world. With such an incredible soul, I am simply destined for a good future. I must join the Mystic Elders sect. This is a great option for quickly leveling up and exploring the whole world. Chang Kun, do you really think that you can become their disciple? In five days, I will show you where your place is. You will never be a disciple of the Mystic Elders sect. Chin Nan shouted loudly. Somewhere in the market, students are discussing family news. One speaks to the other. You heard that the Mystic Elder sect will arrive in five days to select disciples. Chin Nan defeated Chang Kun. This is simply impossible. I really don't understand how Chang Kun could lose. My uncle serves the Chin family. He was present in the elders' meeting hall that day and saw how Chin Nan defeated Chang Kun with one blow. Next, we are transferred to Chin Nan. He is right now busy strengthening all his body parts and insides. This allows him to be invulnerable to conventional weapons, water, and fire. Chin Nan concentrated. The time has come to break through to the fifth level of body hardening. For a few seconds, it seemed that something had gone wrong. Chin Nan was doused with x-rays and every bone of his body could be seen. A pillar of fire crashed into the sky. It seemed that Chin Nan was filled with new strength. The wind scattered around. Is this strength of the fifth level of tempering? I feel it overwhelm me. Chin Nan's fist glowed with his strength. As he left the training yard, guard San called Chin Nan over. Young master, please wait. I had the opportunity to observe you, namely your meditation. Have you really broken through to the fifth level of hardening? Yes, that is right. When I was training in the mountains, I accidentally came across an unusual grass. I cleaned it and absorbed it. It was she who helped me progress so quickly in improvement. Why did you even need to follow me? Is there anything I can help you with? The young man asked. The selection of disciples will be from the Mystic Elders sect. So your father sent me to inquire about your readiness. With a smile on his face, Chin Nan replied, Of course I will participate. You thought I could miss this. The selection takes place every three years. This time, both the Chin family and the Fang family will be in charge of conducting the selection. It will consist of two rounds. San continued to speak. In the first round, both families will select 30 students for duels. Only five will be able to advance to the next round. In the second round, the class of their warrior souls will be compared. It is unknown exactly how many students will be selected. Now everything is clear. Thanks for the information, Chin Nan said. Where will the selection itself take place? The guy asked. In the territory of the Fan family, Senior Guard San answered. If we connect the fact that the selection will take place in the Fan family and the news about the soul of Fan Rulong, it seems like the Fang family wants to suppress our family during the selection process. Once again, Chin Nan smiled and said loudly, Regardless of their plans, I will destroy them with my blade. Your father also asked me to find out what you used to defeat Chin Chang Kun. I used my improved move, namely Rolling Thunder, answered by Chin Nan. Guard San took out a diary and handed it to Chin Nan with words. I also practiced Rolling Thunder. Take my notes. Maybe you will learn something useful for yourself. Uncle San has been practicing thunderclap for over ten years. Moreover, he had already achieved unity with the sword. Therefore, his notes should prove very useful to the young master. Holding the notes to his chest, Chin Nan bowed and said, Thank you so much, Uncle San. I really, really appreciate it. Young master, your talent in martial arts has been excellent since your youth. I'll be there for you so you can ask me if you have any questions with the recordings. Chin Nan bowed again and thanked Uncle San for his concern.
I'm very grateful to you for this, said the young master. The weather outside was as sunny as always, and the birds continued to sing, delighting all the people who were in Chin Tian's residence. Guard San watched Chin Nan read intently. The maid approached him, holding a parcel in her hands. With a thoughtful look, Uncle San said, It is extremely curious how much Chin Nan can comprehend in one day. Suddenly, the sunny weather was replaced by a storm and thunderstorm. Heavy rain began to fall from the sky. Drops hit the roof. Sir, Chin Nan will not have many health problems due to such training in the rain. The maid asked the guard Sanya, maybe we should call him. Don't bother him. He is currently very focused on learning the rolling thunder technique. The guard was a little shocked. He saw a strong aura forming around Chin Nan. It was the wish of the sword. It appears only with competent success in unity with the sword. In just one day, he was able to achieve such union with the sword so quickly. He is truly the talent of our family. Yes, yes, our young master is so smart and strong. The maid burst into a smile. The only thing I feel sorry for is that he has a first-class golden soul. If only he had a little more luck. Then he would truly become a dragon among people. By this time, the rain had stopped. It's already starting to get light. I didn't think it would take me so long to understand all this, Chin Nan said. I did not expect such a result. This is really useful information. I didn't think I could become so strong in just a day. Young master, congratulations. You were so quickly able to recognize the desire for the sword and achieve unity with it. It's simply amazing. It's all thanks to your notes, Chin Nan answered. Young master, you are too modest. Only my records are not enough to achieve this. Your talent, it was he who played a big role. By the way, Uncle San, what is the unity with the sword that you mentioned? I did something and didn't fully understand what it was. Chin Nan asked. Young master, you have a feeling that your sword art power has surpassed the limits of the rolling thunder blade. When it comes to martial arts, the higher their rank, the greater the power they can potentially display. However, this is not the whole truth. Mastering the sword is no longer about martial skill ranks, but about mastery of the skill. The higher the warrior's mastery over a skill, the higher the amount of energy that can be invested when using this skill. After uniting with weapons, there is another level. A mysterious one. There are also other levels after it, but they are beyond my understanding. It was clear that Chin Nan was trying to understand and digest what Uncle San said. He was focused on his words. Before heading to the Fang family, we need to take a look at home. Do you mind, young master? The guard asked. Next, the narrative takes us to the main square of the Chin family. Slowly, there were more and more people. Let's begin our meeting, family head Chin Tian shouted loudly. Everyone suddenly fell silent and stopped chatting. Today is the day when the Mystic Elders sect will arrive in Lin Shui City to conduct the selection of disciples. I think you don't need to explain what influence the Mystical Elders have. If even one of you becomes a member, your future will become unimaginable, and our family will become number one in Lin Shui City. Now I will begin to name those who have been selected to participate in the selection. Let's not rush. When your name is called, raise your hand. Elder Chin Tian began to list all the young applicants who had been selected to participate in the selection. At the very end, he said the name of his son, Chin Nan. Some students started laughing. Is this loser with the golden soul of a first-class warrior really capable of becoming a disciple of the Mystic Elders sect? This is ridiculous. What's wrong with that? You haven't forgotten how Chin Nan defeated Chang Kun with one blow. Hush, are you looking for death? He can hear everything. Head, wait, Chang Kun shouted. How can Chin Nan be selected for selection if he has a first grade golden soul? I agree with Chang Kun. We can't just give such a place of honor to some loser. Even though it's your son, one of the elders objected. Our family only has ten spots to choose from, the second elder objected. I suggest that the right to participate be given to someone else rather than Chin Nan. Shouts in support of Chang Kun began to be heard loudly from the crowd. Not everyone agreed with the decision to give the position to Chin Nan. Chang Kun looked at Chin Nan and thought in his head, Such a weak loser can't compete with me. I will destroy you. Even though Chin Nan is a first-class golden soul, he has a fourth-level tempering. He also mastered the technique of unity with weapons. He has all the rights to participate. Elder Chin Tian objected. Don't make me laugh, Chin Teba said. This loser has great potential. He was just lucky to develop a level of hardening. He is not our family's talent, but a disgrace. Supreme Elder Chin Teba is right. 
Your son is just lucky. He is unworthy. Give his place to someone else. How they all make me angry. This is how people are made. This world respects only the strong. Of course, Chin Nan was unlucky with the soul of a warrior. Guard San said, Uncle San, now the young master will not be allowed to participate in the selection? The maid asked. We can calmly watch from the sidelines how this group of people still will not be able to prevent his participation in the selection of students. San answered, Chin Tian, now everyone wants Chin Nan's place to be given to someone else. How are you going to get out now? Chin Teba asked with a smirk on his face. I originally wanted to give you an advantage in selection, Chin Tian thought, and the advantage of becoming a member of the Mystic Elders sect. But alas, I have to. Chin Nan appeared from the crowd and asked his father to give him his word. Surprise was on the father's face. Wei Ying Tian's father broke into a smile. What did you want to say, Chin Nan? I give you my word, speak up. This bunch of people are screaming about what a loser I am, even though they themselves are worthless. You don't know who you are in my eyes, Chin Nan shouted, especially him. Chin Nan pointed his finger at Chang Kun. By becoming arrogant, you are digging your own grave, threatened Chin Nan. Supreme Elders 1 and 2 stood behind Chang Kun and shouted towards Chin Nan. What impudence, what impudence. Chang Kun flared with hatred. How dare you talk to me, Chang Kun, like that? His face was greatly distorted. Chin Tian, I will teach your son a lesson. Chin Teba began his attack with shouts. How dare you insult my son? You should be excluded from the family. On Chin Teba's path, Chin Tian became the head of the family. How dare you raise your fist at my son in front of me? Chin Tian shouted loudly. How can you continue to stand up for your son so brazenly? He behaves inappropriately. Don't you need the position of head of the family? Chin Teba asked. Chin Teba, if you even lay a finger on my son, I will disregard my position as head of the family and destroy you. I don't think you want to experience this, Chin Tian replied rudely. Fine, I understood you, Chin Teba replied. I will spare Chin Nan's life, but he should be expelled from the family because he does not respect our values and rules. Chin Nan begins to laugh very loudly throughout the entire square. Chin Teba and Chang Kun stand in confusion. Why are you funny? they asked. Chin Nan burst into flames as golden lights began to surround him. Do you want to kick me out of the family? asked the young master. Come on, I want to see how you do it. Everyone present in the square just saw the fifth level of body hardening. But how is this possible? the elders whispered in surprise. Chin Nan's father was as amazed by what he saw as the rest of those present. In just five days, Chin Nan raised his tempering level again. This is really my son. I can't wrap my head around it. Chang Kun looked at Chin Nan angrily. How did a piece of trash like you reach the fifth level of tempering? Chang Kun, now you understand why you are no match for me, Chin Nan asked. In my eyes, you are a weak creature who cannot cope with even one of my blows. Luck is on your side so far, Chang Kun shouted. But this cannot go on forever. The day will come when I will show you the true talent of a genius. Chin Nan smiled. Really? I will wait for this day with all my heart, the young master answered jokingly. Chief Elder, will you still instruct me in expelling me from the Chin family? Chin Nan turned to the rest of the students, who were shouting in support of Chang Kun. What about you? Chin Nan asked. Young Master Chin Nan, we were just joking. How could you think that we doubt your abilities? Hypocrisy overwhelmed them. Since we have resolved all the conflicts, no one is against participating in the selection of my son. We can hit the road, family head Wu Tian said. Next, we move to the territory of the Fan family. The servant shouts that the Qin family has arrived. Fang Li came out to personally greet the Qin family. Greetings to all of you. Fang Li broke into a smile. First of all, Brother Qin Tian, I must warn you that our estate is not large. I apologize in advance if you are not happy with anything, Fang Li said. The Fang family is quite luxurious. Let's not waste any more time on empty talk. Two of the Mystic Elders sect are already waiting for us. Of course, please come in, family head Fang Li said, pointing his hand towards the entrance. Chi Chin. It was awkward for you to watch the two heads of families communicate and be polite, but they did not pay attention to him. He continued to watch the trail of the elders, who little by little entered the estate. Chin Nan looked towards Fang Rulong. He had a sixth grade golden soul. It couldn't be that he had only reached the third level of hardening. 
he is most likely hiding his true strength. Next, Chin Nan's gaze was drawn to the man who was sitting at the top of the balcony. Most likely it was Elder Bai Heng, Chin Nan thought. In front of us is Bai Heng, even one member of the mystic elder sect has such a terrifying aura. He is most likely stronger than my father, Chin Nan thought. The next one caught Xiao Qing Shui's attention. She has a very impressive appearance. I can't even determine its level. Xiao Qing Shui caught Chin Nan's gaze. Seeing her eyes, he was extremely discouraged. This woman was truly terrifying. Just one look from her is like a sharp blade piercing my flesh and destroying my mind. This guy was able to escape my Ryatsu. Curious, the girl thought. She continued to look at Chin Nan. These two from the mystic elder sect are incredibly powerful. They are both at the minimum of the peak of the innate sphere, especially this woman. Her strength might even be beyond the realm of rebirth. The mystic elder sect is worthy of its title. Everyone around was discussing the mystic elders, how powerful they were, and how Xiao Qing Shui's beauty surpassed the heavens. How can these losers even think about women when they have such an important battle on their hands? Chang Kun says. You don't think I can get a woman like that. You are definitely no match for her. I heard you Chin Nan defeated with one blow. I don't think you'll be able to qualify at all. Fan Rulong, are you looking for death? Chang Kun shouted. The skirmish got serious. The young warriors were ready to begin the battle. Do you think you are ready to compare with me? Well, come on over. Let's see what you can do. Fang Rulong said. I'll finish you off now, Chang Kun shouted. Blue energy enveloped him. His henchmen cheered in support. That's right, kill him, kill him! A loud voice came from the stage. Well, everyone shut up and stopped the inappropriate behavior. Anyone who dares to break the rules will be removed from participation in the selection and will immediately leave our residence, Fang Li said loudly. Pray you don't get me in the arena, loser. Otherwise, you'll just end up dead. I guarantee you this. Fan Li points to the balcony where the representatives of the mystical elders are sitting. Students, allow me to introduce our distinguished guests. Two elders from the mystic elder sect, Elder Xiao Qing Shui and Elder Bai Heng. It is an honor for us to attend the selection of disciples for our sect. Fan Li, let our competition begin. Fang Li shouted loudly, raising his hand up. Let the selection of students for the mystic elder sect begin. The first round will begin now. I hope you all know the rules. You take turns fighting each other. Number one with number 20, number two with number 19. The students began to take turns approaching the box in which the numbers for the draw were located. It was Chin Nan's turn to take out her number slip. This is truly an extremely exciting moment. Opening his paper, Chin Nan saw that he was number one. Chin Nan was approached by his father, Chin Tian, guard San and a young maid. What number did you get? Chin Tian asked. I got the first number, answered Chin Nan. Looks like my fight will be the first. I'm looking forward to starting. I really want to prove myself, father. Chin Nan, first. You will definitely become a disciple of the mystic elders sect. We believe in you, the young maid said with a smile on her face. Your young master will definitely become a disciple of the mystic master sect. You can't doubt me. Chin Nan answered with a smile. Did you hit your head? You will never become their student. Chin Chang Kun said mockingly towards Chin Nan. I see that you are in a good mood, right? Chin Nan asked. If you get tired of spoiling it a little for your own good, Chin Nan, you freak. After I become a disciple of the mystic elder sect, I will grind you into powder. A voice from the stand said, Number one and number twenty, enter the arena for a duel. Chin Hai, he constantly slandered my name. He made fun of me all the time, so I got a chance to take revenge on him for this, Chin Nan thought. One of the elders shouted from the balcony. This fight is a waste of time. A battle of this level is worth nothing, Elder Bai Heng said. What nonsense. In the entire city of Lin Shui, except for Chin Chang Kun and Fang Rulong, there are only mediocrities and losers, Bai Heng said in his head. The guy suddenly changed his face. His opponent got scared and began to slowly retreat back. Let's begin, Chin Nan shouted. Chin Nan, don't come near me, Chin Hai shouted so I need to calm down and pull myself together. Even if my cultivation is not as fast as Chin Nan's, there must be a way out. Chin Hai tried to bribe Chin Nan. Maybe you'll just give up? He asked. If I become a disciple of the Mystic Elders sect, I promise not to touch you again and will give you a lot of tempering pills. You have to give me a chance. When the time comes, I will repay you threefold. 
Chin Hai continued to speak. I'm tired of it, Chin Nan said, and hit his opponent with a light blow of his hand, causing him to fly out of the arena. Chin Hai kept bouncing and bouncing on his butt on the floor, letting out a loud groan of pain. The fight was over. Chin Nan won. This was the shortest fight in the entire history of the selections. Is this the fifth level of body hardening? Bai Hung asked with surprise on his face. And the stage of great unification with the sword? This year's selection promises to be interesting, Elder Xiao Ching Shui thought. Chin Nan already reached the fifth level of body tempering? Isn't this guy just a loser? How did he do it? The students were surprised. Chin Nan has achieved great success in uniting the sword. Even in my Fang family, there are only two people who have achieved this. So the Chin family has another genius? Bai Hung thought. This Fan Li dared to lie to me? Fang Li realized that he was in for a serious conversation with Elder Bai Heng. He even became a little wary. Elder Bai Heng, this is Chin Nan, the young master of the Chin family. He had a talent for martial arts since childhood, even inventing his own fighting technique at the age of 10. The Fang family disciples continued to shout, so it was just luck. Now everything is clear. A loser still remains a loser even with a bit of luck. I thought so. May your development amaze and stun you. But a loser remains a loser for the rest of his life. I understand you, Fan Li. He is just someone with a first-class golden soul, Bai Hung said. Okay, continue the fight. Yes, sir, Fang Li answered, bowing. Let's continue our selection. As soon as the elder gave the order to continue the fight, all participants continued to approach one by one to participate in the fights. One won, the other lost, and so on in a circle. Next fight. Fang Rulong of the Fang family versus Chin Li of the Chin family. Let the fight begin, the elder shouted. The crowd chanted in support of Fan Rulong. Chang Kun noticed this. He said, Do they really think Fang Ronong is that good? It had already been decided that I would become a disciple of the Mystic Elders sect. Chang Kun continued to think. Chin Li gritted his teeth. He clenched his fists and prepared to fight Fang Rulong. His eyes were filled with determination. How does a loser like you even have the right to fight me? Fang Rulong said loudly. I will give you a choice. Give up or become a cripple. Choose. Chin Li's determination suddenly gave way to uncertainty. Sweat appeared on his face and he became very nervous. He was very frightened by Fang Rulong's aura. The Chin family disciples began to support their friend. Beat him to death. You will succeed. You are one of the best warriors in our family. Fang Rulong flared up, his eyes glowing with red lights. He began to slowly approach Chin Li. You have five seconds to give up. One, five, Fang Rulong said, and sent his opponent to the ground with a powerful blow. He even knocked out a tooth. Drool along with blood flew around. After his landing, Chin Li left a large dent outside the arena. Foam filled the guy's mouth. It will definitely be more difficult for him to move now. How dare you? You are not a warrior. He said he was giving up. This behavior is not worthy of a disciple of the mystic elders. He needs to be excluded from the selection. In my opinion, trash like him has no right to even give up. There is no place for him in this world. It looks like he doesn't care about our Chin family. Fan Rulong became extremely insolent. How dare he hurt a member of our family? No forgiveness for him. The seven Chin disciples continued to shout. Fang Li, what is your family trying to do? It's just a duel. Why injure someone at this kind of event? Dear Chin Tian, Fang Li addressed the head of the Chin family. I think you're wrong. There are no rules for fights that limit the lives of the participants. I agree with Fang Rulong. A loser like Chin Li is not worthy of living among us. If you, the Fang family, insist on this, then today I will test how strong your students are, Chang Kun shouted, pointing his finger at Fan Rulong. Chin Li continued to lie in the pothole outside the arena. Enough, stop arguing, Bai Hung shouted from the balcony. Leaning on his left hand, Bai Heng said, I agree with Fang Rulong. Losers like Chin Li have no place in our world. I really liked the student Fan Rulong. If the Chin family dares to harm him, you won't get off so easily. Elder Bai Heng imagines in his head a picture where all the disciples of the Chin family tell him that they will never, under any circumstances, harm Fang Rulong. I hope the Chin family will have manners. One way or another, Chin Chang Kun, I still believe in you, show your best. Bowing, Chin Chang Kun said, I will do everything to meet your expectations. Great, as long as Elder Bai Hung is satisfied, 
I don't need to pay attention to trifles, thought Chang Kun. The Qin family doesn't impress me. Closing her eyes, the eldest elder sighed. I am still interested to see Qin Nan, what he is going to do. The elder watched the guy closely. Qin Nan's gaze was filled with power that could burst out at any moment. He always had backup options. Young Master Qin Nan, why are you looking at our family so viciously? Do you really want to kill us all? You don't think we'll just let you do this? Fang Rulong said. Is what Fang Rulong said really true? Bai Heng adjusted his glasses in confusion. Elder Yuai Hung, I have no intentions of revenge. I understand that this is just a misunderstanding by young master Fang Rulong. If I cause him problems, please forgive me right away. Don't worry. Despite your insignificant soul, you have good manners. Let's forget about it, Elder Bai Hung noted. It's boring to change your attitude towards Qin Nan, at least for a day. If I become a student of the mystical elders, I will definitely cripple him, but I will not kill him. Let him suffer. We continue the selection. The next fight is between Qin Nan of the Qin family and Fang Yu of the Fang family. Fang Yu, fourth grade golden soul, the second level of body hardening. What can you do to me with such an insignificant first class soul? He asked Qin Nan. The guy didn't even have time to finish speaking before he was already cut to pieces by Qin Nan's sword. A light and accurate blow left no chance for evasion. What? He killed Fang Yu? Fang Rulong asked. His sword was so fast that I would not have had time to dodge his attack. I agree with young master Fang Rulong. Garbage has no place among us. Moreover, I have friends and enemies. If anyone wants to harm me or my family, I will give it back to them double. Chin Nan continued to chant loudly. I will kill anyone who tries to touch me. The disciples from the Fang family became a little gloomy. Is this young master Chin Nan from a small family in Lin Shui City brave enough to mock me? Boy Han said. Chin Nan, do you even understand what you did just now? Elder Bai Heng asked, adjusting his glasses. I more than understand, the guy answered. I agree with young master Zhulong's words. Garbage needs to be eradicated. Only he wounded his opponent, and I thought that only death can repay for my insignificance. Moreover, there is no such rule between students during a duel that prohibits killing, is there? Chin Nan asked Elder Bai Heng. This loser has completely lost his fear. How dare he talk to Elder Bai Heng so brazenly, thought Chang Kun. Okay, great. For the first time, some loser with a first-class golden soul is directly opposing me. The elder is very shocked. Remember, Elder Bai Hung shouted, my word is law. If you don't agree with him, then accept your death, and not only you, but also the entire Qin family. Qin Tian's father was very worried about his son. Qin Nan carefully, he shouted, he attacks with his unique ability. Bai Heng, are you done? Or are you still planning to continue your performance? The eldest lady asked rudely. Senior sister Xiao, what are you talking about? After hesitating, Bai Heng turned around sharply. A little discouragement and awkwardness was visible on his face. Everything this young master said is correct. It was a duel. Their origin does not matter. So what if he killed someone? This means that his opponent was too weak. Now just sit back and watch the fights, Elder Xiao ordered rudely. She was angry and did not want the fights to be stopped again due to quarrels and disagreements. Why did Madame Xiao Qing Shui interfere? Does she really have plans for this Qin Nan? Looks like I can't kill this guy today, Bai Hung thought. This piece of garbage angered Elder Bai Heng but is still alive and shares the same air with us. Where does he get so much impudence from? Chang Kun was angry. Master Bai Heng's strength is at its peak of rebirth. How terrifying she is. If I didn't have the 8th grade war god's golden soul, I would most likely die from the pressure. Apparently Elder Bai Heng is really on the side of the Fang family. It seemed like it was a cunning plan to use Elder Bai Heng to humiliate our family. I won't just leave it like that, Chin Nan thought. Since the Wang family is planning to destroy my family, I will make them pay and destroy their entire family. These thoughts haunted Chin Nan. This Lady Xiao stopped Elder Bai Heng with just a few words. This means that in the sect of mystical elders, she ranks above him. Continue the fights, Madame Xiao said loudly. We are more interested in the second round of selection. This loser from the Qin family dared to kill my disciple. I will take revenge on him for this. He will no longer walk on the holy land of Lin Shui City. Hatred filled Chapter 7 and Fang Li. Fang Rulong is trying to stop his father, he says. 
Father, calm down, don't be reckless. We will have time to take revenge. However, we should change the plan. There is nothing more we can do while Elder Xiao is watching us. Fang Li was shaking a little with the desire to kill Qin Nan. Okay, let him live a little longer, the head of the Fang family said quietly. Qin Nan entered the arena and stood waiting for his next opponent to rise. It was Fang Huo's young disciple. Another one of their family. Looks like today is a good day for me to get my revenge. Fang Huo is the third genius of the Fang family. Even if the second genius Fang Yu was easily defeated by this scum, what would happen to Fang Huo? Will he even have a chance to win? Confidence filled Qin Nan. He was eager to fight for the sake of retribution and preserving the honor of his family. The wind scattered around. Something is very scary to me. Furious fear permeated the young disciple Fang Huo. It was clear from his appearance that he was not ready to fight Qin Nan. Even Fang Yu was killed by this guy. I can't stand against him. I'm not his opponent. If I fight him, I will end up like Fang Yu. Before he could say that he was giving up, Fan Huo quickly flew out of the arena. While his body was in the air, Qin Nan delivered a precise and very powerful blow to his opponent. Blood scattered all over the place in front of his family. As young master Fang Rulong said, garbage has no right to exist. They also have no right to surrender. The only way out for him is death. He killed another one of my family geniuses. I'll tear him to pieces. Rage and hatred reached the aisle. Fang Li could no longer contain his emotions. Qin Nan struck a second, final blow, which finally cut Fang Huo into pieces. Cancers of blood flowed through the arena. Fang Rulong, just like his father, was furious at what he saw. Live a little longer, Qin Nan. I will never forget what you did to my brothers. What do I hear? You condemn me, although you yourself maimed a member of my family. Moreover, who are you to judge me? If you are unhappy, then fight me. And if your strength is not enough, then stand and be silent. Fan Rulong, do you think you are a young talent? Chin Nan asked. Before Chin Nan had time to finish speaking, Fang Rulong pounced on him and raised his fiery fist to strike our hero. Fights are strictly prohibited, the judge said. If you continue, you will leave the selection immediately, and you will never be able to take part in it again. Fan Rulong stopped abruptly. I could barely resist. I'll let you live a little longer. You'll see. Your turn will come. The judge told whoever won the first round to come forward. The guys took a step forward. The following qualified for the second round. Qin Nan, Fan Rulong, Qin Chang Kun, Qin Yan Ling, and Qin Da Lun. All the other geniuses of the Fang family were killed. These animals, leaving us with only Fang Rulong. I'll finish him off. Qin Nan, now that the first round is over, I would like to see what you can show in the second. He only has a sixth grade golden soul. Why show off like that? I have an eighth grade golden soul. Let's see how I beat you. Fan Rulong, don't you dare mock us. Do you really think that all the disciples of the Qin family are useless? Let's see what class your soul is, since you're so impudent. Since when did such a bunch of losers fall on my head? Who even gave you permission to contact me, you scum? Chang Kun could not restrain himself and released his energy. The guy nearby jumped back a little. Okay, enough arguing, Elder Bai Heng shouted loudly from the balcony. The rules for the second round are extremely simple. All you have to do is show us your soul. Free the warrior's soul. This loser dared to contradict me with the support of Chief Xiao. After everyone shows their soul, everyone will understand how Qin Nan is a loser. Let me. Tale of Chang Kun. He was fired up and eager to move forward. He wanted to show off his talent to the Wu Yin family as soon as possible. Chen Kun released his warrior soul. A huge striped tiger appeared in front of everyone. His aura was inspiring and he was truly considered a talent. Fifth grade beast golden soul. He should be good for kills. If he is taught martial techniques and unity with the beast, he will become even stronger. Chang Kun leaned over to thank Elder Xiao for her comment and encouragement in his endeavors. I demonstrated mine, now it's your turn. I have already seen Qin Nan's soul, so the soul of the young master of the Fang family attracts my interest. Qin Chang Kun, let me tell you something first. Nobody gave a loser like you the right to talk to me. With a smile on his face, Qin Nan joked, I agree with Fan Rulong's words. Fang Rulong kicked young master Qin Nan in the ass. It looked a little fun and funny. Just wait, a very angry Chang Kun shouted at the guys. When I become the disciple of the mystic elders, I will beat you both to death, he threatened them. 
Today, let me show you who the real genius of Lin Shui City really is, Fang Rulong said. Lightning mood, Fang Rulong shouted loudly. His soul awakened. All the spectators looked at this with open mouths. A huge crushing weapon fell on Chang Kun and the Qin family disciples standing nearby. From such a powerful attack, the arena cracked. Qin Nan stood motionless. Gusts of wind passed around the young master. This is all thanks to his body hardening. A look of confusion appeared on Qin Tian's face. How was he able to awaken the soul of a sixth grade warrior? This simply cannot happen, Qin Teba said. It's simply unthinkable. He is stronger than Qin Chang Kun. The Fang family's disciples began to shout loudly in support of their genius, Fang Rulong. The young master is our pride. He is the genius of our family. First of all, I want to apologize to everyone. Only my father and the elders of the Fang family knew about my awakened soul class, Fang Rulong said. Well said. In the entire Lin Shui city, Fang Rulong is the main genius. Keep it up, Bai Heng shouted from the stands. What do you think of this guy, Elder Xiao? Not bad. Golden soul of the sixth grade. He has every chance of becoming a martial ancestor. I didn't expect to see such a talented student in such a small town. I didn't even think that Fang Rulong could awaken the sixth grade golden soul. It looks like the Qin family has lost, Elder Qin Tian noted. Does heaven really want the Qin family to die? Is Madame Xiao Qing Shui no longer on the side of the Qin family? Now let me demonstrate how worthless the Qin family is, Bai Hung thought. Chang Kun was too shocked by what he saw. His eyes were filled with surprise and despair. How could you awaken the soul of a sixth grade warrior? Didn't you just throw mud at me? You really thought you had even the slightest chance against me. It was not in vain that I told you that you have no right to even talk to me. There is no place for you in this world. Losers like you, Chang Kun, shouldn't even breathe the same air as me. Fang Rulong released his sixth grade warrior soul again and unleashed it on Chang Kun. Elder Xiao, please stop him. Chang Kun loudly begged for mercy. Soi's soul may be below grade, but it is not that weak. Am I still considered a rare genius? Fang Rulong's hammer slowly descended on the young genius of the Qin family. He looked at it and couldn't do anything. He already thought that he was finished. High-ranking skill, white tiger fury. That's all Chang Kun was capable of. He hesitated and was unsure of his abilities. As a result, Fang Rulong's hammer struck the young soul of the warrior Chang Kun from top to bottom. His white tiger could not defeat the soul of sixth grade Fang Rulong. Chang Kun knelt in front of young master Fang Rulong. He asks him in tears not to kill and to let him live. Fang Rulong looked at Chang Kun like he was trash. I don't even need a worthless servant like you. You're just a loser. Zhu Long, Fang Li shouted. There is no need to kill him. This loser may still be useful to us if he joins our clan. I don't think they will take revenge on us after you become a disciple of the mystic elder sect. Thank you, master. Thank you so much for your mercy. I, Chin Chang Kun, will never betray the Fang family. I will do everything in my power to support the Fan family. Elder Chin Tian was perplexed by what was happening. It was unthinkable. Did Chin Chang Kun really betray our family and his father to Chin Tebu? Why are you, Chin Tian, surprised? Our Fang family held back for a very long time to defeat your pathetic Chin family. I'll only give you one chance. Take the example of Chin Chang Kun. Betray your Qin family and join us in the Fang family. Whoever does this, we will give you life. Otherwise, you will meet your death. The Qin family disciples were disheartened by what they heard. Confusion and fear were visible on their faces. What will happen next and what should they do? They did not know. Chapter 7, Fan. I will follow my son Qin Chang Kun's decision. I wish to join the Fang family and will do my best to achieve its goals. Quite a few students began to defect to the Fang family. They had been talking about leaving the Qin family for a long time. The loyal friends of the Qin family remained standing next to their head, Qin Tian. They were shocked by what was happening. They definitely did not expect this. Qin Tian, how about you? This is all your family, which you have invested in over the past ten years. One word of mine was enough for them to betray you. What about the rest of your family? Will you remain loyal to your family and your head, Qin Tian? I'm giving you another chance to join my F. Dawen family. If you refuse, do not ask for an easy death after this. You will have nowhere to run. The other students who betrayed the family screamed. You are losers, but quickly ran over to us. I will kill you first if you do not come over to our side. 
I am very grateful to you for your loyalty, said Elder Chin Tian. However, you should go over to the Fang family's side, since our family is finished. Patriarch, don't say anything more. We won't leave you. We are with you until the end of our days. We swore allegiance to you. One of the students answered, I am grateful to my family for everything they have done for me. Why should I betray you? I'm not asking for much influence, but at least I act on my beliefs. I am Chin Li. My life is worthless. So why should I be afraid of death? The disciples who remained in the Chin family began to shout loudly, Only death can separate us. Only death can separate us. Who do you think you are? You're just a bunch of losers. You have no right to control your life. In just a moment, I will make you beg for an easy death. Chin Nan, I remember you spoke arrogantly about my family. I will not rush to kill you. I want you to watch me become a disciple of the mystic elder sect. Two elders. Fang Rulong addressed. Am I worthy of becoming a disciple of the mystic elder sect? I have a request for you. Help me restrain the Chin family so that I can kill them, thereby demonstrating my soul in the matter. Fang Rulong, you are truly your family's talent and worthy of being a disciple of the mystical sect. But in future, be more restrained. Excessive cruelty can hinder your development. Elder Xiao, I have to disagree with you. His soul is perfect for murder. Why bother him? Bai Heng said. Elder Xiao, Fang Rulong awakened the sixth grade golden soul. It is logical that he will become our student. I don't understand why you continue to protect this family of losers. So what if he kills one of the family members? Bai Heng, there is no need for sarcasm. I made it clear. I protect Chin Nan and his seven. Do you dare to stand up to me? Adjusting his glasses, Bai Heng said. Calm down, Elder Xiao, I was just joking. He blushed a little and felt awkward. I didn't think that Madame would be so protective of Chin Nan. Does she really have some connection with his family? Bai Heng thought. I ask everyone to shut up, Chin Nan said loudly. I have something to add to your words. He stood in the middle of the arena. His appearance inspired fear. Speak, Mrs. Xiao said. We are all listening to you carefully. She fixed her gaze on the young man. I have a question for Elder Bai Heng. Is it true that a person who becomes a disciple of the mystical elders has the right to destroy a simple family? Of course, disciples of mystic elders are highly respected. The death of ordinary people does not bother us. Bai Heng answered rudely and with a grin. I understand then, Elder Bai Heng, I have a second question for you. I hope you can answer it, Chin Nan said. I thought that the results of the second round would only be decided after everyone showed their warrior soul. How was Fang Rulong selected as a disciple in front of me and the other two members that she had not yet been shown? Don't waste our time. There is no need to continue the selection. Only Fang Rulong is fit to be a disciple of the Mystic Elders sect, Mrs. Xiao said. Elder, Chin Nan objected loudly. I don't agree with you. The selection is not finished yet. According to the rules, it must continue, at least until we show our souls. Fang Rulong laughed loudly. Okay, I agree with what you said. The selection must continue. My rank six golden soul is not strong enough. Perrin slowly turned to Elder Xiao and bowed. I wish the selection would continue as everyone has not yet shown their souls. I can't consider my victory fair. Of course, the test must continue. Bai Heng noticed. Otherwise, it will be a great loss for us to miss out on the great talent of Lin Shui City. Moreover, we must follow the rules. Fine, Mrs. Xiao replied with a sigh. At the end of the day, you prefer fairness, so I'll go with it. Show us your soul, Chin Nan. Chin Nan, you will still remain a loser. Without Madame Xiao's protection, you and your entire family will perish. Fang Rulong thought with a smirk on his face. Continue the selection, Bai Heng said. The remaining students, please show the class of your soul. I'm extremely curious if any of you will have a grade higher than sixth. Chin Nan stood firm and determined. He was not to be embarrassed. The remaining two students decided to give up. They were afraid to continue participating. Chin Nan, the two geniuses of the Chin family have already given up. Only you remain. Show your worthless soul quickly. I don't understand where you get so much courage, Fang Rulong mocked. Chin Nan, stop wasting our time, Elder Bai Hung objected. Hurry to show your warrior soul, otherwise just give up. Hearing the elder's words, Chin Nan laughed loudly. A pronounced smile remained on his face. Determination was visible in his eyes. There was nowhere to retreat. Holding his hand, Chin Nan said, Do you know how long I've been waiting for this day? 
Finally, this moment has come when I can show you the real soul of a warrior. Chin Nan was inflamed. Golden lights began to surround him. He screamed loudly. Behold the true soul of the god of war. A tall pillar of fire hit the sky sharply. It was so high that it was hidden far behind the clouds. All the spectators were amazed by the power of Chin Nan's aura. Golden soul of the god of war, sixth grade, Chin Nan continued to shout loudly. Behold my true power. I'll show you who the real loser is here. I won't let you mock my Chin family anymore. The Fang family disciples stood there dumbfounded. They definitely didn't expect this. The soul of a sixth grade god of war warrior is an extremely rare power that can only be obtained by a select few. Family elder Chin Tian smiled. He was very proud of his son. Heaven has not forgotten about my family, Father Tian said loudly. Now it's no wonder that he was able to achieve unity with the sword so quickly, Uncle San said. The Chin family is saved. San continued to scream. The young master is the golden soul of the sixth grade. The young master is so incredible and strong. Out of delight, the young maid began to blow kisses towards Chin Nan. Behind the young master from the Chin family stood a large soul of the god of war in a brightly fiery plate armor. Fan Rulong was horrified by his power and took a couple of steps back. How is this possible? Fang Rulong screamed in hysterics. How did you get such a strong soul? The awakening ceremony was watched by the entire Chin family. You awakened a first-class golden soul. This simply cannot happen. Chin Nanya was simply filled with confidence and pride in her family. The smiles on the faces of the Chin family brought him joy and inner peace. A loud scream was heard from the balcony. Shut up, Mrs. Xiao said. Fang Rulong became extremely nervous. He understood that his status as a student of the mystical elders was under threat. No wonder he dared to kill so many geniuses of the Fang family, and even didn't care about Bang Hang's words. That's why he was so calm all this time, Madame Xiao thought. So that's what he relied on. Elder Xiao continued to think. No wonder he interested me from the very beginning. Elder Bai Heng. I now think that Chin Nan is more suitable for our mystic elder sect. What do you say to this now? Mrs. Xiao asked. Didn't Fang Li tell me that Chin Nan is only a first grade golden soul? Where did he get the sixth grade from? What's going on here? Bai Heng thought awkwardly. Chin Teba and Chin Chang Kun were confused. They were very concerned about what was happening. Impossible. I am the top talent of the Chin family. Where did he get the golden soul of the sixth grade? They continued to repeat. I refuse to believe it. Why should Chin Nan become the sect's disciple? He's just a loser. There must be some kind of trick here. He can't have a sixth grade golden soul? Fang Rulong objected. So I demonstrated my warrior soul as you asked, Fang Rulong. Are you still not convinced? Chin Nan asked. Of course not. Fang Rulong was in earnest. You're just a loser. You just can't be a genius. This is impossible. Very good. Then let's continue. The young master could no longer be stopped. Purposefulness could be read from his face. Seven golden rays, golden soul of the god of war. Tremendous power emanated from Chin Nan. His soul was ready to fight at any moment. Now answer me. Are you still not convinced of my strength? Do you want to check? Chin Nan asked. Everyone looked at what was happening and admired. Chin Nan radiate dazzling light. His soul was simply unusually large. All the spectators with their mouths open could not take their eyes off what was happening. They were stunned and at the same time, discouraged. Chin Chang Kun fell to his knees and began to speak in despair. Now I'm definitely finished. He's clearly stronger than me. I shouldn't have told him so many nasty things. Fan Chang Kun was also shocked by what was happening. He was literally a couple of steps away from becoming a disciple of the sect of mystical elders. The boy's face became covered with sweat. He began to shake a little. Fear began to envelop Fang Rulong. Chin Chang Kun continued to kneel. His father, Chin Teba, stood next to him. They both looked scared. Joy and hope for a better, great future were visible on the faces of the young maid, Elder Chin Tian and Guard San. Madame Xiao blushed a little. She was thinking in her head. Eighth grade golden soul? And you, Chin Nan, good, hit it all the time. The elder admired. Chin Nan stood in the middle of the arena. He clenched his hands into fists and bowed. Elder Xiao. I did not intentionally hide this. I hope for your understanding. With my eighth grade golden soul 
Am I worthy of becoming a disciple of the mystic elders' sect? We only have one disciple position in our sect. Now as the external elder of the mystic elders' sect, I declare Chin Nan the winner, as well as the outer disciple of the mystic elders' sect. Madame Xiao shouted loudly. The head of the Chin family continued to admire his son. Just think, Chin Nan managed to reach this level. This is truly my beloved son. I don't agree with this, Fang Rulong shouted loudly. You don't deserve to be their student. Only I am worthy of this honor. Chin Nan approached Elder Bai Hen with a question about whether a disciple of the mystical elders could kill any ordinary people. Bai Heng confirmed Chin Nan's words with a nod of his head. He offered his help in dealing with the guy's remaining enemies. The Fang family disciples heard the elders' answer and were very scared. They began to shake as their lives were now threatened in the form of the young master, Chin Nan. Chin Chang Kun and Chin Teba were shocked. They did not understand what awaited them in the future. Since their coup suffered defeats, the young master understood everything and said that the Fang family disciples knew what happened today and what exactly they wanted to do to the Chin family. Chin Nan shouted loudly. He wanted to get a clear answer from the Fang family that would suit him. The boy was filled with rage. Chin Chang Kun tried to rectify the situation with a malicious smile on his face. He began to justify his betrayal by saying that he wanted to restore the Chin family after its collapse. He also blamed the Fang family for everything. Chin Nan turned around sharply and in a rude voice ordered Chin Chang Kun to shut his filthy mouth. For a few seconds, it seemed that the young master would simply cut this impudent traitor in half. When Chang Kun saw his eyes, he decided not to say another word, because he was worried about his worthless life. Chin Nan said that there was no point in explaining anything to him, since he saw and heard everything. Your attempt to split our Chin family has definitely failed. You tried, although I asked you not to. Listen carefully, everyone. From now on, everyone who betrayed the Chin family is no longer a part of it. They definitely didn't expect this. This is more humiliating than being killed. I'll give you time until the incense stick burns out. You should all leave Lin Shui City and stop your development. From now on, the path to the city is closed to you. If you disobey my words, you will know my true wrath. Under Bai Hang's supervision, the Fang family's people, along with Chin Tiba and the others, followed Chin Nan's orders and left Lin Shui City. Soon, the event that occurred at this selection of mystic elder sect disciples spread throughout the entire Lin Shui city. The guy whom everyone had recently called a loser turned out to be an extremely skilled warrior with the soul of a sixth grade god of war. The Fang family, one of the strongest families, was kicked out, making the Qin family the main one in Lin Shui city. Undoubtedly, this news shocked all residents of the city. In the Chin family meeting hall, a meeting was held regarding further developments. They were discussing the development and youth of a young disciple of the mystic elder sect. Elder Chin Tian was very happy. He could not believe that it was his son who would become a disciple of the sect. What a strong and fair son he raised. The old man was stroking his beard. Madame Xiao tried to find out the real truth, which actually allowed Chin Nan to acquire the golden soul of the god of war. Father also picked up on Madame Xiao's curiosity, since he also did not know that his son had the soul of the god of war. Confusion froze on his face. When I was 14 years old, I was struck by lightning while training. After this incident, I received a special technique, but it turned out to be useless and could only hide the real class of the soul. Therefore, at the awakening ceremony, everyone saw a first-class soul. Loud cheers could be heard from the crowd. It now became clear to everyone why Chin Nan had been such a genius since childhood. It can be concluded that Chin Nan achieved such strength and technique through training and not blind luck. Chin Nan explained why he hid his strength. He met Fang Shui in the mountains. From her, he learned about the Fang family's plan and hastened to prevent them. Bai Heng tried to justify himself to everyone present. He said that the Fang family had tricked him. If Chin Nan had explained everything to him in advance, he would have dealt with the Fang family right away. Madame Xiao informed the young disciple of the mystic elder sect that he needed to finish all his business in the city as soon as possible, since they needed to set out in two days. Chin Nan's father stood up and loudly said that Chin Nan could set out tomorrow. He doesn't have to worry the Chin family is no longer in danger. 
Chin Nan promised to visit all the people close to him whenever he had free time. He also added that he would not waste time and would hit the road tomorrow. Elder Chin Nan was glad that they had successfully resolved all the issues that they faced. He offered to give a short tour of the Chin family's grounds to the arriving guests from the sect. Bai Heng was embarrassed to attend this meeting, so he hurriedly left the room. However, he was forced to stay late because he wanted to talk about Chin Nan's training. The elder adjusts his glasses a little nervously. The weather was sunny outside, and the residents of Lin Shui were walking along the bridge. Flowers surrounded the rivers and bloomed wildly. Madame Xiao looks at Chin Nan sweetly. A slight smile does not leave her face. You can see how the young master blushed a little from embarrassment. Chin Nan was a little confused. He couldn't understand why young Madame Xiao kept staring at him. The elder, in turn, did not think that she could embarrass the guy. Continuing to look at Chin Nan, the girl said that there is no need to call her big sister since Chin Shui suits her better. Chin Shui noticed that Chin Nan had obtained a special technique that allowed him to hide his soul class. Chin Nan confirmed her words with a nod. The young lady asked Chin Nan to confess whether he really only had an eighth grade golden soul. Chin Nan froze a little and thought, Could the elder really notice something in my soul? The boy answered a little awkwardly that there was no point in hiding his true strength, since he, as a student of the mystical elders, gets access to more resources for training, thanks to which he can improve his skills. Madame Xiao realized that there was no point in hiding anything. Chin Nan breathed a sigh of relief and thought that he should be careful with Elder Xiao. She's too perceptive. The lady once again turned to Chin Nan and said that he should not rely only on the mystic elder sect. He should train hard and cultivate himself. The guy bowed and politely thanked Madame Xiao for her advice. Surely he won't get tired of sitting idly by. Only training can awaken even greater strength. The main gate of Lin Shui City. A large number of people gathered to see off their disciple, Chin Nan. The guy stood in bewilderment. He could not understand what was happening and why so many people had gathered. Chin Tian's father said with a smile on his face that he did not call these people. They came of their own free will to say goodbye to you and wish you a good journey. Shouts of delight surrounded the Chin family. People said loudly that their children would be equal to Chin Nan. Chin Tian also added that Chin Nan should not be afraid of difficulties and obstacles. By taking one timely step, he will be on his own path of improvement. Chin Nan bowed respectfully to his father and thanked him for his parting words. He said he would never forget about them. Our heroes hit the road. Elder Bai Heng said that it would take up to nine days. Chin Nan was very surprised. Clenching his fist, Chin Nan said that he did not want to waste a minute and would train on the way to the residence of the mystic elder's sect. Closing her eyes, Madame Xiao slightly corrected Chin Nan's words. She noticed that he should not train on the go, since the energy that he absorbs will interfere with the hardening of his body. Chin Nan froze for a few seconds. Thanks to Madame Xiao's advice, he realized that while he was walking all this time, he was training in vain, and therefore there was no result. Elder Xiao suggested taking the scroll with the eight mystic steps technique, since she noticed that Chin Nan did not have a movement technique, and brute strength is not always useful without dexterity of movement. Chin Nan felt a little awkward and scratched the back of his head nervously. He felt that Elder Chin Shui wanted to test him again. Mrs. Xiao throws the scroll to Chin Nan and says that she doesn't need it at all, and it will be of more use to him. The guy, in turn, awkwardly tries to catch the scroll. Chin Nan catches the scroll and thanks Elder Xiao. He was very grateful to her, since she defended him at the selection, and now she is trying to teach him new techniques. He swore to himself that he would repay her debt when he became stronger. Elder Xiao continued teaching the lesson. She added that Chin Nan should focus on training the eight mystical steps since he had already achieved unity with the sword. He only lacked movement speed. Chin Nan thanked Chin Shui again. He also said that he wanted to evaluate right now how good these eight mystical steps are. As soon as the guy opened the scroll with the technique and began to read, it began to glow with bright fire. His aura of concentration was simply amazing. Chin Shui could not even imagine that Chin Nan would be able to enter her own world so quickly and achieve a state of unity with the mind. Bai Heng's mind was haunted by one question. Why is Chin Nan so good in so many aspects? At least he only has an eighth-grade golden soul. Elder Bai Heng calmed himself down. 
he understood that things could not continue like this. He even had to grovel before Chin Nan so as not to reveal his plan. Bai Heng continued to think. As our heroes continued on their way, Elder Bai Heng, with a smile on his face, offered Elder Xiao a bet to have some fun along the way. While young brother Chin Nan is studying the movement technique, let's make a guess about how long it will take him. Whose option is closest to the truth is the winner. Elder Xiao supported the bet that Bai Heng offered her. She even bet a hundred Xiantian pills. From the name, it is clear that they are used to develop their skills in the Xiantian sphere. Elder Bai Heng was very surprised by this bet. Because a hundred Xiantian tablets are equivalent to 10,000 tempering tablets. Even for Elder Bai Heng, this is a very large amount, which he was not very willing to give away. With a slightly dull expression on his face, Bai Heng still agreed to the deal. He had nowhere to go since he proposed the bet, and Madame Xiao just raised the stakes. At one time, Bai Heng had already seen a young genius with the same indicators as Qin Nan, and it took him one day to comprehend the knowledge of the eight mystical steps. Therefore, he set the fact that Qin Nan would need one day. Hearing the elder Bai Heng's bid, Elder Xiao said with a smile on her face that she gave eleven hours for Qin Nan to learn this technique. Bai Heng was perplexed. He thought that Madame Xiao was recklessly putting Qin Nan on the same level as warriors who had a ninth grade soul. Adjusting his glasses, Bai Heng thought that he would easily win this bet. Since Qin Nan is unlikely to cope with the task in such a short time, our heroes decided to make a short stop and take a break through meditation. Qin Nan stood out a little. He was burning with fire. After five hours of intense training, Qin Nan had an epiphany. His training has come to an end. It was a record. No one has ever done this before. Bai Heng was once again amazed by Qin Nan's skills. He couldn't believe his eyes. Was this guy really able to learn the eight mystical steps so quickly? Even Madame Ching Shui was amazed at the speed of learning. She thought that it was not in vain that she supplied a hundred Ziantian pills. Qin Nan felt incredible strength within himself. He realized that from that moment on, he became even faster. Combined with the unity with the sword, it will be the perfect combination. Turning around, Qin Nan saw two extremely surprised faces. He couldn't understand what was happening to the elders. Had he done something wrong? Mrs. Qin Shui decided to explain to the young student why she was smiling. She said that she won the bet because she bet that Qin Nan would have time to master the movement technique in 11 hours. From Bai Heng's face, one can conclude that he is not very eager to give away a hundred Xiantian pills. Reluctantly, he handed the bottle of pills to Mrs. Xiao. While Elder Bai Heng was handing over the bottle, Qin Nan noticed this. He smelled them and realized that the concentration of Xiantian pills was ten times that of tempering pills. A sweet thought flashed through Qin Nan's mind. He thought that if he ate a hundred of these Xiantian pills, what grade would his soul then become? Elder Bai Heng invited Qin Nan to demonstrate his progress in learning the skill. Since Bai Heng himself had never seen this skill before, he had only heard about it. Excitement flared in the guy's eyes and he wanted to try the eight mystical steps technique in practice. Qin Nan literally disappeared from view in a matter of seconds and appeared right in front of Bai Heng's face. He, in turn, was scared. He did not expect to see such speed. Madame Xiao watched Qin Nan's demonstration. She respectfully praised the guy for being able to master a complex technique so quickly. It seemed that Bai Heng was about to burst from excitement. He turned very red and his teeth made a terrible grinding sound. Qin Nan turned to the elder Bai Heng and invited him to make a bet with him. The bet between elders Bai Heng and Madame Xiao interested the guy a little. It can be seen that elder Bai Heng was a little nervous. He was not ready for such a proposal. He was interested in the question, what will they bet on? Qin Nan explained that there were still nine days before the end of their journey, and during this time he wanted to master the technique of the eight mystical steps to the highest level. Qin Shui was stunned by such a proposal because she understood that even the greatest geniuses could not comprehend the technique to the highest level in such a short period of time. This takes months, or even years. Adjusting his glasses and smiling maliciously, Elder Bai Hang agreed to the bet and suggested raising the stakes. He offered a hundred tablets to Xiantian if he failed the task. Elder Qin Shui objected sharply and said that Qin Nan would not agree to such a bet. Qin Nan hurried to reassure Madame Xiao. He made her understand that she shouldn't worry so much, 
and he understands all the risks and just wants to motivate himself to develop. The young disciple Chin Nan told Elder Bai Heng that he did not have the Xiantian tablets now, but he could return them if he lost a little later when he earned them. After Elder Bai Heng accepted the terms of the bet, Chin Nan bowed, thereby agreeing to the terms. Without wasting a second, Chin Nan began intensive training of the skill. Eight mystical steps. Elder Bai Heng smiled as he was confident of winning this bet. Great geniuses spent months trying to reach the highest threshold of knowledge. It's unlikely that this brat will succeed, he thought. Throughout the day it seemed that Chin Nan was possessed, repeating the same movement over and over again. There was no stopping him. Wiping the sweat from his forehead after a tiring workout, Chin Nan realized what the eight mystical steps technique was. This is a very refined movement skill. Upon reaching the highest threshold of understanding the technique, you can become an illusion for the enemy, so that he does not understand where Chin Nan is and where his copy is. Bai Hang mimicked Chin Nan. He said there was no point in trying so hard he still needed rest. Even great geniuses cannot train to eat a day. Sipping hot tea, Madam Chin Shui agreed with Bai Hang and invited Chin Nan to sit down and rest. Turning towards the elders, Chin Nan said that he was not tired and was ready to continue training further. Once you understand the meaning of each of the eight mystical steps, you can combine and combine them as desired. As the thoughts continued to flow, his body began to slowly move. He finally began to comprehend the eight mystical steps. Just like Chin Nan said, there are people who were born to learn martial arts. While they are practicing, they do not need food or sleep. Nothing can disturb them. Such people are called dependent warriors. Madam Xiao never thought that she would see a training-addicted warrior with her own eyes. She guessed that Chin Nan would still be able to master the eight mystical steps in nine days. Bai Hang was convinced of his victory. He highly doubted that Chin Nan would be able to achieve success. The sly smile never left his face. For eight days, Chin Nan repeated the same thing, without food, sleep, or anything else. He only had 22 steps left to reach the stage of great success. Wiping sweat from his face, the young student turned to his companions to ask how many days had already passed. Bai Heng sarcastically stated that eight days had already passed, and they were not far from the mystic elders sect. Chin Nan was very surprised. Madame Xiao noticed that Chin Nan had entered a frantic state when he began to practice. She was surprised that the guy didn't notice how many days had passed. Bai Heng suggested that Chin Nan rest before the mystic elders arrived at the sect. He stated that the guy may not give the entire amount if he loses. Chin Nan began to convince Elder Bai Heng of his victory. He said that the hundred tablets would be his. Concentrating, Chin Nan released the energy. His soul of the god of war came out, enveloping him in fiery rays. Bai Heng expressed doubts about Chin Nan's success, because he had never seen a person who could cope with this task so quickly. The young disciple assured Brother Bai Heng that he would teach him something new today. The huge soul of the god of war stood confidently behind him. When Chin Nan closed his eyes, he felt a strong energy flow through his body. He used the eight mystic step skill. Bai Heng, with a smirk on his face, arrogantly imagined how Chin Nan would teach him. He was sure that the guy would disgrace himself today. Having abruptly taken off from the ground, the young student, together with his soul of the god of war, decided to demonstrate the full result of his training. In a matter of seconds, Chin Nan took a huge number of extremely imperceptible steps, as the execution technique provided for. After about three hours, he managed to master 25 mystical steps. His energy was amazing in its strength. Bai Heng and Madame Xiao watched in surprise. They simply couldn't believe their eyes. After releasing the war god soul, Chin Nan felt his understanding increase several times. All his doubts were dispelled. It dawned on him that he understood the secret of the eight mystical steps. It consists of combining hundreds of leg movements into eight steps that have eight different directions. Chin Nan demonstrated his technique. Elder Bai Heng and Madame Xiao watched from the sidelines. The young disciple finished the demonstration and asked Elder Bai Heng if he had learned anything new. Chin Shui asked Chin Nan why his understanding had increased so much after releasing the warrior soul. In response, he smiled and said that his soul was helping him in learning skills. Madame Xiao noted that now Chin Nan should spend more time studying martial skills. She also stated that with his talent and effort, he can create powerful fighting skills. 
The young student apologized to the elder for not telling him about the property of the soul, which in turn played a huge role in improving the skill. Therefore, Chin Nan suggested that he only give 50 pills to Bai Heng. The elder became very excited and said that he would give all 100 Jiantian tablets and even a hundred more on top. He made this decision in order to please Chin Nan, in the hope that he can gain some benefits in the future. It was wise for the young man to refuse such an offer, since fifty Jiantian tablets were enough for him. Bowing down in front of Chin Nan, Bai Hung extended a container of pills towards him. He also said that he could not argue with the winner's decision. Lady King Shui was very happy that Chin Nan did not let her down. She said he has a great chance of doing well in the versatility test. With surprise on his face, the guy asked Mrs. Xiao what she meant by the test of versatility. Bai Heng began to explain to the young master that the versatility test was a competition between the newcomers of the mystic elder sect. He also clarified and emphasized that the competition focuses on the study of the student's temperament and talent. Miss Xiao clarified that the rewards for winning the versatility challenge are quite useful for development. Chin Nan expressed his interest in what kind of geniuses the Mystic Elders sect had recruited this time. After a long time, our heroes arrived at their destination. Indescribable beauty reigned all around. Looking at the building ahead, Chin Nan sighed lightly and said that he was very happy that they had finally arrived. Madame Xiao invited the guy to go inside and meet the students of the Mystic Elders sect. Bai Heng told Chin Nan that students are divided into external, internal, and core. He clarified that the classes of each of them increase as they develop. Thoughtfully peering into the distance, Chin Nan thought about how strong the main disciples of the sect were. After all, he wanted to be a master at the level of a martial emperor. Continuing his story about the sect, Bai Heng said that the outer disciples live in the outer lands, and the inner ones have the opportunity to create their own immortal caves. He also said that the sect has a special hall of life and death. Turning around, Chin Nan asked the elder what he meant by special. Fighting on sect territory is strictly prohibited. Violators face expulsion. This is the purpose of the Hall of Life and Death. Once the two entered the Hall of Life and Death, their lives were no longer protected. The battle ends only after the death of one of the opponents. Chin Nan realized that the Sexta of Mystic Elders was not such a safe place. Because of this, his face was slightly distorted. Bai Heng began to list the main rules of the sect. The first rule is that fighting is strictly prohibited. Secondly, betrayal is unacceptable. Finally, our heroes rose to the square. Powerful energy flew in the air and surrounded her. There were a large number of disciples and sect elders on it. Chin Nan looked at everyone who was present here. He noticed that the weakest of the hundred practitioners were at the fourth level, while the strongest were already at the tenth level. These newcomers to the Mystic Elder Sect are truly unique. Madame Xiao asked Bai Heng not to accompany them any further. Then she herself will lead Chin Nan. And a little later, the Elder will announce the beginning of the test of versatility. After that, she turned to Chin Nan with a request to avoid conflicts with others and shift all worries to her. Her words sounded like caring advice from an older sister, ready to take responsibility for harmony in their relationship. Chin Nan listened carefully and agreed with Chin Shui's request. He followed the lady. Everyone around began to pay attention to Chin Nan and Chin Shui. They wondered who this young man was and why there was such a beauty next to him. One of the guys replies to his comrade that he is stupid and did not understand that this is their elder sister named Zhao Ching Shui, an inner disciple, and also the number one beauty in the mystic elder sect. Then everyone continued to discuss our main character. This kid is only at the fifth level of body tempering. How did he gain the favor of senior sister Xiao? One of the students was angrily surprised. Chin Nan became embarrassed and said, his father was right, that where there are women, there are problems. There was a grain of self-irony in his words, and he added that despite everything, these problems make life interesting and rich. The lady glanced at Nan and asked with a grin if he was scared. There was a slight mockery in her gaze, as if she found pleasure in studying human reactions. After Xiao made fun of him, the boy replied that of course he was not scared. Beauty brings many problems, Chin Nan said as he approached Chin Shui. But it's worth it. After that, he offers to be his mate. She looks at him with surprise. This proposal irritated her. 
and she hit the boy as a sign of refusal. With a smile, she playfully shouted, die at him, as if playing on their usual tone of humor. While the couple was resolving love issues, a man walked towards them. He wondered what had caught the student's attention. He saw Xiao among everyone and understood what was happening. Everyone standing suddenly turned their attention to this character. Why is the lovely Xiao in the company of some boy instead of spending time with Mr. Wu Yang? He wondered out loud. Chin Nan and Chin Shui turned around and looked at him. It was a young man older than them. He had luxurious, long red hair. He was wearing a black kimono. His name was Mo Li. Madame Xiao got angry and told Mo Li that he was an annoying stalker and that he should stop following her and interfering in her personal life. Mo Li was surprised that she called him a stalker, but agreed with it. He began to ask her why she continued to reject him further, because he had both talent and his family on par with Master Wu Yang. Then he invited her to join him. If she agrees, he promises not to bother her, but if she refuses, Madame Xiao did not appreciate the words of the young man who was in love with her. She refused him and told him to get out of here. An evil smile appeared on his face. Clean up? he asked her. He really didn't like her reaction, and it looked like he was planning some kind of dirty trick. These words did not frighten her. She simply stood with her hands folded on her chest. There was an unshakable determination in her steadfastness, as if nothing could shake her inner peace. Chin Nan entered the conversation. With a grin, he asked his name. He added that he had never seen such a shameless guy before. So annoying that Mo Li could still teach him in this matter. Mo Li considered the boy's words impudent. He wondered how the newcomer could be rude to him. I wonder if Chin Nan knows who he is. If he understands correctly, then this is one of the sons of the elders or a disciple, but who cares? Chin Nan now personally asked him if Mo Li knew who he was. There was a note of curiosity and expectation in the question, as if anticipating something interesting. Mo Li's face changed from angry to thoughtful. Try to surprise me, he said in response. Chin Nan advised him to clear his ears and listen to him carefully. He told what his name was and that he was from the kingdom of Loa. He was chosen by Sister Xiao Qing Shui and selected to join the mystic elder sect. In other words, he is her external disciple. Everyone nearby laughed at Chin Nan's words. They were all perplexed that an ordinary external disciple would act like this. Everyone expected it to be some kind of big shot. Mrs. Xiao herself was also not delighted with her student's words. She put her hand to her forehead and quietly cursed something. After Mo Li found out who this guy was, he threatened him to try to keep a low profile. Otherwise, he wouldn't know why he would die. Does Chin Nan really think he is immortal? Now, the mistress stood up for her student. Are you actually threatening my student so directly now? She asked Mo Li. She looked belligerent, and it was clearly shown that anyone who touched her student would have to deal with her. Mo Li narrowed his eyes and slyly told her back that he was not threatening him. Afterwards, he asked her if he was new to the sect. Level 5 body tempering, it looks like she found herself some kind of garbage. Finally, he said that he had also found a genius and would tell him that she would definitely have a good time on the test of versatility. After the scoundrel flew away, Xiao revealed that he was the son of the third elder. He also has a seventh grade golden soul, but his cultivation is at the same level as mistress. This man is incredibly cruel and merciless. He will take revenge to the last. Chin Nan's action was truly reckless in this situation. Her student responded to her words by saying that a person cannot become successful in this world of martial arts by living in security and making compromises. He simply couldn't let him bully Qin Shui. Even if it was the son of the patriarch, he would reprimand him without hesitation. The boy would like to meet him in the hall of life and death if his development was sufficient for this. She smiled and told him that she felt that she was very lucky to meet Qin Nan. Suddenly, in the middle of the formed crowd, a flame broke out. It covered the entire sky and concentrated in the center of the square. Everyone started looking around. No one understood what had happened. Everyone was just guessing what it could be. Chin Nan felt that it was some kind of strong, murderous aura. Maybe you shouldn't worry so much. Everything will become clear soon. A man appeared in the center of this clot of energy. It was a guy. Who was older than the rest? I wonder who else this brought here. It was Lin Zixiao. 
He is a young man with ashen hair and a ponytail. He wore a white robe with a red cloak and had a rank nine golden soul. One of the disciples shouted out that he had heard about Lin Zixiao. This guy reached the eighth level of body tempering three months after awakening. Everyone around was very surprised that a ninth rank warrior was standing in front of them. Lin Zixiao had not yet spoken a word. He raised his hand and the flute flew around him. He pulled her forcefully to catch her in his hand. He walked up to Mrs. Xiao and said that she was a beautiful lady who came down from heaven, like a descendant of a fairy tale celestial maiden, very beautiful. He had no idea that such beautiful girls existed. He stood in front of Lady Qin Shui with a graceful bow, like the epitome of politeness and determination. With a serious look, he invited her to have fun in his company, as if inviting her to adventure. The girl was not very happy with another boyfriend. She lowered her eyes and did not respond to his proposal. He asked the couple, is the reason why Lady Qin Shui doesn't agree is because of this guy? He had just bumped into Brother Mo Li, and he told him that there was some trash hanging around such a beautiful lady. Chin Nan thought that this character was already annoying him. He doesn't really know him yet, but he's already saying nasty things about Nan and taking him for a weakling. When suddenly someone interrupts the conversation again, he was a huge guy, a ninth grade golden soul, nine golden rays, tenth level body hardening. He looked very impressive. Chin Nan began to think to himself that the mystic elder sect was truly worthy of being one of the four major sects. She has gathered the strongest talents from everywhere. Standing right here now are two newcomers with the golden soul of the ninth grade. And these are just those who showed up. Who knows who else will be involved? Our main character smiled slightly because this is exactly what he wanted. The more geniuses, the better he will be. He will rise above them, stepping on each one as if on steps. Lin Zixiao turned to the newly arrived guy. He reproached him for imitating him, and like himself, freeing his soul. In response, he laughed and told this loser to stop talking nonsense. If he is not happy with something, he can get killed in one blow. Lin Zixiao became angry. After all, he was not sure that he could compete with this heavyweight. The fire of doubt burned in his chest, spurring his determination to challenge him. Lin Zixiao admits that Huang Long has evolved more than him. But still, he recommends that he not think that he can be so impudent just because of this. After these words, he decided to frame Qin Nan, saying that he believed that Mo Li was not worth his attention. Qin Nan immediately realized that with these words, Lin Zixiao was planning to redirect Huang Long's attention to him, and thus get away with it. Wan's attention immediately turned to the boy. So even Mo is not worthy of his attention? He asked Qin Nan. Huang was offended by such words about Mo Li and began to insult him in response. An ordinary disciple at the fifth level of body conditioning? Looks like he's nothing more than a disrespectful piece of trash, he told him menacingly. The rest of the guys started talking gloatingly among themselves. Looks like it's going to be a great show, one of them said. This non-entity is too arrogant, he dared to confront Mo Li's elder brother, but now he has fallen under Huang's hot hand. I wonder what will happen next. Lin Zixiao began to think through the options in his head about how Qin Nan would die. After all, nothing dares take his woman. Garbage, Qin Nan said. It has only been twelve days since I awakened my soul, he added. Qin Nan took a fighting stance and energy began to gather around him. Even Huang Long has no right to call him trash. He's going to put him in his place. Our main character showed his strength and showed all the onlookers that he was not an ordinary external student after all. From such a release of energy, small stones around him flew to the side. The students were a little shocked by what they saw. They were surprised that in 12 days he had reached the fifth level of body hardening. Qin Nan can also be called a genius. At a minimum, he must have an eighth grade golden soul. Moreover, wanting the sword means that he has at least reached the stage of sick success in uniting with the sword. No wonder senior sister Xiao Qing Shui is keeping him company. With such strength, Qin Nan can truly compete with Mo Li. He really has potential for the future. Huang Long appreciated the boy's talent. He truly surpasses any genius with a golden soul in the eighth grade. After that, he took back his words that Qin Nan was trash adding that there is something worthwhile in the boy. 
However, Lin Zixiao was still hostile towards Qin Nan. He was not impressed by the boy's skills and that he had a fifth level of body hardening. He still intends to crush him like an ant. Madame Xiao herself had already intervened in the conversation. She convincingly told Lin Zixiao that the meditation place was not the place to insult him. And she answered him in his own words, that she didn't care what level his soul was, even if it was a ninth grade golden soul, she could crush him like an ant. The tense situation began to dissipate. Lin Zixiao began to leave, saying that he should just wait for the test of versatility. To which Qin Nan replied that he should not be shy, because he would accompany him at the end. Madame Xiao told Qin Nan not to worry about Lin Zixiao's threats. If he dared to cause him trouble again, she would again stand up for the student and teach him a lesson. However, the boy was not worried and asked Xiao not to worry. After all, he is not someone who could be mocked. Qin Nan also added that when the time comes, Lin Zixiao will regret his words and actions. Everything has its time. Qin Shui wondered where this boy got so much self-confidence to talk about Lin Zixiao like that. Once again, someone arrived at the training ground. The sky shone with a soft, pleasant glow. Everyone turned around and turned their attention to who was descending there. Lady Qin Shui took a closer look and saw that it was an elder. Everyone turned their gaze to see the elder of the mystic elder sect descending towards them from the sky. Ribbons of aura enveloped him. It was an older man. He had long, already gray hair, which was held together with a hairpin, a luxurious mustache, and goatee. He was dressed in a white robe with gold trim. The elder turned his attention to two students with golden souls from the ninth grade. These were Huang Long and Lin Zixiao, already known to us. He ordered them to work harder as he would personally monitor their progress. They accepted these words with honor and confirmed that they would work even harder to achieve an unprecedented result. The versatility test will take place in 10 days. The elder hopes that everyone is aware of what this test will be like. Everyone should gather here at dawn and wait for his instructions. Also, during these 10 days, all students will be allowed into the skill library to get a chance to select a combat skill. However, Huang and Lin can choose two skills at once. However, any fights or skirmishes are prohibited. Anyone who violates these rules will be immediately expelled from the sect without trial. Lin Zixiao's resentment towards Qin Nan was deeply rooted in her soul. He plans to let him live a couple more days, and when the time comes to test his versatility, he will make him pray for death. The girls surrounded Lin Zixiao, admiring him and ridiculing Qin Nan in every possible way. Madame Xiao watched all this and was dissatisfied with Lin's behavior. Qin Nan said to Mrs. Xiao that this guy is such a hypocrite. Qin Nan asked elder sister to tell him more about the skill library. She told him that this library contained not only combat skills, but also records left by powerful practitioners of the mystic elders' sect. They are truly priceless. Qin Nan thought about what he said about the notes. He was interested in what valuable information could be stored in them. Qin Shui asked Qin Nan to concentrate on his cultivation rather than his fighting skills. She also told him that once he visited the skill library, he would have to leave in five days. She will be waiting for him outside. After speaking, Qin Nan replied that no matter what she worried, he would return in five days. Our hero approached the skill library. It was a very tall building, made in Chinese style. It consisted of six floors and many rooms inside. Qin Nan looked around the skill library outside and was very impressed by its size and beauty. He wanted to quickly enter there and begin to study its contents. Before entering, he met an old man sitting on a chair. There were four other students next to him. Qin Nan decided to approach him. Having examined the old man more closely, he saw in him a rather strong soul. He was already bald, with large eyebrows and a mustache with a goatee. Apparently, he is the library's protector. His strength was even greater than that of the elder on the meditation ground. Qin Nan walked closer to him and introduced himself. He also expressed his respect to him as an elder, to which the old man replied that he was not an elder, a simple old man. Old man Shan asked him to call him next time. After a short introduction, he allowed him to enter the library, to which Qin Nan thanked him. While Qin Nan walked inside, the old man thought that this boy was an interesting child. He was able to feel the power of the guardian while being only at the fifth level of body hardening. 
Chin Nan walked into the first floor of the skill library. There were many bookshelves around. Everything inside was illuminated with special paper lanterns. Our main character immediately drew attention to one of the shelves. It contained both books and several rolled up scrolls. They seemed to have some value worth exploring. Chin Nan's eyes widened. There were at least 10,000 martial skills on the first floor. He had no idea about the cultivation records of powerful practitioners who might be on the second and subsequent floors, but it's too early for him to think about that. First, you need to find something that really fits and is feasible. Chin Nan looked through some of the books and packages, but although they had top class skills, they were not suitable for sword fighting. While Chin Nan was considering what other skills there were, his enemy, Lan Zixiao, entered the room accompanied by three beautiful girls. It seems that this meeting was predetermined by fate. So is it you, Lin Zixiao? Chin Nan turned around and said to those approaching. He said that if Lin Zixiao does not have any problems, then he will go. After this phrase, his offender became angry again. Who do you think you are? Lin Zixiao asked a rhetorical question. The rest began to assent to him. If fighting had not been prohibited, he would have already ground him into powder. Lin Zixiao and his company came closer to the boy and asked where he was rushing and whether he was scared. He told him that at the first meeting he was more self-confident than now, thinking that Chin Nan had an ace up his sleeve. But apparently he was wrong. In response to him, Chin Nan asks where he got such a gift for intimidating people. After all, when Xiao Qing Shui threatened him, he became silent and scared. Lan Zixiao was torn by the impudence of our hero. He didn't want to be spoken to in that tone especially when it's some kind of brat, to which Chin Nan replied that a coward like him is no better than a brat. Thus provoking him further, this angered his opponent even more, and he, shouting that the bastard should die, rushes at him with his fists. He prepared a blow with his right hand, gathering a lot of strength for the blow. Out of nowhere, the library keeper appeared between them. He immediately reminded the fighters that fighting in the skill library is prohibited. Lan Zixiao managed to react in time to the old man's words and thereby managed to stop his strike. He understood that he could be kicked out for such an act. Redirecting his strength from his fist to his legs, he began to stop. If he had not started to stop, most likely the blow would have fallen on the old man himself. When everyone had already stopped, the elder told them that if they had some kind of conflict, they could solve it through a battle of fighting talents. However, if they do not want to participate in this battle of fighting talents and continue to make noise here, then he will be forced to open a case against them and kick them out of the library so that they do not damage or destroy anything here. Chin Nan asked the old man what kind of battle of martial skills this was. He didn't know anything about her yet. After this, the keeper told what kind of competition it was. Each shows a different talent for combat skills from birth. There is a crescent sea stone in the library that can determine whose talent is better. After they listened to the old man, Lan Zixiao invited the boy to decide everything in this battle. At the end, he made a joke about how he wasn't forcing him and that he wasn't even sure that the boy had any fighting skills. Lan Zixiao had the soul of a flame flute, which was capable of killing others with just sound. But the spirit and talent of the owner of the equipment can also enhance the perception. Chin Nan happily accepted his opponent's challenge, and he offered to bet on it. Whoever loses will no longer be able to access the skill library for the rest of his life. The stakes were very high. Everyone present was a little shocked when they heard the proposal. This was a really risky bet, but the reward was great. Honor and dignity. Has he gone crazy? Lin Zixiao thought to himself. Where does he get so much confidence from to offer such a big bet? Is he really hiding something? Lin had these thoughts. Chin Nan asked his opponent again if he had the courage to accept such a challenge, to which his opponent agreed. Each of them was completely confident in their abilities. Let's see who's worth what. The library keeper offered to declare a battle of combat skills if no one objects. Even if someone changes their mind during the battle, the loser will still be banned from entering the skill library for life. The girls who came with Lin Zixiao started making fun of Chin Nan that he was a weakling and would lose. After all, their Lin Zixiao is an incredible genius with a ninth grade golden soul. How could Chin Nan even compare to him? Preparations for the battle of skills have begun. The elder used his power to show the children the crescent sea stone. A huge blue stone appeared in front of the students, like a large block of ice. 
It was really in the shape of a crescent. This is the stone that the elder mentioned earlier. If you place it in your palm, it will begin to glow in different colors, depending on your talent for combat skills. The colors are divided into red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Red will be the lowest grade and purple will be the highest. The old man asked who will be the first to be tested. Lan Zixiao volunteered to be the first to test his talent for fighting skills. He told Qin Nan to open his eyes wide and look at the color that appears. His opponent touched the stone. It began to emit a glow. The color itself was somewhere between green, blue, and blue. The room where everyone was began to light up even more. The stone was still testing the young man's skill. The female disciples who came with Lan Zixiao cried out that the glow was blue. This is a good result. However, this kid's talent for fighting skills still didn't stop at the blue glow. To strengthen himself, he decided to use the power of his flute. After this, the stone glowed with blue rays. By using his tool, he was able to raise his level by one value. Stronger than this could only be the glow of violet rays. The girls who were behind Lan Zixiao were delighted with how strong their boy was. Who would have thought that Lin Zixiao's soul had the ability to enhance perception when learning martial skills? The elder also said a few words about the boy's strength. Being born with a blue level talent and also being able to enhance it to the level of a blue glow is very good. After this, Lan Zixiao asked Qin Nan where his impudence was now and suggested that he touch the stone himself so that everyone would know the color of his talent. However, before that, he tried to humiliate him again, saying that he could give up right now if he kneeled down and bowed to him once. Then he will not force him to keep his word and will allow him to visit the skills library. The elder took into account that among the disciples of the mystic elder sect, there are only three, including Lin Zixiao, who have talent in blue-colored martial arts. Most likely Qin Nan will lose, Shan thinks so. Before touching, Qin Nan said that Lin Zixiao should know his place before laughing at someone. After all, in this world, there will always be someone stronger than him. Do not think that his blue talent is unparalleled. Qin Nan decided to show how naive his opponent was. Lin Zixiao still wondered why Qin Nan was so arrogant, that even now he had the courage to say such words. Does he really think that he can achieve purple talent in combat skills? Chin Nan walked up to the stone and stretched his hand towards it. He first put his fingers to it, and then put his palm completely to it. The stone that determines the talent for combat skills began to glow with red rays. This was the lowest level of skill proficiency. The girls stood in bewilderment at first, and then started laughing with the boy. They already thought that he would show something worthwhile, but not the color red. They continued to joke about how he dared to challenge with such talent. Lin Zixiao stood with his arms crossed. Laughing, he said that he thought the boy would show at least some results. But I never expected that it would be red, the weakest color. Chin Nan just smiled a little at the disciples' words and mockery and asked if his opponent was done with the insults. After that, he focused on his strength and continued to hold on to the stone. Now the stone began to glow first orange, then yellow, after which the color of the stone changed to a green glow. Chin Nan's strength gradually grew, and he released it to test his talent level. The faces of his offenders gradually changed from smiles to bewilderment and grief. They saw the colors change from red to yellow to green, and did not understand what was happening. The girls who accompanied Lan Zixiao were no longer so cheerful. They stood with their mouths open and could not say anything. One of them shouted in horror that the glow was changing from green to blue and then to a blue glow. It didn't stop growing. The smile on Chin Nan's face became more and more blurred. He was confident in his abilities and continued to pass the test. The blue glow gradually turned into purple, and eventually the stone and everything around began to shine with bright purple rays. Elder Shan was not prepared for what he saw. He narrowed his eyes and tried to explain to himself where this boy got so much strength. The library keeper turned to Chin Nan and said that his talent for martial skills had surpassed that of Lin Zixiao and declared him the winner of the battle of martial talents. After that, he thought to himself that many years had passed since the young man showed purple talent in combat skills.
Lan Zixiao lowered his hands and fell to his knees. He was defeated, not understanding how this happened and why Qin Nan had so much strength. Qin Nan answered him with only one phrase, telling him to get out. Now he has no place in this library, and he can climb wherever he wants. However, his opponent did not accept his defeat and continued to insult him further. He clenched his fist and called the boy a bastard who was tired of living. Old man Shan calmed Lan's ardor and stopped him, because Qin Nan won fairly in the Battle of Martial Talents. From now on, Lin Zixiao will not be able to visit the skill library for the rest of his life. If he still dares to come here, his punishment will be death. Still holding a grudge, he intends to take revenge on Qin Nan at the versatility trials, hoping that he would beg him for mercy. Following Lan Zixiao, his girls also left, angry at the boy Qin Nan. But rules are rules and you can't break them. The rest of the students stayed in the library and began to admire Qin Nan's skills. Even Lin Zixiao, who was born with enormous talent in combat skills and awakened the ninth grade golden soul, lost to him. Purple-colored martial talent is considered to be the rarest, even in the mystic elder sect. Old Man Shan invited Qin Nan to walk with him to discuss some details. After all, this is not really the place for such conversations. The boy is happy. I accepted the keeper's offer and followed him. They left the library and headed to a nearby small building. The weather outside was good, quiet, and sunny. Great time to enjoy your victory. They entered it. Qin Nan looked at it from the inside. It was extremely elegant. To which the old man laughed it off telling him to stop flattering because it was very mean of him to build it in such a way. It's time to tell him why he called him here to talk. The reason for this was that Elder Shan had a token for him. With it, he will be able to enter the first and second floors of the skill library whenever he wants. In addition, he will be able to choose any combat skill without time limits. Chin Nan was very happy about this, but he cannot accept the gift until he finds out exactly why he gave it to him to which Sean simply replied that he encourages students with high talent to pursue martial arts skills. If his talent for combat skills is able to manifest the rare phenomenon in the Crescent Moon Sea Stone, then he would like to give him a more significant token to grant him unlimited access to the entire library of skills. Chin Nan was very surprised by the words he heard. He didn't believe he could have unlimited access to the entire library of skills. When it comes to Sea Crescent Stone, there is an eighth color that stands above the previous seven. Next, Sean asked the boy if his talent for fighting skills was capable of demonstrating this rare phenomenon. Chin Nan will try to do this with soul release. He feels that by relying on the power of his soul, he will manifest this rare phenomenon. It won't be a problem for him. Is this so? The elder asked him again. He didn't know that the boy's soul could also increase his talent for fighting skills. However, even if his soul can do this, it is still not enough for this to manifest a rare phenomenon on the crescent moon sea stone. Even the core disciples were unable to achieve this. Chin Nan prepared to release his soul. He was 100% confident in his abilities. Having freed his soul, he touches the stone again. Everything around is covered in glow. The stone began to crackle strangely. The elder wondered what kind of soul he had. And will Chin Nan really be able to awaken a rare phenomenon with her help? While testing its strength, the stone glowed very strongly and began to crack more and more. There was so much energy that the stone cracked into dozens of particles. Chin Nan and Elder Shan were so surprised that they stood with their mouths open and couldn't believe their eyes that the crescent sea stone had just broken. The library guard looked at Chin Nan menacingly. The student was slightly scared and did not know what to expect next but he reassured me that it was not his fault and that he would not demand any compensation from the guy. Sean handed him a purple dragon token with red fangs. Now this is a well-deserved reward for the boy. In addition to the fact that it allows you to freely enter the skill library, it also opens access to the treasure vault. Chin Nan happily accepted this gift and thanked the elder for his kindness. The main character said goodbye to old man Sean and went on about his business. The library keeper thought that in this world, it was impossible to find a disciple whose talent in martial skills had reached the top grade of the Crescent Sea Stone. However, he was wrong and managed to split it, following Chin Nan with his gaze. The elder thought that he had found the one he was looking for for his older brother, 
and wondered when he would return. Chin Nan first decided to go back to the library and go to a higher floor. He intended to find more suitable fighting skills there. Stand! An elder standing at the entrance to the third floor called out. Newcomers are not allowed to enter the third floor. Get out now or be prepared to suffer the appropriate punishment. Chin Nan stopped and said to him that he was not sure, but whether he could get here with this token. The elder casually asked him what kind of token he wanted to pass with and why he would get out of here. The elder hesitated and looked at what kind of token the student was showing him. He couldn't believe his eyes. It was a purple dragon token with scarlet teeth. After that, Chin Nan asked again if he could come in here, to which I received a response of consent. While the boy entered the floor, the elder was still wondering where this guy had come from. How does a beginner with the fifth level of body tempering get a legendary great elder token? Does this mean that the main character walked to the shelves with books and scrolls? The floor itself looked different, different from the first. He found the mystic art of the homing blade, the records of Zhang Liu, the inner disciple of the mystic elder sect. He didn't think that the book he randomly chose would be the records of the inner disciple's martial emperor's cultivation. While Chin Nan was looking at the notes, someone approached him. Newbie? He heard it from behind him. It was a guy in a beautiful and luxurious white robe with gold accents. His hair was held in place by an elegant clip. The guy who came up looked at Chin Nan and thought that despite his ordinary appearance, he was at the level of a martial emperor. It turns out that he is even stronger than Mo Li and Xiao Qing Shui. He further analyzed that Qin Nan had a fifth level of body tempering, but he was already on the third floor of the skill library. It is quite difficult to get here, even if you are an internal student. He then noticed that he had a great elder's token hanging on his belt. After that, he completely ceased to understand who this guy could be. He then introduced himself. His name was Gong Yang the inner disciple of the mystic elder sect. He also asked how he could address the boy. After Chin Nan introduced himself, Gong Yan asked him another question. He was touching the badge on his belt. He asked him not to show it so openly. It looks a little scary. Chin Nan thanked him for the recommendation. After a brief introduction, Chin Nan said that he was looking for records of the development of sword art here, but he would also be glad to find skill books related to the art of the martial blade here. Gong Yang knew about this type of martial art. This is a self-discovered skill. It stores some records of practice. However, to learn it, you need to have a high talent in combat skills. The elder brother found a suitable skill. It was called the art of the flying blade. Having studied it, it becomes possible to kill an enemy stronger than you. Chin Nan thanked him for his help in finding the skill. Next, Chin Nan sat down to study the skill using combat addiction for this. Elder brother Gong Yang watched this and was very interested in his new acquaintance. He was increasingly amazed by the strength of this guy. He was interested in the fact that he had a combat addiction. With its help, you can create breakthroughs during battle. He plans to establish friendly relations with him. Chin Nan was still sitting and learning a new skill. He was very focused on the process to complete his studies faster. It seemed to be a rushing blade. Gong Yang became a little worried. The flying blade art has only one variation called the hundred steps of the flying blade. Once it is used, the blade will fly out and destroy the target within a range of 100 paces. Whoever created this technique is truly a genius. He realized that blade art could not only be powerful, but could also be combined with all kinds of variations. And in the end, it can become invincible. But he couldn't understand everything when he studied the art of the Thunderblade. He assumed that it would be tedious to use quickly and accurately. But since the outcome of a battle can change dramatically and unpredictably, the most important thing is to choose the most appropriate blade art. Gong Yang still watched the boy and drew conclusions from this. As expected, Chin Nan was able to understand the direction of the blade and achieve greater success in uniting with the sword. Moreover, the directionality of his blade is released unconsciously, which means that Chin Nan is learning the flying blade art with a greater level of understanding. By that time, an elder entered the library hall. He asked Gong Yang how long it would take to learn the skill. The elder brother greeted him. As he got closer, the elder announced that the third floor of the skill library would be closed for five days. 
The two of them had better be careful while training. This surprised the older brother. It was surprising that the elder cared so much about Chin Nan. For this purpose, he is going to close the skills library. Could it be that Chin Nan is going to achieve perfect success in sword fusion using this skill book? But how is this possible? The difference between the stage of greater success and ideal success in unity with the sword is too great. In addition, this will require a lot of time, at least a month. Two days later, Chin Nan was still training. He spent every second studying this technique. This martial emperor level skill is not easy to achieve or understand. In the cultivation of this genius, there was a constant mention of keeping everything smooth. This somehow doesn't make sense at all. One hundred steps of the floating blade is a terrifying skill focused on power. After spending more time in training, Chin Nan realized that the hundred steps of the floating blade was not about concentrating all the silt of his body at one point. The eye of formation is important here. If the eye is open, the direction of his blade will affect an area of one hundred paces, and then the blade will be able to kill enemies within that radius. Chin Nan was illuminated by a bright flash of energy. A ball of released energy formed around him. Gong Yang watched his younger brother's training in amazement. What just happened? He wondered. In just four years, he was able to reach the stage of perfect success in unity with the sword. Those born with combat addiction are truly amazing. This guy's fighting talent has long surpassed that of other combat addicted people in the world. Chin Nan came to his senses and looked around. Gong Yang was still standing next to him. He asked him why he was still here and why he was looking at him like that. The elder brother replied that he was a straightforward person. Over these few days, he was very impressed. From this day on, he asks him not to call him Big Brother anymore. It's too formal. He suggested calling him Brother Yang. Chin Nan accepted Gong Yang's request and knew that if anything happened, Brother Yang would take care of him. Having finished the training, the guys left the library. Simultaneously discussing the moments of the training, and, in general, everything that had happened in this short time. Their communication was interrupted by words. You've finally come out, Chin Nan, said an angry voice from the side. Mo Li and Lin Zixiao were approaching them. They were very angry with the boy. You could read from their faces that they would now want to start a fight. He longs for Chin Nan to apologize to him. He knelt down and bowed to him a hundred times. Otherwise, he would suffer his wrath. Brother Gong stood up for Chin Nan, answering them that it was great impudence to address students like that. He shouldn't think that he could do this to people. After Mo Li saw who was accompanying the Nan boy, a drop of sweat ran down his face. He was no longer so militant. Most likely, he was already afraid that he began to behave so abruptly. Lin Zixiao intervenes in the conversation. Who do you think you are? He asked him angrily. After this question, without receiving an answer, he gave advice to stay away from the boy, otherwise he would share his fate as well. Mo Li was smarter and knew who was in front of him. He told his brother to shut up and not say another word. After all, in front of them was elder brother Gong Yang. Mo Li already felt very awkward. He never thought that senior brother Gong Yang would also be here. After that, he began to make excuses that it was the newcomer Lin Zixiao with him, so he still lacked manners. And if he offended them with his words, he hopes that his older brother will be able to forgive him. In addition, those words of his were not addressed to him, but to the trash behind his older brother. The last words stunned Gong Yan. He didn't believe that Mo Li had just called Chin Nan trash. He immediately told them that Chin Nan was his brother and that no one had the right to insult him. Therefore, he doesn't want to waste any more time on Mo Li. And if he still wants to continue the argument, then they will have to go to the Hall of Life and Death. Mo Li trembled, and a hint of uncertainty appeared in his speech. He immediately decided to apologize and leave with his accomplice right now. When they left, they still held a grudge against Chin Nan. They considered him an ordinary beginner without any outstanding skills. Why did he enlist the support of Xiao Qing Shui, and now Gong Yang is also protecting him? Chin Nan thanked his brother for standing up for him, otherwise without him they would not have left the boy behind. To which Gong Yang replied that he just needed to stop being so polite. It's normal to help each other since they are friends now. After that, he asked how he became Mo Li's enemy. At this hour, 
Madame Xiao arrived at the library. She was happy to see Qin Nan and glad that he had already come out. She also paid attention to who Qin Nan was with. Brother Gong didn't think that Qin Nan was on such good terms with Xiao Qingshui. It's not as simple as it seems. It was a good idea to make friends with him after all. Gong greeted little sister Qin Shui as she approached. He said that he met Qin Nan in the skill library. They became friends because they had similar personalities and became good friends. Since she had already approached them, Goon would like to go away and do some business of his own. Madame Xiao was very surprised that Qin Nan became friends with senior brother Gong Yang so quickly. He is in the top ten inner disciples and also has a gold-class golden soul. Qin Nan wondered why Gong Yang did not show respect to Mo Li. Now everything has fallen into place. There is still a huge gap between them. There are only five days left until the versatility challenge. It would be better if Qin Nan started training now. At a minimum, he needs to reach the sixth level of body hardening in these five days. While Qin Nan stayed to train with Xiao Qing Shui, events moved to the home of one of the inner disciples. Mo Li and Lin Zixiao were sitting at the table. Lin Zixiao was very angry about this whole situation. He no longer cared about anything. Once the test of versatility begins, he will attack Qin Nan and cut him into pieces. His anger will eat him up. Mo Li just laughed and called him an idiot. After all, he has a better plan than this. He wants to start collaborating with all the geniuses among the newcomers. They would all end up attacking Qin Nan when the trial began, and this would guarantee his death. Lin thought a little about whether geniuses would help them, to which Mo Li replied that he was also a genius, with a ninth grade golden soul, and none of the newcomers will dare to challenge him. They will also be distributed randomly during the versatility test. It may be that someone will deal with Qin Nan even before Lin Zixiao meets. Lin Zixiao was lost in dreams about how he would deal with the boy. He promises that Qin Nan will soon meet his death. Meanwhile, Qin Nan decided to take another 50 Giantian pills. He had previously won them. Now is the time to accept them. I wonder how the soul of the god of war will react to this. Qin Nan opened the bottle containing the pills. He poured some of them into his palm. At first, he took some of the pills, but somehow they didn't work very well. After that, he took the rest of the pills. His warrior soul began to shine with rays of energy. However, even after he took all 50 of them, no effect appeared. Each of them is equal to 100 body-hardening tablets. It turns out that even this amount is not enough for the soul of the god of war to raise its level. It seems that the number of war god soul level-up pills is increasing greatly every time. He's not even sure how many of them would be needed for a rank 9 golden soul. The eyes of the war bond soul separate heaven and earth. No one will slip before them. Nothing will go unnoticed. After he ate all these pills, he was able to see the entire area of the residence. His vision increased several times. This way he was able to see through objects, a very incredible skill. Chin Nan never thought that the manifestation of a part of the soul's body would affect us so much. These were the eyes of the soul of the god of war. It turns out that when the nose, mouth, ears, and other parts of the body appear, they will also intensify. If the soul of the god of war turns into a human, then what kind of thought can compare with the soul of Qin Nan? One way or another, there is not much time left before the test of versatility. So he should get back to training to start getting stronger. Qin Nan continued to sit in the training room and improve his skills, when suddenly, someone called him. It was Xiao Qing Shui. She came accompanied by another guy. Qin Nan didn't know him. She recalled that the versatility test will begin soon. That's why I wanted to give him another gift. She gave him the escape ball. If it is broken, the person will immediately be teleported back a whole mile. Qin Nan accepted this gift with joy. He thanked Mrs. Xiao. Such an item can greatly help him in some difficult situation. He was very grateful for all the help Qin Shui was giving her, and Qin Shui was pleased to do some good for the boy, and also to help him become better. After that, she introduced the person with whom she came. It was her brother Xiao Leng. He is also a newbie. During the test of versatility, the two of them can help each other. Qin Nan greeted him and they met, to which the lady's brother replied that there was no need for this. There is probably no newcomer who has not heard of the famous Qin Nan. 
He really doesn't understand where he got the courage to insult Lin Zixiao. But Qin Shui herself did not like such words, and she asked him to watch his language. She also asked her to apologize to Qin Nan right away. However, her brother did not want to apologize. After all, he was simply telling the truth. Qin Nan has only reached the fifth level of body tempering, and his soul is eighth grade. Despite the purple color of his talent and combat skills, how else could he compare to Lin Zixiao? After all, the test of versatility is not about testing talent, but about assessing capabilities. He believes that Qin Nan will not survive his meeting with Lin Zixiao, so he invites him to apologize to him before the test begins. That's all her brother wanted to say. He turned around and started to walk away. Eldest sister asked Qin Nan not to pay attention to her brother's words. He was quite self-confident from an early age, so there are some flaws in his character. To which Qin Nan replied that everything was fine. Madame Xiao asked Qin Nan to be very careful during the test and try not to be impulsive. Even with his outstanding talent for combat skills, it had only been a month since his training, and its development is not yet as strong as the others. After she gave her instructions, she finally asked him to be more restrained. While telling all this to Qin Nan, she noticed that he was not listening to her at all. He seemed to be in the clouds, thinking about something of his own. Qin Nan quickly turned on and told her that he understood her. For some reason, Qin Shui began to worry and say some nonsense. Qin Nan is the genius she found, so she behaves the way she should behave. The boy, having listened to the instructions of his older sister, went on to mind his own business and prepare for the upcoming test of versatility. Madame Xiao watched him leave and thought that her disciple needed to take better care of himself during the versatility test. Who knows what troubles might await him there. Little by little, students began to gather near the main square. Qin Nan quickly surveyed the crowd and estimated that the number of newly arrived students exceeded his expectations. He thought that all the new disciples here are recruits from the mystic elder sect, and there are about several hundred of them here. Next, he intends to examine them with the help of the eyes of the soul of the god of war to find out how many of them are worthy of his attention. Qin Nan activated his new ability to find out which disciple could be his opponent. It's very convenient that he acquired this skill right now. After all, with his help, it will be easier in the future. The ability began to work at full power, and he was able to examine everyone from a bird's eye view. He saw the hardening of the body and soul of each student. They shone with rays of light of a certain color. He saw that there were no less than 80 people with the seventh level of body hardening or more gathered here. Among everyone he examined, he also noticed one of his main rivals, Lin Zixiao. By this time, he had already reached the ninth level of body tempering. It looks like this test of versatility will indeed be an intense battle of geniuses where wits and creativity will be important keys to success. As he looked over his opponents, he noticed that a group with very powerful auras was approaching them all. It looks like they were elders. There were five of them. They were enveloped in an aura of incredible power. All the students turned their gaze to them. Their appearance looked very beautiful and spectacular. The chief of the elders addressed everyone standing in the square. The versatility challenge will take place on the appropriate island. After some time, five of the elders will create a teleport together and send them all to this island at once. Exactly in a month, the technology on the island will be activated and send everyone back here. Then he began to list the rules. The first of these was that killing during a test of versatility is not prohibited. These words greatly encouraged Lin Zixiao. He is already dreaming of quickly getting to Qin Nan and taking revenge on him, especially if the ban on murder is lifted. Rule 2 states that there are 30 blue dragon marks on the island. Rankings will be based on the number of characters each student has. The third rule states that only the top 10 will be awarded for this challenge. The first place winner will receive a 9 spins golden tablet. For second place, you are given a golden tablet of three spins. Third place will receive 10,000 Giantian pills and a chance to choose one item from the treasury. The rest of the places will receive tablets depending on the place. Each of the students has already fantasized about receiving these awards. Joy and desire to win were visible in their eyes. Chin Nan also thought about how incredible the rewards in the Mystic Elder Sect were. Even for 10th place, you are given 3,000 tablets. 
He had already begun to wonder how strong he would become if he could obtain 10,000 Giantian pills. He plans to be among the top three students. His sweet dreams were destroyed by Lin Zixiao when he approached him and asked him where Qin Nan dared now. He promises to make the boy beg for death when they get to the island. Next, he loudly recalled his statement. Anyone who kills Qin Nan on the island will receive the reward he spoke about earlier. Thus, he hopes that they will do him a favor and kill his opponent. Everyone around began to discuss the fact that Qin Nan had insulted Brother Lin Zixiao. When they meet him, they want to beat the crap out of him, especially if they also promise an additional reward for it. Lin Zixiao was very happy that his proposal was taken up by some of those taking the test. Even if he doesn't meet him on the island, he expects his end to be the same. It's fatal. The chief elder heard all this and decided to figure out what was the matter. He turned to Lin Zixiao and asked why he was combining the forces of his disciples to eliminate the boy. To which Lin Zixiao replied that he had a duel of combat talent with him, but he was framed with his talent for combat abilities, due to which he is now banned from visiting the skill library for the rest of his life. All the elders were very surprised by the situation described. They couldn't believe that they had done this to their Lin Zixiao. How dare Qin Nan do this to the excellent genius of the mystic elder sect, while he is just trash with a fifth-level body tempering, the elder asked angrily. After this, he issues a decree that everyone is allowed to join forces and kill Qin Nan as soon as they find themselves on the island. A smile appeared on Lin Zixiao's face. Let's see how you get out of this situation, he thought. Many students began chanting to kill our main character. They considered it unacceptable that Qin Nan was rude to Lin Zixiao. It looks like the boy will really have a bad time in this test. To which Qin Nan just laughed out loud. Perhaps because he did not yet realize the complexity and seriousness of the situation, or perhaps because he was completely confident in his abilities. Such laughter confused his opponents. Lin Zixiao asked him in confusion why he was laughing so much. After this, he told him that even if he kneels now, he will not forgive him. Qin Nan told him what was the reason for his uproarious laughter. He is just a beginner of the fifth level of body tempering. How can he be worthy of them all hunting him like that? Then he addressed everyone. Do they plan to make friends with Lin Zixiao and therefore want to unite against the boy? And where do they get so much courage? These words angered the chief elder even more. He laughed at this because the rest of the students would not have to kill him. Golden Soul Lin Zixiao has reached ninth grade, and he himself had broken through to the ninth level of body tempering. Besides, Qin Nan is just an insect to him. Qin Nan replied that even if he is trash, he has no enmity towards them, but they treated him like an ant and calmly ridiculed him. Some even planned to trample. Therefore, he will definitely remember all their names if someone decides to kill him. The elder did not waste time and gave the cry to create a portal. The square shone with bright rays of energy. Some of the students covered their eyes from such bright radiation. Lin Zixiao was already ready to fight Qin Nan. He really wanted to see how he was going to pass the test of versatility, as he was eager for payback. The elders were already completing preparations for the creation of the portal. A little more, and all the students will go to the island, where they can show off their skills and abilities. Circles with a blue glow formed in the sky, on which ancient signs were applied. A vertical column of energy appeared in the center of it, stretching from the sky to the ground. One of the elders turned to the other. He asked him what kind of students the sect has been accepting lately. A newbie with some eighth grade golden soul is so arrogant. To which he replied that there was no need to be angry about this. Either way, this boy just insulted every student he definitely won't survive on the island. Everyone began to move into the versatility test area. It was an area with many trees. Some areas were very dense and impenetrable. Chin Nan had already landed on the surface and rushed to explore the island. It was inhabited by various animals. Some were not particularly dangerous, and some were very strong. While Chin Nan was running, he was thinking that the portal had sent everyone to random places. It would be better if he tried to avoid contact with the others. He needs to be extremely careful. Not far from him, he heard some kind of crunching sound, 
A wild tiger jumps out from behind the bushes, a huge animal four times the size of the boy. Chin Nan noticed him in time and managed to react. He used the direction of the blade against him at the moment when the cat pounced on him. The main character easily defeated this animal. With one blow, he cut him in half, so the beast could not cause him any damage. There are quite a lot of animals on the island. In any case, Chin Nan should use his war god's soul eyes to see if there are disciples here who might be his enemies. This way he will be able to prematurely build his future tactics. Chin Nan prepared himself and used his war god's soul vision. This way he can immediately check not only the presence of other students or animals, but he will also be able to see various herbs and materials that he can later use. The first thing he saw was the herb that nourishes the soul, the ancient thunder tree. Having remembered where she was, she continued to look for what else might be useful to him. He also found flowers of violet flame. There were quite a lot of good materials on the island with which he could develop. It will be necessary to carefully inspect the area. There will definitely be something else useful. While Chin Nan was looking around and collecting herbs, another of the participants teleported not far from him. I wonder what danger he will pose. While the main character was finishing collecting herbs, one of the students was already creeping up behind him, and Chin Nan still didn't hear or feel it. Suddenly a roar was heard behind him. A column of blue energy hit the ground. It was Li Chang Yun. He was hunting for Chin Nan and finally caught him. Once he kills him, the rewards that Lin Zixiao has prepared will become his. After his speech, he looked at Chin Nan himself, and what he was holding in his hand, doubts took over him. And he began to think, Are these flowers of the violet flame? Li Chang Yun exclaimed with great surprise. It looked like he intended to take them too. He laughed. Luck was definitely on his side today. After all, he was the first to find Chin Nan, and in addition, he would also receive violet flame flowers. As a joke, he offered to give him these flowers, and as payment, he would leave his corpse intact. Li Chang Yun? The boy turned to him. He asked where he got so much hatred towards him, if he had not done anything bad to him personally, and whether he was too arrogant in saying such words. Without hesitation, his opponent rushed at him. A piece of trash like you doesn't dare call me arrogant, he shouted, raising his hand to hit me. He won't even give him the last word. Chin Nan was ready to attack and used an evasive technique. His opponent's attack missed him without causing damage. He became angry and said that Chin Nan could not defeat him, and he began to prepare his strongest attack. Will Chin Nan be able to dodge this time too? Throwing himself at the boy, he releases a ton of energy to break through his shield. However, Chin Nan stood firm and was protected by his ability. Li Chang Yun was unable to break through the boy's protective dome, and from such a strong blow, he breaks his hand on it. His fingers crunched and blood gushed from his limb. He couldn't believe his eyes that this was possible. The burst of energy threw him far back until he crashed into a tree standing behind him. Having recovered and stood up, he asked Chin Nan if his blade direction had become of the highest level. After all, he thought that she was just at the stage of great success. Realizing that Chin Nan was hiding his true strength and that he had reached the ideal stage of being one with the sword, he decided to run away from the battle. He needed to gather the others, along with Lin Zixiao, since he clearly lacked his own strength. Chin Nan did not appreciate the gesture of goodwill and tried to prevent his opponent from escaping and calling for help. Therefore, he just intended to test the new ability of the hundred steps of the floating blade. Li Chang Yun looked back at Chin Nan and continued running. How the blades overtook him. With incredible speed, they pierced his body in different places. Blood poured from his mouth as well as from the other holes. Chin Nan could no longer be stopped. After all, he chose this fate for himself, overestimating his strength and trying to offend a weak student, in his opinion. After he dealt with his enemy, he decided to find out whether the violet flame flower would help in development. Suddenly, the protagonist's calm was disturbed by something. He had a sharp headache. He grabbed it with both hands and tried to control the pain. This effect was caused by the flower itself. He didn't expect everything to be like this. Tongues of energy dug into his back. The sensations were unbearable. But he won't stop there. With so many people hunting him, he is bound to increase his strength. He will not stop, even if he has to die here. He sat in the lotus position and continued his development. The power of the violet flame flower was very powerful. 
It is not for nothing that this plant received this name. Chin Nan focused on the process, and after that, he released the soul of the god of war. His strength had definitely increased. He had reached the sixth level of body hardening. In addition, he feels an unimaginable force flowing through his body. Perhaps he is not even weaker than those who are level seven. This boost came at just the right time. After all, many dangers still awaited him, and this was only the first time he was attacked by another examiner. As soon as Chin Nan finished his cultivation, fortunately, his acquaintance approached him from behind, namely, Madame Xiao's younger brother. He immediately asked why Chin Nan was here. He was surprised that Chin Nan was able to reach the sixth level of tempering, but there was no visible joy on his face. Either way, it doesn't change much. Chin Nan dared to confront so many disciples. You'll probably die here anyway. To which Chin Nan thanked him for reminding him of this. Chin Nan began to leave. As if it were the last thing, his younger brother called him and asked for help. The main character turned around and was ready to listen to his request. This cooperation can earn them two blue dragon tokens. If all goes well, they will each receive one. Chin Nan decided to ask him how he knew where they were. The two of them set out to find these tokens. Chin Nan didn't know any information about this yet. Their elders from the Mystic Elders sect left a lot of cards to guard against. They show where precious resources can be found, and some even show where blue dragon tokens used to be. Five maps were created showing the location of the blue dragon tokens. Each contains two tokens. Rumor has it that if you combine all five cards, you can find 20 blue dragon tokens. Chin Nan understood and asked how they would cooperate on this. It was necessary to somehow distribute responsibilities. Xiao Leng was able to find the card, but it was stolen by Wang Meng, who is ranked ninth in the top 10 strongest geniuses. If they work together, he will take on Wang Meng, and Chin Nan will have to deal with the other two disciples. She is at the seventh level of body tempering. They approached the place where the three disciples were fighting the local beasts. He sat down on the tree branches and asked Xiao not to make a sound. He wants to attack them when they are done with the monsters. They have already killed one of the representatives of the local fauna. It was a huge boar. Then they finished off the second beast. Having finished the battle, they began to congratulate their brother. Now that the monsters are defeated, the two tokens will soon be his, and he will be in the top ten. Without his assistance, he would never have been able to take the card from the idiot Xiao Ling. He intends to reward them generously for the work done. Choosing the right moment, Xiao Ling rushes from the tree straight towards them. He was angry that he not only stole his card, but also mocked him. He wants payback at the cost of his life. However, Wang Meng was not so simple. He was able to block his younger brother's attack with ease. He repelled the attack and was able to carry out his blow. Wang Meng asked how he had the courage to attack him after he spared Xiao Leng. If he so wants death, then he can fulfill his wish, to which Xiao Leng invites him to fight one-on-one. -on -one. But he did not accept such an offer, because he was sneaky and didn't want to get his hands dirty. He ordered his assistants to attack the boy and not leave him alive. Chin Nan stopped them with his attack and jumped from the tree to his partner. It's not fair for the three of them to attack one Xiao Leng. He will fight with him against the three of them. These three still didn't know who it was who decided to help Xiao Leng. Perhaps they will greatly regret their actions. In response, the leader of the gang simply laughed. Pointing his finger at them, he said that he would never have thought that he would ask for help from such trash as Chin Nan. But still... He wants to thank him for the fact that now they won't even have to look for the one everyone is hunting for. Xiao Leng threatened that there was no point in wasting time talking. Either he gives the card back, or he will fight for it. Wang Meng still continued to mock him, but he decided to take pity and offered Xiao Leng to run away in exchange for the fact that he would greet Qin Nan to them. After this, Qin Nan offers to fight one-on-one -on -one with the main bully, since he is so tough and dares to call him trash. After this sentence, he only laughed harder. Does such trash deserve a duel with him? Wang Meng wants to finish off the boy quickly. Junior brother Xiao Leng warned Qin Nan. He asked not to do anything stupid, as Qin Nan was no match for him. To which the hero replied that he still would not listen to his advice. In addition, 
it is not for him to decide which of them is stronger. While preparing his attack, Wang Meng said that Qin Nan was just a non-entity. Where does a guy have so much courage to insult students in a meditation place and treat him so disrespectfully? Their main villain at the moment used the skill of the enchanting floating blade and also combined it with the impacts of absolute permafrost. The sword was pointed straight at Qin Nan and Xiao Leng. The younger brother was very surprised that his opponent's frost sword art had reached such a level. He shouted to Qin Nan to quickly get away from the attack, but it was already too late to leave. Their opponent was already finishing his attack. Wang Meng asked where their impudence was now. Now he will show how weak they are, to which Qin Nan responded with an ideal stage of success in uniting with the sword. He was preparing to meet the attack of his enemy, and there was nowhere to go. It was necessary to repel the blow. Having almost completed his attack against the guys, Wang Meng saw that Qin Nan had an ideal stage of success in uniting the sword. He clearly didn't expect the boy to be so strong. Before he could finish his powerful attack, with which he intended to punish the boys, he was stopped by Qin Nan's blades. They pierce it in many places. Blood was already spraying from his mouth. It looks like this was the end for him. Qin Nan's partner was very surprised that the protagonist was already at the ideal stage of success in uniting with the sword. And it turns out that he just killed Wang Meng with just one move. Wang Meng's assistants suddenly changed their faces and were already scared to death. They never expected to witness how easily their older brother would be killed. They immediately rushed to run away from them, wherever their eyes looked. But Qin Nan had a different opinion on this. He didn't want these scoundrels to leave so easily. They still deserve to be punished, because everyone who tried to kill Qin Nan will be killed in return. Qin Nan simultaneously charges two attacks at once, the art of the floating blade and the hundred steps of the floating blade. They definitely cannot hide from such a combined attack. Considering that they are of a lower level than their boss, the attack will also achieve its goal. They ran with all their might. However, the blades were already on their heels. At the same time, from the back, they are hit by two attacks. They lower them in the chest area. They wouldn't even be able to block such an attack or somehow dodge it. The swift blade has achieved justice. Chin Nan stood and coolly watched as his opponents died from his blades. Stuttering, Xiao Leng asked him what kind of combat ability he was using just now. How did he manage to kill them from such a distance? To which Chin Nan sat down on a stone lying near them and only smiled a little. He further replied that Len knew that it was impolite to ask others about their fighting abilities. He further told his partner not to just stand there and go collect blue dragon tokens from the corpses of their opponents. As agreed, they will divide them in half. You also need to collect the pills, cards, and jewelry they had. You need to look especially carefully for pills that increase body hardening. Finally, he gave a small clarification on Xiao Leng's instructions. Everything they had with them belonged to Qin Nan. Since they did not agree to share their belongings, he did all the work himself. They collected five different bottles from their defeated opponents. They will definitely come in handy. Next, they found one of their blue dragon tokens. All that remains is to find the rest of the token and collect the remaining belongings. It was impossible to stay in one place for a long time. Chin Nan picked up a map showing where the rest of the blue dragon tokens were. He began to examine her. Xiao Leng repeated that he needed to collect all five to find the required 20 tokens. Chin Nan wanted to keep this card for himself. They started looking at her. There was a lily painted on it. I wonder what kind of spiritual plant this is. The younger brother recognized the image of the flower and was delighted with the find. It was a three-leaved golden lily. This map can lead them to the three-leaf golden lily. When used, the three-leaf golden lily will enhance development as well as increase understanding. She can also improve her talent for combat skills. It is said that the price of three-leaf lily in the market is about 2,000 Xiantian tablets. It is much more valuable than even the violet flame flower. Chin Nan analyzed and had no idea that this flower would be so valuable. It would take a little effort to find it and absorb it. But now they will not rush to find the golden lily. First, Chin Nan wants to find some place to do some training. He invites Xiao Leng to come with him. Before leaving further, 
Xiao Leng apologized to Qin Nan for looking down on him. It was not because of Qin Nan's strength, but because he thought that Qin Nan was too arrogant and dared to offend Lin Zixiao. He just didn't understand that with Qin Nan's talent, even the one ranked eighth in the top ten was no match for him. He just didn't understand why he had to insult so many people. None of this would have happened if Qin Nan had been more restrained. And he is afraid that even with such power, he will not be able to overcome the large number of people he has touched. Qin Nan understood very well what his younger brother wanted to tell him. But he would do well to remember that a good mindset is very important for a martial artist. He decided to become one because he wanted to become stronger and travel the world. Qin Nan wants to live freely, without restrictions. No one dares to mock him, and no one dares to humiliate him. He wants people to respect him, and the kings bowed before him. If he wanted to be humiliated, he would have chosen a different path. Qin Nan will not allow anyone to humiliate him, even if it costs him his life. They approached a cave and Qin Nan went inside to begin his training. Xiao Leng stood at the entrance to secure their area. Those idiots had quite a lot of pills. Qin Nan wants to see if he can upgrade the War God Soul class. He had already taken a little over 200 tablets. If the War God's soul never upgraded, then he would just have to wait and guess how many pills he would need to upgrade to the legendary hidden class, or even the absolute top class. But we didn't have to wait long. The soul of the God of War appeared. Thus, he was able to once again increase the class of the War God's soul. Now that Chin Nan has upgraded his golden soul level to ninth grade, he needs to test how fast his training will become. He continued to train, and energy began to gather around him in the form of a dragon. It was the Qi dragon, and it materialized. It was no wonder that the elders elevated Lin Zixiao and Huang Long above the rest. The difference between the eighth and ninth grades is colossal. This means that previously, he would have had to train for ten days to equal Lin Zixiao's one day of cultivation. As expected from the war god's soul, after upgrading, he managed to reach the seventh level of body tempering so quickly. The time has come for Qin Nan to start searching for the three-leaf golden lily. Qin Nan finally came out. Xiao Leng was already waiting for him. Still, staying in one place for a long time will not be safe. Xiao Leng immediately noticed that Qin Nan had reached the seventh level of body tempering. He was very surprised at how quickly Qin Nan was developing. Qin Nan asked him to ignore it and he called him to help with the search for the three-leaved golden lily. Xiao Leng thought that Qin Nan was still hiding an ace up his sleeve. Perhaps what he said was true, and he had enough ooze to face Lin Zixiao. They were about to go in search of the three-leaf lily. They went out to the lake and decided to look around there. Near the waterline, they saw three students, and there are seven more near the trees. I wonder who it could be. Isn't this a bloody fog barrier? Xiao Leng asked. Blood mist barrier is a naturally formed, highly poisonous mist. Even a person with the tenth level of body hardening will die instantly, and his body will be corroded by the fog. It's strange. Why are there other students here? Maybe they also know about the three-leaf golden lily? Chin Nan suggested, just watching them for now. It will take two more days for this bloody fog barrier to dissipate. When the time comes, they will find out how these students know about her location. One of the students, located near the foggy barrier itself, saw something. He immediately called everyone to look in that direction. An unusually beautiful girl ran up to them. She had a very elegant black outfit, which was complemented by golden accents. Her name was Chu Yun. The guys standing next to her were drooling over her beauty. Perhaps she also found a card with a three-leaf golden lily. The elder sister herself is at the eighth level of body hardening. It's not for nothing that she ranks fifth on the list of the strongest. There seem to be hundreds of maps all over the island pointing the way to the golden lily. After she made her dramatic entrance, she looked around. Almost immediately, she felt and then saw two guys standing on a tree branch. It was Qin Nan and Xiao Leng. The guys were very surprised and excited to be seen and asked how long they would hide there. They had no choice but to go down. They walked towards the group of guys with newcomer Chu Yun. They immediately recognized Qin Nan. They had already begun to rejoice that if they killed him, they would receive a great reward. Some of them began to team up in pairs to defeat the boy together. Now that Xiao Leng already had an idea of Qin Nan's strength, 
he was not so pessimistic. He said quietly to himself that they really think they are the equal of Chin Nan's elder brother. He then threatened that if anyone dares to attack Chin Nan, they should not blame him for his rudeness. He was determined. One of the group of students recognized Xiao Leng. If he is not ranked 10th in the top 10 strongest geniuses, then why is he next to Chin Nan? Now it will be more difficult to get even with the impudent guy. Some of them knew that Xiao Leng was Xiao Qing Shui's brother, so he would protect Qin Nan. Chu Yun also joined the conversation. She didn't expect that little brother Qin Nan would rise from the fifth to the seventh level of body tempering in just a few days. She is very impressed by this. One of those present thought that Qin Nan had been promoted twice in a short period of time. Even those with ninth grade golden souls would not be able to achieve this in just a few days. After these thoughts, he was glad that he did not attack Chin Nan immediately, otherwise he would already be dead. To which Chin Nan replied that his cultivation speed could not compare with the speed of elder sister Chu Yun. He was promoted twice so quickly only because of a lucky coincidence on the island. Now Chin Nan wondered whether she was his enemy or not. She asked little brother Chin Nan not to worry because she would not attack him even if everyone here wanted to kill the boy. Before the start of the test of versatility, Brother Gong Yang had already mentioned Chin Nan and asked to become friends with him, to which Chin Nan asked to convey his gratitude to him for this if possible. Suddenly a vile voice is heard from the crowd. He asked why there were so many people here, even Chu Yun and Xiao Leng, two of the top ten geniuses here. It seems that everyone knows, not only he knows about the location of the Golden Lily. However, what he didn't expect was to meet Chin Nan here. He believes that today is simply the best day for him. Chu Yun folded her hands under her chest and replied casually that the child of gloomy rage was also here. He was also lured here by the golden lily. The child of dark rage continued to say that coming here was the right decision. After all, I found my prey here. He decided to give Chin Nan three seconds to bow down in front of him. If he does this, then maybe he will be spared. But if you dare to resist, you will make you feel something worse than death. Child of dark rage, right? Chin Nan turned to him. How dare he call himself that if he is just a dwarf? Chin Nan once again said that he is not the enemy of all these disciples, but nevertheless he is asked to bow down. The boy didn't like all this, and he decided to test how strong the little guy was. Junior brother Lang again asked Chin Nan not to be so impulsive. The child of dark fury hates nothing more than when his height is mentioned. Although he is at the eighth level of body tempering, it is said that he has mastered a terrifying evil art. Even Chu Yun is weaker than him. Shorty began to get very angry. Chin Nan's words simply infuriated him, especially when it came to his height. He intends to show him what it means to anger the child of dark rage. Chu Yun decided to stop the fight and shouted for everyone to stop. After all, Chin Nan is her friend. And if the child of dark rage attacks him, then she will team up with the boy against the dwarf. The child of dark rage asked her rhetorically if she was sure she wanted to be on the side of this garbage. The eldest sister thought that if Gong Yak had not said about Chin Nan, then she would have simply ignored him now. But in this situation, she doesn't think that she can just watch the child of dark rage kill Chin Nan. As a sacrifice and payment, she offered to apologize for Chin Nan's disrespectful words. However, she will still be by his side. Without allowing her to finish, Chin Nan interrupted her with words that it was not worth wasting time talking to the short one. He already understood everything he needed. If the child of dark rage wants to kill Chin Nan, then let him try. After all, it's hard for him to believe that this little guy is so strong. These words were the last straw for the child of dark rage. He can no longer wait to deal with Chin Nan and take the golden lily for himself, and also a reward for the boy's head. He rushes at Chin Nan, using a skill that takes away life. To this, Chin Nan used the eight mystic steps technique and was able to safely evade the attack. Is that all you can do? The angry little man asked him. Was it really possible that when fighting with him, the boy was counting only on this technique of movement? Next, the dwarf uses the technique of lightning steps to be able to close the distance and get to Chin Nan. They moved very quickly around the territory, jumping from one place to another. Trying to elude his opponent, Chin Nan noticed that he had already caught up with him and was coming from the flank. 
And this little guy really turned out to be not as simple as it seemed at first glance. The child of dark rage began to use psychological pressure on the boy to confuse his attention. It looks like he intends to show him one of his deadly moves. Having chosen the right moment, the dwarf uses the soul capture chain technique. This target began to wrap itself around Chin Nan, trying to inflict great damage on him. The technique he saw made a great impression on Chu Yun, because he achieved great success in uniting with the sword. The child of Dark Fury was somehow able to achieve such mastery. The gloomy child kept trying to attack the boy, Chin Nan. He wanted to drain all of his strength so that he would simply fall dead in front of him. He squeezed the chains around him tighter and tighter. And it's all? Chin Nan asked him rhetorically. Having reached the stage of perfect success in uniting with the sword, Chin Nan was able to break the shackles of the gloomy child and free himself from the chains. Everyone saw that Chin Nan was only at the seventh level of body tempering. How he was able to reach the stage of perfect success in unity with the sword was only a mystery. Some of the students were so surprised that they stood with their mouths open. Even a super genius like Lin Zixiao had not yet reached the stage of perfect success in uniting with the sword. Chu Yun also did not expect that Chin Nan was so terrifyingly strong. Having assessed the whole situation, the dwarf decided to escape from the battle. He said that Chin Nan was lucky this time, but the next time he sees him, everything will be different. The short one quickly galloped away and disappeared behind the trees. Chin Nan immediately rushed after him to catch up with him. He shouted to everyone else that they should not dare to pursue him, otherwise he would consider them his enemies. Chin Nan still won't calm down. Chu Yun stood and was touched by her new acquaintances. I wonder why Chin Nan chased after the child of gloomy rage. This will be certain death, since the child of dark rage will not be afraid of one boy. The short man had already run a long distance from Chin Nan, and, looking around to see that he was not being pursued, decided to rest near a tree. Out of rage and anger, he hit the post with his fist. He believes that Chin Nan was lucky this time and spared him. However, there won't be a next time like this. But Chin Nan was not so simple. He quickly pursued his offender and did it so that his movement was unnoticeable. He himself stopped on a tree branch right above the dwarf. He heard all the words of his opponent and decided to make fun of them. The short man turned around and said, How does Chin Nan have the courage to do such a thing? And why did he chase him? to which the boy replied to him to stop chatting and asks to show him his most powerful skill so that he can show what he is capable of, to which the little one replied that Chin Nan could have calmly chosen the path to heaven, but chose hell. Does Chin Nan believe that if he has reached the stage of perfect success in uniting the sword, then he will not be defeated? The short man decided to show how weak Chin Nan was by showing off his most powerful skill. The child of gloomy rage gathered all his strength and performed the technique of uniting with the soul of the gloomy thunder demon. It was a truly terrifying technique, plunging into fear and torment. The demon's soul began to attack the boy. Chin Nan still deftly jumped away from the attacks flying at him. He jumped from branch to branch, dodging blows. Chin Nan appreciated that the dwarf had united with his soul. The boy had no choice but to unite with his soul and repel the enemy. He summoned a ninth grade golden soul, the soul of the god of war. Everything around Chin Nan was surrounded by energetic flames. He was completely confident in his abilities and that he was right. After the boy also released his soul, his opponent began to stammer and asked how Chin Nan's soul became so strong and advanced to the ninth grade of body tempering. To which Chin Nan answered briefly and laconically that his opponent should not know how Chin Nan achieved all this. Let this be a secret for everyone. Having assessed his strength, the short man intends to escape from the battle once again. The way he understood that his strength might not be enough against this genius. While running away, he said that he would remember Chin Nan and try to take revenge on him. But Chin Nan thought completely differently. He didn't want to let his enemy go. Otherwise, he might become stronger or gather some more students and take mean revenge on the boy. The dwarf shouldn't think that he could escape from the perfect blade technique. The blades caught up with their target and fatally struck him. The rest of the students still continued to stand in the place where they had gathered. 
so much time has passed, and they still have not returned. Some people think that even if the child of dark rage did not kill Chin Nan, he definitely wounded him and left him barely alive. Chu Yun was completely lost in her thoughts. She thought that Chin Nan could have avoided all of this. It will be very good if he is simply wounded. Otherwise, how should she tell everyone to Gong Yang about this? We waited. Someone is coming. They had not yet seen who exactly was there. Chin Nan comes out to the guys, holding a small body on his shoulder. 3,000 Giantian pills and two blue dragon marks. This guy really deserves to be in the top 10 geniuses. He is quite successful. Everyone had already realized that Chin Nan had killed the child of gloomy rage. No one believed this because his opponent was ranked fourth in the top 10 geniuses. Chin Nan threw his body to the ground and apologized for disappointing many here with his victory. Xiao Leng, with great surprise, asked Chin Nan a question about how everyone like him managed to defeat such a strong opponent alone. Seeing that Chin Nan had dealt with such a strong opponent, everyone fell silent in horror. No one was even thinking about fighting Chin Nan. The boy gave everyone a choice. Either they all leave and remain alive, or Chin Nan takes them for opponents, and then everyone knows what the outcome will be. In fear, everyone began to run away in all directions. He was definitely no different from all those who were now present near the barrier. Chu Yun turned to Chin Nan. She did not expect him to be so strong. Even the child of dark rage lost to him. Chin Nan is hiding so much that she begins to worry about it. To which Chin Nan answered her that if he dared to follow him alone, it meant confidence in his abilities. He invited her to join in search of the golden lily. Chu Yun felt that she really should thank Chin Nan, and she agreed to continue the search for the golden lily together. While everyone was talking, Xiao Leng noticed that the bloody fog barrier was disappearing. He immediately called everyone and pointed to the location of the fog barrier. Everyone turned their attention to that place. The bloody fog barrier began to dissolve, and its poisonous, toxic fumes no longer caused colossal damage. Something began to shine in the center of the lake. It was the much-coveted three-leaf golden lily. She was extremely beautiful and shone with golden rays. Chin Nan threw stones towards the lily and thus checked the safety of the passage. However, it was strange that the bloody mist barrier disappeared so easily. You need to quickly pick up the three-leaf golden lily and leave to avoid unforeseen situations. Quickly but carefully, they began to run up to the location of the lily flower itself. There really wasn't much time. Everything had to be done extremely carefully. When they approached the golden lily flower, Chin Nan bent down to pick the flower. It was in his hands. It was a small matter. Now he invited everyone to take one petal. Senior sister Chu Yun can either go with Chin Nan to a safe place or use the three-leaf golden lily here, to which she agreed to go with the boy to a safe place for training. After that, they soon left the place where the color of the three-leafed golden lily was located. It was necessary to find some secluded place where there would be no other students in the area who could pose a danger. At this time, someone was watching them. It was an old man with gray hair, wearing a white robe. He saw them take the golden lily flower and quickly leave the area. The company found a secluded place. It was a large cave. Now it's time to absorb the golden lily flower to increase your powers. While Chin Nan was in the cave, Xiao Leng and Chu Yun were guarding him outside the entrance. Chin Nan himself was very curious about how strong absorbing one petal of the golden three-leaf lily would make him. This flower will influence the hardening of the body. He started trying it. Qi turned out to be quite powerful. This flow of qi is comparable to at least 20 Xiantian pills, and its purity is even superior to them. Body hardening consists of 10 levels, relating to the hardening of flesh, bones, organs, and blood. After consuming a golden lily petal, his blood begins to harden, flowing as fast as a river. If Chin Nan continues to train, improving his blood circulation so that it rumbles like an ocean, he will reach the tenth level of body tempering. The most precious thing about the golden lily is that it improves understanding. It is not surprising that it is called a treasure. It really has a strong effect on the development of one's body hardening. Near the entrance to the cave, Xiao Leng and Chu Yun were sitting and talking. She asked him how long it would be before Chin Nan came out. 
but Xiao Leng himself didn't know how long it would take. But it's better not to disturb Qin Nan now. While they were thinking about how soon Qin Nan would return, it was as if there was an explosion in the cave and dust came out of the entrance. As if nothing had happened, Qin Nan emerges from the wall of dust. He finished his workout and looked cheerful. After absorbing the golden lily, he became much stronger. Chu Yun raised her hand to her mouth and spoke a couple of sentences. She was surprised that junior brother Chin Nan had moved from the ideal stage to the legendary secret realm in unity with the sword. Xiao Leng was very surprised by this, but Chin Nan objected he could not reach the secret realm as it was quite difficult. He told her that she slightly overestimated his potential. Little sister's admiration had subsided a little, but she was still delighted with Chin Nan's body tempering upgrade so quickly. She asked where they would go now. There are only ten days left until the end of the versatility test. Chin Nan thought about the fact that there were ten days left. He decided it was time to start searching for the blue dragon tokens. He has one of the map pieces. If they find the other four pieces, then the twenty tokens will be theirs. Little sister was also surprised that Chin Nan had a card. But the island is huge. She doubts how they will search for parts of the map. And don't forget that some students may have already found parts of the map. The discussion about future plans was interrupted by a voice that came from right next to them. He asked which of the three was Chin Nan. The company was taken by surprise and became a little worried. It was an old man, shrouded in a gray cloak. He had medium-long gray hair tied in a bun at the back. He also had one eye missing. Chin Nan answered the old man that it was him he was looking for. He also asked what was bothering him. Chin Nan did not feel any danger from him, so he easily started a dialogue with him. The island is only used as a training ground for the disciples of the mystic elder sect, and the portal is the only way to get here. However, this elderly man easily crossed the barrier around the island. Moreover, Chin Nan didn't even feel that he was near them. Does this mean he is stronger than the martial emperor? But the elder was in no hurry to answer all his questions at once and offered to walk with him. And Chin Nan's friends can wait for him here for now. Chin Nan apologized for his impoliteness, however, he had not met him before. And he has no idea who he is, so he can't just go with it. There was caution in his words and a desire to know what to be prepared for. Chin Nan's partners looked at him in surprise and wondered what plot development would happen next. The old man was not verbose and simply decided to show his strength by showing how powerful he was. A strong wind hit our main character and his friends. They began to resist him so that he would not blow them away. Xiao Leng covered his eyes with his hand to prevent dust from getting into his eyes, and Qin Nan didn't even move. Raising his voice a little, the elder said that Qin Nan is smart, but it would be wiser if he did not contradict the elder. Moreover, he knows that Chin Nan has the token of junior brother Shang. Chin Nan thought about what the elder called the token. If he said that it was junior brother Shang's token, it meant that he called great elder junior brother. This means that he is the elder brother of elder Shang. Chin Nan once again asked for forgiveness for his impoliteness. He didn't know that the elder was elder Shang's elder brother. He hopes that he can forgive him to which the elder did not say anything and simply indicated that he should go with him. The elder ordered Xiao Leng and Chu Yun to stay here and wait for them. The elder had several scrolls in his hand. After that, the elder and Qin Nan headed to some place. Finally, he threw them these couple of scrolls so that they could pass the time while they waited for them. These were ancient scriptures. I wonder what knowledge they kept within themselves. When they caught them and began to examine them, Chu Yun learned that these were the ancient scriptures of the martial emperor. However, the elder threw them away like trash. Who is this mysterious elder? And who is Elder Shan? I wonder how Chin Nan contacted them. All these questions interested the younger sister. It's funny. Junior brother Chin Nan is the only one among the students whom she cannot understand at all. But someday she will unravel the secrets of little brother Chin Nan. The old man and Chin Nan walked along the path. Chin Nan had a lot of questions in her head, ranging from who this elder was to why he contacted him. The old man said that he knows that Chin Nan has a lot of questions, but there is no point in even asking them. Even if Chin Nan asked, 
the elder still would not answer them. The elder will speak, and Chinnan must follow his instructions. If he remains satisfied, then he will provide Chinnan with a great opportunity. The boy asked him what the elder wanted him to do. First of all, there is something that the elder would like to ask the boy. Was Chinnan's soul an eighth grader from the very beginning, or was he hiding a ninth grader? Chinnan was a little worried. He asked the elder if he was following him, to which the elder answers him that let's say he was watching. It was also he who dispelled the bloody fog barrier. Such words surprised the boy very much. He asked the elder why he, an ordinary student of the seventh level of body conditioning, was so interested in his attention. The old man answered him that the boy kept many secrets. It just piqued his interest. He had been watching him since the moment Chin Nan managed to destroy the sea crescent stone, and based on his observations, Chin Nan did not disappoint him, especially when he half reached the secret realm using just one golden lily petal. The elder waved his hand and blue energy poured out of it. Perhaps he wants to create something. This violet sea full moon stone is an upgraded version of the sea crescent moon stone. As Chin Nan already knows, he can show talent in combat skills. However, there is a difference between them. To activate this stone, the combat talent must at least cause a purple glow on it. Purple glow, Chin Nan thought, is the starting color of a violet sea full moon stone the maximum color of a sea crescent stone? The violet sea. Full moon stone consists of five glows, violet, black, majestic, imperial, and the highest glow, a rare stage of the purple sea full moon. If Chin Nan can bring out the black glow, the old man will give him 10,000 Giantian pills. If he summons the majestic, he will give unique equipment. From the imperial glow, it will give unique equipment, along with a token that can save lives. Well, if he causes a rare glow of the purple sea stone of the full moon, then he will take him as his student. Chin Nan was already bursting with joy at how many interesting things awaited him. He asked if it was true, to which the elder answered him that he always keeps his word. Chin Nan had a question. What if he broke this purple sea crescent stone with his strength? Will he demand compensation? The elder was surprised at the boy's self-confidence and decided to take him lightly. It is not the same stone as the crescent moon stone. If Chin Nan breaks it, then he will be taught a secret technique. This technique is much more valuable than any pills and equipment. Chin Nan accepted the challenge and began to release his soul. He placed his palms on the stone and began to take the test. Everything around began to shine. Chin Nan confidently released his war god's soul. The elder recorded the imperial glow. Looks like the unique gear is about to become a boy's thing. He had not even reached the rare glow of the purple sea full moon, but he intended to break the stone. Chin Nan continued to release his soul and the stone began to gradually transform into the rare glow of the purple sea full moon. The boy gradually began to increase the release of the soul of the god of war. The stone began to resonate and crackle. The end result of all this was that this stone also shattered from Chin Nan's power. Parts of the stone flew away in different directions. A handful of stones also fell near the elder. He was dismayed by what he saw. It seems that he underestimated the brilliant student. Chin Nan was very sorry and embarrassed that he had once again broken the stone that determined proficiency in martial talents. Did the elder really think that some purple sea full moonstone could measure the soul potential of the god of war Chin Nan? That's funny. Even though Chin Nan now has a ninth grade soul, it is quite impressive that she was able to enhance his martial talents so much. As promised, he will teach him a secret technique. It's called the Heavenly Accumulating Strike. Although this technique is only a part of the book that the elder found, it is enough to outshine other skills. He will show this technique only once. But whether Chin Nan can learn it, he doesn't care. The elder began to show him the technique. Chin Nan's eyes were wide open so as not to miss a moment. It was truly a beautiful sight. Vast oceans remain endless, ancient mountains remain mysteries. The teacher collected all the energy in his finger to release it in the right direction. A swift stream flew out of his hand. Everything around him was flying apart. It was a skill that deals enormous damage. Using this technique, the elder was able to make a huge passage in the rock. The rock melted and scattered to the sides. The elder finished performing the ability. 
and he was ready to find out whether Chin Nan could learn it. Against such a powerful martial skill, even experts at the martial emperor level would be destroyed without a trace. Chin Nan truly admired this skill. Chin Nan simply must master this technique. He sat down to prepare to learn the skill and use his skills to do so. His skills already contained thoughts of understanding and the thought of comprehending secrets. With their help, learning will be easier. After completing his training, Chin Nan reached the secret realm. Now new roads are opening up for him. The elder carefully watched Chin Nan's development. He was surprised that Chin Nan was such a brilliant student. Chin Nan was very grateful to the elder for showing him the heavenly accumulating strike. This allowed him to reach the secret realm. He really appreciates it. Now the elder fulfilled his promise and released the boy. He told him that he could now return to his friends. Chin Nan headed towards the direction they came from. The elder stood on the dais and watched the boy leave, still thinking about what a genius he was. Three hundred years have passed since the heavens finally gave the elder the chance he had been waiting for. Chu Yun and Xiao Leng were still waiting for Chin Nan to return. There are four days left until the end of the versatility challenge. It turns out that Chin Nan was absent for six whole days. They were very happy that they had waited for Chin Nan and finally saw him. There are only four days left to find the blue dragon tokens. Chin Nan thought that given the strength of each of the group, they could split up to increase the chances of finding them. He looked at his friends and saw a smile on their face. Chu Yun explained the reason for their smiles. While Chin Nan was gone for these six days, something interesting happened. It looks like the three of them will have to work together again. Xiao Leng handed the package to Chin Nan. He asked to look at him. At the moment, Lin Zixiao is gathering people. Chin Nan began to read the letter. It said that a certain Xiao Yunhe was writing this letter at the request of his elder brother, Lin Zixiao. It further describes that Lin Zixiao has two parts of the map, and all other owners can bring their parts to him, and he will generously reward them. Chin Nan asked where they got this letter from, and who Xiao Yunhe was. They replied that they received it two days ago. Xiao Yunhe ranks first among the top ten strongest geniuses. He is at the tenth level of body hardening. In addition, his soul is capable of controlling low-rank monsters. With the help of birds, he sent this letter to all the students. Chin Nan became a little worried and wondered if he could control monsters. The world is so amazing and there are so many souls and they are all different. Chu Yun said that this was both bad and good news. It's good that everyone is informed, but the bad thing is that he's on Lin Zixiao's side. Therefore, the decision to go alone or not will be up to Chin Nan. Just starting the test, he thought that he would be in the top three, but this is impossible with the current situation. You need to compete for 20 tokens. Chu Yun believed in Chin Nan's speech and agreed to help him achieve this. Along with her, Xiao Leng also agreed to this. Together, they headed to the center of the island to compete for 20 blue dragon tokens. Chin Nan greatly values the friendship that has developed between them. However, if things don't go according to plan, let them leave immediately and don't worry about him. After all, he is Lin Zixiao's target. They approached a large plateau, in the middle of which there was a very long rift. Below, you could see groups of other students who also came to fight. Our heroes have arrived at the scene. They appreciated that there were so many people here. It seems that all the students from the island have arrived here too. It seems that Lin Zixiao was well prepared this time. He was able to win so many geniuses to his side. He was surrounded by really serious teammates. This guy is Xiao Yunhe. He really is now on Lin Zixiao's side. This guy's body tempering level was level 10. Chu Yun noticed someone she knew. It was Duan Muyang. She didn't expect that third place on the list of the strongest would also follow him. He is not one to be underestimated. One of the students raised his head and still noticed Chin Nan and his partners. He shouted questioningly, How did Chin Nan still dare to come here? Chin Nan was confident and knew what he was doing. The best of the ten took the side of his opponent. Everyone was chanting about how Chin Nan had the courage to come here. He is considered arrogant for coming here even knowing that all the students will be here. There was probably no more self-confident disciple than Chin Nan. Even the students who looked like retarded people joked that Chin Nan had reached the seventh level of body tempering. Another joked that he still had no chance of standing up to his older brother, Lin Zixiao. Xiao Leng decided to stand up for Chin Nan and ordered everyone to shut up, adding that if anyone dared to touch Chin Nan, 
they would become his enemy too. One of the group of students told those guys to really watch their words. If they didn't know, even though Chin Nan was at the seventh level of body tempering, he had reached the ideal stage of being united with the sword. And recently, a child of dark rage, who was fourth in the top ten strongest geniuses, fell by his hand. After the rest of the disciples heard who Chin Nan had killed, they were filled with fear and panic that the same thing would happen to them all. Another student confirmed these words because he was there. It looks like Chin Nan can compete even with third place. Chin Nan killed the child of dark rage? Interesting, Lin Zixiao said. He didn't think that this piece of trash would be able to reach the ideal stage of being united with the sword. He seems to have some kind of ability, to which Chin Nan invites him to personally test his strength, meaning fight to the death. Once again, the students supporting Lin Zixiao are surprised at how Chin Nan has the nerve to talk to their elder brother like that. Xiao Yunhe also joined the conversation. He decided to accept Chin Nan's challenge and test his strength himself. He wants the boy to come up to him and fight, wanting to make him feel pain worse than death. To which Chin Nan replied that his main goal now was the 20 blue dragon tokens. And Xiao Yunhe is not even strong enough to fight him yet. These words infuriated Xiao Yunhe. He was about to rush at Chin Nan, however. Lin Zixiao stopped him, telling him to calm down his ardor. He stopped him to say that Chin Nan would die today anyway. We need to be more patient. They still need to collect the full map. Holding back his anger at Chin Nan, Xiao Yunhe said that the boy could still live. However, this will not last long. Lin Zixiao turned to Chin Nan and said that he had never even imagined that the boy would be able to find part of the map. So if he gave it up, Lin Zixiao would only lightly beat him and even let him leave alive. Chin Nan didn't appreciate Lin Zixiao's handouts and told him that not only was he calling him trash, but he was also threatening to beat him up. But Chin Nan didn't think of giving away part of the map so easily. After all, he planned to collect it himself. Lin Zixiao was no longer so confident and arrogant towards Chin Nan. This time he even apologized for what he said earlier and he offered to not touch him or offend him again for part of the card. But Chin Nan did not have the slightest bit of trust in him. Besides, he doesn't need his thanks either. If Lin Zixiao wants 20 tokens so much, then let him give the pieces of the card to Chin Nan. But if he dares to threaten, Chin Nan will burn his part of the map, and he will never receive it again. Elder brother Lin Zixiao told him that the boy had already gone too far. He began to feel angry again. The verbal skirmish is suddenly interrupted by the already famous Huang Long. He laughed and called Lin Zixiao a hypocrite because he threatened and intimidated him, and now he says that Chin Nan is going too far. Until recently, Huang Long was on Lin Zixiao's side, but now everything has changed. He became even stronger with a strong aura glowing around him. Even considering that Huang Long is still far from reaching the Xiantian realm, he has already reached the tenth level of body tempering and also reached the ideal stage in unity with the sword. He had improved greatly since his last meeting with Qin Nan. Now Lin Zixiao had already turned his attention to Huang Long. He asked him what he wanted to say with these words about the hypocrite, to which Huan answered him that he didn't want to say anything like that. It's just disgusting to watch Lin Zixiao bully others, but he had a proposal. Chin Nan gives part of the map to Lin Zixiao and he can find the tokens. But then they are all prohibited from provoking and attacking Chin Nan. And if he disobeys, he will consider it disrespect for himself, and then he will unite with Chin Nan to destroy everyone. Now, Lin Zixiao himself asks Huang not to threaten him. But Huan answered him that he would not do anything to him, and if he didn't like something, then let him fight him. Without hesitation, Lin Zixiao decided to accept Huang's offer and now demands part of the map from Chin Nan. Huang Long turned to Chin Nan and assured him that he was a man of his word. And if Lin Zixiao dared to attack him, then he would help deal with him. Chin Nan trusted Huang Long and told him so. After thinking about it, Chin Nan throws his part of the card to Lin Zixiao. He deftly catches it with his hand. Huang Long laughed lightly and said that he liked brother Chin Nan more and more. Afterwards, he told Lin Zixiao not to detain anyone anymore and to connect all the parts of the map. Lin Zixiao held in his hands the pieces of the map that would lead him to the blue dragon tokens. He couldn't wait to connect them.
As soon as he connected the pieces of the card, it glowed with a fiery aura. Everyone turned around, and their attention was focused on what would happen next. Everyone looked at the map. A blue dragon appeared on it, indicating the direction where its tokens were located. Everyone immediately rushed in that direction, overtaking each other. Fifteen minutes passed from the moment everyone realized where to go. They reached a dense bamboo forest. The place everyone is looking for must be here somewhere, Chu Yun said. Chin Nan and his friends need to hurry up and find the blue dragon tokens first. Chin Nan felt something. He stopped Chu Yun with his hand, blocking her path, and told her to wait, because this bamboo forest is somehow strange. Next to them was Lin Zixiao's group. He asked, Isn't this an ancient mind-grabbing forest? I wonder what kind of forest this is. Someone came out from the thick of the bamboo forest and said that everything was true, and the young man was really wise for knowing about this forest. All the disciples were very surprised that a martial emperor-level expert had come out to them. He introduced himself. His name is Shu Qian. He is their older brother. The five elders told him to go to the island to give them all a test. Those who complete it will receive a certain number of tokens, depending on the result. Lin Zixiao asked him what kind of test it would be. Shu Qian recognized him. The elders mentioned him. He offered him help with them in the future if Lin Zixiao had any questions about training. Xu Qian asked them to explain everything. The mind-captivating forest can take over your thoughts. However, this only affects practitioners whose level is less than martial emperor. In other words, this test tests your will and determination towards the path of combat. The test is to enter the forest. The rules are simple. You can release your soul, but you cannot use combat skills. The test focuses on the number of steps you can take, up to a maximum of a thousand. The one in third place will receive one blue dragon token, the second place will receive four tokens, and the first place will receive fifteen. And if someone walks a thousand steps, he will receive all the tokens. However, in all this time there has never been anyone who has taken a thousand steps. Everyone began to look at each other and prepare to pass this test. Everything seemed very simple. If their will to practice martial arts is insufficient, there is a chance of falling into a rage that will destroy the body. In the past, there were quite a few body-tempering level 8 and 9 level disciples who still died here. Even 9th level body-tempering geniuses perished in this mind-grabbing bamboo forest? All the students were excitedly surprised. Xu Qian asked who would be first. But the disciples were afraid to go there, at least first. But then there was one brave man who wanted to go first. He looked cocky. Let's see what his skills are. Someone knew this guy. His name is Wang Hu. He is very cruel. With a seventh grade soul, he can also be considered a genius. Someone said that many students fell at his hands. Wang Hu gathered his strength and entered the forest. He deftly walked between the bamboo groves. Everything seemed to work out for him. This Wang Hu has good abilities. He has already taken 200 steps. I wonder how much longer he can go. He walked even further, but subsequently began to take damage he stopped to assess his strength. When suddenly the bamboo forest began to break through his body's hardening, blood poured from his mouth. The students watching this were a little horrified, but Wang Hu was able to get out of it. He said that this bamboo forest is quite mysterious. He wiped the blood from his lips, but did not receive significant damage. Xu Qian appreciated his abilities and was surprised by the courage of this student. He gave him that Jiantian pills. Now they are deservedly his. Wang Hu took the pill bottle and thanked his elder brother for carrying out the test. The students began to run to take the test, as they saw that in 200 steps, they could already get a 100 tablets. Many people were no longer afraid and wanted to try. As soon as they began to run into the depths of the forest, he began to show his strength. Not so quickly, the girl noticed that the student running ahead began to behave strangely. This was a bad sign. The students were shocked that a student's body had just been torn to pieces in this forest before their eyes. They were overcome by fear. However, Xu Qian himself was not worried. He said this happens every year and is considered part of the test. Only those who can achieve something are worthy of reward. For 200 steps, 100 Ziantian tablets are given. This is about 10,000 body-hardening tablets. It's worth taking the risk and making 300, said one of the disciples and ran deeper. But, like the previous student, who overestimated his strength, 
the same outcome awaited him. His body simply burst and scattered all over the area. In an hour, 58 students entered the forest. Eight of them have already died. The death of these eight caused the remaining disciples to reduce their ardor. Xiao Yunhe turned to Qin Nan, once again called him a piece of trash and told him to watch carefully. He will show him what a true genius is capable of. Qin Nan and Chu Yun looked at this upstart in silence. They wondered how far their opponent could go. Xiao Yun He was ready and rushed through the bamboo forest. He really deserves to be number one among the top tens of the strongest geniuses. He is so fast. This is how some of the students admired it. Using his strength and the hardening of his body, he was able to walk 300 steps, which is already more than the others. Then he advanced 400 steps. The next 50 steps were already difficult for him. Xiao Yun He is simply incomparable. He was able to take 450 steps, but even for him, this is probably the limit. The students waited their turn and talked among themselves, discussing who was passing the test and how. Next, the subject used his 8th grade golden soul green cup and was able to advance even further. Having freed his soul, he was able to make a final push so as not to take further damage and burst from the destruction of his body. He took 499 steps, just one step short of reaching 500 steps. Wang Chu and Luo Jian Hao immediately followed him and also achieved good results. Each of them walked almost the same 500 steps. Xiao Yunhe received his 3,000 Xiantian pills. So far, he is the only one who has gone this far into the bamboo forest. After passing the test, Xiao Yunhe came up with elder sister Chu Yun and little brother Xiao Leng. He turned to them and said that it was stupid of them to follow Qin Nan. They will regret their choice. But such words only began to irritate the friends of our protagonist. They had confidence in Qin Nan and wanted to support him. Huang Long looked at Lin Zixiao's group and laughed at them. These non-entities dare to be proud of their petty results. He came out to show them the true soul of a warrior. He was 100% confident in himself, and he knew for sure that he could surpass the result of 500 steps, to which Lin Zixiao replied to him so that he would not become arrogant. After all, in the bamboo forest, it is not cultivation that is tested, but the soul. To this, Huang Long replied that he wanted to see whose soul would be stronger. They stood opposite each other and glowed with a strong aura. Will two great geniuses really compete with each other? Some of the students had been waiting for this for a whole month. Someone started betting on Juan Luna, and someone thought that he was too self-confident and his soul was unstable. On the other hand, Lin Zixiao is well-mannered and kind to others, as one of the students thought. But one of the students got angry and asked them to shut up. They are both great geniuses. Who gave the right to discuss them? A duel between two great geniuses, something you rarely see. Xu Qian offers 1,000 Jiantian tablets as a reward for the fight. They thanked him for such a step. Huang Long had long wanted to get even with Lin Zixiao. They had a conflict of characters, and therefore this test would put everything in its place. Without wasting a minute, they rushed towards the bamboo forest to test their body's strength. They easily covered 400 steps. Then they climbed 500 steps deeper and broke the record of previous students by reaching 600 steps. They were already admired because they walked 700 steps, which is very fast. The two geniuses were able to walk up to 850 steps. Then it was difficult for them to get inside. They seemed to be slowing down apparently reaching their limit. In any case, they have already proven that their souls are very strong. But this was not the limit. They had not yet released the soul. When they reached almost 900 steps, they released the soul. It was very difficult to move further. Judging by his appearance, Lin Zixiao had an easier time with this ordeal. As he walked further, Huang Long began to feel a burning sensation all over his body. He could no longer tolerate such tension. He already felt very bad. He fell towards the nearest stone and fell on it. There was also blood coming from his mouth. But at this time, Lin Zixiao was able to walk exactly 900 steps. He felt quite stable at the same time. The students began to congratulate Lin Zixiao on her victory. He turned out to be truly the best among the new students. Even his elder brother Huang Long is no match for him. Lin Zixiao walked up to Huang Long and laughed. He asked if he heard the admiration of the disciples. He can't compare to Lin Zixiao's genius. 
Huang Long was still curled up on the stone. It was difficult for him to even just get up and say a few words. A trembling ran through his body. And now, as the representative of the mystic elder sect, Xu Qian declares Lin Zixiao the winner with a score of 900 steps. Does anyone have any objections? The winner approached Xu Qian and thanked him for all this. However, this was not the end of this ordeal. Qin Nan also decided to prove himself. Everyone started looking in his direction. The boy was ready to test himself with the bamboo forest. In order to delight everyone, he had to surpass all the students. The students wondered how a piece of garbage with a seventh level of body hardening would do this. Therefore, Qin Nan decided to object to the results. He just wanted to ask why, since he was just about to enter this mind-grabbing forest and take the test, why was Lin Zixiao already ranked first? Nobody took his words seriously. According to him, he thinks he will defeat Lin Zixiao. However, even a great genius like Huang Long could not match him. Xu Qian asked Qin Nan if he really thought he could compete with younger brother Lin Zixiao. Everyone again started talking about Qin Nan's impudence and how he wouldn't even take 400 steps in this mind-blowing forest. Everyone again began to humiliate Qin Nan by saying that they did not believe in his strength and considered him an insolent person who decided to make everyone laugh. They shouted that Qin Nan considered himself invincible after killing the child of dark rage. Back then, Lin Zixiao had even defeated Huang Long, to which Qin Nan replied that since this test was organized by the mystic elder sect, Xu Qian must adhere to the rules, and that he doesn't care whether others are convinced otherwise. Lin Zixiao quietly mocked himself that Qin Nan was starting to annoy everyone, and he is brave and courageous, Lin Zixiao thought. For such courage, Lin Zixiao allowed Qin Nan to follow the rules and take the test to find out the result. Xu Qian listened to Lin Zixiao's words and allowed the boy to take the test. He is very interested to know how many steps he can take with such a daring character. Chu Yun began to worry that Qin Nan would get involved in a place where his insolence would destroy him. She valued this acquaintance very much. Everyone dispersed and Qin Nan approached the beginning of the entrance to the bamboo forest, taking away consciousness. The boy was confident in himself and his abilities. Qin Nan is lucky. Lin Zixiao is in a good mood today, so he let him do it. Everyone believes that he will not walk even 300 steps. The disciples heard Brother Duan's words and began to bet money that Qin Nan would not walk 300 steps in the bamboo forest. Lin Zixiao was still angry with the boy and wanted revenge on him. He allows Qin Nan to live a little longer and be destroyed in the future. Wan Long was still sitting by the stone and gathering his strength. He was pretty badly injured if he still couldn't get to his feet. He wondered if Qin Nan could really perform a miracle. Qin Nan gathered his strength and took his first steps into the forest. He walked the first hundred steps with ease. Two hundred steps also did not seem like an obstacle to him. And he approached three hundred steps. The students stood with their mouths open in surprise because Qin Nan was able to reach this point so quickly. Looks like someone is going to lose their money. The top ten disciples were already very angry that Qin Nan was able to go so far. Meanwhile, Qin Nan had already taken 399 steps. It seems they underestimated him. After all, he has an eighth grade golden soul. However, 399 steps must be his limit. Everyone was impressed that Qin Nan was able to take almost 400 steps already but they still consider him trash and a loser. Because Chin Nan ran too fast, the pebble hit his shoes. He stopped to take it out and continue the test. Continuing his run, Chin Nan had already taken 400 steps. The step counter kept accumulating. The figure was already 420 steps. Everyone present at this test was more and more surprised. They initially did not believe that he would be able to pass at least something. Meanwhile, Qin Nan was already superior to elder brother Xiao Yunhe. He was able to run through the bamboo forest more than one of his offenders. After reaching the 600 steps mark, Qin Nan stopped and apologized to Xiao Yunhe and the others who believed that he would not make more than 300 steps. He didn't even notice that he had already made 600. Xiao Yunhe was very furious at Qin Nan's antics. Now he sets a mark of 700 steps that the boy will not surpass her. Everyone started supporting it, to which Chin Nan said that we are raising the stakes and plans to run up to 800 steps. He was very fast and agile. Most likely, this is not even his maximum. Chin Nan covered 700 steps with the same ease and got to the 800 mark. 
He again apologized in a joking manner for letting them down again and exceeding their expectations. Now Lin Zixiao stood in bewilderment and lack of understanding of where this boy got so much strength and stamina. Some have already begun to whisper in whispers that Qin Nan really has a chance to bypass Lin Zixiao. To which Lin Zixiao replied that after 800 steps, the strength of the forest increases significantly. Qin Nan did not stop. He had already taken his 899th step. Lin Zixiao's face turned pale. He never expected that he could be surpassed. Qin Nan's support team were also very impressed with their friend's strength. Seeing how he had reached this point, it could very well be that he would surpass Lin Zixiao. The boy's avid enemy was already shouting at the top of his lungs about how this was possible. After all, Qin Nan is a piece of trash and is not capable of anything. Qin Nan decided to tease everyone again and asked if he could take the last 900th step and beyond. Lin Zixiao never thought that Qin Nan would be able to take 899 steps in this bamboo forest. He can't accept the fact that Qin Nan is really strong. So in Lin Zixiao's eyes, he will always be trash. Will our hero be able to take the 900th step? The pressure from this date is simply colossal. If Lin Zixiao's soul hadn't calmed his thoughts, even he wouldn't have been able to handle it. Even Huang Long couldn't stand it. Wang Long, barely able to pronounce the words, confirmed that even with a ninth-level soul, it is impossible to take 900 steps if you do not calm your thoughts. That's why he lost to him. Everyone again lost faith that the boy could take this step. They began to joke at him in order to prevent him from calming down. But is it? Chin Nan answered. They don't seem to want to admit defeat. In this case, he will help open their eyes. Chin Nan takes his 900th step. Then the pressure increases, but he takes 950 steps. Some of his capillaries begin to burst, but he continues to move on. Chin Nan takes the 999th step. Everyone's jaw drops after such a step. However, he is already starting to take damage. Meanwhile, Chin Nan is about to take his thousandth step. His bones crunch, his skin begins to bleed, and his internal organs are under incredible pressure. But he wants everyone to see how he does it. No one from the mystic elder sect had ever managed to do this. Everyone who tried ended in death, including geniuses with the soul of the 10th grade. Xiao Leng was surprised by the words that even those with a 10th grade soul could not take the thousandth step. Qin Nan shouted to everyone that no one had been able to do this yet. Then watch the path as he defies the heavens and performs a miracle. He is determined. Even if his cultivation and his body are destroyed, nothing will stop him. Qin Nan releases his golden soul of the god of war. He asks the soul of the god of war to challenge the heavens. No one dares to fight her. Nothing will defeat her. As soon as he takes the thousandth step, a powerful burst of energy of incredible strength was formed in the place where he was. A flash of light illuminated everything around with a green glow. Everyone began to cover themselves and turn away from the epicenter of the explosion. What happened? Nobody even guessed. Chin Nan came out from the epicenter completely surrounded by an aura. He made a breakthrough and reached the eighth level of body tempering. Xu Qian watched as the boy took his thousandth step. No one in history has been able to do this, but he did it. Everyone did not understand how this was even possible. It looks like they will all have to admit defeat. This mind-stirring ancient bamboo forest is used by the sect to train new disciples. It turns out that if you can withstand its power, it will contribute to cultivation. Chin Nan proudly walked out of the bamboo forest. He was elated that he could wipe everyone's noses. Everyone was surprised at how Chin Nan managed to take a thousand steps. Someone thought it was a dream. Nobody could accept this fact. Xiao Leng, pointing his finger at Chin Nan, said that Brother Nan had just taken a thousand steps. And by doing this, he went down in history. By that time, Huang Long had already come to his senses and was able to get to his feet. He also thought about the fact that Chin Nan was the first in history to take a thousand steps. How strong is Chin Nan's soul? Such a question was now lodged deep in his head. Chin Nan continued to mock that he had let Xu Qian down by accidentally surpassing Lin Zixiao. He said that he sincerely apologizes to everyone. It so happened that he walked a thousand steps and nothing more could be done about it. Everyone around him felt ashamed of who Chin Nan was thought to be. Isn't it time to announce the real winner? The boy asked Xu Qian. 
I remember he said that whoever could take a thousand steps would receive 20 blue dragon tokens and be generously rewarded by the sect. Since Chin Nan has reached a thousand steps, does it mean that he also ranks first in the test of versatility? Xu Qian would never have thought that this Chin Nan had such a strong soul. It seems like we need to pay more attention to it. He announced that following the rules, Chin Nan, who made history today by taking a thousand steps, ranks first in this test. Thus, his inveterate enemy did not receive his reward. As promised, he tossed him a bag containing 20 blue dragon tokens. The rest of the rewards will await him later. Chin Nan still deftly and easily caught the bag and he was already planning how he would use them. The boy opened the bag and looked at the tokens. They were really there, and everything was fair. The students were very surprised to see 20 tokens in one bag. None of them had even held such a thing in their hands. Xu Qian further told Chin Nan that he needed to wait for the results to be reported to the elders, in order to receive a reward from the mystic elders' sect, to which Chin Nan thanked him and bowed. Unexpectedly, someone shouted Chin Nan's name. The boy turned around to see who was calling him. The voice was familiar. It was Lin Zixiao. He stood nearby and there was a powerful active aura around him. It seems like it's not over yet. He was furious that it was Chin Nan who received the 20 tokens and not him. He began to approach Chin Nan and ordered him to hand over his blue dragon tokens. Lin Zixiao was determined, but he couldn't afford to spit in his direction like that. It seems that Lin Zixiao is about to attack Chin Nan. Some of the students still wanted to see it and waited for it to start. Lin Zixiao had wanted to do this for a long time. He just held back. He is fixated on getting 20 tokens. Not to mention that Lin Zixiao has more than 50 geniuses on his side. If they all attack together, no one will stand. Lin Zixiao was distraught. He still believed that even if Chin Nan's soul was stronger, he himself was just a non-entity. The genius, Lin Zixiao, still continued to insult the boy and say that his cultivation was not worth compared to Lin Zixiao's cultivation. He rushes at Qin Nan with an attack. Lin Zixiao finally showed his true identity. In this case, Qin Nan has no choice but to put him in his place. However, the rested Huang Long comes to Qin Nan's defense. After all, he promised to keep his word if Lin Zixiao broke it. With his powerful hand, he repels the attack of the arrogant Zixiao. Huang Long had long understood that Lin Zixiao was someone who would not be able to admit defeat. If he still wants to fight, then Huang Long will be his opponent. But Lin Zixiao did not perceive him as a serious opponent. Huang Long was so slightly weaker than him that he was also wounded. However, Huang Long did not care about his severe wounds, believing that his strength was enough to tear Lin Zixiao into pieces. He is ready to fight him. He accepted his challenge and now they will fight for real. Each of them was ready to defend their honor. They were about to fight when suddenly Chin Nan interrupted them. He asked him to listen for at least a minute. They didn't start fighting. Everyone was at a loss as to why Chin Nan stopped them. It looked like Chin Nan was up to something. He addressed Lin Zixiao, saying that it had always been a personal conflict between the two of them. There is no need to drag others into this. He doesn't say that he is afraid of the people on Lin Zixiao's side. He just wants to resolve everything between them on his own. Xiao Yunhe shouted, What is Qin Nan thinking? Does he want a one-on-one -on -one fight with Lin Zixiao? For the last time, Qin Nan said to Lin Zixiao, If he is not afraid, then let him accept his life or death challenge. Qin Nan was determined to end this conflict. Everyone again started saying that Qin Nan had gone crazy. After all, he directly challenged Lin Zixiao. Is he tired of living? The difference between him and Lin Zixiao is incredibly large. Does he really think that he will emerge victorious from this duel? If Qin Nan only relies on his cultivation, then even Xiao Yunhe will lose, one of the disciples believes. Chu Yun asked junior brother Qin Nan not to be so impulsive. At the moment, Lin Zixiao still surpasses him in strength, to which Qin Nan told her not to worry because he knows his limit. No wonder he spent so much time training. While Qin Nan was talking with his little sister, Lin Zixiao heard it all and laughed at their words. With a crazy look, he asked him if he wanted to fight him one-on-one, -on -one, and if he was sure about it. But Qin Nan was not afraid of him, because Lin Zixiao had been planning to kill him for a long time. He has been preparing for this, and now is the time to finish what he started. There was mockery in his words. He gives Lin Zixiao a chance to kill him and get his blue dragon tokens. 
Okay, just great, Lin Zixiao answered him. Since Chin Nan already wants his death, he will get it. He was ready to rush at the boy and trample him. The disciples were afraid after Lin Zixiao showed the ideal stage of uniting with the sword. So this is Lin Zixiao's strength. Probably even a genius with the ninth level of body hardening will not withstand even one blow. The fight has just begun, and Lin Zixiao is already using such a strong attack. Everyone thinks that this is the biggest mistake in Qin Nan's life. However, he does not panic and remains calm. Look, everyone, he closed his eyes and got scared. Pointing fingers at him, the students continued to humiliate Qin Nan. Lin Zixiao prepared himself and rushed towards Qin Nan to damage him. Qin Nan was prepared for this and was about to repel his opponent's attack. The fight was to the death. Only by maintaining his calm was Qin Nan able to achieve strength and using a slashing attack, he tried to knock down Lin Zixiao's attack. His opponent was not prepared for the fact that Qin Nan would be able to strike first than him. Lin Zixiao still tried to repel the boy's attack. Their fists hit each other. From such a terrifying force, Lin Zixiao lost his balance and began to fall. This was truly a unique event on this island. Such incredible power. Maybe Qin Nan is far from trash. Those who supported Lin Zixiao had already begun to think about this. How can he exude such a strong aura? Secret kingdom. Qin Nan was able to reach the first stage of the secret realm, but he is only at the eighth level of body hardening. How did he manage to reach the secret kingdom? A disciple with body tempering was able to reach the secret realm. Even the great geniuses of the mystic elder sect were only able to do this after reaching the Xiantian level. All the disciples were also surprised that Qin Nan had reached the secret realm. Qin Nan's fighting talent is something to be feared. Lin Zixiao has only just reached the ideal stage of unity with the sword, yet he is already in the legendary secret realm. Huang Long also appreciated that Qin Nan had reached the secret realm. Qin Nan did not let him down, and he is truly proud of him. Xiao Leng and Chu Yun were also very surprised and admired Qin Nan's elder brother. For them, he was an exemplary student. Lin Zixiao was able to regroup and land on both feet. He laughed lightly. He didn't think that his opponent would reach the secret realm. It turns out that he underestimated him. The battle has just begun, and Lin Zixiao is already retreating? Qin Nan asked him. To which Lin Zixiao answered him so that he would not be arrogant and says that his body is better developed. He became even more angry and said that he was only careless in allowing Qin Nan to carry out a sneak attack. But he still doesn't consider him his equal. Next, he prepares to strike a thousand mountains. Qin Nan was prepared for this. He launched a counterattack using his blade directional skill. He is ready to repel the attacks of his enemy. Their fists crossed again. And with the combined strength of the two geniuses, their punches released a lot of energy around them. A flash of energy demolished the bamboo standing near them and burned the stones. After such a fight, none of the students present would survive. Everything around shone with a bright flash. The students were excited. They covered themselves so that they would not be caught by flying pieces of stones. And to close your eyes from powerful radiation. Chin Nan had a very powerful aura. His attacks were swift and swift. He was ready to see this through to the end. His opponent only managed to repel attacks without having time to carry out any of his own. However, he managed to be in a defensive stance. Qin Nan suppresses Lin Zixiao. This was expected from the secret realm. Everything around was still blinding from the liberated energy and aura. How is this possible? Lin Zixiao was perplexed. How can some garbage with the eighth level of body tempering suppress a genius with the ninth level of body tempering? It's so humiliating. Having repelled all the attacks of our protagonist, Lin Zixiao chose the moment to carry out the attack himself. He shouted at him to die and was preparing to deal a crushing blow. Lin Zixiao went into overdrive and used the nine-layer devil suppression melody technique. Such a terrifying aura, this is the power of the ninth grade. Perhaps this power has almost reached the Xiantian realm. Is this Lin Zixiao's true power? Even someone at the tenth level of body hardening would be instantly destroyed. Huan Long was also terrified by this attack. Qin Nan will definitely not stand it. This is the same melody. This is senior brother Lin Zixiao's strongest attack. Qin Nan will soon accept his death. 
Does Chin Nan now see that even if his strength surpasses that of his opponent, there is still a huge gap between them? His eighth grade soul simply cannot compare to Lin Zixiao's soul. Lin Zixiao gathered all his soul power and decided to make the final attack to defeat the boy. Chin Nan is definitely already a corpse. Such talent will leave this world. After all, he surpassed even Xiao Yunhe. But if he had not been so self confident, he could also have taken one of the places of honor among the ten strongest geniuses. Xu Qian also decided that Qin Nan would not survive. The winner was known in advance. This is all because he was too daring, without a drop of modesty. He dug his own grave. Qin Nan shouted that everything is fine. What was expected from the strongest soul of the ninth grade? At least something will make the fight interesting and memorable. Qin Nan was focused on fighting. Now it was his turn to carry out attacks. I wonder what he was up to. He took a more stable position and pointed his hand upward, using the celestial accumulating strike against your opponent. A powerful column of energy shot towards Lin Zixiao. Xiao Yunhe and Xu Qian gritted their teeth when they saw what the boy was capable of. They don't like this turn of events. Before the attack reached Lin Zixiao himself, he shouted that it was impossible. He didn't know what skill his opponent was using. I didn't understand how he could easily surpass his strongest attack. And right after the last thoughts, a beam of energy reached Lin Zixiao. It struck his entire body, and it began to burn while still in the air. Lin Zixiao let out his last scream. Nobody was prepared for what just happened. Everyone stood with their mouths open and looked at the sky as Lin Zixiao was mutilated. One of the students fell to her knees. She didn't understand if it was reality or if she was dreaming. I couldn't believe that big brother Lin Zixiao had just lost. This is impossible. None of those present could believe that Lin Zixiao was defeated. With one blow, Qin Nan killed a genius at the tenth level of body tempering. How could Qin Nan become so strong? He was actually able to defeat a great genius like Lin Zixiao so easily. Chu Yun was very curious about how strong Qin Nan was. Such a stunning aura. How could a disciple at the eighth level of body tempering use such a deadly technique? Everyone tried to explain this to themselves. Xu Qian walked up to Qin Nan and asked him about the skill he was using. What is this skill and what is it called? Qin Nan was a little exhausted after such a fight. He coughed a little and took deep breaths. However, he was alive. The boy did not immediately answer the question, but walked up to the group of guys supporting Lin Zixiao. He pointed his finger at them and named each one. He had not forgotten that they agreed to Lin Zixiao's proposal to kill Qin Nan. But now he is no longer with us. So he asks them if they still want to kill him. They were scared. Someone raised their hands. They made excuses that it was a mistake and that Lin Zixiao was simply confused and acted impulsively. They assured that they would never think of attacking Qin Nan. Next, Qin Nan addressed both Xiao Yunhe and Duan Mu Yang. After all, they supported his opponent even more. He openly told them that he could barely stand on his feet and that any attack would finish him off immediately. This chance will never come again. And if they want to kill him, then let them not miss the chance. They stood in front of Qin Nan and didn't know how to behave or what to say. The way Qin Nan dealt with their leader filled them with fear. Qin Nan was not afraid of them. He also called them cowards because without Lin Zixiao, they were no longer so impudent and arrogant. Xu Qian clapped his hands to stop further bloodshed. The test is already over, and there is no point in even greater sacrifices. And so, since the test has come to an end, the portal will be activated in three days. Once all the students have returned, the elders will announce the results of the test. The time of testing was coming to an end. The elders gathered again near the square from where everyone was sent to the island. Everyone who was worried about one of the students also gathered there. Mo Li saw Qin Shui and turned to her. He didn't expect her to be here too. He had tricky questions for her. She arrived on time. He just wanted to ask her something. Does she think that junior brother Qin Nan could survive this ordeal? Xiao Qin Shui did not appreciate Mo Li's joke. She furrowed her eyebrows and looked at him contemptuously. One of the elders also reprimanded Mo Li. He said that these were not suitable words for the son of an elder. Qin Nan only has an eighth grade soul, but he doesn't lack courage since he dared to compete with Lin Zixiao. 
The elder thinks that his chances of surviving the test are zero. Mo Li responded to the elder by saying that Qin Nan is the genius that Qin Shui found. Of course she will be worried. That's why he asked this question. The elder continued, Because of Qin Nan, Lin Zixiao is now unable to visit the skill library, and he also dared to mock us. Seeing all his impudence, the elder can say that he is most likely dead. Therefore, Qin Shui need not worry about him. Xiao Qing Shui objected to the elder, asking him to keep his reasons to himself. She is confident that Qin Nan will come out of there alive. If something happened to Qin Nan, then Lady Qin Shui will not forgive Mo Li for it. After all, it's all on his conscience. Mo Li remained calm because he would have complete confidence in his younger brother, Lin Zixiao. There was still some time left before their return. He offered to make a bet. On the terms of whether Qin Nan is alive or not, he wanted to completely annoy Madame Qin Shui. The elder also joined in the bet. However, it is not at all interesting to argue whether he is alive or not. Since he is completely sure that now his corpse is already rotting somewhere, he decided to propose a bet on the number of attacks Qin Nan had dealt before he died. This will be more interesting. There was anger and contempt in his eyes. This is really interesting, Mo Li replied. Now Qin Nan has an eighth grade soul, and he was able to defeat a student at the seventh level of body tempering while he himself was at the fifth. Mo Li bets on three attacks from one person, and the elder bets on one attack, and another elder bet that Qin Nan was killed by a group of people. Elder's little brother Mo Li, I see you are having a lot of fun. Gong Yang, a very close friend and protector of Qin Nan, addressed everyone. They don't seem to know at all that Qin Nan is his brother. Aren't they disrespecting Gong Yang by treating him like a toy? Gong Yang was firmly confident that Qin Nan would be able to pass this test of versatility. He imagined what potential his younger brother had within himself. He went down to the square where all the elders, inner disciples, and others were already gathering. Gong Yang is one of the strongest internal disciples. Even if he came, the results of the test are of great value. Mo Li approached Gong Yan and said that he was afraid that he was mistaken. They only discussed dry facts about how long Qin Nan would last. The elder asked Gong Yang not to be angry. They might have been a little rude but even he should understand that it would be very difficult for Qin Nan to survive the situation he put himself in. Qin Shui also stood up for Qin Nan. She said that if something happened to Qin Nan, then it was all Mo Li's fault. Gong Yang said that he already knew what happened at the meditation place. Don't worry, Qin Nan can't just disappear there. Qin Shui wondered why Gong Yan was so confident in Qin Nan. He didn't have that much time to find out more about him. Gong Yang turned to the elders. He heard them heatedly discussing the bet, and then he asked if he could join and place a bet. The elder backed down a little and asked him again, maybe it's better not to make a bet this time. He admits they went a little overboard. Chin Nan may have had a chance to survive on this island. Mo Li had already made a disappointing plan for how Chin Nan could survive. Just like he knew he was being hunted, he could simply hide somewhere and sit out until the end of the test, to which Gong Yang suggested a bet but not on Qin Nan's life, since he definitely survived. He suggested betting whether Qin Nan could become one of the top five in the versatility test. Everyone around started buzzing. They didn't even want to think about the fact that Qin Nan could take one of the top five places, even after insulting Lin Zixiao and the rest of the disciples. Even Qin Shui herself said that this was too much. It was very presumptuous. But Gong Yang asked her not to worry because he knew what he was doing. Gong Yan thinks that the elders look down on Qin Nan. If this is so, then why are they afraid to accept his terms of bet? If they decide not to participate, then they should apologize for their words. The elder agreed since little brother Gong Yang insisted on it. He is betting that Qin Nan will not be among the top five, and his bet will be 10,000 martial emperor pills. Another elder also supplied 10,000 martial emperor pills. Mo Li is not that rich so he bets 5,000 martial emperor pills. The elders willingly bet against Qin Nan's victory. Another elder supplied 10,000 of the same pills. Gong Yang asked Qin Shui if she wanted to participate. There is rarely a chance to get martial emperor pills. She believes in Qin Nan and bets 4,000 martial emperor pills. Qin Shui really believes that he is fine, and these 4,000 pills are all she has. A total of 75,000 pills are betting that Qin Nan will not be among the top five. Since Gong Yang was the one who proposed this bet, 
he is betting 75,000 martial emperor pills that he will be among the top five in the trial. Hearing the amount of his bet, everyone was speechless. Even the five elders own a little more than 10,000 tablets. Gong Yang is fabulously rich. Time was coming to an end, and a portal began to form in the middle of the square. The portal opened, and they began to return. Mo Li turned to Gong Yan and said that he never thought that he would be so confident in Qin Nan. Mo Li hopes to receive 5,000 martial emperor pills and thanks Gong Yan for being so generous. The elder also joined in thanking Gong Yang and laughed. To them, Qin Nan was just trash that they knew nothing about. The thought of getting rich made the elders' hearts beat faster. But even if Qin Nan entered the top five, they still would not regret their loss. Qin Nan made even the great elder become infatuated with him. Since she even hooked the great elder, how could he be so weak? Gong Yang thought. The first arriving students began to appear from the portal. Everyone turned their gaze in that direction. They were excited about the test results. And Qin Nan comes out first. As if nothing had happened, he left the portal and felt confident. Lady Qin Shui breathed a sigh of relief. She was glad that Qin Nan was okay and had returned. The elders did not think that Qin Nan would actually be able to survive. However, he certainly had no chance of making it into the top five. Mo Li's eyes searched for Lin Zixiao. However, he only saw Xiao Yunhei. He asked what happened and where little brother Lin Zixiao was. Why is he still missing? Xiao Yunhei was crushed and found it difficult to say these words. He could only say his name. Sadness and despair were visible in his eyes. Mo Li had already started yelling at him for not being able to tell what happened and where Lin Zixiao was. He was furious that he didn't understand this. Gathering all his strength, Xiao Yunhe told him that older brother Lin Zixiao was dead. It was difficult for him to even say this phrase. Everyone gasped. These words were like a bolt from the blue. The elders and disciples were very excited about the news that was brought to them. Is Lin Zixiao dead? What nonsense. He has a ninth level soul and he was at the ninth level of body tempering. It would be difficult for any of the newbies to kill him. Xiao Yunhe stood with his head bowed in front of Mo Li, ashamed to look into his eyes. Mi Li shouted and asked who killed Lin Zixiao. Clenching his fist, he continued to shout even louder about who killed Lin Zixiao. He didn't even bet that it was Qin Nan himself. Mo Li saw Huang Long standing and immediately thought of him. He had already shouted his name and headed towards him. He was in an unprecedented rage. Mo Li was sure that it was Huang Long who killed Lin Zixiao. Among everyone, only he could do this. This was just a test for newcomers. Lin Zixiao had a great future with his potential. Huang Long answered him in a calm, languid voice that it was not him because he had something else to do. This is nonsense. What's the point of ruining his reputation? Gong Yang walked up to Mo Li and said his speech with mockery. There is no need to be angry. It is normal that geniuses die during trials. Besides, our bets are still a priority. We need to find out whether Qin Nan became one of the top five in the trial. Mo Li answered in a hopeless voice. What is the point of the bet? For such garbage to be included in the top five? Yes, this is just funny. The elder asked Xiu Qian to come to him and announce the results of the versatility test. In an uncertain voice, he replied that the test of versatility this time. And before he could finish speaking, he was interrupted by Mo Li. He demands to quickly announce whether Qin Nan has entered the top five or not. His anger knew no end. Mo Li told him that Gong Yang had bet 75,000 martial emperor pills on who Qin Nan would take one of the top five places. Xiu Qian was stunned by these words. His mouth and eyes were as open as possible. There was no limit to surprise. That's all true. The elder confirmed that they had made a bet. Now he asks simply to announce the results, and he hopes for their victory against Gong Yang. Xu Qian must tell the elders that in this test, only four people were able to obtain blue dragon tokens. It's normal for the wave that there are few of them, the elder answered. This has happened before, and we already have a strategy for dividing prizes. And so, Xu Qian was sent by the sect to the island to conduct a test for newcomers. He started announcing the places, starting with the last one. Xiao Leng receives one blue dragon token for fourth place. Chu Yun was happy for him because they spent so much time together. Chu Yun receives two blue dragon tokens for third place. She was a little stronger than junior brother Xiao Leng. 
Therefore, it is not surprising that she ranked higher. Juan Luna was announced as the next winner. Having collected three blue dragon tokens, he takes an honorable second place. This ordeal almost cost him his life, and it takes first place in the test of versatility. He was playing for time and wanted to delay declaring Chinnan the winner as long as possible. The elders could no longer bear it, on whom a lot stood from money to honor. They wanted this to finally be cleared up. But this cannot go on forever. And the first place goes to Chin Nan, who received 22 blue dragon tokens. The elders never expected that Chin Nan would take first place. They did not believe that he could even take fifth place. Mo Li was also extremely discouraged by who took first place in the versatility test. He believed that it would be his little brother Lin Zixiao. A bead of sweat ran down Gong Yang's cheek. Considering Chin Nan's eighth grade soul, he thought that the boy would rank fifth at best. But what would it be like to take first place? Moreover, during the test of versatility, Chin Nan took part in the mind-capturing forest test and was able to walk a thousand steps. Added this to Chin Nan's victories. Mo Li was stunned once again. Hearing that Chin Nan had walked a thousand steps in the mind-stirring forest, he began to shake. No one would have thought that Chin Nan's strength was so great. Now Gong Yang was laughing with all his might. It turns out that he just doubled his entire property, as expected from Chin Nan's little brother. A genius who has taken a thousand steps, impressive and amazing. Gong Yang was delighted with the situation. Madame Chin Shui was embarrassed and smiled. After all, Chin Nan did not let her down. She believed in him more than anyone else. Gong Yang expressed his condolences to elder and little brother Mo Li. He asks to accept his condolences. The one they thought was an insect took first place and went down in history. And now he is waiting for the emperor's honestly earned pills. Namely, 75,000 martial emperor pills. The elders are already not in a good spirit after hearing the news. One of the disciples also bet on Chin Nan to win. And he won too. He thanks Chin Nan for being the best. Everyone around this boy felt awkward. Mo Li still didn't accept the fact that this happened. He grabbed Xiu Qian's shoulder and continued yelling why Lin Zixiao didn't do anything to Chin Nan. He trotted over his shoulder and asked him to tell him who killed his younger brother Lin Zixiao. Was it really Huang Long? Mo Li's mind was in a frenzy. Xiu Qian removed Mo Li's hand from his shoulder and asked Big Brother to calm down. He asked him to calm down so he could tell him who killed Lin Zixiao. And he said, it was Chin Nan. Hearing this name, Mo Li's insides snapped. He would never have thought that it could be trash and an insect like Chin Nan. He stammered and could not say anything complete. Chin Nan finally joined the conversation. He turned to Xiu Qian and assured her that everything was fine. He himself will say that he killed Lin Zixiao. After Chin Nan himself said that he fought with Lin Zixiao and defeated him, the students were horrified and moved away from him. But the boy himself was calm and knew what he was doing. After mocking Mo Li and the elders a bit, he asked for his apology because a piece of trash like him had crushed the great genius Lin Zixiao. Mo Li still didn't believe that this could even happen. He will definitely want to take revenge on Qin Nan. For him, little brother Lin Zixiao was very close. He already wanted to attack Qin Nan. His rage knew no bounds. How could he kill him when he was at the eighth level of body tempering? Who helped Chin Nan? Mo Li can't imagine that Chin Nan did this alone. Chin Nan was completely confident in his abilities, so he was able to defeat Lin Zixiao. To him, he was another arrogant genius who had a rich family. Chin Nan decided to show his strength to everyone present, and in particular Mo Li. He showed an aura. Powerful energy was concentrated around him. The initial stage of the secret kingdom, Mo Li asked him. After Chin Nan showed his stage of development, Perhaps Mo Li would believe that he could really do it. Madame Ching Shui took a deep breath after seeing how powerful Chin Nan was. She covered her mouth with her hand and was surprised that little brother had already reached the beginning stage of the secret realm. No wonder he was able to kill Lin Zixiao. However, how did this even happen? The elder wondered. Chin Nan is just an insect. How did he manage to reach the secret realm? Mo Li said that he underestimated Chin Nan. This was the first time he had seen someone with an 8th grade soul surpass someone with a ninth grade soul. But he killed Lin Zixiao. Now Chin Nan is Mo Li's sworn enemy. 
it's time to fulfill the terms of the bet. Mo Li handed over his 5,000 Martial Emperor pills, carelessly throwing them into the rest of the pile. He will never forget this day. Finally, he advised Chin Nan to take better care of herself and left the square. He will think about how he can take revenge on Chin Nan. After all, he will not forgive the loss of his younger brother. This Mo Li will be a much more difficult opponent than Lin Zixiao. Even in such a situation, he was able to restrain himself. If Chin Nan had a chance in the future, he would not be able to get rid of Mo Li so easily. Gong Yang addressed the elders and dear younger brothers and sisters. Mo Li had already given him his martial emperor pills. Now it is their turn to fulfill the terms of the bet. The elders and disciples reluctantly chipped in with their belongings. A huge pile of martial emperor pill bottles had already gathered. I wonder how Gong Yang will deliver all this to his home. Gong Yang hugged the boy and was very happy that he won the argument. If it weren't for Chin Nan, he would not have been able to win so many pills in the bet. He will give him some when the elders finish distributing the prizes. It's time for the most enjoyable part, for which everyone has gathered here. They begin distributing the versatility challenge prizes. Huang Long, Chu Yun, and Xiao Leng received their awards. They earned them through their labor, their dexterity, dexterity, and hardening of body and soul. This is the Nine Rotation Golden Tablet. It would be best to take it after reaching the Xiantian realm for maximum results. Based on the sect's rules, if a disciple made history by reaching a thousand steps, he would be awarded it. The time has come for the elder to reward Qin Nan as well. On behalf of the Mystic Elder Sect, he rewards Qin Nan with a hundred thousand Xiantian pills and a bag to store them. All this number of tablets could be stored in a small bag. Chin Nan accepted this award. 100,000 Giantian pills is approximately 1,000 Martial Emperor pills. Plus, it comes with a storage bag. This is quite a generous reward, Chin Nan believes. The elder announced that that was all for now. The test of versatility is declared over. After some time, the outer elders will arrive and send the disciples to the outer kingdom. When it was all over, the students went to their rooms, to places where they could relax and share their impressions after the completed test. Chin Nan looked around and really liked this place. It was quite elegant. Chin Nan Gong Yang and Madame Chin Shui gathered at the tea party. This place was designed by an inner disciple and made specifically for tea drinking, Gong Yang explained. In addition, the rooms here are filled with an unapproachable aura. No one will be able to eavesdrop unless he is a martial emperor. Madame Xiao said to Chin Nan, who would never have thought that he was so secretive. She was very worried about him, to which Chin Nan became a little embarrassed and replied that he was being hunted by Lin Zixiao and the whole group. I had to focus on development. Chin Nan simply did not expect that he would be lucky enough to meet someone on the island, and thanks to him, he grew greatly in strength. Gong Yang asked not to worry about it now and decided to split the pills he won. Little sister Qin Shui supplied 4,000 martial emperor pills, so Gong Yang should give her 8,000, but decided to round up and give her 10,000. Gong Yang only won so many pills because of Qin Nan. Moreover, as his brother Yang, he should not treat him badly, so he offered him 30,000 martial emperor pills. Qin Nan can use them as he wishes. As many as 30,000 martial emperor pills. Qin Nan's eyes were like a child's in surprise, this is comparable to millions of Xiantian pills. Chin Nan had never seen or held such a quantity in his hands. Chin Nan joked that in this way, Gong Yang wanted to scare him to death. Gong Yang only won these pills because he believed in him, and of course, he will be glad to accept this gift. But he only wants to take 10,000. Gong Yang was surprised that Chin Nan only took a third of what was offered. However, he agreed with this and showed gratitude to him by bowing. Gong Yang finished his tea and discussed all the necessary issues with the company. After that, he decided to say goodbye in order to leave the couple alone. There was an awkward silence between them after he left. Suddenly, Qin Nan remembered that he had not used the escape ball that Qin Shui had given him. He offered to take it away because he no longer needed it. She only gave it to Qin Nan because she was worried about his safety. Since you took it, then keep it for yourself. It may still be useful to you, Mrs. Qin Shui answered him. She was embarrassed to ask him, but still decided. Qin Shui asked how much more Qin Nan was hiding. She was interested to know what potential the boy had. 
Chin Nan hesitated and quickly replied that he was not hiding anything from her. He felt a little embarrassed by this question. She moved closer to him and asked if it was true that he was not hiding anything. She became curious about what else Chin Nan was capable of. Chin Nan removed the awkward smile from his face and told her seriously that she once saw everything with her own eyes, leaving her with something to think about. She smiled just as awkwardly and replied that she would wait for that moment. She also finished her tea and was about to leave. She recently accepted a mission, so she will be absent from the sect for some time. This place is protected by an impregnable aura, so Chin Nan can practice a little here. By the way, you should not forget that this is the mystic elder sect. So even in the outer realm, there are many talented disciples. So she asked Chin Nan to be more restrained. Chin Nan replied with a slight laugh that he would listen to her advice. Chin Shui was already leaving. And finally, she addressed him by name. Slightly louder than a whisper, she told him that she would be waiting for him in the inner area. To which Chin Nan became embarrassed again. It sounded ambiguous to him. After that, she left on a mission. Left alone, Chin Nan decided that the most important thing now would be to improve the soul of the god of war. He had a lot of resources for training. 30,000 Giantian pills from the sect, and even the martial emperor pills, that is another million. I wonder how much the soul will improve. Chin Nan calculated and decided to start with 3,000 Giantian pills. He started taking pills and training his war god soul. After swallowing 3,000 tablets, he waited a little and this did not lead to any result. He decided to increase his intake and ate another additional portion. A whole hour has already passed. Chin Nan has already taken 9,000 Giantian pills, but there is still no change. He was a little sad that progress had slowed down. He continued to swallow the pills. Improving the soul of the god of war will cost him a lot of luck. After he ate another batch of pills, his soul awakened and became a 10th grade soul. Ten golden rays! It finally worked! Chin Nan shouted with joy. But he needed to calm down in order to continue training. The boy still has 90,000 Giantian pills. He also has a chance to promote his soul to a legendary mystic class if he accepts all of them. But if there are not enough of them, then the Battle Emperor's pills will be used. There is no need to waste any more time. Chin Nan continued to swallow the pills. Three hours passed. Chin Nan had already completely filled his stomach with them, but 90,000 Giantian pills were not enough. It looks like for the next level you need to start taking Martial Emperor pills. Chin Nan looked at the pill in the Emperor's hand. It was unusual, and he accepted the first hundred. Then, 300, and so he reached 999 tablets. Soul of the God of War, challenge heaven and earth. No one will dare challenge you. Nothing will crush her. Chin Nan didn't understand what was happening to him now. It was as if he was in some other world in the form of a spirit. He floated in weightlessness, and below him there was a huge crevice through which a bright light shone. Chin Nan saw someone there. This was a humanoid image. Perhaps it was the god of war. After that, everything began to shine brightly. So Chin Nan had to cover her eyes with her hand and he began to fall into the void. The awakening of the divine eyes that create the universe took place. Three days had passed since Chin Nan started training and lost consciousness. The teapot was still on the table. It appears that no one has entered this room during this time. Chin Nan woke up with a terrible headache just like last time. What happened in the dream? And what kind of body was this? The boy decided to immediately check whether the soul of the god of war had changed. But I sat down to meditate to find out if I needed to train even further. Chin Nan saw expressive eyes with red pupils. What could this mean? Are the eyes of the war god fully revealed? Chin Nan wondered what this wonderful dream had led him to. Since the divine martial spirit's eyes have fully formed, it turns out that his eyes now have hidden power. Chin Nan decided to try to check how he sees now and he used divine eyes that see everything. He saw a student who was meditating. He also saw how not far from the complex, two students were sitting pleasantly over a cup of tea. They were not far from the bamboo grove, and he was also able to see a sweet couple who wanted privacy. They were already on the bed and the fun began. Suddenly this girl felt something. She covered herself and shouted, Who is it? Who's peeping? Chin Nan felt embarrassed and ashamed. He immediately stopped watching them. 
the eyes of the god of war are incredible. When Chinnan opens them, he can even see through the impregnable aura. He can easily check the veracity of any information given to him. Chinnan played a little with his new ability and had already decided to leave the room. When a man met him at the entrance, he's already tired of waiting for the boy. Chin Nan was a little embarrassed and looked to see who it was and maybe it was Bai Heng. He didn't know him very well. Bai Heng heard from senior sister Xiao that Chin Nan was practicing here, and he decided to wait for him here. There is no need to worry about the outer kingdom. He had already helped Chin Nan with all the procedures. Now Chin Nan is a full-fledged external disciple, so he can come back whenever he wants. Chin Nan asked him, has he been here all these few days? To which Bai replied that he was. He is not sure what happened to the inner disciples back then. They all started shouting angrily, as if they were being spied on, and this scared him. Chin Nan thanked him for his help. He offered him 100 martial emperor pills. He can take them as payment for assistance in registration. Bai was delighted at Chin Nan's offer and thanked him for it. Chin Nan can turn to him whenever he needs help. By the way, Bai heard that there will be an auction of the outer realm in the treasury. But he is not sure whether Chin Nan will be interested in this. The boy was interested in this. It sounds interesting. He suggested that he go and have a look. After Chin Nan reached the secret realm, he needed a better blade. This auction will come in handy. Everyone gathered around the auction building a little at a time. Bai Heng handed over the external disciple badge to Chin Nan. He must now register before entering this treasury. It must be remembered that external students are only allowed to go to the first floor. While internal, you can visit the second and third floors, and the fourth floor is only open to core students. This is the first floor of the treasury. When outside disciples want to purchase weapons or rare materials, they can come here to try their luck. One of the visitors brought several of his expensive items for sale. The first one looked like some kind of large pearl along with beads and a bubble. His second item is a sword. It was a small blade decorated with gold. The blade itself was wider than usual. There was also hand protection on the guard. The treasury is full of jewels. It feels like Qin Nan has entered a treasure city. He was interested in exploring everything here. The owner of the trading shop was luring people. These treasures were collected from ancient ruins. He guarantees everyone that they are worth every pill. Qin Nan and Bai Heng came closer. Bai turned his attention to some items on the counter. He became interested in what was there. At the same time, the boy used his new power. Eyes of the soul of the god of war. He saw that they were all quite ordinary. Could treasures like these end up in the outer realm auction? Chin Nan continued to look at the goods and turned his attention to one sword. This ancient sword is not that bad and exudes strong energy and looks quite sharp. However, 10,000 pain emperor pills are too expensive for him. Although he had a purple dragon token with scarlet teeth, allowing him to go to the third floor and even the fourth, there was no particular need for it. Chin Nan felt some kind of force. He turned around to see what it was. It was spiritual ginseng. A girl in a huge black robe sat next to him. Looks like she was selling it. She asked not to touch the goods. You can only look. Although this spiritual ginseng doesn't look like anything special, it seems to have power in it. Chin Nan needs this treasure. Chin Nan thought it over and decided to buy it for himself. He asked what his price was. The saleswoman answered him, a thousand Giantian tablets. Bai Hang noticed that he was looking at Chin Nan and was very surprised at the price of this ginseng. In his opinion, it is already going out. This is a robbery in broad daylight, he shouted to which the seller replied in a calm voice that it was up to them to decide whether to buy it or not. However, Chin Nan saw the strength in him and was interested. He offered her ten martial emperor pills, the ratio being equal to thousands of Giantian pills. He hands her a bottle for payment. Bai Heng was very surprised and asked Chin Nan why he bought this spiritual ginseng. It's obvious that he's already deteriorating. It will be useless. Chin Nan told him that he bought it just out of interest. It didn't cost that much anyway. He still had supplies of pills. Bai Heng thought to himself, as expected from young master Chin Nan, ten martial emperor pills are nothing to him. He wanted to help him based on his experience. After Chin Nan made the purchase, someone called his name from behind. He turned around to see who it was. It was an adult guy with two guards. 
He was dressed in a stylish black robe with gold accents. He asked if it was Qin Nan. Bai Heng asked him a counter question about who he was. They didn't look like peaceful guys. To which the stranger replied that it was not his business to know who he was. He turned to Qin Nan again and introduced himself as Nangong Ershao, Nangong Cheng's brother. He immediately tells Qin Nan that he is not to his liking and he better forget about today's auction. Otherwise, there will be consequences. The girls, who heard by chance whose brother he was, became worried. They spoke in whispers. One of them heard about his brother. He is very self-confident. He was a headache for many girls, but they were afraid to talk about it. Bai Heng said in Qin Nan's ear that Nang Gong Cheng stood at the top among the outer disciples of the entire kingdom. Besides his ninth grade soul, he had reached the middle stage of Xiantian. He is highly respected by the first elder of the outer realm. An ill-wisher with a menacing face asked Qin Nan if he was scared. It looks like the dialogue will continue to be tense. Qin Nan, without hesitation, simply sent him very far into the forest. He hated it when someone forbade him to do something and told him what to do. Everyone in the auction room started talking about what was on Qin Nan's mind and whether he knew that this was Nan Gong Cheng's own brother. They may not have participated in the conversation, but they were already afraid of him. One of the girls recognized Qin Nan. It seems that she had seen him before. She knows that he took first place in the test of versatility and also reached a thousand steps in the ancient mind-stirring forest. It seems that Qin Nan and Luck are two different things. He met Nan Gong Ershao and also sent him. Ershao became angry at the boy's words. Qin Nan remained calm and felt at ease in this conversation. He said that he had no complaints against him. Ershao snapped his fingers and the manager approached him. He admits that Qin Nan is stronger than him, but in vain he contacted him. He will show him how he can make sure he doesn't participate in the auction. He decided to act meanly and told the manager that Qin Nan had set up a booth here. In his opinion, people like him should not be allowed to participate in the auction. The manager is the person in charge of the first floor of the treasury. He asked which one it was. Having found out who was making noise, he forbade Qin Nan from participating in the auction. In addition, he forbids him to enter the treasury for a month. Otherwise, he will be punished based on the rules. Everyone present cheered. They laughed because Qin Nan had just recently arrived at the mystic elder sect. No wonder he didn't know about Ershao. He has connections with the treasury manager. Qin Nan listened to what punishment awaited him, and I asked him if he was a responsible person. He apologized and showed his elder badge. Qin Nan believes that the manager has no right to punish him. Everyone present at the auction was again very surprised by the turn of events. Few people knew what kind of token it was or had never seen it in person. The manager asked with great surprise where Qin Nan got this token from. He didn't understand how the boy had the courage to say that the elder himself had given him this token. This is a serious violation. He asks Qin Nan to leave the auction. Er Shao really wanted to get Chu Yun's attention. He believes that Qin Nan himself is to blame for all this. He doesn't want to share her with anyone. She is only his. Qin Nan was very surprised that the manager did not recognize this token. Now he was excited. By that time, the manager had already called security. He believed that Qin Nan was trying to deceive him with some strange token, and he ordered the guards to seize the boy. The guards surrounded Qin Nan and his friend Bai Heng. They still did not understand why everyone treated Qin Nan this way and what awaited them next. The manager was pleased that he had caught the offender and Er Shao was glad that he was able to ruin Qin Nan's life. Suddenly, in the heat of events, someone came to the auction and indignantly asked what was happening here. It is possible that this will be a salvation for the guys. It was one of the elders who came in. He was also dressed in a black robe with gold accents and a blue belt. He began to ask what kind of booth was here. The manager immediately pointed his finger at Qin Nan and said that this disciple dared to pretend that he had an elder token. His actions are absolutely offensive to the rules of the sect, so he decided to deal with it himself. The manager immediately decided to show the elder the taken Chin Nan token. The elder looked at him and realized what the noise was all about. The elder was shocked by the situation when he recognized the token. After all, he has more knowledge than the manager, and he knew who could give such a token. He slapped the manager, calling him an idiot. 
The elder seemed blind when he allowed such a useless person to be hired into the treasury. He doesn't want to see him at this place of work anymore. The manager did not understand anything and was very scared. The elder was simply furious and said that he would help throw him out if he did not leave immediately. Shouting at the entire auction, the manager asked to spare him and was already storming away. The elder was indeed very angry with him for such an unpleasant situation. Nangong Ershao and his company also did not understand how the situation suddenly turned against them. They were also very worried. The elder asked Chin Nan to apologize for all this. The manager was completely blinded when he did not understand which token he was given. He hopes that his younger brother is not affected by this. Chin Nan told him that there was no reason to worry. But it was Nangong Ershao who conspired with this person to prevent him from going to the auction. Chin Nan wants this guy to never be allowed to enter the treasury again. The elder took note of Chin Nan's words and from that day on forbade Er Shao to enter the treasury. Violation of the ban will lead to expulsion from the sect. After these words, Er Shao lost his breath. He couldn't say a word. He was simply shocked that he was banned from visiting the treasury forever. He will not forget today and will make Chin Nan bow down before him and beg for mercy. He couldn't let go of such humiliation. The elder brought up his palms, which contained Chin Nan's token, and handed it over. This is how the situation turned upside down. After this, the elder, as an apology, invited Chin Nan to choose up to three jewels at auction without any payment. Moreover, no one has the right to compete with him for these items. Bai Heng thought after the elder's words that Chin Nan could take the three treasures for free. He became very interested in what kind of token he had and how he got it. Chin Nan thanked the elder for resolving the conflict and generous compensation. He also asked the elder to keep his identity secret. After the elder had already left them, Bai Hang decided to ask Chin Nan for the token. After all, he had never seen anything like this before. To which Chin Nan responded very briefly and without any interest. That the token is a gift from an elder. As he understood, the token allows war on all floors of the treasury. For this token to truly give Chin Nan the ability to go to all the floors of the treasury, someone behind Chin Nan must be exactly at the level of a great elder. Bai Heng now definitely believes that his friendship with Chin Nan will benefit him in the future. As soon as everything became quiet and everyone started to leave, someone started shouting that Nang Gong Chung had come in here. The disciples were not happy that he came. They won't even have a chance to compete for more valuable treasures at the auction. No one expected him to come. He was supposed to be in privacy. Nangong Chung came to the auction, a guy in a beautiful purple robe with gold accents. He also had several of his people with him for support. He had a ninth grade soul, an ideal stage in unity with a sword, and an average Xiantian stage. And he's not that bad. It will probably be even stronger than Lin Zixiao. Nangong Chung walked up to Chin Nan and asked if he was the one he was looking for. He obviously came after his younger brother complained to him. When asked about Chin Nan's name, he simply turned his head slightly to the side and exhaled loudly, as if showing that he was already tired of it. And he's a kid with that kind of character. Everyone present became very excited. How dare he ignore Nangong Chung's presence? No one present could have done that. Chung said that his younger brother is quite cocky, and if he offended Chin Nan, he asked him to forgive him for it. Chin Nan remained silent again. Ignored elder brother Chung, he decided to leave silently. Chung also calmly said that the blame for banning his younger brother from entering the treasury lay solely with him. However, he must remind Chin Nan not to be so contemptuous of others. And it's better for Chin Nan not to mess with Nangong Chung. Otherwise, the consequences will stun him. After that, he left. Everyone began to say that Chung's words were simply undeniable. Someone didn't expect that he would come and apologize, and not just come to destroy Chin Nan. Bai Heng still wanted to say something to Chin Nan, but the boy assured that everything was in order and they needed to go to the auction. It would start soon. He still needs to choose new items for himself. Everyone gathered in the hall where the auction itself was held. The presenter greeted everyone present. His name was Old Zhang, and he was the master of ceremony for this auction. He assumes that everyone here clearly knows the rules. Therefore, he will skip their reminder and go straight to the first treasure. The owner put the first lot up for sale. 
Everyone present began to listen carefully and see what would happen there. And the first lot is three golden lotus petals. They lay beautifully on a red pillow and waited for their owner. Seeing the first lot, everyone stood up from their chairs. This time, the auction in the courtyard is really cool. Everyone wanted this flower. With its help, you can improve your strength quite well. The elder did not talk much about the flower and immediately moved on to the price. Its starting price is 1,000 Giantian tablets, and each price increase should not be less than 500 tablets. Someone immediately raised the rate to 1,500. Another student bet 2,000. Immediately after this, a bet of 3,000 appears. Chin Nan thought about it. He didn't expect that the price of these three golden lotus petals was so high. At the same time, so many people present fought for the flower. And the first lot, three golden lotus petals, was sold. The final price is 8,000 Giantian pills. The next treasure to be auctioned is one of the top three treasures in this auction. Probably many of the students came precisely for them. Many of them must have already seen this seven-colored rose. As everyone knows, it is extremely difficult to break through the 10th level body tempering innate realm. With its help, percent you will break through to the first level of the innate realm. Each of the petals can improve the perception seven times that of the three-leaf golden lotus, and its starting price is 5,000 Ziantian tablets. Everyone immediately began to fight for it, outbidding each other. Nangong Cheng needed her. He immediately supplied 50,000 Giantian pills. He hopes that no one will compete with him, because everyone already knows that he is just one step away from his innate kingdom. After everyone realized that Cheng was interested in the flower, everyone immediately backed down. Their fight immediately stopped because no one wanted to cross Nangong Cheng's path. The auction owner decided because Nangong Cheng's younger brother was willing to give 50,000 Giantian pills for him, and no one will compete. Then this seven-colored rose will be given to him. The deal was about to be completed when someone from the audience said that he wanted this seven-color rose. The elder was very surprised that someone would contradict Nangong Cheng. Everyone immediately turned to look at whoever said it. It was Chin Nan. He also needs this seven-colored rose to achieve mastery and body hardening. He felt calm and knew what he was doing. The auction owner was surprised and objected to him. It's a pity, but this seven-color kind already belongs to Nangong Cheng. But this situation did not suit Chin Nan. Since he wants it, then whoever comes today, this seven-colored rose will belong to him. Nangong Cheng walked up to the old man and asked him not to be angry. Since this student wants to compete, let him go. Today he wants to see what this student has to offer. Chin Nan folded his arms and asked why he should bet. He just said that the seven-colored rose is his, so it belongs to him. Nangong Cheng just laughed. He thinks that since Chin Nan can't afford the price, then he shouldn't make a problem. While he was laughing, an elder approached Zhang Lao and whispered something in his ear. He told him that Chin Nan had the opportunity to choose three items and not pay anything for them. Plus, no one can compete for these items. After hearing this, Zhang announced that this seven-color rose belonged to Chin Nan. The girl who brought out the goods was already holding a tray with a flower, and all that remained was to pick it up after the transaction. Nangong Cheng was very surprised by this development of events. He really didn't like that someone stole this wonderful flower from under his nose. The old man became worried and decided to ask Cheng for forgiveness for the boy, since he did not know who he was. This seven-color rose now belongs to Chin Nan, and he doesn't have to pay anything for it. This filled some of the students with fear. They put themselves in Chin Nan's place and imagined what Nangong Cheng could do to him. Nobody wanted to cross his path. Nangong Cheng was angry. Such auction prizes were always very expensive. So why did he get this prize for free? To which Zhang Lao replied that these are the rules of the sect. He did not explain the situation and simply moved on to the next lot. Chin Nan sat quietly and waited for the next lots that interested him. To better select items, he can still use his god vision. Cheng harbored a grudge against Chin Nan. He remembered everything that happened this time. It will make him regret it. Meanwhile, the next lot was brought. He was already the 20th at this auction. It was spiritual ambergris. When this ambergris is burned, it emits an unusual aroma, which in turn helps strengthen the soul and can also help people break through to the secret realm of sword unity. 
Its starting price is 10,000 Giantian tablets. The students immediately began to offer their bid. 11,000, 15,000. One of the students has not been able to move on to the next stage for six months, so he bets 18,000. This bet is almost immediately outbid by 25,000. Nangong Cheng decided to immediately weed out all the unnecessary ones and offered 50,000 tablets to Xiantian. As expected, senior brother Nangong is very rich so he can easily outbid. This spiritual ambergris is very rare, so he warned Qin Nan that if he didn't buy it now, it would be more difficult to find next time. If this interested him, then he could compete with Cheng, since elder brother Cheng has already said that this is reasonable. In this case, Qin Nan wants to get her for himself. Nangong Cheng still didn't know how many items Qin Nan could take for free, so he thought that he would bargain with him, hoping that the boy will not have such funds. After Qin Nan wishes for spiritual ambergris, the auction host gives it to him without question. Cheng did not expect such a turn of events. He didn't understand why everything was turning out this way. He asked the elder if he had made a mistake. Because Qin Nan didn't even offer a price, why would they just give him such a valuable thing? The auction host did not even pay attention to his words and ignored him. Moving on to the next lot. This is a star sword forged from star stone from outer space. He can cut through metal with ease, but ignores the ground. Chin Nan became interested in this item too. In his opinion, it was a strong sword. He still had the last opportunity to take something for free, but he did not fight for it. Nangong Cheng was angry and didn't understand this Qin Nan's position. He easily took the two treasures that Cheng was fighting for. Cheng wants to take these treasures for himself. Bai Heng told Qin Nan that when the time comes, they will be more careful with this proud Nangong Cheng, to which Qin Nan replied that it was okay because he had a way to deal with him. The auction owner announces the final and asks for the last lot. This will be the last treasure offered at this auction. It was a set of seven swords. It was called the Seven Deadly Sins. It was an ideal weapon of superior quality and strength. Nangong Cheng himself was waiting for this lot. He definitely wanted to have it for himself. Thus, become even stronger and cooler. Qin Nan decided to use the eyes of the God of War to check how serious this lot was. These seven ancient swords are a little strange. They seem to be connected to each other. Zhang Lao said that these seven ancient swords are considered one, called the Seven Deadly Sins. An elder of our sect accidentally found these swords in the ruins. Later, according to our sect's assessment, the history of these swords is mysterious. But their sharpness and material are completely comparable to mystical weapons. Moreover, according to the elder's assumption, if these swords were combined, their power would surpass the mystical weapon. The students immediately began discussing these swords. Not everyone in the outer realm has mystical weapons. One of the guys didn't expect that this time there would actually be such a valuable treasure. Zhang Lao announces a starting price of 50,000 Giantian pills. Each price increase must be at least 10,000 tablets. Let the bidding begin. For some reason, everyone fell silent after the start. Nobody bid. Usually, everyone immediately began to fight for the lot, but not this time. For some reason, the students looked back at Qin Nan, but he continued to sit quietly. The auction host grabbed his head because he had completely forgotten about the boy. He happily asked Qin Nan if he wanted these seven deadly sins, because Qin Nan did not use his last attempt to get a free lot. All the students were again very surprised. They didn't understand why Qin Nan was offered everything, and he got it for nothing. They considered it dishonest, but they had to follow the rules of the sect. Nangong Cheng laughed. He really wanted to get this set of swords, especially because he was unable to purchase the previous lots he needed. He still doesn't believe that Qin Nan can get the third treasure for free. Nangong Cheng bets 100,000 Giantian pills. Who would want to outbid him? He asks everyone to be brave. Qin Nan replies in a languid voice that these seven deadly sins are exactly what he wants. So he takes them for himself. Zhang Lao unconditionally accepts Qin Nan's wishes and passes them on to him. The auction is declared closed. Nangong Cheng was unexpectedly unable to hold the water he was drinking in his mouth and spat it out. Everyone started to leave. Someone was able to purchase some interesting items for themselves. Other students were unable to compete for the treasures they needed, 
and some came just to enjoy the atmosphere of the auction. Bai Heng sat next to Qin Nan. They had fun, chatted, and shared their emotions about the entire auction. Nang Gong Cheng walked to their table and congratulated Qin Nan for acquiring the seven deadly sins. Originally, elder brother Lung Feng had instructed him to retrieve these swords, but he did not expect that Qin Nan would beat him to it. By the way, senior brother Leng Feng is very interested in these swords. After completing the mission, when he finds out that Qin Nan took the swords, he will definitely go and talk to him. Bai Heng asked, Senior brother Leng Feng? It seems that they were deliberately decided to set them up. Qin Nan asked, Who is elder brother Leng Feng? Among external disciples, they are divided into external and internal. Once you reach the Xiantian realm, you can enter the inner realm. And senior brother Leng Feng, who is one of the top ten disciples of the inner realm, is known for his hard blows. Everyone who ever insulted him was challenged and killed by him. They ended the conversation. Nang Gong was the first to leave the treasury, followed by Qin Nan and Bai Heng. Nang Gong turned around and finally said that he was warning Qin Nan now that it was better to be careful around him. Qin Nan decided not to respond to this and was about to leave. However, Bai Heng stopped him because there was someone behind the boy. They clearly came to him. The elders stood there, leading the auction. They slightly forced a smile and waved at him. They still needed to see him off. Qin Nan thanked the elders. He was pleased with today's auction. In addition, if more auctions take place, he asks to be notified. He will definitely come again. The elders smiled awkwardly and wished Qin Nan to stay happily. In fact, Qin Nan ruined them a little by choosing some of the expensive lots for free. Qin Nan and Bai Heng walked further. Two mountains were visible in front of them. This is the mountain of the outer kingdom and the mountain of the inner kingdom. They are both residences for external disciples. The entire area is covered with an impregnable aura to prevent surveillance. In addition, the residences are separated. The chi in the first residence is five times greater than in the fifth and ten times greater than in the tenth. The difference is simply huge. Young Master Qin Nan is ranked fifth among external disciples, so he can live in the fifth residence of the Outer Realm Mountain. So if his rank among external disciples rises, then other residences will be available to him. Nangong Cheng now lives in the first residence. This encouraged Qin Nan and gave her more incentive to train harder. Qin Nan asked where Huang Long, So Leng, and Chu Yun were. Bai Heng replied that Huang was in second place among the outer disciples. Chu Yun was in 11th place, and Xiao Leng was in 12th place. They took on some tasks and left the sect to begin training. They approached the residence where Qin Nan would live. It was a beautiful one-story brick building. There were some trees and well-groomed bushes around. Qin Nan felt the power of this place. The Qi of the fifth residence is already so impressive. How much Qi is in the first residence? If the first residence has five times more Qi than the fifth residence, then the difference in benefits becomes enormous. Bai Heng accompanied Qin Nan to his residence, and his task was completed. He already needed to leave. Qin Nan thanked him for his help on the way here. He happily replied that there was no problem. He just had to do it. And his thoughts were that this time he managed to get closer to the young master Qin Nan. Qin Nan walked into his residence and laid out on the table all of his treasures that he had bought at the market and won at the auction. He managed to get quite a lot of good things. Qin Nan didn't think that the token would allow him to take three treasures for free. Everything turned out too well. This made him happy. He knows about almost all of his new subjects. The only thing he's not sure about is ginseng. He's really kind of strange. If his eyes as the god of war are to be believed, the amount of power contained within this ginseng is simply incredible. There must be a way to awaken her. Qin Nan's eyes shone as he came up with a brilliant idea on how to awaken the power of ginseng. I should have tried it sooner. He bit his finger to draw some blood. Quite an unexpected suggestion to awaken the power of ginseng in this way. When it comes to rare treasures or weapons, they often need to be purified with fresh blood. He wants to try this method first. A drop of blood dripped onto the ginseng root. Qin Nan didn't have to wait long for a reaction to this. The ginseng root began to glow brightly. Qin Nan had to close her eyes and cover her eyes with her hand because the light was very bright. All the items he brought, spiritual ambergris, seven-color rose, and a few others, 
began to glow with some strange aura. Chin Nan did not predict that this could happen. He still didn't understand what was happening. The seven color rose, spiritual ambergris, nine rotations, golden pill, and even his martial emperor pills had all disappeared. Chin Nan was angry that such valuable items had disappeared somewhere, and he decided to hit the ginseng root with his fist. Meanwhile, students began to run towards the bright glow and saw a strange phenomenon between the mountains. After Chin Nan hit the ginseng root, he was thrown back. It was a strange power. Chin Nan took out his two new swords to try to take his things back. He tried to attack the ginseng root with his blades, however. It did not cause any damage to him. Chin Nan still didn't understand what that sound was. He is very interested in what ginseng hides in itself. Chin Nan decided to use the sight of the god of war to try to unravel the mystery of the ginseng root. Inside it, he saw a man. She asked not to peek at the princess. Her energy was not yet enough. Soon she would fall into a deep sleep. Chin Nan, as her slave, from now on should help collect pills and as much as possible. The boy was very surprised that she was a princess, and he was now her slave. He doesn't want to be at someone's beck and call and collect her pills. He tells her to go to hell and tries to attack again. People had already gathered near Chin Nan's residence. They still did not understand what was happening there. Perhaps someone is training. The disciples felt a terrifying force near his house. One of the girls remembered that Chin Nan lives here. He took first place in the versatility test. According to rumors, he reached the secret realm and was able to defeat an opponent who was two levels of body tempering higher than him. Nangong Ershao himself was near his residence. He hopes Chin Nan enjoys himself while he can. When the time comes, the boy will taste his wrath. Morning has come. Chin Nan stood in the middle of the room and breathed heavily. He was exhausted. This is the first time he has experienced this. He wants to take the lead and make that damn ginseng pay when the time comes. Chin Nan didn't want to give his treasures to some root so easily. Ten days have passed. Chin Nan was training at his residence. During his training, his aura intensified. Chin Nan shouted happily and finished his training. He managed to rise to another level. The boy went outside and stretched up to stretch his entire body after a long workout. There really is a lot of chi here. Within ten days of cultivation, Chin Nan was able to reach the ninth level of body tempering. With his current cultivation and the initial stage of Secret Realm success, he could already defeat Nangong Chung by using the Heavenly Accumulation Strike. However, since Nangong Chung has reached the middle of the Xiantian Realm, his strength is much greater than the tenth level of tempering. Chin Nan became a little angry. It's all because of the damn ginseng. If Chin Nan had the seven-color flower and spiritual ambergris, he would have been at the tenth level long ago. He was a little upset about it, but decided to just keep training. For now, he had no other choice. Suddenly, Chin Nan heard an announcement. All disciples should go out and gather near the outer realm meditation area. The inner disciple arrived to give them a lecture. A lecture? Chin Nan thought. It would be better for him to train himself. Further on the announcement, they said that those who were absent would be required to pay 10,000 Giantian tablets. Chin Nan sighed and decided to agree. Without wasting any time, Chin Nan quickly jumped up and headed to the meditation and training place to find out who will give the lecture and what will be included in it. Students had already gradually begun to gather on the training ground. For now, they stood in groups and communicated with each other. One girl shared information that this time, the lecture will be given by Big Sister Li Hong. Not only does she have a ninth grade soul, but she is also in the top ten among inner disciples. If senior sister Li Hong were to give a lecture, she would definitely not be like the previous disciple, who only showed off his strength. We can really learn something new with her. There was some noise and all the students raised their heads to look up. This man had a strong red aura. It was Li Hong who arrived. She immediately ordered everyone to be quiet and those who disobeyed her would taste her spear. She was quite strict. Today, she came to give them a lecture, not to help the students cultivate or learn any fighting skills. She came to tell us how big the world is. Therefore, you need to listen to her carefully, and whoever dares to disobey will know her wrath. And she is quite interesting, Chin Nan appreciated. In addition to the sixth level of the Xiantian realm, she had also reached the initial stage of the secret realm. Her strength is definitely not something to joke about. 
The Changlan continent is divided into upper and lower territories. The upper area is huge. There is a high chance of successful meetings with strong practitioners. And the lower territory is like a drop against the background of the upper one. Our mystic elder sect is located in the lower territory. There are more than 100 countries and more than 500 sects in the lower territory. They are about the same as this sect. At the top of these 500 sects are three sacred places. They control all sects. In the lower territory, they are considered the highest point of the cultivation hierarchy. Li Hong pointed his finger at Qin Nan and asked him to name the cultivation realms. The rest were afraid that she would not call them to answer the question. Qin Nan was confident in his knowledge and was calm. They are divided into the body tempering realm, Jiantian realm, martial emperor realm, martial ancestor realm, martial commander realm, martial highness realm, linked martial realm, martial founder realm, martial monarch realm, and martial deity realm. Great, the teacher replied. There are ten kingdoms in total, each divided into ten levels. In fact, the leader of our mystic elder sect had only reached the martial ancestor realm. However, there is a legendary martial deity in the upper territory. Now students must understand that joining a cult is just the beginning. Let them not think that they are the best with their successful meetings and talents. The truth is that all of them, even the teacher, are just insects on this vast continent. The student who answers her question receives her token. With its help, he can visit her at any time on the mountain of the inner realm. She threw it forcefully at Chin Nan. He caught it easily. His reaction was very good. The students began to be indignant that it was Chin Nan who was given the token. It was such a simple question. Anyone would have answered it. If senior sister Li Hong's words are true, then the world is truly vast. On such a large continent, our mystic elder sect is only a starting point, like many others. Chin Nan must train harder and strengthen his soul. In such a big world, to reach the top, he would have to work even harder than he already did. Suddenly, Chin Nan heard that he was ordered to stand still. He turned around to look. It was Nangong Ershao and his retinue who came. He says that Chin Nan dared to insult him in the treasury. He is not his rival in cultivation, but Ershao is not someone who can be easily mocked. He invites him to survive and kneel before him. Damn it! These are the five tyrannical tigers. Who is this guy who insulted Nangong Ershao and the five tyrannical tigers? One pair of students was discussing. This is Chin Nan. He is the first in the test of versatility, reaching a thousand steps in the mind-stirring bamboo forest. So what? Her friend answered. The strength of tyrannical tigers is that they work together. Chin Nan has no chance of surviving in front of them. Chin Nan simply turned away from the newly arrived company and said that he was busy today and let them talk another time. Nangong Ershao laughed. He asked Chin Nan if fear had gotten the best of him, and he was afraid. One of the tigers asked if the boy was trying to escape from them. He had heard a lot about Chin Nan. If he is not stupid, let him give away the hundred thousand Jiantian pills and the nine rotations golden pill now. Chin Nan simply replied that he had no more pills left. It seems that fighting them will be the only way out. The tigers appreciated that Chin Nan had reached the initial stage of the secret realm. However, for them, it is nothing. Working together, they can easily crush him. They began to form a formation. The students were excited. This is the great mystical formation of the five elements. One of the students had already fought against them, and after that, he lay dying. Only experts in the Siantian realm can break this formation with brute force. Nangong Ershao asked the boy what he would say about this. He doesn't just want to beat him up, but also take all his pills. From now on, she will beat him every time she sees him. How's that? Chin Nan asked rhetorically. He was ready for battle and felt the strength to resist them. Chin Nan uses the eyes of the god of war, which see everything, and tries to show them how insignificant their construction is. The tyrannical tigers also rush to attack. They hold their formation tightly and use flanking tactics. Chin Nan was ready to fight even against five strong opponents. He wanted to quickly deal with them in order to continue his training. With one attack, Chin Nan breaks the formation of the tyrannical tigers. He could be said to have gone right through them using his strong attack. Nangong Ershao became very worried. 
He did not expect that Chin Nan would destroy the Great Five Elements mystical arrangement so easily. This is simply unthinkable. The students were also very surprised by what they saw. Even Nangong Cheng would hardly be able to do anything against such a formation. One of the tigers was lying on the floor. It was very difficult for him. How is this possible? He wondered. Chin Nan was able to destroy their great mystical formation of the five elements. Chin Nan slowly began to approach the tiger lying on the ground. I wonder what he was up to. Lying down, the tiger shouted, What is Chin Nan going to do? They are at the training ground. The boy cannot make noise here, otherwise he will be punished, according to the rules of the sect. Chin Nan replied that he originally did not care about the five tyrannical tigers. He wanted to comprehend what was said at the lecture, but he didn't expect them to try to steal his pills. The tiger began to make excuses. He asked Chin Nan to wait because this was all a misunderstanding. He was already afraid of what Chin Nan might do to him. Chin Nan decided not to spare them for their bad deeds, and he wanted to repay them in the same coin. They dared to try to steal Chin Nan's pills. What he hates most is when people try to take away his personal belongings. He asked again if they dared try to steal his treasure again. Chin Nan rushed to finish them off. They begged for mercy, assured that they were surrendering and would not bring any more trouble to the boy. Chin Nan placed his foot on one of the tigers and looked at Nangong Ershao. He ordered him to come here and be next. Ershao fell to his knees and asked Chin Nan to take all his pills. He was wrong and said that the boy could beat him as long as he didn't touch his face. But Chin Nan could no longer be stopped. He longed to take revenge on anyone who offended him or decided to appropriate his things for themselves. Nangong Ershao was already on his knees and begging for mercy. Chin Nan walked up to him, hit him straight on his pretty face, and took the bottle of pills for himself. Then he silently turned around and returned to the lesson. His opponent lay on the surface of the square and cried. He asked him to hit him anywhere but not in the face. The lesson ended and Chin Nan returned to his residence. He made good money again. In addition to Li Hong's elder sister's token, he acquired the pills again after his recent loss. Last time Nangong Chung was just lucky, but this time he will not give him a single pill or thing. His opponent just had to wait. Chin Nan will become stronger and open it and find out what is hiding inside. The ginseng root still remains on the table. Chin Nan approached him and he began to glow so brightly that he had to cover his eyes with his hand. The ginseng root absorbed all of Chin Nan's pills again. It turned out to be a very unusual item. Chin Nan asked to stop and not consume Jiantian pills anymore. Despair was visible in his eyes. After that, he got angry, took out his blades, and tried to cut the ginseng root again. However, he again failed. Originally, the spirit encased in ginseng did not plan to steal the pills from Chin Nan. Let's see him in such a pitiful state. But no one knew that Chin Nan would challenge her. She ate them as punishment for this. She has already taken all of Chin Nan's pills and demands more. The boy tried to cut the root again, but nothing worked. Suddenly, someone came into his residence and announced that they had returned. Chin Nan said with an angry expression that he would deal with the spirit contained in the ginseng later. The boy went out into the courtyard and met Chu Yun and Xiao Leng there. They returned from the mission and were very happy to see Chin Nan. Chin Nan praised them for becoming stronger again. With their cultivation, they will very soon be among the top ten. Xiao Leng was suddenly very surprised when he sensed Chin Nan's aura. He has already reached the ninth level of body tempering. After that, he was upset that he was still no match for big brother Chin Nan. To which Chu Yun joked that even Lin Zixiao could not compare with Chin Nan's little brother. You just need to keep training harder. The benefit that Xiao Leng received from this mission was not bad. He will follow the example of Chin Nan. They finished sharing their impressions and moved on to more important matters. They came to Chin Nan for a more compelling reason. Chu Yun said that the test of the outer realm would soon take place. She asked if Chin Nan would participate. Chin Nan did not know about such a test. He asked Chu Yun to tell him a little about him. Most likely he would be interested in participating in it. This is a test among external disciples, which is held every three months in order to test the strength of the disciples. The first five places receive excellent rewards. In addition, the place taken on the test will affect the place in the outer kingdom. Chin Nan was already drooling after the word of reward. He really wanted to enrich himself with something else. He remembered the ginseng root, which contains the spirit, 
and promises that she will not take anything else from him. Chu Yun and Xiao Leng asked Qin Nan if he was okay. He told them that everything was fine and they could continue to talk. There are still ten days before the test of the outer kingdom. And yes, elder brother Huang Long went into seclusion. However, he asked to tell Qin Nan that he wanted to fight him in this test. Qin Nan will gladly take part in this test. After all, there await him both rewards and the opportunity to move to a cooler residence, as well as to measure his strength with Huang Long himself. Events move to the first residence of the outer kingdom. Nangong Cheng was training at the edge of the cliff. His younger brother, Nangong Er Shao, crawled up to him on his knees. He asked his older brother to help him. He told him about the situation that he had with Qin Nan. His brother listened to everything and asked if Qin Nan had done it all. The younger brother answered that everyone else could confirm this. Cheng was angry that Qin Nan thought he was someone unknown. He had better prepare himself for the test of the outer kingdom. Eight days later, in the fifth residence of the outer realm was Qin Nan. He continued his training and achieved the tenth level of body hardening. With his current strength, if he were to fight Lin Zixiao again, he would not have to use the heavenly accumulating strike or his soul. He could easily defeat him with one attack. However, fighting an enemy at the Jiantian realm level would be difficult. Huang and Cheng had probably already reached the Jiantian realm. If Ginseng had not stolen the seven-colored rose and spiritual ambergris, Qin Nan would have already at least reached the middle of the Xiantian realm. The Jinseng spirit turned to Qin Nan. She said it was an honor that she took his pills. He must understand that no matter how much people cultivate, they will never be given such an honor. Therefore, the boy should be grateful to the princess. However, since Qin Nan is her servant, she will not torture him. It will even benefit him. She gave him something strange. It had tremendous qi power. The sphere glowed with purple light. She immediately absorbed into Qin Nan. He didn't know what it was because he wasn't familiar with it yet. Such pure qi! Qin Nan noticed this. He thinks that even ten three-leaf golden lilies cannot compare with her. It was a drop of ancient spiritual liquid that was provided to him by the Jinseng Root Princess. Qin Nan should hurry up and use it. This is very strong energy! Qin Nan needed to hurry up to completely absorb this ancient liquid and become stronger. Eight hours had passed since Qin Nan started training. He had never absorbed such strong objects before. I wonder what result this will give. Qin Nan made a breakthrough in his training. He feels that the Xiantian kingdom is almost in his hands. He didn't have much time left to reach this stage of cultivation. In just one day, Qin Nan had almost reached the Xiantian kingdom. The power contained in the ancient spiritual liquid is simply unimaginable. This surprised the boy very much. It turns out that white jade ginseng is not so bad. Qin Nan rethought its significance and continued to train with her. Tomorrow the test of the outer kingdom will begin. He'd better spend the remaining time mastering his new power. Another day has passed. The testing of the outer kingdom has begun. It was a calm, sunny day. Students had already begun to gather in the square to register. Not bad, Chin Nan thought. He looked around, examined the arriving students. The test of the outer kingdom will be conducted in such a large place. In addition, the number of participants at the seventh level of body conditioning is so large. While Chin Nan was looking around, he heard the students starting to talk about how Nangong Cheng had also arrived for the competition. The boy immediately turned his attention there. Nangong Cheng was self-confident and proud. He walked through the crowd which parted in front of him. His aura was stronger than last time. Consequently, he increased his level. His opponent reached the Xiantian kingdom. Things are about to get a lot more interesting. At the same time, his friends Chu Yun and Xiao Leng also came to the square. They called him over. Approaching them, Qin Nan asked them if they had the courage to claim the fifth residence. There is confidence but some difficulties may arise. Nangong Cheng is in first place. Huang Long is in second. Mo Zishan is in third. They all have ninth grade souls and incredible strength. Xu Yu is in fourth place. His soul is eighth grade, and his body tempering is tenth. Xiao Leng added that if he had to fight Qin Nan in the trial, then there was nothing to talk about. Qin Nan laughed a little and asked him not to worry. There are more than 600 people here the chance that they will turn out to be opponents is very small. 
The elders also came up for testing. They will keep order and evaluate the strength of the students. The test of the outer kingdom begins. It is divided into two rounds. The elder will tell them about the rewards for the first five places before moving on to the details of the rounds. Fifth place is obtained by 10,000 Giantian tablets. Fourth, 20,000. For third place, they give 30,000. For second, 50,000. And most importantly, the first place gets 100,000 Ziantian pills and an Imperial Prosperity pill. The students began to discuss how they would give an Imperial Prosperity pill for winning the test. According to rumors, if you take it, your chance of reaching the Martial Emperor will increase by 50%. Even the Inner Disciple would fight for this pill. Xiao Leng also dreamed about such a reward. This is truly such a major reward in the ordinary Outer Realm test. The Elder ordered everyone to be silent. After all, these are not all the awards. The top five will also represent the Mystic Elder Sect in the Battle Fortune Pavilion. Huang Long very much dreamed of getting into the top five, so that he could then represent the Sect in the Pavilion of Battle Fortune. Chu Yun did not expect that she would have the opportunity to visit the Battle Luck Pavilion. The pavilion is only available twice a year. Only those with a unique badge and cultivation at the Xiantian level can enter there. When Gong Yang went there one day and then returned, his cultivation rose three levels in just one day. Qin Nan and Xiao Leng really wanted to go there. No wonder the crowd went crazy after hearing this. Qin Nan must enter the Pavilion of Battle Fortune, and also, he must be the first to test the Outer Realm. The day of testing has come. The first round will now begin. It will be very simple. Students need to recognize the tablets and materials. First, you will need to recognize 50 tablets by writing down the unique characteristics of the materials and the purpose of the tablets. Everyone only has one chance. The round starts now. Various herbs appeared on the table in front of the students. Many of those who came to the test felt insecure. There was a lot of information to know. The students protested why this recognition of materials and tablets was part of the test. The first elder must be an expert in pill alchemy, and Nangong Chung is one of his disciples. He will definitely be able to pass this test. Most likely this round was created for his sake. The elder asked for silence. If anyone talks nonsense, he will be immediately disqualified. He ordered the identification of materials and tablets to begin immediately. Nangong Cheng came to the table. He was confident in his knowledge and could easily pass this test. He quickly looked at everything he needed to identify and began making a list. It was truly easy for him because he had a very good teacher. Nangong Cheng completed the task with ease. He was the fastest. The rest of the students lost a little faith in themselves. He rolled up the scroll containing his completed task and handed it to the elders. The rest of the students wasted no time and continued taking the test. Xiao Leng was outraged that the elders made the first round like this, just so that Nanggong Cheng would become the first. Chu Yun also supported these resentments. The elder called the next group to pass the test. Some students came up and also began to take the test. Some of them did not know all the materials, but others completed the task confidently. Six hours of testing have passed. Many students have already passed it. Some are unlucky and will not be able to rise higher in the rankings. The time has come for Qin Nan to undergo the test. He was also confident, just like Nanggong Cheng. In addition, Qin Nan had the sight of the god of war, with which he could evaluate objects. Nanggong Cheng approached Qin Nan and told him that this material and pill recognition round was very difficult. Like a big brother, he wants to give him advice. First, Elder Cheng Biao prepared this material and pill recognition round especially for Nanggong Cheng but he didn't expect that Qin Nan had the eyes of a war god that could see through everything. Qin Nan began to examine the items for the task and made notes for himself. He did everything quite smoothly. The elder noticed that Qin Nan was quickly making a list. If it were a matter of speed, he would be even faster than Nanggong Cheng. However, he doesn't look like he knows anything about pills. Surely Qin Nan is just writing nonsense. Nanggong Cheng walked up to Qin Nan and praised him for how quickly the boy managed. He was able to recognize the characteristics and purposes of the materials and tablets in less than 30 seconds. Cheng was simply impressed by this. Qin Nan thanked him for such words. He also said that he felt guilty for taking the first place away from him. Nanggong Cheng decided to offer him a bet. 
If Qin Nan wins this round, then Cheng will give him 100,000 Xiantian pills. And if he loses, he will simply give away the seven deadly sins. Xiao Leng decided to speak out about this bet. Nangong Cheng is completely shameless. He will definitely win this argument, but he still dares to propose it. In alchemy, he is almost invincible. Qin Nan will not accept such a dispute. But Qin Nan was confident in himself and told Cheng that if he wanted to give him a hundred thousand Xiantian pills, then he would simply be happy to accept them. Moreover, Qin Nan was left almost broke after the princess consumed all his pills. The students began to discuss their dispute. Does Qin Nan really think that he can defeat Nangong Cheng? Is he too self-confident? Qin Nan is full of courage. He openly accepted Cheng's challenge even in this situation. The elder also heard about the dispute and joked that Qin Nan would definitely not be able to bypass his disciple. He also intends to take part in the dispute. The elder decided not to waste time on trifles and immediately bet 400,000 Xiantian pills on Nangong Cheng's victory. Would Qin Nan dare to accept such a challenge? Everyone was stunned by the amount the elder offered for the bet. It turns out that together 500,000 Xiantian pills were supplied against Qin Nan. Will he agree to such a bet? Qin Nan joked, wouldn't 400,000 be so much? After all, the guy doesn't have that much money to cover his bet. He suggested that he lower the rate to 200,000 because he had a storage bag that cost about 100,000. The elder decided not to give up his bet of 400,000 and invited Qin Nan if he lost to kneel here for ten days and ten nights. Will Qin Nan agree to such conditions? Xiao Leng assumed that in this situation Qin Nan was in, there was simply no way to win. He didn't want brother Qin Nan to accept this dispute. Qin Nan calmly replied that he had originally tried to save 200,000 Jiantian pills for them. But since they do not accept his goodness, then so be it. He accepts their terms and participates in the dispute. The elder never thought that he would meet such a disrespectful kid among the disciples of the outer realm. Does Qin Nan really think that he will defeat his disciple in this argument? He agrees and continues the test. There will be a total of 100 points in this round. Those who have less than 30 points are disqualified. Those who receive more than 30 points will be allowed to the next round. The scores of those finishing in the first five places will be added to the final result. The results will be announced now. Luo An gets 30 points and passes the threshold. Xiao Leng gets 53 points and also passes. Wang Zitao receives 23 points and is eliminated from the competition. The elder shows a scroll that belongs to Nangong Cheng. The scroll was covered with quite a lot of writing. It looks like he wrote about each of the materials. All the disciples came closer in anticipation to find out Nangong Cheng's result. He had many fans in this square. And Nangong Cheng scores 99 points and takes first place. Many of the students began to rejoice at this. As expected, Nangong Cheng received a very high score. Why is everyone so surprised by his result? After all, he was originally involved in tablet alchemy. I wonder what kind of result Qin Nan will have. One of the elders had already begun to congratulate the first elder for winning such an impressive result. Nangong Cheng will definitely be the winner in this round. It would probably be difficult even for him to pass this test if he participated. The first elder looked down on Qin Nan, and his thoughts were only about telling the boy a lesson. The moment has come when Qin Nan's work will be checked. The elder took his scroll and began to study it. Chu Yun and Xiao Leng were afraid that Qin Nan would lose. This test was specially made for Nangong Cheng. How could brother Qin Nan score more points than him? The elder finished checking his work, and his face was clearly not cheerful. He was very surprised and announced that Qin Nan also scored 99 points, just like Nangong Cheng. The first elder and Nangong Cheng were extremely surprised that Qin Nan was able to achieve such a high score. How is this possible? The elders wondered. Does this mean that Qin Nan was actually an expert in pill alchemy? The disciples now began to admire Qin Nan. They chuckled that the first elder and Nangong Cheng would simply go crazy after such a result. The round was specially created for his disciple and Qin Nan prevented it. Cheng walked up to Qin Nan and said that he never thought that they would share first place. It seems he underestimated its capabilities. 
The first elder also didn't expect to see such a wonderful disciple with a talent for pill alchemy among the outside disciples. Based on the results, he suggests that the dispute ended in a draw. However, Chin Nan did not agree. He asked to wait and not rush to declare the dispute closed. The first elder folded his hands on his stomach and asked the boy what he disagreed with. He was curious to know what Chin Nan was thinking. Chin Nan told him that he did not agree with his results. In his opinion, he should have a hundred points. In fact, Chin Nan knew that with his war god eye ability, he could see everything about these herbs, pills, and materials. The disciples began to wonder what Chin Nan meant. Why does he not agree with his result if he already has 99 points? How can he be unhappy? He has so much arrogance. The first elder got a little angry and objected to him what kind of nonsense he was talking about. Each scroll was carefully checked against the answers. How can his score be a hundred points? Chin Nan replied that he did not say that the error occurred during the inspection. He believes that the correct answer to the last question was incorrect. And Chin Nan's answer is correct. The boy was very confident in his knowledge, so he went ahead with this argument. Nangong Cheng was also angry. He said that Chin Nan had already gone too far. He should be proud that he achieved such a result. And who does he think he is to refute his teacher's answers? Chin Nan calmly asked the first elder for a chance to prove his point. If so, the first elder decided to give him a chance at this. He wonders how his answer to the last question could be wrong. However, if Chin Nan cannot prove it, he will be punished. The elder was very angry and did not want any student to behave so brazenly in front of him. The students shuddered. I wonder if Chin Nan will agree to continue trying to prove that his answer is truly correct. If Chin Nan does not prove it, he will be sent to the discipline hall. Once someone enters there, even death will not save him from that suffering. Chin Nan has gone crazy. Only he himself will be to blame for his impudence, the students believe. I wonder how he dared to challenge the first elder with his knowledge of tablet alchemy. Chin Nan decided to explain what his answer was. For all 50 pills that were in testing, the first elder added restrictions to them using special methods. If he remembers correctly, the first 49 pills had no more than three restrictions. However, the Dragon Phoenix pill had five restrictions as the most difficult issue. The first elder allows this. He never thought that Chin Nan would be able to examine all 50 pills so thoroughly. But then, why does he only have 99 points? Chin Nan continued and said that the first elder did not take into account one thing. He forgot that adding too many restrictions to a pill would destroy the effectiveness. As a result, the tablet is destroyed by half. Nangong Cheng said that this is nonsense. His teacher is an expert in pill alchemy. How could half of this dragon phoenix pill be destroyed during the cooking process? The first elder told him that he was an idiot and he had no evidence of this. How dare he accuse him of preparing a half-destroyed pill? Chin Nan decided to provide them with evidence, because in words they still do not understand their mistake. Chin Nan took this tablet in his hands and showed that it was broken in half. The first elder couldn't believe his eyes. His speech stopped and his face changed from angry to confused. Just as Chin Nan said earlier, this dragon phoenix pill is half destroyed. Therefore, the answer to the last question, as he wrote in his paper, is a half destroyed tablet. The elder who checked his work could not say a word in response. They had no counter argument in their defense. Other disciples began to admire Chin Nan. They have never met something so cool in all their years of study. This is what it means to be a genius. Even when everyone was against him, he was able to turn the situation in his favor and give the correct answer. In this case, in pill alchemy, even Nangong Cheng is no match for big brother Chin Nan. Could he already be at the level of an expert in alchemy? Cheng approached Chin Nan and began to express his dissatisfaction with him, to which Chin Nan calmly answered him that in the first round only he was in first place now. The first elder stood all red, with his eyes downcast. The inspector tells him that he himself sees what the situation is. The Dragon Phoenix pill is indeed half destroyed. So the answer to the last question was wrong. Therefore, in the first round, Chin Nan becomes the winner. Now that the first elder has lost, it is time to give Chin Nan the 400,000 Giantian pills, even though he offered them only 200,000 for a bet. But since they insisted, now let them keep their word.
Chin Nan, as a disciple, can only accept such an offer from them. The first elder silently handed over 4,000 martial emperor pills to him. This is exactly equivalent to 400,000 Giantian tablets. Chin Nan received his share of the winnings from the elder. Now the time has come to get a piece from Nangong Cheng. Nangong Cheng also threw pills at him. He did not want to part with his funds, but a dispute is a dispute. Chin Nan thanked them and joked how sorry he was that he not only took first place, but also won the bet. Initially, he warned them that they were actually just giving him pills as a gift. Nangong Cheng decided to show his character and pretend that this did not upset or humiliate him in any way. The first elder announced that the first round was over for today. The test will continue tomorrow in the second round. The first round of the test ended, and the students continued to admire Qin Nan's knowledge and skills. Is he really an expert in pill alchemy? The guys want to become Qin Nan's students so that he can teach them alchemy. They bowed before him and asked him to take them as disciples. They saw him as a mentor and an excellent teacher. This embarrassed the boy a little. He was embarrassed to accept so much attention. One of the students also became interested in Chin Nan's attention. She asked if Chin Nan had any free time this evening. And would he like to give her some advice in cultivation? Chin Nan got scared and ran away from her. He absolutely did not want to stay with her for the evening. She caught up with him and offered to come to her residence at any time. Everyone has already gone to their residences. At the top of the Outer Realm mountain lived Nangong Cheng. He was very angry. It was outrageous for him. Some Chin Nan made him lose face in front of so many people. He wishes the boy dead. The first elder was also angry and did not want the boy to live. However, it is not time to kill him yet, although they can't kill him yet. But they may target his friends. Either way, if he still behaves inappropriately in the second round, it's best to keep it to himself. The elder handed something to Chung. Nangong Chung laughed, because he now had a way to deal with Chin Nan if he dared to confront him again. The ginseng root was lying outside on the table. The weather was sunny, birds were flying and singing around. Chin Nan was expected to return soon. He almost knocked down the front doors with a crash. After all, he understood that the princess could take all his acquired funds. Chin Nan thinks that she has already felt that he has a lot of pills. He asks her not to absorb everything at once, hoping that they can talk and work together. She answered him with a question. How does her slave plan to work with her? He showed a pouch containing 5,000 martial emperor pills. He can give her 2,000 of them. The remaining 3,000 are very important to him. In exchange, he hopes that she will give him three drops of ancient spiritual liquid for 3,000 martial emperor pills. She refused this and told the boy to only dream about it. It is his duty, as the princess's servant, to bring her the pills. How dare he negotiate with her? She wants to take everything. Chin Nan asked her not to bully him, but she still doesn't take his word seriously. After all, in her opinion, he cannot do anything with her. Chin Nan awakened his war god's soul. He sincerely wanted to come to an agreement with her. And he said that if she didn't come to this residence, she would never receive pills again. So he invites her to work together. The princess calmed down and agreed to work together with Chin Nan. For her, there was no other choice yet. She didn't want to be left without goodies. She handed the ancient liquid to Chin Nan, and he began to absorb it. He also wishes them good work together. Before this, by absorbing the ancient spiritual drop, he not only improved his cultivation, but it also gave his qi spiritual sense. He was very interested in how much help three drops of ancient spiritual liquid could have. The spirit princess wondered why Chin Nan had such a strong soul. She had a feeling that she was being suppressed. This guy seems unusual. Although he is still her slave, no matter how unusual he is, he is still her slave. So says the princess contained in the ginseng root. Now the princess will see how far Chin Nan can go. His chi became a little strange after he acquired a spiritual aura. It is clear that after absorbing three drops of his chi, he had definitely reached the first level of the Xiantian realm. However, his cultivation is still at the body tempering level. He decided to ignore it for now. Chin Nan didn't think that absorbing the spiritual liquid would take so long. It's already dawn. The second round is about to start and he needs to hurry. The second round began. This will be a tournament to lose. First, ten different groups will be formed, divided according to their places. Only those who win ten fights will be able to advance to the next round. The seventh elder will be in charge of this round. 
Everyone who wants to take part has already gathered in the square. Now the first series of battles will begin. Number 11 versus number 83. 97 versus 32. Number 5 versus number 12. Coincidentally or not, Qin Nan was pitted against his friend, Xiao Leng. The elder invited them to start the battle and not waste time. They didn't want to fight against each other. Xiao Leng made the right decision and immediately decided to admit defeat. This is all done so that Qin Nan will try to take first place in this round as well. Qin Nan was a little upset by the current situation, however. He nodded and agreed with Xiao Leng's decision. In the second series of battles, number 28 will fight 77 65 against 400. And next, they announce number 5 versus number 9. And again, Qin Nan falls on one of his friends. It was Chu Yun. She also admitted defeat as she saw no point in fighting Qin Nan. She feels like someone is using them against him. Let him not think too much about this. Xiao Leng and she will always support Qin Nan. Qin Nan assumed exactly the same thing, that someone is deliberately putting his friends against him. The first elder realized that they knew about his dastardly plan to defeat Qin Nan through his friends. Fifth fight. Number five versus number twelve. Qin Nan versus Xiao Leng. Gritting his teeth in anger, Len again accepts defeat. The seventh fight, number five versus number nine, Qin Nan versus Chu Yun. She also automatically accepts defeat in order to propel Qin Nan forward. First elder and Nangong Cheng. Hold on! Qin Nan was very angry. They couldn't reach him, so they decided to take it out on his friends. Let them see that he cannot be stopped. Twelfth fight, number twelve versus number four. Xiao Leng was put up against Huang Long and, of course, Leng lost to him. Wan was a very strong opponent for him. The fifteenth battle was underway. Number nine was placed against number two, and number nine lost. Chu Yun was also unable to defeat her opponent. The crowd began to be outraged. They also realized that a game was being played against Qin Nan. They chant that there is no justice in this. This is a joke, they shouted. The first elder is using his power to put pressure on Qin Nan. Nanggong Cheng gloatingly praised Qin Nan for winning nine fights already. However, he feels sorry for his friends. He joked that if luck had been on their side, they would have made it into the top five. Qin Nan replied that it would be better for Cheng to think about himself. As soon as he was in front of him, he would tear him apart. Nanggong Cheng didn't like that Qin Nan still had the courage to snap at him. Chung also decided to show him his character and strong aura and teach him a lesson. One of the elders immediately reprimanded them. Personal battles are prohibited. If they dare to continue, they will be disqualified. The twentieth battle is underway. Number nine goes against number six. Ninety versus seventeen. Fifth against third. Number three was senior brother Mo Zishan. The fights began. Nangong Chung laughed. What a surprise. I wonder who is stronger, Qin Nan or Brother Mo? Cheng continued to mock Qin Nan, allegedly showing his fearlessness. The students began to express their dissatisfaction again. Are there really no rules to this test at all? In a battle between strong opponents, you cannot do without wounding both of them. Everyone has already realized that the elders are corrupt. The elders replied that these were the rules set by the sect. If someone doesn't like it, they can freely come out and fight them. Otherwise, stop talking nonsense and creating rumors. Moses Shan walked up to Chin Nan and told him that he was a worthy opponent in his eyes, and he will gladly fight him. However, even he sees this confusion. Therefore, he would not fight Chin Nan under such circumstances. Moreover, he would really like to see Chin Nan rise to the top and challenge Nangong Cheng. This was a very pious act on Big Brother Mo's part. He admits defeat without a fight so that Qin Nan can get justice. The elders clearly did not calculate this move. With a tired look from all this confusion, Qin Nan thanked him for such an act. Qin Nan has won ten fights and is moving on to the next stage. Nangong Cheng did not like the fact that Mo Zishan decided to abandon the fight and accept defeat. He hoped that even if he did not defeat Qin Nan, he would at least greatly injure and weaken him. Chu Yun and Xiao Leng were finally happy. They were pleased that the insidious plans of the first elder and his disciple were beginning to crumble. The second stage has begun. Number one goes against number eight, the second number against the thirteenth, and the third against the twentieth. Qin Nan will fight against Xu Yu. The elder has no conscience, because he immediately decided to put a stronger opponent against Qin Nan, who is in fourth place in the ranking. 
Xu Yu shared his thoughts with Qin Nan that he did not expect to face him in a duel today. Qin Nan has also heard a lot about his opponent. He wants to know how strong he is. However, since Qin Nan was able to destroy the great mystical formation of the five elements and defeat the five tyrannical tigers, Xu Yu felt that he was not at Qin Nan's level. He will challenge him again in the future, if given the chance. Cheng began to get even angrier. He didn't even imagine that Mo Zishan and Xu Yu would surrender to Qin Nan without a fight. They originally planned for Qin Nan to fight people as strong as himself. The turn of the battle between Qin Nan and Haun Long came. They were really looking forward to such a duel among themselves to measure their strength. Qin Nan asked him how he was doing. Huan told him that everything was fine. Qin Nan had long wanted to fight Huang Long. He must understand that he does not have to give up. After all, Qin Nan will already be among the top five and will fight with Nangong Cheng. So don't worry about him. Huang asked him if Qin Nan meant by this that he would win it anyway. Don't underestimate him or get ahead of yourself. Qin Nan was already glad that he was able to piss off his opponent a little so that he agreed to the fight. A fight between these two will be interesting. Huang Long smiled very lightly and then held his head. He says that even after seclusion for a month, he is still very far from Qin Nan's strength. Therefore, there is no need for him to even try to fight him. He also gives up and accepts defeat in front of Qin Nan. Qin Nan thought that Huang's bloodsword soul could detect the aura inside the body. Perhaps they will fight again in the future. The elder announced that after several hours they had come to the final battle. Now the last pair of participants are invited to the battlefield. Nangong Cheng and Qin Nan will fight in the finals of the trial. Each of the combatants has amazing strength and skills. Nangong Cheng believes that today he will put Qin Nan in her place. Even the fact that Qin Nan can walk past Cheng is already a great success. He will show him how big the difference is between garbage and a real genius. Cheng is still trying to humiliate Qin Nan and thereby suppress his self-confidence. But someone decided to interrupt the start of the fight. Li Hong arrived at the test site. From the very beginning, she witnessed how Nangong Cheng decided to unleash tyrannical tigers on Qin Nan. She's here to watch the fight, too. At her last lecture, she gave Qin Nan her medallion. Obviously, she came to support Qin Nan. Mo Li also came to see how the final battle would take place. He is the son of the third elder of Inner Disciples. Since he even came, the fight is shaping up to be interesting. The elders approached Mo Li to greet him. They didn't expect to see him here. They also asked who Mo Li was going to support. Mo Li came here to support Nangong Cheng. He believes that Qin Nan has no chance against him. For Mo Li, this kid was also like a bone in his throat. Suddenly, someone turned to Mo Li. He asked if he really wanted his brother Qin Nan to lose. The elders and Mo Li were a little surprised at who said this. They looked down to see who else had arrived for the finals. It was Gong Yan. He also came to support Qin Nan. He was confident in Qin Nan's strength, as he had already won many martial emperor pills with his help. Nangong Cheng didn't know that junior brother Qin Nan would be the brother of senior brother Gong Yan. However, as a result of this fight, he doesn't care. After all, he is Nangong Cheng, and he will win. Cheng was a very self-confident boy and did not at all know what kind of power Qin Nan kept within himself. Xiao Leng and Chu Yun were very worried about Nangong Cheng moving to the Xiantian kingdom. If he was only halfway to the Xiantian realm, then Qin Nan would definitely win. But now the difference between them is a whole kingdom. Mo Li did not argue with Gong Yang about who would be the winner. But he believes that even with the naked eye, it is clear that victory belongs to Nangong Cheng. Nangong Cheng wants to show what the difference is between the Xiantian realm and the body tempering realm. He rushes at Qin Nan with his first attack. Nangong Cheng's attack had almost reached Qin Nan and he still stood there and did not use defensive techniques. I wonder what Chin Nan is up to. Chin Nan let his opponent almost finish the blow and slapped him with incredible speed. His movements were very fast, so that Nangong Cheng did not even have time to realize that he needed to defend himself. Nangong Cheng was still unable to complete his attack and stood there confused. He couldn't accept that he had just been humiliated like that. The first elder and Mo Li were also puzzled. Some students did not even have time to understand what happened. It was so fast that not everyone could follow Qin Nan's movements. 
They didn't seem to think that Chin Nan just slapped Nangong Chung's face. Nangong Chung held his face. He values him very much because girls are attracted to him. His cheek turned red from the slap. This drove him crazy. He wants to kill both Chin Nan and his entire family. For him, this was a very strong blow to his tough guy image. Nangong Chung tried to attack Chin Nan again. He used the transformation of Battle Chi into a sword, but Chin Nan slapped him again. Nangong Chung tries to attack Chin Nan for the third time, but is slapped in the face again. It was already red from so many blows. All the students stood with their mouths open. No one expected that Chin Nan would humiliate Nangong Chung so much. The elders were also shocked. Mid Xiantian, Chin Nan's cultivation has reached the middle of the Xiantian realm. But something is wrong there. The chi in his body is strange. It is comparable to the first level of the Xiantian realm, which is an ancient spiritual cultivation. Those students that Chin Nan was pitted against were very happy that they surrendered to him and did not become a punching bag for him. Chin Nan continued to slap Nang Gong Chung. He missed all the blows from the boy without even having time to put up a defense. The disciples rejoiced as Chin Nan slapped Nang Gong Chung's face. Big brother Chin Nan is so strong. This is the power of the first level of the Xiantian kingdom. The elder was screaming because his student was just standing there waiting to be beaten. He recommends that he hurry up and use his secret weapon. Nangong Chung took out his secret weapon that the first elder gave him, and he wants to make Chin Nan beg for mercy, otherwise he won't leave here alive. Nangong Chung swallows a secret pill to gain more strength. I wonder how strong she will make him, and whether it will surpass Chin Nan. The pill immediately began to affect Nangong Chung's strength. He believes that Chin Nan himself is to blame for having to use it. Gong Yang reprimanded the first elder for Nangong Chung taking the enraged demon pill. This is definitely against the rules of the test. To which he replied that it was up to him to decide whether it was against the rules or not. The students also supported Gong Yang's words and began chanting that this was all against the rules. Not only did they manipulate the test, but they also used the enraged demon pill. Nangong Chung was already ready to attack Chin Nan again. He thinks that today he can show what happens to those who insult him. Mo Li was happy. He believes that now his little brother will be able to calm down Chin Nan. Gong Yang thought it was bad. Nangong Chung's punching power is already at the third level of the Xiantian realm. Chin Nan can't stand it. But Chin Nan also had a secret weapon. He decided to use the breakthrough. Chin Nan gathered his strength and decided to use the full power of his body and weapons. He intended to crush the enemy in one blow, as he had done with the previous ones. Nangong Chung clearly did not expect such an outcome. He believed that this was simply impossible. Even after taking the enraged demon pill himself, Chin Nan launched a devastating attack that Nangong Chung could neither parry nor dodge. Chin Nan's blow hit his opponent directly. With such force of impact, even under the influence of the pill, Nangong Chung still suffered damage. It was so strong that blood came out of his mouth. Xiao Leng didn't even understand what just happened. Could it be that Chin Nan defeated Nangong Chung, who used the enraged demon pill with just one blow? It turns out that Chin Nan's strength has also risen to the same level as his opponent. Mo Li and the elder were shocked. Chin Nan was able to defeat someone two levels above him. Only the great geniuses of the mystic elder sect are capable of this, but the mystic elder sect only has an eighth grade soul. All the disciples rejoiced at Chin Nan's victory, which made them feel so good. Senior brother Chin Nan is so incredible, he will definitely take first place, and Nangong Chung will finally shut up. All the previous opponents from the top 10 ranking also did not think that Chin Nan was so strong. He was able to match the strength of the third level of the Xiantian realm. The first elder ordered everyone to shut up, and he decided to announce that this fight should be annulled. In his opinion, this battle does not count because Chin Nan broke the rules. He practiced ancient spiritual cultivation or took forbidden pills. Based on the rules of the sect, he expels Chin Nan from the disciples. From this moment on, he is no longer considered a member of the sect. Gong Yang objected to him. Everyone here witnessed the battle. Let him not think that he can forcibly hide the truth just because he is the first elder. But the first elder did not want to hear a word about it. He believes that since Gong Yang is an internal disciple, then the problems of external disciples should not concern him. 
He had already prepared a letter and threatened that if they continued to make trouble, they would be considered Chin Nan's accomplices. The students were afraid of this, but they also did not want to let the situation go just like that. He threw the letter into the sky so that it would go to the discipline council, and there they would already make a decision on Chin Nan's fate. As soon as he sent the letter, suddenly, someone appeared in the sky. They had a very intimidating aura. This was the arrival of the discipline council, along with the deputy leader. The deputy leader of the discipline council turned to senior brother Chung Biao to find out what happened to them since he called them here. The elder began to explain that Chin Nan, with an eighth grade soul, used a power equal to the first level of the Xiantian realm after practicing ancient spiritual cultivation. And at the same time, he was able to defeat Nangong Cheng with a ninth grade soul and cultivation at the second level of the Xiantian realm. This is too suspicious. He believes that even ancient spiritual cultivation would not be enough for this. So he decided that Chin Nan took the forbidden ancient pills. And this is prohibited by the rules of the sect. The deputy leader also decided that this was impossible and did not carefully examine the situation. He believes that the first elder is telling the truth, and Chin Nan has broken the rules. And he announces that Chin Nan is no longer a disciple of the sect from this day forward. The rest of the students were very outraged that the elder got away with it so easily. It seems that the Council of Discipline is also on the side of the elder. Gong Yang turned to the deputy leader and asked how he could blame his brother just after hearing the elder's words. Does he really think that it is impossible to defeat a stronger opponent at the first level of the Xiantian realm? To which he answered him dryly that these had nothing to do with him. The Council of Discipline forces others to follow the rules. Since Deputy Leader Zhao was not going to accept Gong Yang's advice, he would not waste any time, and he wants not to regret what he did. Zhao considers Qin Nan to be just some external disciple. He never thought that Gong Yang would view some external disciple as a brother. However, even in this case, it does not change anything. Xiao Leng and Chu Yun also came to Qin Nan's defense. They said that if their friend was going to be kicked out, then they should be kicked out too. Qin Nan had very loyal and loyal friends. Even Huang Long was of the same opinion. None of them wanted Qin Nan to be kicked out just like that, without even conducting any investigation or checks. The first elder only laughed at them and equated them with Chin Nan's accomplices. If so, he asks deputy leader Zhao to also expel them from the mystic elder sect. Chin Nan asked everyone to wait to make premature conclusions. He shamed the first elder by saying that he was domineering over things, immediately kicking him out of the sect. At the same time, using all your capabilities for this. And now he has even teamed up with the deputy leader of the discipline council, to accuse the others without conducting any investigation. Nangong Cheng continued to lie on the floor, however. At the same time, he mocked Chin Nan. He asked what victory would taste like now, because from this day on, Chin Nan is not even a disciple of the sect. All the students were indignant. They asked Deputy Leader Zhao what right he had to kick them all out without any consequences. The entire trial was manipulated by the first elder. Why doesn't he remove him from office? Chin Nan was already shouting, how could such a person be the deputy leader of the discipline council if he himself did not follow the rules? Great, Zhao decided. A petty external disciple actually dared to rant here and question his position? He decided that Chin Nan's words would be considered a serious insult based on the sect's rules. He orders the disciplinary elders to kill Chin Nan immediately using all their strength. Chin Nan took out his purple dragon token with scarlet teeth, and he asked them to open their dog eyes and look carefully at this token. He throws a token in their direction and adds a phrase about who they think they are to try to kill him. The deputy leader didn't even bother to look at what kind of token it was and simply destroyed it. He thought it was some kind of fake or toy. Deputy leader Zhao dared to ignore the purple dragon token with scarlet teeth and simply broke it. This greatly affected both Chin Nan and Gong Yan. After Chin Nan threw the token to him, the deputy considered it an attack on him and ordered him to be executed by a thousand cuts. They all rushed at one boy. The first elder and Mo Li were enjoying this moment. They believed that Chin Nan was finished and that his victory in the first and second rounds no longer matters. Gong Yang decided not to retreat and fight for Chin Nan's destiny to the end. He shouted that not everyone wants to die. 
He stood in the way between them and his brother. Gong Yang is very brave. He dared to intervene in the Discipline Council's punishment. When the deputy leader deals with Qin Nan, he will come for him too. However, the deputy elder also did not want to retreat. He decided to figure it out himself. No matter who stands in front of him, he wants to take Qin Nan's life. The students were very excited. They saw the deputy assault the student. He himself is at the second level of the martial emperor realm. One blow from him would definitely be enough to kill Qin Nan. Qin Nan looked up as the deputy leader approached him. He wondered if it would all end here. But then someone even more powerful arrived to save the boy. He shouted for this freak to stop and not attack Qin Nan. The student sensed his terrifying aura. It looks like the one who shouted has already reached the peak of the martial emperor realm. Zhao got angry and asked who it was. The discipline council is now carrying out punishment. If he's going to stop them, then... The leader of the discipline council himself arrived on the square. He was a brutal man with incredibly great strength. The deputy, as soon as he saw the leader, abruptly changed his face. He asked in fear why he himself in person had come here. Mo Li and the first elder were no less frightened and surprised that the leader of the council himself had visited them. They felt uneasy and sweat ran down their faces before they had time to recover from the fact that the leader of the discipline council himself had appeared. Someone else arrived with the same strong aura. She was a beautiful girl, the head of the skill library. She was wearing a long dress. The top was green and gradually turned golden towards the end. One of the disciples had previously seen her at a sect meeting last year. She was in charge of the sect meeting ceremony. Nobody understood what was happening. What could bring such important personalities here? The first elder was perplexed at what had begun to happen. First came the leader of the discipline council, now the head of the skills library. Did something happen in the sect? Two more strong green auras appeared in the sky. It looks like the entire top of the mystic elder sect will gather today. Along with the leader of the discipline council and the head of the skill library, the head of the hall of fame and the head of the treasury, also arrived. This must be a very important situation for such important people from the Mystic Elder Sect to decide to gather. Deputy Discipline Council Zhao was no longer so self-confident. He was very scared that his actions were interrupted by significant people. It turns out that the heads of four halls have now gathered here. Such a memorable scene. This is much cooler than a sect meeting. The attention of all students was directed to the heads of the sect. Trembling with fear, the Deputy Council of Discipline bowed and introduced himself to them. He asks if he could inquire why the heads of the four halls came to the training ground. The head of the discipline council did not explain himself, but asked him the question himself. He asked what happened here that the deputy of discipline was personally involved in it. The deputy council of discipline fell to his knees. He stuttered and couldn't really say the reason why he was there. The leader of the discipline council slapped him and ordered him to shut his mouth. After all, he can't even speak normally. He's like a damn piece of trash. After that, he forcefully slapped the first elder from a distance, and he ordered him to tell what happened. The first elder began to explain that the outer realm of the Sedi disciples was being tested here. However, one of the students not only broke the rules, but also took prohibited pills to increase his strength. Moreover, he even dared to speak out against Deputy Leader Zhao. The heads of the four halls definitely came here for a more important reason. The first elder believes. They probably wouldn't even think of questioning someone as petty as him. It seems that we need to wait for them to leave before dealing with Qin Nan. The sect leaders listened to the first elder's version and drew certain conclusions. They hovered over the students and asked which of them all was Qin Nan. The first elder and Mo Li broke out in a cold sweat. The leader of the discipline council personally came here for Qin Nan? Qin Nan greeted them and said that it was an honor for him to meet the heads of the four halls. The head of the skill library heard that Chin Nan had a battle talent duel with a great genius that summoned purple rays of light. Chin Nan bowed and replied that he was honored that she had heard his name before. He was very grateful to her. The leader of the discipline council allowed Chin Nan to tell her version. The reason for their visit was his justice. They asked him to tell him what happened today. Once again, the deputy leader for discipline and the first elder were horrified by the unfolding of events. The leaders of the four halls came here to protect Chin Nan. 
How intimidating is the one standing behind him? Chin Nan said that what happened here is actually quite problematic. He thinks he should start with First Elder Cheng Biao. The First Elder manipulated the outside world test as he wanted, only for his disciple to take first place, which led to the change in the first round to material and tablet recognition. Everyone knows that he is an expert in pill alchemy, so it makes sense that his student would also be proficient in it. Or does Cheng Biao want to deny that the first round was specially set up for Nangong Cheng? In the second round of elimination matches, in order to take revenge, the first elder made Chin Nan's friends constantly clash with him, which led to their disqualification in the first round. He also arranged the battle so that Chin Nan would fight against top ten geniuses. Did this really happen? asked the leader of the discipline council. However, the first elder was more shocked that Chin Nan was able to reach the final battle and fight Nang Gong Chung. In the end, defeating him. Chin Nan revealed that he was able to defeat Nang Gong Chung in the second level of the Xiantian realm with his strength of the first level of the Xiantian realm. But the first elder accused him of cheating. Moreover, he forcibly kicked Chin Nan out of the sect. Moreover, Deputy Leader Zhao was even more merciless. He promptly kicked Chin Nan out of the sect without conducting a proper investigation, and he even wanted to kill him after Chin Nan asked him a question. The heads of the four halls, that's all Chin Nan wanted to say. How do they think these two should be punished? The leader of the discipline council spoke to the first elder and deputy of the discipline council that they had amazed him with their actions, and now they will be sent into exile for five years without the possibility of access to the outside world. The discipline leader was very strict with them. So this is all punishment. It seems that Chin Nan's relationship with the heads of the four halls is not that close, the offenders thought. But Chin Nan shouted that he did not agree with this decision. He believed that they deserved a more serious punishment for their deeds. The first elder abused his power for his own benefit, preventing the students from participating in a fair fight. He even teamed up with Deputy Leader Zhao to forcibly expel the disciples. Deputy Leader Zhao immediately kicked out the genius disciples without conducting any investigation. He even wanted to kill the student with his own hands. And finally, their greatest sin is that they dared to destroy the purple dragon token with scarlet teeth. After Chin Nan showed the remains of the broken token, all the elders were very surprised. They did not expect that there would be such unreasonable employees among the deputies of discipline. The discipline leader became very angry after that. He asked the first elder and deputy if they were idiots. They don't value their knowledge at all. It was not long before this moment when Chin Nan's token was destroyed. The elder calmly enjoyed his life, looked at the landscapes and birds. Suddenly, he felt that the purple dragon token with scarlet teeth was broken. Most likely something happened to Chin Nan. He immediately gathered all the heads of the four halls and asked them to hurry to the outer realm to save Chin Nan. He must be saved, no matter the danger he is in. This child always makes the old man worry about him. He saw incredible potential in Chin Nan, so he could not allow anything bad to happen to such a student. The discipline leader picked up the remains of the token and examined it carefully. He replied that it was no surprise that Elder Shan ordered the four of them to come here in person. Having a purple dragon token with scarlet teeth is comparable to the arrival of a great elder. Even the sect leader would have to act accordingly if he saw him. Where do these two even get the courage? By breaking the token, it can be said that they have challenged the great elder. The first elder, along with the deputy leader for discipline, were already kneeling in front of him and begging for mercy. They had already sweated out all the sweat they had. But the leader of the discipline council did not appreciate his deputy's apology and simply punched him in the face so that he would not open his mouth again. From such a blow, the deputy flew back into the wall, at the same time crashing into and crushing the first elder. The deputy dared to touch the great elder's token? And after that, he even dares to call himself part of the discipline council? Should a leader really teach how to act in such situations? A few more minutes passed as the leader became very angry with the deputy and the first elder. They could no longer do anything and their power came to an end. Deputy Leader Zhao and the first elder of the outer realm had teamed up with each other and committed a serious crime. Today, the leader announces that they will be removed from their positions and will be sent to the Hall of Discipline for a hundred years. Nangong Cheng was on his knees, 
depressed, and crushed. In addition, his teacher will now be sent into exile for a hundred years. His image and courage have already come to an end. Chin Nan added that Nang Gong Cheng and Mo Li were also involved in this event. They were already afraid of what fate would await them. The discipline leader orders Nang Gong Cheng and Mo Li to be detained for ten years as punishment. Both sweat and tears had already drained from their faces. Chin Nan continued further. These disciplinary elders also tried to kill him. The discipline leader was indignant. How could such elders dare to attack a superior person? They will all be arrested for thirty years. After everyone was sentenced, the leader of the discipline council asked Chin Nan if he was satisfied with this result. It seems that now they will receive a truly fair punishment. Chin Nan folded his hands in gratitude and said that the leader really follows the rules. However, two of his friends are geniuses with eighth grade souls, but they were unable to place in the top ten because of the first elder. The discipline leader took this point into account during the test and he invited his friends to be his students. Now that things have improved, they are returning. Chin Nan and his friends thanked the leader of the discipline council, as well as all the leaders who had arrived. They value their wisdom and conscience. Chin Nan returned to his friends and told them that it was his fault that they were targeted. This was all he could do for them as compensation for the inconvenience. But they were very glad that everything turned out that way. Everything was fine, that was enough. Indeed. Becoming a student of the leader of the discipline council is much better than getting into the top five on the test. Chin Nan heard someone praising him and telling him how cool he was. He turned to look at the man. Chin Nan became an idol for all students. Even the heads of the four halls came to save him. It was simply incredible. The boy was able to repel the first elder and deputy leader for discipline. The remaining elder announces that Chin Nan takes first place in the trial. Everyone started shouting the word first. The second elder gathered all the strongest from this test. He congratulates them all for outperforming the others in this test. Despite the incidents that occurred, the test of the outer kingdom came to an end. Now, he will take the permanent place of the first elder and distribute rewards for the test to all of them. Each of them received their own Xiantian pills or some other types of pills, depending on the place they took in the test. Such majestic energy, Huang Long said. This imperial prosperity pill is truly fascinating. No wonder Nangong Cheng would do such a thing for her. Next, the new first elder asked Qin Nan, Huang Long, Mo Zishan, Shu Yu, Da Hu, not to forget that they only have ten days before they go to the pavilion of battle luck. During these ten days, one must remember that they cannot reach the Xiantian realm, because those who have reached the Xiantian realm will not be able to get anything better from the battle fortune pavilion. Xiao Leng, Chu Yun, the two of them are geniuses with eighth grade souls. If it weren't for Nangong Cheng and the first elder, they would have had a great chance of taking one of the top five places. To make up for their losses, they are allowed to choose one treasure from the first floor of the treasury. Today, everyone can be free. Qin Nan and the others remember to gather in the square in ten days. The sect will send an inner realm elder to escort them to the Battle Fortune Pavilion. Huang Long and Mo Zishan exchanged a few phrases with each other and already decided to say goodbye before meeting. They must have already left when Chin Nan decided to stop them and called them for something. Chin Nan began to thank them from the bottom of his heart for their help in testing the outer realm. From this day forward, he would consider them all his friends. You can ask him for help at any time, and Chin Nan will always try to help them. They smiled and said that there was nothing to be grateful for. Chin Nan impressed them very much, which was enough for them to side with him. They wouldn't give up if either of them had even a slight chance of defeating him. One of the tyrannical tigers also approached Chin Nan. It seems they also want to apologize for the current situation. On behalf of the five tyrannical tigers, he apologizes for the problems they caused him. They acted rashly when they contacted Nangong Cheng. Chin Nan forgave them and said that from now on, they should behave well and not cause problems for others. If they don't listen to this, then Chin Nan will be beaten out of every meeting. A little guy was running down the street and handing out leaflets. Last news. Outer disciple Chin Nan, using his high level of skill in pill alchemy, proved that the first elder was wrong and took first place. 
Using only his eighth-level soul and mid-Giantian realm cultivation, he was able to defeat a second-level disciple of the Ziantian realm. The heads of the four halls personally came to defend Chin Nan, arresting the deputy and the first elder. Further events are transferred to the peak of the mountain of the inner kingdom. There was a young man and another girl standing on it. Interestingly, Chin Nan has a purple dragon token with scarlet teeth from Elder Shan. If he remembers correctly, this guy Chin Nan is also quite close to his girlfriend. If so, then it's time to teach Chin Nan a lesson. I wonder who this young man is. In addition to the huge amount of pills, Chin Nan also received the Imperial Prosperity Pill. There are quite a lot of rewards. Will the mischievous princess really swallow them up again? After absorbing the ancient spiritual liquid, his chi mixed with this one, making it equal to the first level of the Xiantian realm. That's why Chin Nan was able to defeat Nanggong Cheng. If it weren't for this white jade ginseng, Chin Nan would not be able to continue absorbing this ancient spiritual chi. As soon as the ginseng princess spirit sensed the pills, she immediately absorbed them all into herself. Chin Nan fell to his knees in despair and shed tears. This made him angry again. How dare the princess touch Chin Nan's pills again? He began to squeeze this root in his hands. Suddenly, the ginseng root began to emit warmth and glow. His shell began to burst. I wonder what will happen now. As soon as the shell burst completely, a princess emerged from the ginseng root. She was able to free herself from the spell and leave her imprisonment. Chin Nan began to think about it. Is this the metamorphosis of the spiritual ingredient spoken of in legends? Now standing in front of him was the spirit of the princess, which was locked in the ginseng root. As Princess Chin Nan, she is very disappointed to see her slave acting like an idiot. Chin Nan felt awkward at this moment. He didn't know how to behave in this case. He asked her who she was. This is his owner, Princess Miao Miao. Chin Nan was very surprised and excited. He asked her again, Princess Miao Miao? Chin Nan was angry. He didn't care who she was. Does she know how many pills she has taken from Chin Nan since he found her? And if he doesn't give it back, he intends to take them himself. She looked in surprise at how angry Chin Nan was. She repeated once again that he is her slave. Everything that belongs to him is her property. Chin Nan clenched his fingers into fists and called it all nonsense. He couldn't understand how he had become someone's slave. The boy rushed at her to teach her a lesson and take away his honestly earned pills. However, she was not so simple and managed to hit his forehead with her finger. With such a light click, Chin Nan lost his balance and stepped back a little. He even had a mark on his forehead from which a slight smoke emanated. Such terrifying power. As her servant, one must be obedient in the presence of the princess. This click was a small punishment for the mistake. She winked at him and blew the smoke from her fingers as if from a revolver. Chin Nan decided to use his war god eyes to look through it. Princess Miao Miao's strength is actually comparable to Elder Shan. Could her cultivation already be in the martial ancestor realm? The princess frowned and said to Chin Nan, As her slave, if he dares to stare at her like that again, he will never be forgiven. Chin Nan shyly asked her why she should take his pills when she is so strong. He hopes that she will return them to him and they will go their separate ways peacefully. Is this the kind of behavior a servant should have? If it weren't for the agreement that Chin Nan made with the princess in blood, forcing her to stay with him within a radius of 100 kilometers, then she would have left long ago. It is the servant's duty to give the pills. Chin Nan was surprised that she told him about the agreement. He is already afraid that he will have to be with Princess Miao Miao for the rest of his life. Chin Nan decided to reveal his war god soul and asked her not to go too far. After she regained her human form, she was still weak. But even in this state, she is much stronger than her previous state. I wonder how long it will take her to defeat a 10th grade soul. Princess Miao Miao tried to attack the soul of the god of war Chin Nan, but the boy didn't even flinch. What kind of 10th grade soul is this? How can she exude such a strong aura? The most interesting thing is, why can't the princess see through it? Chin Nan smiled and asked not to consider him a punching bag. It seems that the princess's strength is still a little lacking. She recognizes that his soul is strong, but if it weren't for the treaty prohibiting her from killing Chin Nan, 
the soul would not have stopped her from doing so. However, since he is her servant, she will no longer take his pills just like that. She took away 10,000 martial emperor pills, 100,000 Xiantian pills, and one emperor prosperity pill. In exchange, he will give Chin Nan 20 drops of ancient spiritual liquid. As many as 20 drops? Chin Nan was very surprised by this. With just three drops, his cultivation had already risen to the first level of the Xiantian realm. And with 20 drops, his cultivation level can rise to at least the third level of the Xiantian realm. But if Chin Nan wants to obtain 20 drops of ancient spiritual liquid, he must promise the princess something. Chin Nan asked what exactly? It's simple. Because of the contract, they can't be separated for the next 10 years. So she has a few requests. First, don't tell anyone who she is and don't talk about their secret. And secondly, she will no longer steal his pills but will only exchange them for the ancient spiritual liquid. The third request, since he is her servant, if she needs something, then he must do everything to help her. She smiled happily and said that these are three simple rules. Does he agree to accept them? Chin Nan asked again, is that all? But if he thinks that this is not enough, then she will only be happy to add something else. Chin Nan agreed to these rules. They shook hands and she handed him 20 drops of ancient spiritual liquid, for which Chin Nan thanked his princess. She became happier after Chin Nan called her his princess. From now on, she will take good care of him. She will not forgive anyone who bullies him. Princess Miao Miao is an expert at the level of martial ancestor, with cultivations like Elder Shan. Wouldn't having her next to you be a guarantee of safety? Getting such a way out by sacrificing some pills is definitely worth it. Chin Nan and his princess went for a walk. She asked him how long it would take them to get to Elder Shan. Chin Nan replied that they would arrive soon. He lives just around the corner. During the trial of the Outer Realm, Chin Nan could only rely on Elder Shan for help, so he must thank him for this. The most important problem is the sudden appearance of this princess in the Order. And Chin Nan still had enemies, so she needs to be given a new identity to avoid unnecessary trouble. They had already arrived at Elder Shan's residence. The road turned out to be not long at all. The old man was already tired of waiting for Chin Nan and was very happy to see him. It was then that he felt that the token he had given had been broken by someone. Chin Nan and her new girlfriend entered Elder Shan's residence. At this time, he was admiring the scenery while looking out the window. They greeted him. Shan turned around and asked Chin Nan why he brought this little girl here. After all, he had adult conversations with the boy. The princess did not remain silent and called Sean an old man. The little stupid and spoiled girl was offended by this, and she began to extort 500,000 Giantian pills from Sean as compensation. Otherwise, there would be no forgiveness. The elder did not like these words, and he became a little angry. He asked the little girl to watch her words from now on. She also decided to show her character and replied that princesses do not need to watch their words. Elder Sean noticed that this girl's level was simply terrifying, and her cultivation is even a little stronger than himself. He wondered who she was. He turned to Chin Nan and asked her who this little princess was. But he doesn't yet know that Chin Nan and the princess agreed not to reveal their secret. She is a member of my Chin family, Chin Nan replied. She had been kind to him in the past. For some reason, she will be with him for a long time. He hopes that Shan can create a new identity for her. No problem, Shan replied. If the princess decides to stay in the mystic elder sect, then she will definitely be given the identity of a venerable elder. She will have no restrictions other than our rules. He also apologized to the princess. The girl smiled. It was so sweet of Shan. Her eyes are excellent, because at first glance she understood that Shan was an important person. She asks to be called princess again and again. She agrees to be revered by the elder, and is interested in how many tablets she will receive per month. In their sect, the revered elder comes after the great elder and sect leader, and about the pills. 100,000 martial emperor pills per month, and the same benefits as Shang. Chin Nan was simply horrified by the number mentioned. This was an incredibly large number for him. Without doing anything, you can get 100,000 martial emperor pills every month? Yes, this title of revered elder is a real pleasure. From this day forward, she is now a revered elder. Old man Shan handed Ching Nan another token, 
which he once gave to him, and asked him not to break it again. Moreover, Shan wants to ask what class of Qin Nan's soul is. How could he defeat Nangong Cheng? Qin Nan can't tell him about this yet. He was able to defeat him because he found a special ancient spiritual liquid, which changed his qi to ancient spiritual qi after use. So this is the ancient spiritual qi. Now Qin Nan is considered an atavistic cultivator. Unlike the others, his cultivation would remain in the middle of the Xiantian realm in the eyes of others. And after the tenth level, you can try to destroy the barrier and become a battle emperor. Shan respects Qin Nan, and therefore must tell him that the cultivation speed in the Xiantian kingdom is very fast. But reaching the martial emperor realm is three times more difficult. Many sect disciples chose the path of ancient spiritual cultivation for the sake of rapid perfection. But they still had not reached the martial emperor realm after ten years. Even great geniuses with tenth grade souls spent five years and a huge amount of resources. Although it was very difficult for atavistic cultivators to break the barrier and reach the martial emperor realm, Qin Nan thinks that by then, his soul will have already entered the secret class. Qin Nan walked up to the third floor of the skill library. At the entrance, he was stopped by a guard at the entrance and told that ordinary students were not allowed to enter here. The guard's face changed very quickly when Qin Nan came closer, and he recognized him. He laughed awkwardly and asked Qin Nan to enter the third floor of the skill library. Qin Nan can stay here as long as he wants. The guardian decided to make an announcement on this occasion. From this day forward, the third floor of the skills library will be closed for a period of time, and no students are allowed to enter here. Qin Nan walked in and began to look around. He calmly walked between the shelves in search of something interesting to him. He was glad and happy that he finally came to the third floor. This place is heaven for him. There is a lot of useful information and skills here. As Elder Shan said, the speed of ancient spiritual cultivation is very fast. This means that Qin Nan will not waste much time. He planned to spend ten days training before heading to the Battle Fortune Pavilion. While Qin Nan was training, in the square the students were talking about some girl who beat an elder in the deep forest and took all his pills. The leader of the discipline council was also robbed. No one knew who this girl was. It was the eighth day on the third floor of the skills library. Qin Nan trained hard. Qin Nan read all the ancient books that were here, and he developed a deeper understanding of martial arts. He has two more days before the test begins. The boy wants to fix the seven deadly sins during this time. Weapons are divided into mystical weapons, Hutian class weapons, Xiantian class weapons, and so on. Although the seven deadly sins are considered mystical, great power sleeps within them. If you awaken it, the weapon will be comparable to the level of Hutian. His blood, in which his soul boils, flows into the universe, began to unite with his will. Hutian level weapons are very rare. Even ordinary students will find it very difficult to obtain it. Not to mention the seven deadly sins, consisting of seven swords. If awakened, they will become seven Hutian level swords, which can be combined into devastating combinations that will be stronger than normal Hutian level weapons. By donating his blood, he will force this weapon to recognize him as its master. His soul has been cultivated for a long time and is considered a legendary myth of this continent. Only evil intentions would dare to go against Qin Nan. A strong aura was visible in Qin Nan's eyes. He called upon the swords to unite into one. Qin Nan orders them to bow before him. And he succeeded. From this day forward, these seven swords will fight alongside him. If he has the opportunity in the future, he will restore their strength and allow them to become Hutian level weapons again. There is not much time left Qin Nan should already be leaving. He prepared very well for the upcoming test. Let the Pavilion of Battle Fortune prepare, because Qin Nan himself is coming to it. He is going to surpass all his opponents. The strongest of the students who had been admitted to the Pavilion of Combat Success had already begun to gather in the square. Huang Long, Tyrannical Tiger, Mo Zishan, and the rest of the top best stood and talked with each other. Suddenly, Huang Long decided to turn around. He heard people start to admire someone. It was Qin Nan walking. Everyone was talking about how he took first place in the Outer Realm trial. His appearance alone makes one admire him. Qin Nan is an atavistic cultivator. 
how can he only be in the middle of the Ziantian realm? His cultivation should already be comparable to the first level of the Ziantian realm. Huang Long noticed someone again and asked everyone to be quiet. It was Mo Qing, the third elder of the inner realm. He will escort the five of them to the pavilion of battle luck. Directly opposite him below stood Qin Nan. He was a little confused and felt awkward. The third elder turned his attention to him and asked him if he was Qin Nan. Because he was very interested in his strength, Qin Nan folded his hands in gratitude and replied that it was an honor for him to be noticed by Elder Mo. To Qin Nan, this person looked very familiar. The elder did not accept Qin Nan's gratitude. His son, Mo Li, did nothing to him. He only said a few words. But because of Qin Nan, he is now under arrest for ten years. He asked if there was even an ounce of respect for the elder based on these actions. Qin Nan decided to reprimand him that as an inner elder, he should watch his words. It was the decision of the leader of the discipline council to send Mo Li into custody. This has nothing to do with Qin Nan himself. The elder calmed down and replied that Qin Nan was right. He doesn't have to worry, Mo won't waste any more time on the boy. However, since Qin Nan is an atavistic cultivator, his strength is developing too quickly. He is afraid that his cultivation might go wrong. Therefore, before they go to the Battle Luck Pavilion, the Elder wants to teach Qin Nan how to use her fighting abilities, unexpectedly for everyone. Elder Mo attacked the boy. The beam of energy hit his right shoulder. Qin Nan didn't even have time to blink because he was not prepared for this. Huang Long and Mo Zishan were very excited about this. What's wrong with this elder? He simply attacked Qin Nan. The elder had just used only one-tenth of his strength, yet Qin Nan was unable to dodge it. Qin Nan's reaction is too slow. Need to practice more. After this, the elder launched several more attacks. But this time, Qin Nan used the eight mystic steps technique to evade. Qin Nan deftly dodged the attacks flying at him. But nevertheless, one of them reached the boy again, and he was wounded. He screamed in pain. After that, Qin Nan fell to the ground. He shouted how his cultivation even treated the elder. If he wants to kill Qin Nan, then let him say so. Qin Nan considers himself a kind person. If the elder cannot kill the boy today, then let him prepare for his revenge. Revenge? Elder Mo asked. And what is wrong? It seems that after Qin Nan became an atavistic cultivator, his cultivation improved too dramatically, leaving too many flaws. The elder wants to destroy his Dantian and replace it with pills so that Qin Nan can start from scratch. Mo Qing wants to destroy Qin Nan's entire formation. Qin Nan already had two wounds, one in her shoulder and the other in her leg. He didn't understand how Elder Mo dared to do this to him. Unexpectedly, an explosion was heard between Qin Nan and the Elder. It was directed from top to bottom. Who could it be that came to Qin Nan's aid? His princess came to help Qin Nan. She was very angry and asked how he dared to mock her servant. Is Elder Mo tired of living? The Elder jumped away from her attack. Who is she? He asked. Does she really have the courage and audacity to attack on the sly? Qin Nan still didn't have enough strength to get up. However, the princess came to his defense. Elder Mo still didn't know who this little girl was. The boy, having difficulty pronouncing the words, tells her that this is his business and it has nothing to do with her. He wants to figure it out himself. The elder didn't care whose child she was. He warns her now and tells her to come home. If she does it quickly and obediently, he will not harm her in any way. In response to the elder's threats, she only smiled and laughed, as if challenging him. At that same second, with lightning speed, she rushes at the elder. Now he was no longer ready for the attack, and most likely it would take him by surprise. The elder was able to sense her power, the power of the martial ancestor realm. How is this possible? He wondered. How could this girl be such a terrifying expert of the martial ancestor realm? Just as quickly as she closed the distance with him, she slapped him. She orders him to shut his damn mouth in front of the princess. She hasn't used her full strength yet. However, from her slap, the elder lost his balance and simply fell to the surface, flying a couple more meters back before landing. The disciples were very surprised by what they saw. This situation has never happened to them before. Nobody knew how to react. The elder recovered from such a slap and was already beginning to rise to his feet. At this time, the princess was already approaching him. He stood up, shook the dust off his clothes, and, angry but confused, asked the princess that she dared to hit the elder. 
but she wasn't finished yet and applied a slap to the other side of her face. The elder also did not expect to receive this slap. He didn't even try to dodge or parry her attack. It was so fast and powerful that Elder Mo once again fell to the surface like a bag of garbage. The girl came up to him and took him by the collar, and he's pretty brave for such an old piece of shit to dare hit her servant. She sat on him and started slapping him multiple times. Chin Nan had already risen to his feet and was observing this entire situation. The tyrannical princess, Miao Miao, who always steals his pills, now beats up the third elder of the inner realm in the name of protecting the boy. The princess stopped beating and stopped. She asked the elder if he now admits his mistake. On his knees, he asked her to be generous and let him go, because he was very sorry. The girl asks to call her princess. Now Mo begged the princess to let him go. Not bad, this old piece of trash is pretty smart. She recommends being obedient to the princess from this day forward. She also asked if he had any pills with him. If he did, he should give them back immediately. Chin Nan was very impressed with how she dealt with the elder. And the elder himself still did not understand what he had gotten himself into. He gave her a small bag of pills. After this, the princess asked him to tell her people that Chin Nan belonged to her. She doesn't care who she protects him from, even from the sect leader. She will definitely make anyone regret it for the rest of their lives. Chin Nan was very pleased that he received such protection. Moreover, he did not give so many tablets for this. But the girl's last words knocked him off his feet. The princess added that if she is paid enough, then they can bully Chin Nan as they please. Senior brother Chin Nan is incredibly cool. He deserves to be an idol. There is someone truly impressive standing behind him. So he is also protected by an expert from the martial ancestor realm. Chin Nan is simply incredible. Chin Nan decided to thank the princess, but she told him to go and not distract her. She was already amusing herself with a bag of pills. The boy, with an awkward expression on his face, wondered if she was interested in anything other than pills. As soon as it was over, someone arrived on the site again. Judging by his aura, it must be someone even stronger than Elder Mo Ching. All the students looked at him and waited for what he would announce. Due to the incident that happened just now, he, Zhang Taiyi, would be the one to escort the disciples to the Martial Fortune Pavilion. They have lost so much time, so he is no longer going to waste it on empty talk. He called the five disciples who had passed the test to follow him. It was necessary to hurry so as not to be late for the very beginning of another test. Ten days have passed. The group went to the west of the Luohe Kingdom. Autumn Mountain is located right next to the Autumn Star Ocean. A huge number of beasts and treasures can be found here, which attracts many wandering cultivators. There are still five days left before the opening of the Pavilion of Battle Luck. These five days you can do whatever you want here. However, remember that before the opening of the Pavilion of Battle Luck, the number of people wanting to find treasure here becomes larger. This place is full of dangers, so try not to mess with anyone. Each student will take a badge. If they are in danger, the badge must be broken immediately and the elder will arrive as soon as possible. Chin Nan only has five days. Instead of wasting it on research, it would be much better if they used that time on cultivation and preparation. The young princess ran up to Chin Nan, holding some kind of scroll in her hands. She asked the boy for help with something. Chin Nan took a closer look and asked the princess what she needed help with. She had an old map in her hands. With its help, it was possible to explore all the way to the Autumn Mountain. Thanks to her, Chin Nan will be able to find everything that is here. And of course, everything that Chin Nan finds will go only to the princess. He asked where she got such a map and what exactly he would find there. Chin Nan opened it and began to examine it. Roads and other marks were marked on it. Chin Nan will have to find the crystal flowers. If the map doesn't lie, there should be 80 stems in total. Although crystal flowers are considered a low-grade treasure, each stem should be worth a thousand martial emperor pills. Chin Nan replied that under no circumstances would he go there just like that. It will probably be very dangerous there, so if he goes, he will only honestly divide what he finds in half. After all, 80,000 martial emperor pills are not lying on the ground. The princess just saved Chin Nan's life, and he still wants half of them. If she had not intervened then, the boy would have been injured. She was offended and turned away from Chin Nan. But he took pity on her and replied that he would do it. 
Chin Nan took the card in his hands. There was no sign of a happy person on his face, which could not be said about the princess. She is glad that Chin Nan is worthy of being her servant. By the way, because of the agreement, they must remain within a radius of 100 kilometers from each other. Chin Nan asked where she would stay when he went to pick up the flowers and why she didn't go with him, to which the princess, joyfully running through the clearing, replied that she had other plans of her own. Therefore, Chin Nan will have to go alone on the mission. Chin Nan went in search of crystal flowers. He deftly jumped from tree to tree, thus moving through the forest. Chin Nan stopped and decided to check the map. Based on this map, the crystal flowers shouldn't be too far from him. They are about five kilometers away. While studying the map and plotting the route, he heard someone calling for help. It was the voice of a girl. Most likely she was in some kind of danger. Chin Nan decided to see who was screaming there. A girl was lying near a tree. She was very scared. She had various abrasions on her skin, and a group of huge guys stood around her. She didn't know what they wanted to do with her. The guys stood and licked their lips at the look of the girl. They knew that in this dense forest, no one would come to her aid. This girl was a disciple of the Qing Nu sect and was unlucky enough to encounter these bandits. Chin Nan peeked out from behind the tree and observed the situation. Among the top four sects of the Luohe kingdom, only Qing Nu can be compared to the mystic elder sect. Looks like he'll have to get involved in this. The girl calls her offenders shameless and animals. She was kind to them, and they dared to set her up. She swears that she will not allow them to discredit her, even if it costs her life. The guys just laughed. They asked her how many good people she thought there would be among the vagabonds on the autumn mountain. She is too naive and no one will help her. Meanwhile, Chin Nan was watching all this. One of the robbers said that she could even kill herself only with his permission. They already intended to commit a crime. The girl was very scared. She already thought that this was her last day. But the boy decided to disrupt their plans. He shouted at them to stay where they were and not move around. Chin Nan came out from behind the tree and told them that the three of them at the first level of the Xiantian realm had coveted a girl who had just set foot in the Xiantian realm. Where did they lose their conscience? The guys turned around and laughed. One of them became worried, thinking that someone strong had come to save her. But it turned out that it was just a piece of garbage in the middle of the Xiantian kingdom. Sighing heavily, the girl thanked senior brother Chin Nan for his good intentions. But she believes that he cannot cope with them, and he needs to leave quickly. But she asks to tell the Ching Nu sect what happened here, so that her elder sister can take revenge. One of the gang says that Chin Nan chose the wrong road, and now he will have to die. He rushes at the boy and wants to make quick work of him, but before he even manages to jump halfway to the boy, he falls dead, being cut in half. Chin Nan was very serious. He used some kind of skill to hit the offender with one blow and make sure that he would no longer bring trouble to anyone. This guy's two accomplices stood next to him, confused. They couldn't believe their eyes that Chin Nan killed him in a second. They didn't know who this guy was yet. Having finished with one, he shouted to the others to run away. Otherwise, they would face the same outcome as their leader. Chin Nan was not joking and could indeed easily kill them too. These guys immediately understood everything and quickly decided to escape from this clearing. They no longer wanted pills or a beautiful young girl. Their thoughts were only about saving their lives. The girl rose to her feet. She thanked Chin Nan for his assistance. If it weren't for him, then most likely something terrible would have been done to her. She will definitely meet him again and then repay him for his kindness. Chin Nan decided not to get distracted and waste time. Therefore, I went further according to the marks on the map. He approached some huge cave, which was blown through by a strong draft. Chin Nan stopped at her entrance. There seems to be a beast in this cave. Judging by his aura, he should have already reached the third level of the Xiantian realm, that is, the peak of the base of the martial beast. He is already here, and relying on the amount of qi from his ancient spiritual cultivation, he should have a chance to hold his own against this beast. Chin Nan was determined to take the treasures that the beast was guarding. Chin Nan went deeper into the cave. Having walked not so far, he already heard the terrifying roar of the beast that lives there. A little more, and he came out to the huge beast himself. Chin Nan stopped, a drop of sweat running down his cheek. 
It seemed that the wind that was coming from the cave was not the wind, but the breath of this beast. He met such a beast just in time. It will be a great opportunity to help the boy learn the current power of the seven deadly sins. He draws his sword to begin the battle. Chinnan rushes at this monster. It was a huge drake, a dragon with two pairs of limbs but no wings. Chinnan used the eight mystic steps technique to reach the beast and begin striking it in various places. But the scales of the beast were so strong that even such a blade could not pierce them. Not only is he huge, but he also has impenetrable scales. It cannot be destroyed even with the direction of the blade at the initial stage of the secret realm. Things will be bad. If Chin Nan continues, then even an eternity will not be enough for him to defeat such an opponent. We need to find another way to deal with him. Chin Nan decided to use his skill of the eyes of the god of war, which see through everything. Having examined the drake, he saw a weak spot on his neck. It looks like that's where you need to hit it. Chin Nan prepared an attack and asks the soul of the god of war to release a destructive blow, a blow that would take the life of this hefty beast. The boy jumps up and carries out his crushing attack. I wonder if Chin Nan was able to break through this weak spot, or if his strength was not enough yet. From such a blow, the entrance to the cave began to shine. After the flash of light dissipated, dust rose. It was difficult to see anything there. Chin Nan waved his hand to disperse the dust near him. It looks like the beast has escaped. Such a quick escape has created chaos. The boy decided to go further, deeper into the cave after the beast. He intended to catch up with him in order to complete his work. Walking further through the cave, Chin Nan came to a clearing of crystalline flowers. Everything there was dotted with these beautiful, shining flowers. Chin Nan began to count how many flowers there were in this clearing. He counted exactly 80. I wonder where Princess Meow Meow got such a map. It is very accurate. Chin Nan looked around there and was about to start collecting crystal flowers when suddenly a voice came from the beginning of the cave. This voice shouted the direction where they were moving. Our main character began to listen. Someone else came here. I wonder if they also came for the crystal flowers. A group of girls approached the cave. They were serious and were looking for something or someone. They wanted to hurry because their goal was supposed to be inside this cave. Chin Nan came out of the cave and saw a group of girls in front of her. He was a little puzzled by this and did not yet know why they came here. The main girl from this group asked Chin Nan which sect he was from. They needed to determine how dangerous this guy was. The girl whom Chin Nan saved from the robbers was also with them. She was very glad to see him again and did not think that it would happen so soon. She wanted to immediately go up to the boy and ask his name. And she herself introduced herself as Chen Zhuer. She didn't even have a chance to thank him for her salvation then. But the leader of the group stopped her. She asked not to approach him. Shur asked why she was doing this, because she had already told her about her older brother who saved her. If it weren't for him, the girl would already be dead. The main girl in the group was named Van. She also asked Chin Nan why he saved her. Such words slightly misunderstood her younger sister. Chin Nan decided to check who was standing in front of him and felt her soul of the ninth grade, the middle of the Giantian realm, the ideal stage in unity with the sword. Her potential can be considered at the level of a great genius. Most likely, she belongs to one of the three strongest sects. Van was already reaching for her sword. She believes that the boy could have deceived Jouer, but Wang is not her. She asked if that animal had escaped from him. After all, he was approximately at the third level of the Xiantian realm. And Chin Nan is only in the middle of the Xiantian kingdom. And she, Wang Rulin, is not afraid of him. Even a fool can understand that Chin Nan would not save her if he wanted to harm her. But Wang, as an older sister, did not even thank Chin Nan for her help. Moreover, he accuses him of something unknown. He asks what she is up to. The girl shouted, How could it be that Chin Nan dared to offend elder sister Wang? Doesn't he know who she is? This guy is very suspicious, the girls think. Chin Nan suggested ending this circus. He already understood that the girls wanted to take those crystal flowers. So what's the point of ruining his reputation like that? Shur asked Chin Nan not to say such things because the eldest sister was just worried and that's why she acted so impudently. And yes, Chin Nan was right. She came precisely for these crystal flowers. 
Wang asked Chin Nan if he would give the flowers himself, or if he needed help with this. And if she doesn't give it back, she will make him regret it for the rest of his life. But Shuer herself didn't like this anymore, because Chin Nan saved her. And they still haven't thanked him. Chin Nan laughed at this. Does she really think she can make him regret it? He didn't think that the great geniuses of the Qing Nu sect would not care about their status at all. Chin Nan decided to show his aura and provoke Wang. He asks to show him what she is capable of. Wang Ruo Ling retreated back. She sensed Chin Nan's first level of Xiantian realm. She decided to repeat once again that she is one of the top geniuses of the outer realm of the Qing Nu sect, and her teacher is the first elder of the inner realm. If Chin Nan insults her, then he cannot avoid the latter. She invites him to be reasonable and give her the crystal flowers immediately, and only then will she forgive him for this behavior. Chin Nan decided to show even more of his strength. To be honest, he is interested in seeing these consequences. Wang Ruoling was no longer so brave. She sees that Chin Nan has reached the initial stage of the secret realm. She doesn't understand how this is possible. Chin Nan had already charged the sphere and was ready to fight. He decided to ask her again how she would make him regret it. Chin Nan drew all his swords of the seven deadly sins and was ready for the battle to take place. Or maybe he just wanted to intimidate her and not get involved in the conflict. But he definitely didn't want to give away the honestly obtained crystal flowers. Wang Ruo Ling began to stutter. She hardly uttered a warning that it was better not to mess with her. Chin Nan also did not want to retreat because he had not done anything bad to them and he categorically did not want to give up what was his. Wang Rulin alone is not enough to do anything to the boy. They all felt Chin Nan's terrifying aura and trembled from it, not understanding why this was happening. Chin Nan himself simply turned around and began to leave along with his prey. Wang Ruoling was very angry. She walked up to Shuer and slapped her hard. She believes that the girl specifically found this guy to deal with her. She decided to teach her a lesson for this. Suddenly, a wooden stick flew towards them at incredible speed. She ran so fast that she easily crashed into a tree post. After that, Wang gave the command to everyone to leave. Chin Nan decided to return to his mystic elder sect camp. There was a tent pitched there and some of the students were sitting near it. There are still a few days left before the opening of the Pavilion of Fortune. Chin Nan wants to spend this time meditating and strengthening his cultivation. Unexpectedly for everyone, explosions began to occur at the top of the mountain, which was not so far from them. A loud sound and light flashes came from there. Everyone from the camp turned their attention in that direction. How strong must the energy released be to create such a strong blow? Judging by the sound, there is a battle going on. The sky above the top of the autumn mountain shone with different colors. Flashes of energy were constantly flying out there, directed in different directions. The elder who accompanied the group analyzed and guessed that there was a duel between martial ancestor experts taking place at the top of the autumn mountain. Chin Nan looked around and did not see the princess anywhere nearby. One of them is definitely Princess Miao Miao. She is probably fighting for some treasure on the autumn mountain. There was a small crowd of people on the northern part of the autumn mountain peak. There were several dozen of them in total. The group located on that mountain discussed that two days ago, a battle took place between the martial ancestors on the Autumn Mountain. Rumor has it that a treasure is hidden there, and two monsters are fighting over it. The battle lasted one day and night, and one of them was killed at the end. A group of the mystic elder sect had already arrived at this part of the mountain. They ask everyone to make way for them. The group of wanderers who were already on the mountain did not expect that the mystic elder sect would also come here. They had all reached the middle of the Xiantian realm. That is why they are the geniuses of their sect. Only disciples of the top four sects are allowed to enter the Battle Luck Pavilion. Why are these wandering cultivators here? The elder replied that they were here for another reason. The guys from the group of wandering cultivators shouted that the Battle Fortune Pavilion was appearing. It's about to open soon. The spire of the building began to rise from the large water. It all shone with a golden light that was directed high into the sky. Chin Nan had not yet seen this pavilion and had no idea what it looked like. Came out of the waves with this bright golden glow. What is this pavilion of battle luck? 
one of the students asked the elder. Chin Nan decided to immediately use the eyes of the god of war and take a better look at this structure. It is magnificent. With his current cultivation level, Chin Nan is completely unable to see through it, even using the eyes of the god of war. While the mystic elder sect group was looking at the outside of the battle pavilion, another sect arrived. This was the Soaring Sword sect. This group looked very impressive and seasoned. It was not for nothing that their sect was called that way. Those present here were very surprised by the strength of their sword. Some of them heard that all their students have souls that use swords. It is no wonder that such a strong aura pressure emanates from them. An elder from the Soaring Sword sect group approached the elder of the Mystic Elder sect. They knew each other, and he addressed him by his name. Isn't Elder Mo Ching in charge of the Mystic Elder sect? Then what is Zhang doing here? Zhang Taiyi asked not to speak to him in such a tone. In a few hours, the combat pavilion will open. He doesn't want to start an argument now. One of the Soaring Sword sect group stared at Chin Nan. Chin Nan himself sensed this and paid attention to it. That boy saw that Chin Nan was another atavistic cultivator. Based on the concentration of his chi, he should have already reached the second level of the Xiantian realm. The disciple standing in front is Huang Kui. He has a 10th grade soul and incredible combat talent. His attacks are rumored to emit enormous energy. He will be a strong opponent in the test of the Battle Luck Pavilion. One of the guys turned his attention to the fact that another group was moving towards them. It was a group from the Qing Nu sect. No wonder they say that every student of their sect is more beautiful than any flower. According to rumors, the leaders of the Mystic Elder sect and the Qing Nu sect grew up together and have known each other since childhood. If these sects united into a family, they would definitely become the strongest. The main girl from this group approached the guy from the Soaring Sword sect. Senior brother Huang Kui arrived quite early. He answered her that they had not seen each other for a long time, and she had become even more beautiful. He invites her to come see him after he becomes the first in the Battle Luck Pavilion test. The girl became embarrassed when she heard such words. Apparently, she liked him too, and would have gladly accepted his proposal. The rest of the guys in Huang Kui's group just stood aside and shed tears because she wouldn't pay attention to them. Everyone split up into groups and talked to each other. The girl from the Qing Nu sect, whom Qin Nan saved, saw him and happily waved her hand at him. She decided to come closer to him. Qin Nan didn't understand at first who was calling him, but when he saw it, he was embarrassed. Huang Long and Mo Zixiao stood to the side, winking at Qin Nan and joking that he had acquired a new girlfriend. Wang Ruoling also saw all this. So is it you, also a disciple of the Mystic Elder sect? She turned to Qin Nan angrily. Brother Huan, it's him! She began to say that it was he who mocked her last time. He also stole all her crystal flowers. Huang Ke's face changed dramatically. He no longer liked this Qin Nan. He looked at him questioningly and said, What kind of crap is this? Qin Nan's friend shouted that Wang Ru Ling should not dare to blame him. She planned to steal the crystal flowers from Big Brother Nan, and she even threatened him, but she was weak, so Wang Ru Ling asked her to shut up. Huang Ke walked up to Qin Nan. He was already very angry with him, although he did not know the whole situation. His aura was quite terrifying. However, Qin Nan remained calm. This was not the first time he had been in such a situation. The students began to discuss this topic. They just met, and they are already going to clash. At least you can watch a good show. They are wondering which of the two will be stronger. The elder of the Mystic Elder sect decided to intervene and ask the junior not to be so arrogant. Beside them was the elder of the Soaring Sword sect. He laughed at these words. Everyone looked at him. Jang Taiyi, this is just a fight between students, he said. Isn't it a shame to interrupt this? He believes that if a conflict arises between students, they should resolve it themselves. Elder Ching Nu sect also supported Elder Fang's words. The students must resolve this dispute themselves. Fang thought about it. Even though this guy is an atavistic cultivator like Huang Kui, Huang is a genius with a 10th grade soul. If there is a battle between them, Qin Nan will clearly lose. And if this happened in front of so many wandering cultivators, the status of the mystic elder sect would be greatly shaken. He couldn't miss this opportunity to ruin the reputation of another sect. Huang Ke tells Qin Nan not to rely on his elder to protect him. 
Since Chin Nan is also an atavistic cultivator, he can forgive him this time if Chin Nan is willing to apologize. Chin Nan asked him if he wanted him to apologize, because Chin Nan doesn't understand what nonsense they're telling him. He doesn't need to apologize to him. Chin Nan wants to give him some advice. Start thinking with your head and don't let others manipulate you. Otherwise, the consequences will be disastrous for him. Disciples from the Soaring Sword sect consider this to be a great deal of arrogance. Chin Nan openly challenged Big Brother Huang Shui. Wang Ruling thinks Chin Nan is a completely crazy person. Who is he to speak like that to Brother Huang Shui? A verbal altercation began between the students. Each of them considered himself absolutely right in this situation. But some of them were really very arrogant. Huang Shui was already very angry. If he said that someone is wrong, then so it is. Chin Nan makes a big mistake by challenging him and insulting Ru Ling. The guys from the Soaring Sword sect watched all this and were already looking forward to how their genius would deal with Chin Nan. They were very confident in their older brother. What a strong sword direction. It seems to be at least at the second level of the Xiantian realm. This guy looks like he has only reached the middle of the Xiantian realm, which means he is an atavistic cultivator. It looks like the guy from the Mystic Elder Sect is already scared. The Elder of the Mystic Elder Sect and Huang Long both had strong confidence in Qin Nan's strength. They believed that Huang Shui was simply tired of living. While the guys were just about to start fighting, another group came to the square. They had a truly terrifying aura. The leader of their group laughed, wondering who managed to anger Huang Kui so much. He was very interested in how they could not invite him to such a wonderful event. Everyone turned to look at him at that moment. They had a very hot aura. This is the Raging Flame sect. She is one of the top four sects. Huang Kui replied that it was none of his business, so Wei Hao was not invited anywhere. Is this the same Wei Hao? This is really him. The students began to discuss the newly arrived group. It looks like there is a real winner in the challenge. They have heard about it for a long time, but not everyone has seen it with their own eyes. The test will be difficult for the Mystic Elder sect. Wei Hao not only has a 10th grade soul and outstanding combat talent, he had also reached the initial stage of secret realm success, just like Qin Nan. Moreover, he is the son of their sect leader. Wei Hao laughed and said that he would intervene whenever he wanted. If Huang Kui doesn't like something, then that's his problem. Hao will still get his way. If Huang Kui could surpass him, he would never have decided to become an atavistic cultivator. However, before they enter the Battle Fortune Pavilion, he has no plans to fight him. Wei Hao also appreciated the lady next to him. She's pretty good. If he is not mistaken, then her name is Wang Ruling. Huang Kui calmly told him that if he liked her, then let him take her. But Zhou Lin herself did not appreciate this gesture. Huang Kui explained to her that if she goes with Wei Hao, her future will be much better. You need to think about this decision. Otherwise, there will not be another chance like this. Wang Ruoling sighed heavily and thought to herself that she was very blind when she chose Huang Shui. She was very offended by such words from a guy she really likes. The past times when the Battle Fortune Pavilion opened, the Mystic Elder Sect competed with the Soaring Sword Sect, and the Qing Nu Sect was on our side. However, now the Qing Nu Sect and the Soaring Sword Sect, as well as the Raging Flame Sect, are forming an alliance. Ruling approached Wei Hao and asked him to take good care of her. And he need not worry. There was nothing intimate between her and Huang Shui. He laughed joyfully and hugged her with his hand. From that day on, she was under the protection of Brother Wei. Whoever dares to bully her will have to deal with him. Wei Hao looked at Qin Nan and asked, Is this the guy who just challenged Huang Shui? Wang Ruoling had already quickly adapted and decided to take advantage of the power and position of her new lover. She confirmed that it was he who mocked her. Wei Hao turned to the elder and his comrades. He said that Qin Nan behaved inappropriately and now orders him to be beaten and taught a lesson. And if his sect tries to defend himself, he will have to start a war against them. The Raging Flame sect group was already ready to carry out his order. All this was observed by both other disciples and wandering cultivators. Qin Nan insulted Huang Kui and Wei Hao at the same time. No one envy him. The elder of the mystic elder sect stood in front of Qin Nan and told them not to dare cross the line. If they harm a disciple of his sect, he won't just let it go. Elder Qing Nu added that Zhang does not know Wei Hao's character. 
He's just trying to teach their disrespectful student a lesson. Why go against the raging flame sect? She believes that it is better to leave everything as it is. The elder did not like such words. He won't back down for anything. If someone wants to harm a mystic elder sect disciple, Wei Hao decided not to waste time on this old man and gave the order to attack them. He wants to kill them all now, but suddenly a very powerful voice ordered to stop all this nonsense. The trade union has arrived. Everyone stopped and was a little puzzled by this. A large group of people was approaching them all. They were carrying a covered stretcher. It looked like there was someone very important inside. The trade union group is incredible. Their appearance immediately surprised all four sects. But some people weren't interested in this at all, because they came here only to try their luck on bets. They have martial emperor realm experts walking forward, and even the stretcher is carried by martial emperor experts. So openly displaying their strength, who are these people? The trade union is a company that has branches in all countries of the lower part of the continent. However, they never take part in the affairs of the martial world. Their main purpose is to conduct auctions and gambling. Even sacred places won't dare to contact them? What strength do they represent? These were the questions Chin Nan asked himself. The elder of the Soaring Sword sect addressed the newly arrived group. He asked if he could find out about the respected person who was sitting in the covered litter. All the elders bowed as the trading alliance came closer. Every time the Battle Fortune Pavilion opens, the trade alliance sends a group of people here so that people here can place bets on which disciple of the top four sects will win the trial. This is why so many wandering cultivators appear here. Wei Hao was outraged and also appealed to the trade union. If he was not mistaken, the alliance had never interfered in the martial world and had always remained neutral. Why didn't they let him attack the members of the Mystic Elder sect? The voice from the covered stretcher replied that she just wanted to share some information with them. She hopes that they will all listen to her carefully and show her respect. The elders were surprised that there was a woman inside the portable stretcher. Everyone thought that the trade union was run by a man, but for some reason a woman has arrived now? Wei Hao asked to tell this. He is very interested in what information the trade union wants to share with him. The main reason for the battle that Wei Hao started was to deal with the disciple from the mystic elder sect, Chin Nan. Wei responded to this, that this should not bother him or stop him. Chin Nan joined the mystic elder sect three months ago, while at the fifth level of body tempering. After arriving at the sect, he offended the inner disciple Mo Li and the great genius Lin Zixiao. Then he defeated him in a duel of fighting talents. Everyone looked at Chin Nan and were very surprised that he himself, at a low level, was able to defeat an opponent several levels ahead of him. Wei Hao did not yet understand what in this information should have surprised him. To him, Chin Nan was an ordinary external disciple, even if he was a genius. Half a month later, the mystic elder sect was undergoing a test of versatility. Chin Nan participated while at the sixth level of body tempering and then reached a thousand steps in the mind-capturing ancient forest, thereby entering the history of the sect. After this, he was able to kill Lin Zixiao and take first place. At that time, he was already at the eighth level of body hardening. Everyone who heard this information about Chin Nan was very surprised. With the soul of an eighth grade, he defeated such a strong opponent as Lin Zixiao. Chin Nan's cultivation had increased by three levels, and he had even reached the initial stage of secret realm success in just half a month. Half a month ago, the outer realm test took place. With the help of his ancient spiritual cultivation, he was able to defeat a great genius with a ninth grade soul AI and take first place. Based on the Trade Alliance's research, they found that Chin Nan most likely became a disciple of the Great Elder when he first joined his sect. Moreover, ten days ago, an expert from the martial ancestor realm was seen next to him. The trade union decided that this was probably his second teacher. So, Wei Hao, after hearing all this, what will he do next? Does he still have the desire to attack and harm Chin Nan? Those present began to discuss the fact that an expert from the martial ancestor realm was walking with Chin Nan. There are such majestic personalities behind him. Who is he really? Some disciple with an eighth grade soul became the disciple of a great elder and expert of the martial ancestor realm. Are these connections too strong? The elders of the other sects were thinking about this. Wei Hao just laughed and said that he was very sorry. 
He was completely blind and did not address Chin Nan with respect and also asks for his forgiveness. And since this is the case, he wants to organize a banquet for Chin Nan in his honor as an apology after finishing the test of the Battle Luck Pavilion. Chin Nan thanked him and replied that it was just a small squabble and there was no need to worry about it. Wei Hao continued to laugh awkwardly. That's right, just a little squabble, just a little squabble, he repeated over and over again. Chin Nan thought about this trade alliance. How did they know all the information about him in such detail? They have never met before, but the trade alliance knows too much about Chin Nan. This may not be safe for the boy himself. After all, someone can use this information. The girl from the trade union is very sorry that she told so much information about him without his permission. This was only to prevent a major battle. She will give him the sacred gold badge as an apology. It is said that anyone who has this badge will be considered an important person in auctions held by the trade union. They will be given a percent discount on everything they want to purchase. According to rumors, less than 10 people in the Luohe kingdom have such a badge. The elder said that Chin Nan was very lucky to be able to obtain the sacred gold badge. This is a very good gift, but Chin Nan decided to refuse it. There is no need for it, he said. Wei Hao smiled. Does Chin Nan really not know anything about this badge that he gave it up so easily? After Chin Nan refused the generous gift, the curtain of the stretcher opened slightly. A beautiful girl looked out from there. The old lady who accompanied her said that Chin Nan was too disrespectful. He dared to reject her kindness with his status. She wants to teach him a lesson so that he understands what a huge mistake he made. But the young girl replied that this did not need to be done. I never thought that she would be rejected when she first decided to give someone a sacred gold badge. To be honest, she was very interested in him. It seems the information they have is quite correct. If he was dissatisfied, he would not back down no matter who stood in front of him. She became more and more convinced that Chin Nan had quite an interesting character. The old lady asked the girl, Is this guy really so outstanding? Maybe she just fell in love with him? The girl objected, although she admires him. His soul is too weak. She's only in eighth grade. Even his connections would not allow him to reach a level greater than the martial ancestor realm. Even if he was in tenth grade, everything would be the same. This is the reality of the combat world. No matter how outstanding a person's will and desire is, it all comes down to talent. Wei Hao walked up to Chin Nan and laughed at him for giving up the gold badge. Brother Chin Nan is truly impressive. He was able to refuse this opportunity to receive the sacred gold badge. Wei Hao definitely couldn't do that. It's impressive. Chin Nan decided to remain silent and turned away from Wei Hao. Hao himself didn't like it. By then, the Battle Luck Pavilion had already arrived. Everyone came closer to watch this moment when the Battle Luck Pavilion appeared. It was very spectacular. The pavilion itself was on the water surface, and from there an incredible energy bridge was thrown onto the rock cliff along which one could get inside. The elder threw them badges that would help them in the future and gave them final instructions. It was necessary to hurry to the bridge to enter the pavilion. Everyone from the Mystic Elder Sect group received their tokens and walked across the bridge to the Battle Luck Pavilion. The remaining groups of other sects also did not lag behind them and reached the Battle Luck Pavilion as quickly as possible. All the other wandering cultivators ran up to the representatives of the trade union in order to place their bets. The elder also noticed this. Each of the tramps tried to get in and be the first to bid. Everyone knows that the trade union has a treasure that allows everyone to see what is happening inside the Battle Fortune Pavilion, and thanks to this treasure, the trade union remains confident in its bets. Representatives of the trade union brought in the artifact and showed it to everyone. This treasure is the battle mirror. The representative will now tell everyone the relevant information about each genius from the top four sects. Once everyone knows more, the battle mirror will be activated. Since Chin Nan has already been talked about, he will not be mentioned further. Everyone has already learned how serious this student is. The next one is from the Dahu Mystic Elder Sect, an 8th grade soul. Its cultivation is in the middle of the Xiantian Kingdom. He is cruel in his actions. He used to bully many students, but then he stopped after Chin Nan taught him a lesson. Next is Huang Long. His soul is 9th grade, and his cultivation level is at the middle Xiantian realm. Wei Hao, he is from the Raging Flame Sect. Everyone probably already knows about him. However, the soul is 10th grade. 
and the cultivation level is in the middle of the Zayantian realm. Next is a girl from the Qing Nu sect, Wang Ruling. She was able to reach a ninth grade soul as well as a cultivation in the middle of the Xiantian realm. And also Cheng Xuer from the Qing Nu sect. Her soul is eighth grade, and her cultivation is in the middle of the Xiantian realm. She hasn't developed as much as the others, but she can still compete with them. Next, the disciples from the Soaring Sword sect are introduced. Zhang Tiantian, his soul is ninth grade, and his cultivation is at the level of the middle of the Xiantian realm. And also, Huang Shui, a tenth grade soul, an atavistic cultivator with strength equal to the second level of Xiantian. He has a sword with him, which belongs to the Haochian class. After everyone was introduced, the trade union representative announced that they were beginning to accept bets for the first round. He also announced the coefficient for each student. You can place a bet with a one-to-one -one odds on the victory of Wei Hao, Wang Shui, or Wang Ruoling. The victory of Qin Nan is estimated at a rate of one to ten. Everyone started placing bets. Someone was completely confident that Wei Hao would win. Others believed that Huang Shui had a better chance because his strength was comparable to the second level of the Xiantian realm. Although Qin Nan has a terrifying status, his soul is only eighth grade. Inside the pavilion of battle luck, his status will play a small role. After all, in the battle luck pavilion, strength and talent play a bigger role than any status. The martial emperors of the trade alliance began to activate the battle mirror. Soon everyone will know what their bets will lead to, who will win and who will not. Everyone gathered near the battle mirror to get a better look at what would happen there. I wonder what the task will be in the first round this time. All the groups were already inside the battle luck pavilion. Huang Shui sensed that someone was walking in front of them. The guys were on alert. An old man ran briskly towards them, catching them a little by surprise. He looked like a homeless person, dressed in some tattered clothes. They didn't expect to see just such a person here. This was the examiner of the first pavilion of combat success. Before the test begins, he wants to introduce something to the students. Wang Ruoling and Cheng Shui were a little scared when they saw this old man. He didn't look very nice, especially when everyone in their sect was beautiful. This is a stone of potential. He put his hand on it. His fingers had long, ugly nails. Once a hand is placed on the stone, it will show how strong a person will become in the future. For example, if a stone exudes an imperial glow, it means that the person has the potential to become a martial emperor. And if it exudes the glow of an ancestor, then it has the potential to become a martial ancestor. Wei Hao wondered how such a seemingly ordinary stone could predict someone's potential. Isn't that too sky high? For some reason, he doubted that such objects could exist. The examiner will now talk about the rules. If the student can make the stone glow with an imperial glow, then he passes to the first round and receives the benefits of the pavilion, and the top ten will advance to the second round. The rest, even if they pass, will be worse and will not get into the next round. Before they begin, the examiner wants to address the female cultivators. If they allow him to touch and kiss them, their reward will be doubled. And this does not apply to men. This only made the girls angry. They called him an old pervert. It was very disgusting of him. The guys also supported them and said that it was unfair. The elder only laughed at their words and said that he never said that the test would be fair. The old man offered to bite him if this was not fair, calling the kid pathetic if he can't do it. The guys were just very angry at the perverted old man and couldn't do anything about it. The elder stood in front of them and announced the beginning of the test. The elders were still observing this all through the battle mirror. They don't like this pervert either. Nobody knew who let him in there. As everyone has seen, the first test in the battle luck pavilion is the potential stone test. It's quite interesting. Those who have not yet placed a bet can still bet on one of the students. After the start of the test, betting is prohibited. The guys who wanted to get rich put their last bets. Many votes were cast for Wei Hao, because he could definitely become an expert of the martial ancestor realm in the future. Elder Soaring Sword also decided to place a bet. He chose Huang Shui because he liked his personality. He puts 5,000 martial emperor pills on him, raging flame. Elder saw that Brother Fang was quite confident. Therefore, he decided to bet 5,000 martial emperor pills on his disciple Wei Hao. And the elder of the Qing Nu sect is betting on Wang Ruolin. 
All this was observed by the rest of the students and the tramps. They had already put 15,000 martial emperor pills on the disciples together. The elders turned around and looked at Elder Zhang. After all, he is the only one who did not place a bet. Zhang felt this pressure and gave in. Hesitating a little, he said that he would also bet 5,000 pills, but on Qin Nan. The lustful old man said that the rewards for the first round would be very generous. If girls want to double them, then let him kiss and touch them. The first girl refused this opportunity and simply decided to take the test with the stone. She reached the imperial glow. This means that she will be able to reach the realm of the martial emperor in the future. The old man was still not far behind them. He forced himself on the girls in every way so that they would let him touch them. But the girls rejected him. The following students began to approach the stone and take the test. Basically, the glow was of an imperial level. For the old man, it was already boring. He sat and yawned. He had already seen many disciples with different levels of strength. It was Huang Shui's turn to take the test. Honestly, it's very interesting how great his potential is. Huang Shui walked towards the stone. He was very confident in himself and his abilities. Its glow was at the level of the martial ancestor realm. The boys looked through the battle mirror and were impressed that Huang Shui's potential could reach the martial ancestor realm. He is a great genius with a 10th grade soul. It is obvious that she will become a martial ancestor expert. Elder Soaring Sword spoke to Elder Zhang. Who would have thought that Huang Shui of his sect had the potential to reach the martial ancestor realm in the future? He thinks Qin Nan might have a good result compared to him. The elder examiner also expressed his opinion that the young man's talent was not so bad. He needs to continue like this to achieve huge results. Huang Shui wondered if Qin Nan's status would help in this test. With his eighth grade soul, there was no way he could compare to Wang Shui. It was Wei Hao's turn to take the test. He was very cheerful and joyful. I wonder what his result will be because so many people are betting on him, just like Huang Shui, the soul of 10th grade Wei Hao. But we should not forget that his status is far superior to Huang Shui, and he is even more talented in combat skills. After he touched the stone, its glow became at the level of the ancestor. Looks like he has potential too. But one of the guys asked to wait, because he continued to build up his strength. The stone glowed with a commanding glow. Does Wei Hao really have the potential to reach the martial commander realm? There is no martial commander realm expert to be found in the entire Luohi kingdom. The elder appreciated the strength of the young man. He has a chance to reach the realm of a combat commander in his life. If he trains hard, he will reach unprecedented heights. However, Wei Hao will have to seize the opportunity when it comes. If you miss this chance, there will be no second chance. Who would have thought that Wei Hao would have the potential to reach the realm of martial commander? Among all the other disciples of the four top sects, no one in the Luohi kingdom could compare with him. It seems that he will definitely be the first in this round of the Battle Fortune Pavilion trial. These were the forecasts from representatives of the trade union. The students began to discuss this. Just think, Wei Hao has a chance to reach the realm of martial commander. How strong is he? Someone has already counted the money he will earn on the bet. The elder of the Raging Flame sect laughed. He told Brother Fang that he was sorry, but it seemed that young master Wei Hao would win this round. If Elder Fang were to bet on Wei Hao, he would win 5,000 martial emperor pills. But now he won't get anything, and he'll also lose his pills. The elder thinks that he lost 10,000 martial emperor pills this way. Wei Hao was already enjoying the rays of fame and hugged his new girlfriend, Wang Ruling. He asked her if she had seen how strong her boyfriend was, even stronger than Huang Shui. She should be proud that she has the chance to be his girlfriend. The elder looked at Wei Hao, hugging the beautiful Wang Ruling, and became very envious. He angrily asked the five remaining students if they still wanted to take the test. If not, then let them get the hell out of here and stop wasting his time. Chin Nan's status surprised everyone. He was challenged and asked to do it again. Will Chin Nan be able to surpass his opponent? Wei Hao jumped into the conversation and said that their friend Chin Nan is a disciple of two martial ancestor realm experts and also has an eighth grade soul. His future is likely to be incredible. He might even go first this round. Although Chin Nan is very famous, he has terrifying martial talent. 
and even an outstanding martial heart. But here, everything is different. He only has an eighth grade soul, which is a key factor in determining how great a person's potential is. Chin Nan boldly walked up to the stone and placed his hand on it. Everyone was excited to see what kind of glow his power would give off. After he touched the stone, it did not begin to glow. The elder said that if he does not even exude an imperial glow, then the round can end there. Chin Nan became a little worried. He asked the elder to give him one more try. His soul has already surpassed the tenth grade. Moreover, it will continue to grow in the future. Therefore, it is simply impossible that Chin Nan could not even reach the realm of the martial emperor in the future. This cannot be. The problem is clearly in the stone itself. He can't correctly identify his talent. Chin Nan tried again, but nothing worked. The rest of the students were already starting to laugh at him. Huang Shui tells him that no matter how many times he tries the test, the result will still not change. It looks like Chin Nan might even lose his status now. He asked the elder for one more try. All this was observed by the elders of other sects. They already began to feel sorry for Chin Nan because he was unable to illuminate the stone in any way. Wei Hao was already angry. In his opinion, Chin Nan should already admit that he is a piece of trash. He wants the boy to disappear from his sight and stop wasting his time. And if he doesn't leave, he will make him experience a hundred tortures. But Chin Nan did not retreat back. He asked the examiner to give the test another try. He still didn't believe that the stone couldn't determine his potential. The headman was already angry. Each person is given only one chance in the test. Chin Nan should have been grateful that he gave him another chance. If Chin Nan continues to ask for a try, he will finish him off with his own hands. The disciples decided that Chin Nan had gone crazy. Defeat is defeat. Let him accept it with dignity. Everyone was unhappy and expressed their opinion about this. Seriously, it seems that some people just can't accept their own weakness, the Soaring Sword Elder said. They get too used to relying on their status that they become lost in their own dreams. The elder of the Mystic Elder sect was already feeling awkward. He believes that Chin Nan is disgracing them. He already lost face when it turned out that his potential would not reach the realm of the Martial Emperor, and he was also doing who knows what. The old man had already switched to a rude voice. He says that if Chin Nan didn't get it, then he needs to get out of here. He had already completely violated the rules of the Battle Luck Pavilion. Chin Nan objected. He asks to try one last time. If the result is the same as before, he will personally cripple his limbs and destroy his veins. He hopes for one last chance. Thinking rationally, it was simply impossible for Chin Nan, a cultivator with the soul of a war god, to have the potential to stop at the martial emperor realm. Does this stone predict a person's future potential based on their talent or luck? Could it be that the soul of the god of war is so strong that it cannot be measured by this stone of potential? But most likely, this is not the case. If this were the reason, he would have broken into pieces when he tried to measure Chin Nan's potential. Chin Nan puts his hand to the stone for the last time. He still does not understand what the problem with this stone is and why it does not show its true power. Since Chin Nan wants to become a cripple so much, heaven simply cannot help but follow his wish. Huang Shui said. Everyone was already tired of watching Chin Nan try to pass the test. Even the guys from the mystic elder sect no longer believed in Chin Nan. They were ashamed of him. The disciples were surprised that Chin Nan would put everything he had on the line. Apparently, he is one of those who would rather die gracefully than live in the shadows. What a pity that this is true. The elder of the mystic elder sect held his head. It was already over for him. It was also hard for him to survive this shame. The princess from the trade union always admired Chin Nan's confidence. Even now, he did not bow to anyone. Who would have thought that he would bet his cultivation and life on the line after knowing the result? The elder looked at Chin Nan's attempt, and again nothing changed. Chin Nan himself just said that he would cripple himself and destroy his cultivation. But since he broke the rules, he will personally turn him into a cripple. In response to this, Chin Nan only laughed very loudly. It looks like the guy has really gone crazy. This confused the examiner. He asked him why he was laughing so much because in his situation he would have to cry. Chin Nan said that he found it funny that this so-called potential stone 
was nothing but a fake. It cannot predict anyone's true potential. It is simply impossible to predict a person's true potential. Potential depends on a person's decisions, his will, luck, and much more than just that. Chin Nan's ambitions still exist, and his fighting heart is still alive. Therefore, its potential is unlimited. How can a stone decide a person's future? After Chin Nan shouted, perhaps it had an effect on the stone, and it began to glow even without touching it. The light was so bright and strong that the old man was simply blind and covered his eyes with his hand. It was an incredible glow that no one had ever achieved before. Everyone stood and looked at the stone. It looks like it was a commander's glow. They were very surprised at what they saw. This was all observed through the combat mirror. No one understood how it was possible that Chin Nan made the stone glow with a commander's glow. Why did it burst out so suddenly? The elder also did not understand how this was possible. The last six times, nothing happened. Why did the potential stone react for the seventh time, emitting a commanding glow? Wang Shui shouted that this was impossible. Chin Nan only has an eighth grade soul. It's complete nonsense that he caused a commander's glow. He definitely learned how to control the stone. Wei Hao was also angry. He didn't understand how this could happen. Everyone knows that this is impossible. Only a 10th grade soul can reach the realm of a combat commander. Wei Hao gives him one last chance to admit the truth. Otherwise, he will pay for it with his life. Chin Nan stood calmly near the stone, placing his hand on it. He told them that these two were right. He can't just stop at the realm of a combat commander. With this phrase, he confused Huang Shui and Wei Hao. They already thought that Chin Nan would admit his lies. But Chin Nan did not want the glow of a battle commander. He wanted to achieve an even better result. The space around the stone glowed with blue light. This meant that Chin Nan had achieved the glow of the next stage, higher than Wei Hao's. The old examiner was almost speechless. He couldn't believe his eyes. The stone that Chin Nan touched began to glow with the glow of martial highness. At the beginning of this round, the three of them, Wei Hao, Huang Shui, and Wang Ruoling, ridiculed him. Now that they have seen this, they can understand who the real trash and trash are. To be honest, being able to reach the realm of martial highness is not something to be proud of, because Chin Nan's future will not end here. Chin Nan makes the stone glow with a sacred glow, an even stronger stage. The princess from the trade union also looked out of the tent. She did not yet understand how Chin Nan reached the sacred martial realm. With his soul, even with incredible connections, he would not be able to reach the realm of a combat commander. According to the rules of the Changlan continent, relying on one's soul is impossible to reach the sacred martial realm. But despite this, Chin Nan asks everyone to continue to watch. The stone shone with an even stronger glow. It is called the fundamental luminosity, the realm of the martial founder. It was hard to believe, but Chin Nan was many steps ahead of everyone. But Chin Nan does not stop and achieves the glow of the martial monarch's kingdom. The old examiner thought that he had already seen everything in his life, however, he was very wrong. Chin Nan jokingly asked if they thought he would stop at the martial monarch realm or reach a higher realm. Above the martial monarch realm, it cannot be. Martial deity realm? The disciples did not believe that Chin Nan could achieve this glow. Monarchical glow, the realm of the martial monarch. A true cultivator in the martial monarch realm is considered the highest stage of the entire continent. Chin Nan continued to hold on to the stone. The martial monarch realm sounded too weak to him. He cannot stop at such a kingdom and wants to surpass everyone. Chin Nan released the soul of the god of war, his potential and his realm. Chin Nan must reach the pinnacle and become above everyone. The stone begins to glow even more intensely and in more variety. Chin Nan had reached the divine glow, the martial deity realm. Everyone was now perplexed. Why was Chin Nan, with his eighth grade soul, able to reach the martial deity realm? Chin Nan decided to tell them. It was quite possible that he would never even reach the realm of the martial emperor. But on the other hand, perhaps he is a stately expert of the martial deity realm, or maybe it will rise even higher. The future is filled with possibilities. Words, actions, or even just a short pause can change the future of many people. Therefore, it is impossible to predict the future. Nobody knows what it will be like. The stone of potential is the main test of the pavilion of battle luck. But he cannot predict anyone's future.
The future of every person will always be difficult to predict. Chin Nan believes that his future lies in limitless potential. After these words, the stone burst into thousands of hundreds of pieces. Elder Jang was happy that Chin Nan took first place. He won in the first round. He is worthy of being the genius of the mystic elder sect and the disciples of the two martial ancestor realm experts. He never thought that their sect would be able to take first place. He teased the other elders and told them not to be upset because the results of Wei Hao, Huang Shui, and the others were not that bad. The elder of the Raging Flame sect asked Elder Jang not to be proud of himself ahead of time. There are two more rounds to go. Who would have thought that even when everyone was imposing his destiny on him, he still did not succumb to it? Chin Nan has unimaginable capabilities. He is an outstanding talent. Unfortunately, he had already entered the Mystic Elder sect. What a pity. The beautiful girl became sad because of this. Limitless potential, well said. The future contains an unlimited number of possibilities. No one can predict what will happen. The elder said that he first saw this stone of potential a long time ago and studied it for many years. But I couldn't understand that it would turn out to be an ordinary stone. Thus, Chin Nan revealed the truth to him. Chin Nan replied that it was he who should thank the elder for allowing him to try several times. If he didn't let him, Chin Nan wouldn't be able to figure out what the stone was hiding. The first round of the Fortune Pavilion trial has come to an end. The winner was Chin Nan. He went on to list the remaining nine contestants who advanced to the second round. Wei Hao is angry and believes that Chin Nan stole his first place. He will remember this and promises to take revenge on him. The examiner also added that since Chin Nan was able to reveal the secret of the potential stone, the Battle Luck Pavilion decided to give him a special award in addition to the one he would receive for first place. Chin Nan was very interested in what kind of special reward he would be given. He didn't even count on it, so he was doubly pleased. The Elder will give him a special reward after a while, but before that, he will give out rewards to the ten participants who make it to the next round. Each of those who pass the test in the first round will receive a power fruit, and the winner receives as many as three such fruits. The disciples caught their fruits which the elder threw to them, and one of the guys asked what exactly this fruit does and what effect it will have. By taking one such fruit, you can rise one level. It only works in the Xiantian kingdom. In addition, it works if a person takes it for the first time. Subsequent treatments will no longer have any effect. Chin Nan knew that if a person is an atavistic cultivator, it is very difficult to rise to the next level. But this power fruit will help a lot. Chin Nan approached the elder and asked what his special reward would be. The elder extended his hand to him. In his palm lay the key. I wonder what kind of lock he opens. He further added that if Chin Nan could pass the next two rounds, this key would allow him to enter the fourth floor of the Battle Fortune Pavilion. But if it fails, the key will disappear on its own. Wei Hao and Huang Shui looked on with envy as the elder handed Chin Nan the key that allows him to ascend to the fourth floor. Previously, the Battle Luck Pavilion had never opened the fourth floor to anyone. Since the advent of the Battle Luck Pavilion, many geniuses have stayed on the third floor. However, with this key, Chin Nan will be able to enter the fourth floor. Everyone who failed must leave the Battle Luck Pavilion now. Those who have passed further will take part in the second round. All remaining students were moved on to the second round. They were ready to fight among themselves further to find out who was the most capable of them. This is the second round of the challenge. He is focused on only one thing, pure power. The examiner in the second round held a huge wooden block with one finger. The top five will advance to the next round and receive awards. The remaining five will have to leave the Battle Luck Pavilion. The examiner continued to hold this huge deck with one finger and then threw it in front of the students. She stood in front of them with a roar. This is called a power pole. Students must attack him with all their power, and he will measure the strength of their attack. The examiner asked who would be first. The wandering cultivators began to gather near the representatives of the trade union. The odds for the second round will be as follows. Wei Hao's victory is estimated at one in three. The victory of Huang Shui is one to one, and the bet on the victory of Qin Nan is one to two. The disciples noticed that the stakes for Qin Nan had increased sharply. The boy is an atavistic cultivator. The second round measures strength, so he can surpass even Wei Hao. Elder Jang will also bet on Qin Nan again.
the boy will definitely make it through this round. And if he manages to pass the third round, he will have a chance to enter the mysterious fourth floor of the pavilion. Meanwhile, Princess Miao Miao appeared. She stated that she wanted to supply one million martial emperor pills to Chin Nan. Everyone looked at her very surprised. Is it so much, why are you looking at me like that? She asked everyone near her. Elder Jang bowed to her as a sign of respect for her coming. But the princess took it differently, as if she couldn't come here, and she kicked him. The princess began to get angry. Maybe the trade union will not allow the princess to place a bet? Or does the trade union think she's joking? A voice came from the tent. Everyone is allowed to take part in bets. They asked if the princess was sure that she wanted to bet one million martial emperor pills on Chin Nan's victory. She agreed. This is because he is her servant, so it will be so easy for him. And she handed them a bag with a million battle emperor pills. The girl from the trade union confirmed that this bag contained one million martial emperor pills. This means that the bet has been successfully placed. Some of those present began to discuss the princess's bet. They wondered where she got one million martial emperor pills from and why she called Chin Nan her servant. Meanwhile, a test of strength began in the pavilion of battle luck. The students took turns walking up to the power pole and putting all their strength into the punch to score a large number of points. The students are probably now perplexed. This pillar can withstand a force equal to 9,999. The results are determined depending on the strength of the student's attack. The previous student scored one and a half thousand points. The next student approached the post. It turned out to be Huang Long from the Mystic Elder Sect. He was preparing and accumulating strength in himself in order to release it at one moment. Huang Long pulled himself together, swung and hit 3,200 points. The next student is invited to the post. Wang Ruoling volunteered to take the test next. She also gathered her strength to strike. Taking a comfortable stance, she struck and released all the energy she had. She used a special technique for this blow. Wang Ruoling was able to hit 3,500 points. She took advantage of the treasure's power. Now Wei Hao came out to show his strength and his training results. He was already emitting a terrifying aura and was ready to put force into this blow. Wei Hao was already ready to deliver his crushing blow. To the very ends of the earth and heaven, the divine fire burns forever. Earth scorching strike. His blow was crushing. Wei Hao scored 5,500 points after his scorching blow. His blow cannot be compared to anyone else. He didn't even release his soul for this blow. But this pillar measures pure strength. It cannot compare with Huang Shui or Qin Nan. The examiner for the second round asked not to waste time and hurry up to finish this round. He probably thinks that after Wei Hao there will be no more powerful people. It was Huang Shui's turn. He immediately decided to release his soul to deliver an incredibly strong blow. The sword is in his hand, and he is the bearer of this sword. He chooses his best and strongest attack. The direction of the sword of the four seasons, controlled by his will. He was able to achieve a result of 8,900 points. Wei Hao was slightly jealous of him for this. As expected from an atavistic cultivator, Huang Shui is really strong. It seems that victory in this round is his. Its result was 3,000 stronger than Wei Hao's attack. The examiner assessed Huang Shui's strength. With this level of strength, he can fight against opponents at the fourth level of the Xiantian realm. Huang Shui thanked him and bowed. Huang Shui is very interested to see which of the atavistic cultivators is stronger, him or Qin Nan. He expects his victory, although Qin Nan is also strong. Qin Nan asked him if he thought 8,900 was a lot. Qin Nan believes that it is a shame to achieve such a result with his cultivation. What is there to be proud of Qin Nan doesn't understand. Huang Shui laughed in response. If Qin Nan was not an atavistic cultivator, he would not have had a chance to beat Huang Shui's result. So let him show that he is stronger than him. This made Qin Nan angry, and he asks Huang Shui to watch carefully and see how he loses, because Qin Nan's blow will be superior to him in strength. Qin Nan will not even use his soul against him. He performs a celestial stacking strike. From a blow of such force, an air shock wave appeared. All the students standing nearby covered their faces from flying dust and light. After hitting Qin Nan, the pillar showed 999 points. Huang Shui and his allies were simply stunned by Qin Nan's result. 
None of them even knew that it was possible to hit with such force. Chin Nan wiped his hands and said that he had enough. He asked where Huang Shui dared now. If Chin Nan still hasn't convinced him, then Huang can test his strength by challenging him. Huang Shui grinned and told Chin Nan not to be proud of himself so early. After all, there will be a third round of the Pavilion of Battle Luck next. Chin Nan only made fun of him and told him that if Huang Shui was stronger than him, then let him come and show it to him. Huan himself was already very angry about this. This ends the round. The winner is Chin Nan. Huang Shui, Wei Hao, Wang Ruoling, and Huang Long also advance to the next round. The reward is three power fruits for each of them, and the winner receives seven power fruits. The power fruit can only be used once. What is the Battle Luck Pavilion thinking when it gives students so many of them as a reward? Chin Nan still didn't understand this decision. The examiner declared the second round closed and asked not to waste any more time, but to prepare for the next round. At the top of the Autumn Mountain, everyone was discussing the past second round. Elder Zhang said again that he was very sorry, because his sect's disciple had won again. He laughed and said that we shouldn't take it too seriously. Although Huang Shui's strength was slightly less than Qin Nan's, he should not be underestimated. This made the Soaring Sword sect elder a little angry. He believes that Elder Zhang Taiyi and his sect are too arrogant. Meanwhile, the angry princess approached the trade union tent. She swears that the results of the round have already been announced, but payments are still not being made. Maybe they are scammers and trying to deceive the princess. This little girl hit the jackpot today. Two million martial emperor pills are enough to exchange for 10,000 martial ancestor pills. Trade union always tries to be fair with their customers. Here are 10,000 martial ancestor pills. The princess patted the old man on the shoulder. She likes their way of doing things. From this day on, the princess will take good care of them. One of the guys went crazy and he decided to bet everything in this round on Qin Nan. He lost in the previous two rounds, so he bets on the mysterious Qin Nan. Everyone began to bet on Qin Nan. Someone supplied 500 Xiantian pills. Someone asked to lend him pills for a bet. Meanwhile, the princess was already rejoicing at her winnings. The remaining five trial participants walked towards the spiritual Qi cave. The entrance looked huge. It was very dark inside. I wonder what the test will be in the third round. They entered a cave. It looks like the third round will take place in it. The students heard someone hitting a wooden stick on the floor. Everyone looked in the direction where the sound came from. It was an elderly woman who came out. And first of all, she wants to congratulate all of them on making it to the third round. As they had already noticed, this cave was filled with qi, suitable for their cultivation. Therefore, the third round focuses on cultivation speed. There are five pillows here. Each student will sit on a cushion and try to absorb the qi as quickly as possible. In a time equal to the burning of three candles, the one who absorbs the most qi will become the winner. Attacking each other is strictly prohibited and there will only be one winner. It turns out this is a competition for cultivation speed, and the third round depends entirely on the level of the soul. Elder Zhang became a little worried. This is not what he expected from the third round. The elder of the Soaring Sword sect walked up to him and laughed heartily. It was a surprise for everyone. The third round was quite interesting. He originally thought that Qin Nan would win all three rounds and enter the legendary fourth floor. But it seems that all plans have gone down the drain. The disciples who had bet on Chin Nan were no longer happy, because Chin Nan has an eighth grade soul, and it will not allow him to develop great speed in cultivation. Wei Hao and Huang Shui were very well prepared for this test. Both of them had a soul level higher than Chin Nan's. The chances of them winning are one to one. The chances of Huan Lung or Wang Ruoling winning are one in three. After all, their soul level was lower than that of Wei Hao or Huang Shui, and Qin Nan's chances of winning were again 1 in 10. With a level 8 soul, he would not be able to quickly absorb qi. Representatives of the trade union began to convene everyone who wanted to bet on the victory of the students. It seems that Qin Nan will not bet on again. The princess was very confident in her slave's strength, so she bet an incredible amount on him, 3 million martial emperor pills. It seems that such amounts meant nothing to her at all. Everyone else's mouths opened in great surprise. This confused the princess a little, but she has the right to bet on whoever she wants, and bet on any amount. 
she's quite rich. And this bet concerns only her. The Princess of the Trade Alliance asked if she confirmed to supply three million martial emperor pills to Chin Nan. Princess Miao Miao was 100% confident in Chin Nan's strength and cultivation, and therefore makes such a bet. He is the princess's servant, after all. Even if his princess doesn't believe in him, who will? Miao Miao said thoughtfully. The soaring sword sect elder looked at this and was a little jealous. He thought that the princess was very self-confident, and he wants to look at her face after the defeat of the loser Qin Nan. Huang Shui made fun of Qin Nan because the third round of the test is based on soul class. Even if Qin Nan has outstanding strength and concentration, what is the point of it now? He is destined to be the last one in this round. Wei Hao also joined in the mockery. If there was a different task in the third round, Qin Nan might have a chance to win, but as they say, it's not fate. Only Huang Long from his own sect supported Qin Nan. If he had a 10th grade soul, they wouldn't have made a squeak. And so they allow themselves a lot of unnecessary things. The old woman examiner was already starting to get angry. If they all don't start now and continue to waste her time, she will immediately stop the test and note that they all failed. Who would even want to listen to these pointless arguments? It would be better if they all sat down and started the test and not wasted time. Everyone immediately obeyed the elder and sat down on the cushions to begin the test. Indeed, there was no longer any time to waste. We needed to focus on winning. Huan Long started first. His body was covered with a strong aura. Behind him floated his weapon, a sword. Wang Ruoling turned her attention to Huang Long and his amazing cultivation speed. A drop of sweat ran down her cheek, but she doesn't give up easily and will fight to the end. Huang Xue looked at Wang Ruoling. He noticed her Chinese zither soul. She can capture an opponent using her music. She's not as bad as she seems. Huang Xue also glowed with a very bright aura flame, and his weapon, also a sword, hovered behind him. Wang Ruling's soul is ninth grade. It is not even close to Huang Shui's soul. The disciples tried very hard, but all the qi in the cave was absorbed by Huang Shui. Wei Hao hinted to Huang Shui that he was not the only one here with a tenth grade soul. It glowed with the aura of raging flames. Wei Hao believes that Huang Shui's soul is not even worth talking about. The appearance of a crimson flame soul in Wei Hao will force any soul to step aside. It is simply invincible. Huang Shui gave it his all. He replied that Wei Hao's crimson flame soul was worthy of attention. Let's see what wins this round. Wei Hao glowed more and more. He laughed and said to give him everything that Huang Shui had absorbed. Meanwhile, while they were measuring their strength and finding out who was stronger, Qin Nan sat as if he was thinking about something and was not trying to compete at all. It looks like Huang Shui is superior to Wei Hao. The amount of qi he absorbed was greater than Wei Hao's. Everyone watched the test and cheered for their favorite. The old lady examiner turned her attention to Qin Nan. He just sat and did nothing. She was surprised that Qin Nan still hadn't started. Maybe he has already given up? She looked at him with contempt, not understanding how such a wretched creature who did not have the courage to compete ended up on the third floor. Huang Shui looked at Qin Nan and laughed. He asked him if he had given up in an hour. Well, the soul of the eighth grade is making itself known. Will Qin Nan be able to absorb even a drop of qi in this cave? Wei Hao asked Huang Shui to be careful with his words. Everyone can take part in this test, no matter who they are, and Qin Nan is no exception. However, their souls are unlikely to give him a chance to absorb even a drop of qi. The old woman turned to Qin Nan. She had heard that he had done well in the first two rounds. But this round does not depend on him, but on his soul, which has no place among his rivals. Although according to the rules she does not have the right to kick him out of here, she believes that it is better for Qin Nan to just leave here. Qin Nan asked, should he leave? Very interesting. He laughed really hard at this. Meanwhile, everyone turned their attention to him and were perplexed. The old woman did not like this, and she asked him what kind of laughter it was. This was unacceptable for her, but she couldn't kick the boy out either. Chin Nan told her that he had met many people throughout his journey here, and everyone mocked his soul, picking on him and causing him problems, not taking him seriously. 
Chin Nan is already accustomed to the fact that they do not believe in him and are considered an arrogant student. However, as practice has shown, all of them were deeply mistaken about what kind of guy he really was. He asked to ask the elder a question. Is it true that people with low-class souls can always be mocked and laughed at? She answered him with mockery that even a three-year-old child could answer this question. She will be honest. With Chin Nan's eighth-grade soul, he is destined to be trash. And he doesn't deserve any respect from the others. Chin Nan did not like her answer, however, he was still tormented by doubts. Although his talent is not considered the strongest, he is still outstanding among the others here. And why then does she treat him like that? Chin Nan only understood that she was too stupid. And he believes this because they all underestimated him and never had a clue what his true strength was. Everyone watching them through the battle mirror began chanting who he called stupid. There is no need to blame everyone around you for your lack of abilities. Princess Miao Miao also watched all this. She believed in Chin Nan and was completely for him. However, Chin Nan is willing to bet that none of them knew that he was just waiting for this round and this moment. He had waited a long time to show his true strength at a great event in front of a crowd of people. And now, this moment has come. Today he will show everyone who they called trash. After shouting these words, Chin Nan released his war god soul and began to absorb Chi. A very strong flash illuminated the entire dark cave. All the other participants began to cover themselves because such a strong flow of energy was rushing around from Chin Nan. The examiner was also very perplexed. She couldn't believe that Chin Nan actually had such ability and strength. Chin Nan was firmly confident in his victory and was not going to give it to anyone. Now everyone else will have to work hard to surpass the boy. Wang Ruoling was horrified that Chin Nan used the Ten Golden Ray technique. None of them suspected what had just happened. Behind Chin Nan was his huge war god soul. Now he was absorbing all the chi that was in this cave. Doesn't Chin Nan have an eighth grade soul? Why did she suddenly find herself in tenth grade? Everyone who watched this and placed bets was also perplexed. They turned to the trade union to explain what it all meant. This can't be true. This is impossible, absolutely impossible, said a trade union spokeswoman. According to them, Chin Nan had an eighth grade soul when he joined the sect. Chin Nan's soul has always been eighth grade, so where is tenth grade from? This is some kind of nonsense. Elder Zhang also did not understand how his disciple achieved such perfection. As a child, Chin Nan was struck by lightning, which gave him a secret technique to hide his soul class. It was thanks to her that they all thought that he had an eighth grade soul. Huang Shui was furious after learning this information. This is all bullshit. How can he have a tenth grade soul? Chin Nan asked Huang Shui and Wei Hao to stop talking Ed. Weren't they just laughing at him? If so, then now they will see whose soul is truly the strongest among the disciples. Huang Shui decided to help Wei Hao. Even if Huang Shui fails to win today, he will definitely not allow Qin Nan to win. Wei Hao accepted the help, and if he can become the first today, then he will owe Huang Shui. Qin Nan just smiled slightly. Are they really trying to defeat him by joining forces? Let me not be a laughing stock. His soul fights with heaven and earth. There is no limit to its strength. The glow and chi absorption became even stronger. Everyone else could no longer sit next to Chin Nan and continue cultivation. The old woman did not understand what was happening. Although they all have 10th grade souls, Chin Nan's soul was able to suppress everyone else. Moreover, how can she exert such terrifying pressure? Everyone thought that this was simply impossible. But Chin Nan sat and absorbed all the chi that was in this cave. It seems that the result of the round is already obvious. Huang Shui was already crushed by losing to Qin Nan. Wei Hao was also very depressed about this. Wang Ruoling couldn't believe her eyes. And Huang Long remembered and analyzed what was happening. During this time, the difference between him and Qin Nan only increased. The examiner decided to ask Qin Nan for forgiveness. She was rude to him earlier because she underestimated his abilities. She hopes he doesn't take it to heart. But Chin Nan was already used to this and told her not to worry about it. The third round has come to an end. Three candles have already burned out to the end. Now it's time to present the award. She had a bag with a reward in her hands. This was the stone of the secret kingdom, and it was Chin Nan who deservedly received it. 
This stone allows one to absorb the power of the secret realm along with it, which greatly enhances one's understanding of the secret realm. If he accepts the secret realm stone and absorbs the secret realm direction at the same time, then Chin Nan will be able to reach the secret realm great station without any problems. Chin Nan thanked the elder for carrying out this test and such a reward for it. Now, as the only one who passed this round, Chin Nan can recover to the fourth floor. Immediately, Chin Nan and the others were teleported away. For everyone except Chin Nan, the test of the Battle Luck Pavilion was over. They were returned back to the top of the Autumn Mountain. Finding themselves outside the Pavilion of Battle Luck, they fell to their knees and were very disappointed that they had lost in this test. The girls who were in the role of spectators and support looked at Wei Hao and Huang Shui with pity. They really were unlucky. Meanwhile, Chin Nan entered the fourth floor. No one has ever seen what he looks like. Therefore, everyone again rushed to look in the battle mirror and no one paid attention to the former geniuses. Suddenly, on the battle mirror, instead of the picture of Chin Nan entering the fourth floor, the inscription, Forbidden, appeared. Everyone was at a loss as to why it suddenly broke. Are they all forbidden to see what's on the fourth floor? This angered everyone watching. This is some kind of chaos, says one of the guys. Mystic Elder Sect. Elder Jang was with Chin Nan in his mind. He really wanted the boy to be able to get through the fourth floor. The rest of the elders showed their dissatisfaction with what happened. It seemed that the elder of the Soaring Sword Sect was planning something bad in case Chin Nan passed the fourth floor. Meanwhile, Princess Miao Miao came to collect her fair bet on Chin Nan's victory. It seems that they will not be able to pay such a large amount immediately. The princess was asked not to worry. The trade union never breaks its word. This goes for everyone else here as well. They won't deprive them of their bets. But since Chin Nan has entered the fourth floor, if he passes this round, the trade union promises to pay everything after this historical moment. The princess had nothing to do with this historical moment. She asked them to hurry up and give her her pills. The odds were one in ten, so they owed her thirty million martial emperor pills. Unexpectedly, the battle luck pavilion began to glow brightly from within. The waves were raging around him. The sea was not calm. Everyone turned their gaze to that place. Did Chin Nan really pass through the legendary fourth floor? What test is on the fourth floor? Anyway, why did the fourth floor always remain closed and suddenly open? In one secret book of the trade union, it was written that the pavilion of battle luck did not belong to the lower territory of the continent. Although the truth is unknown, it is likely that the battle fortune pavilion originated in the upper territory. Therefore, it is impossible to confirm that Chin Nan has passed the fourth floor. Not to mention the fact that no one has achieved it before, which means it can only be more difficult than the previous three rounds. Unexpectedly for everyone, there was a powerful release of energy at the top of the tower. The entire top was lit up with a glow. Everyone was looking only at the top of the tower. Clearly something was happening. Could it be that Chin Nan had also reached the fifth floor? Something burning flew out from the very top of the tower looking like a meteor falling from the sky. Most likely, it was Chin Nan. Chin Nan landed on the top of a mountain cliff and was very exhausted. He was breathing heavily and was covered in sweat. Elder Jang ran up to him, picked him up and asked if he had passed the fifth floor. He was also very interested in what exactly was on the fifth floor. After that, he decided that it was not worth telling this now, and it would be better if they returned to the mystic elder sect and Chin Nan told it there. Chin Nan told everyone that he was actually able to pass the fifth floor. However, these two floors were different. They had no rewards at all. However, from today, the Pavilion of Battle Luck ceases to exist. The entire building of the Battle Pavilion was burning and disintegrating into thousands of particles, as if evaporating in the air. The Battle Luck Pavilion had truly disappeared. One of the guys had seen this Pavilion of Battle Luck five times after he entered the cultivation path, and he finally disappears. The Pavilion of Battle Fortune had stood here for decades and now suddenly disappeared. It turns out that the reason for this was that young master Chin Nan revealed his secrets, so his existence no longer makes sense. The representative of the trade union was also interested in the secrets of the Pavilion of Battle Luck. If Chin Nan wants to tell them to her, she will reward him generously and solve any problems. 
Chin Nan stopped and asked the beautiful girl again if she wanted to know the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion. He would love to tell them this, but the truth is, the fact is that neither they nor the representatives of the trade union are worthy of knowing the secrets of the Pavilion of Battle Luck. Frankly speaking, no one here is worthy of knowing the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion. All those gathered here were very embarrassed after these words. They were outraged why Chin Nan didn't want to share the secrets of the last floors of the Battle Luck Pavilion with anyone, and that in general, they weren't even worthy of it. But let's go back an hour, to the fourth floor of the Pavilion of Battle Luck. Chin Nan was then as if in some clouds. He wondered, so this is what the fourth floor of the Pavilion of Battle Fortune is. There, he met an adult man. He was not yet gray-haired and was sitting smoking a pipe. There is a great secret hidden on the fifth floor of the Battle Luck Pavilion, he said. Chin Nan can recognize him, but he must warn the boy that this will lead him to a big disaster. If he decides not to learn the secrets of the fourth floor of the Pavilion of Battle Fortune, then he will generously reward him. Chin Nan answered him questioningly. A big disaster? Generous reward? Ever since the Battle Fortune Pavilion appeared, no one had been able to enter the fifth floor. Now that Chin Nan had the chance to do so, he should definitely go there. In this case, Chin Nan chooses to go to the fifth floor and learn all its secrets. Some awards were no longer important to him. To this, the elder answered him with consent. As Chin Nan wishes, he can go to the fifth floor whenever he wants. Chin Nan went to the fifth floor of the Battle Luck Pavilion. There was a man sitting under a sunshade, and he had a glass in his hands. This unknown character brought the glass closer to himself. Perhaps he was not quite ordinary. The potential stone on the first floor was not fake. He was real. Chin Nan wondered, if the potential stone was real, did it really have the potential to reach the martial deity realm? If others found out about this, wouldn't he be hunted? He mustn't let anyone know about this. Unexpectedly, Chin Nan and Elder Zhang were approached by the rest of the elders, whose disciples were competing in the Battle Luck Pavilion. Are the three sects really planning to do something to Chin Nan? The elder will stand firmly in defense of his student. He tells them that if they dare to harm him, the experts of the martial ancestor realm will not just let it go, and death will be the only way out for such people. The representative of the trade union believes that it would be logical to share the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion with everyone here. Although the trade union does not want to go against the sect, if Chin Nan refuses to tell secrets, then they will interfere in it. Elder Fang from the Soaring Sword Sect thanked the trade union for such words. He completely agrees with them. Chin Nan asked him if he really counted on a trade alliance. Even though they have a martial ancestor realm expert sitting in a palanquin, this is not enough to deal with him. The trade alliance brought an expert from the martial ancestor realm, but Chin Nan said that he is not a hindrance to him. The representative of the trade union did not think that young master Chin Nan would know so much. Since he knows about the trump card, now she is very interested in learning about the boy's trump card. All the elders wanted to know the truth about the secret of the Battle Luck Pavilion. They were wondering how Chin Nan would get out of this now. In this case, even Elder Zhang was contemplating sharing secrets with them. Princess Miao Miao intervened in the situation. Has the trade union completely lost its fear? Chin Nan came out of the pavilion of battle luck. She wants the winnings that were promised to her now. She extended her hand and is waiting for her rightful pills. She was again told that the trade union would definitely pay her after they solved the problem with Chin Nan. She also hopes for her understanding. But this did not suit the young princess. It wasn't just that they were trying to delay payment that angered her but also that they are trying to harm her servant. Do they have even an ounce of respect for the princess? An old woman jumped out of the sales representative's tent. She told such a petty little thing not to be arrogant. At the same time, she used some kind of suffocating aura. Everyone who was nearby could not move or breathe normally. The princess was indignant at what kind of circus this grandmother was putting on in front of the princess. Is she tired of living? Princess Miao Miao stopped this misunderstanding with one hand and shot a powerful beam of energy at the grandmother. Immediately after this, the evil grandmother sank to the ground and bowed to her. She didn't expect that the girl in front of her would be a revered elder of the mystic elder sect and Chin Nan's teacher. She asked forgiveness for her impoliteness. 
The trade union will immediately give her the due winnings for the bet. However, she asks young master Qin Nan to share secrets with the trade union, and they promise that they will never reveal them to other sects. If Qin Nan and his teacher agree to this, then she will generously reward them in exchange for this secret information. The princess coveted an additional reward and asked again, If Qin Nan tells them secrets, will the princess get even more pills? Yes, that's right. If this information turns out to be from ancient times, then the trade union will give them everything they want. Princess Miao Miao jumped with joy at this proposal. She really enjoyed being given more and more pills. Qin Nan shouted at her that she should not accept this. Secrets cannot be told to anyone. But the princess was not interested in this. She needed as many pills as possible. The princess is busy here doing business. Where does the servant have the right to interrupt her? Qin Nan was no longer angry enough at this. He was infuriated by this petty girl, who was only thinking about how to collect even more belongings. The princess saw this, and although she really loves pills, Qin Nan is very loyal to her, and she doesn't want to hurt his heart. And the secrets that they so desire to receive simply need to be forgotten. Since the princess insists, the representatives of the trade union will no longer object. From today on, Qin Nan is prohibited from coming to the auction held by the trade union. The guards were ordered to pick up the palanquin and prepare to leave. Of course, if young master Qin Nan changes his mind, he can always share his secrets with the trade alliance. Eh, but initially, Qin Nan was offered the sacred gold badge, but in the end, he was blacklisted from attending the auction of the trade union. Qin Nan didn't understand what was happening. The soaring sword sect elder had a strange look at him. It looked like they were up to something bad. But Elder Fang said that it was nothing like that. It's just a misunderstanding and they're about to leave here. Chin Nan stuck to his guns and recommended everyone to think about their every action in the future. Chin Nan had too many power fruits, so he gave one to each of his group. It should be used to improve your cultivation. And since Huang Long has gone through two rounds, he no longer needs them. Therefore, Chin Nan will not give him the power fruit to which Huang Long simply smiled and spread his hands. They stood and silently looked at their power fruits. Qin Nan asked them, isn't one power fruit enough for them? And they told him that this was not so. They were very grateful for Qin Nan's action. And they are also grateful that after all this, Qin Nan did not turn his back on them, and they are now like one team. The mystic elder sect group was about to return back to their city. All of them were in high spirits and pleased with the results achieved. While they were getting home, Chin Nan wondered why that damn princess Miao Miao didn't share her winnings with him. She won 30 million martial emperor pills, however. She did not give him a single crystal flower. It would take another eight days to get to the mystic elder sect. So Chin Nan should take advantage of this for his cultivation. Although Chin Nan cannot release his soul to absorb the chi of heaven and earth on the move, he can still improve his cultivation by absorbing cultivation ingredients. As they walked, Elder Jang wondered about the boy. Chin Nan has truly mastered the essence of multitasking. As expected of him, it is not surprising that he would be able to achieve such amazing results. Chin Nan not only has great talent, but is also diligent in cultivation. Huang Long and Mo Zixiao also don't want to leave him behind. While they were heading home, the princess became bored and began to tease Chin Nan. She began to grimace and say that this was simply nothing in the eyes of the princess, and there was nothing to be proud of. Meanwhile, Chin Nan just wanted to improve his cultivation. But the princess decided that she could pester the boy when he got bored. Chin Nan found a quiet place near a wide tree. Three days had passed since the test in the pavilion of Battle Fortune ended, and they were returning home. Chin Nan realized that the ancient spiritual chi provided high cultivation speed but led to instability of the foundations. To avoid this, Chin Nan combined the chi and squeezed it carefully. Now is finally the time to increase his strength. Elder Zhang walked up to Chin Nan and saw that the boy seemed to have learned about the secrets of the ancient spiritual chi. Although the cultivation speed of atavistic cultivators is much faster, relying only on it can lead them to hidden dangers. Chin Nan listened to the elder and his developments and took note of it. It was necessary to continue their path to the sect. They should arrive home in five days. Five days have passed. Disciples of the sect gathered in the square. 
They discussed why Chin Nan was hiding his soul level when he was actually at the 10th level. Also, one of the disciples heard that the three sects were discussing the issue regarding Chin Nan. They are planning to do something. By that time, they had already arrived in their city, and Chin Nan decided to go see his good old friend Shan. Elder Shan honestly told him that he had underestimated his talent earlier. From this day on, he will be more attentive to the boy. Chin Nan folded his hands in gratitude to his teacher. He succeeded only thanks to the help of Elder Shan. The elder laughed kindly and called him a little bastard. Elder Shan did not help him much, however, Chin Nan still continues to surprise him. While Chin Nan and Elder Shan were having a pleasant conversation, the leaders of the four halls also joined them. They also came to talk to the boy. The leader of the discipline council praised Chin Nan and said that he was an extraordinary person, and he was also amazed by his achievements in such a short time. Elder Shan realized that the leaders had arrived because of some important matter. The leaders came here to tell Chin Nan that the sect leader had decided to reward him generously. Moreover, the sect leader personally asked Chin Nan to reveal the secrets he learned in the Battle Fortune Pavilion. Of course, the contribution will not be in vain. Chin Nan thanked these words and replied to convey his words to the leader. He does not reveal the secret of the Battle Luck Pavilion, not because he does not want to help the sect, but because they are personally connected to him. The sect will not gain any benefit from this knowledge. One of the elders wanted to somehow convince the boy so that he would give in and tell it. However, Chin Nan decided to end the conversation about this here. Elder Shan sided with Chin Nan and asked him to tell the sect leader that Chin Nan was a rare genius and his disciple. He wants them to ask them not to bother him anymore. The leaders of the four halls may also be free. After the leaders of the four halls left, Elder Shan approached Chin Nan and also decided to inquire what secrets were in the Pavilion of Battle Luck. And is it possible for him to recognize them? But Chin Nan felt awkward about this. He asked Elder Shan for forgiveness because the secrets are really connected only with him and nothing else. Shan replied that he does not force him to say them if the student himself does not want to tell it. Now it was necessary to return to cultivation. The older brother was watching the boy. Elder Shan hopes that he will not let him down. After Elder Shan's visit, Chin Nan headed to the peak of the outer realm, the Chin residence. There he was met by his acquaintance with whom he was at the auction together. He congratulated young master Chin Nan on his promotion. Now he will live in the inner kingdom. Moreover, the Grand Elder had specially allocated a third residence for Chin Nan. Chin Nan thanked him for his help in resolving these issues. For this, he gave him a power fruit. He can raise his cultivation by one level if he accepts it. He received such a gift, his friend was shocked. Now it had become very difficult for him to increase his cultivation even by one level. This power fruit was simply one of the best treasures he could obtain. Following Chin Nan was his best decision in life. No matter what, he will stay with him. Chin Nan asked him for help in some matter. He gave him five more power fruits. They had to be taken to the treasury and exchanged for martial emperor pills. Chin Nan himself went to the peak of the inner realm. It was understood by the stone steps that led high up the mountain. So this is the peak of the inner realm. It is so rich in chi, and it is much more convenient to train here. While Chin Nan was getting up, some girls noticed him. They admired his straight posture and firm gait. They admired that Chin Nan was an atavistic cultivator, and his aura had risen to the first level of the Xiantian realm. The girls were delighted with him. Chin Nan would certainly be able to defeat an opponent of a superior level without any problems. Senior brother Chin Nan is so handsome, some even want children with him. Chin Nan wondered if this was reality. When he has achieved outstanding results, he will be respected by society. However, fame and pride are just an illusion. This is normal, and he is glad that he is recognized for the first time in a long time. But he must not lose concentration because of this. Chin Nan went up to the right place. This place is the third residence. With so much chi, the cultivation speed here would be several times faster than in his previous residences. As soon as he got there, an arrow flew towards him. He managed to notice her, so he was able to defend himself from her. After he caught it with his hands, he noticed a piece of paper tied to the arrow.
Perhaps they didn't want to kill him now, but wanted to notify him of something. The note said the following. Chin Nan was congratulated for arriving and winning the challenge. They were also invited to the 43rd residence. The note was signed with the name Li Hong. It seems that elder sister Li Hong is looking for him for some reason. It was thanks to her lecture that he was able to calm his fighting heart. Now, since she invited him, he should visit her. Chin Nan decided to immediately come to the 43rd residence, as written in the invitation. Li Hong trained at her residence. She perfected her strikes with her long glaive. Meanwhile, Chin Nan had already approached her. He noticed her training in the courtyard of her residence. Chin Nan thanked senior sister Li Hong for her lecture. She helped him a lot. Li Hong was pleased by these words, but she invited him here at the request of some person. She will introduce him now. Some guy came out to them. His name was Uyang Jun. This was one of the best geniuses of the inner kingdom. He was warmly dressed, perhaps coming from the north or from the high mountains. He asked if it was Chin Nan. Chin Nan decided to immediately examine him with the sight of the god of war. His cultivation was at the tenth level of the Xiantian realm, just a step away from the realm of the martial emperor. He also has a tenth grade soul and has reached the beginning stage of the secret realm. Chin Nan asked why big brother Uyang Jun wanted to see him. Uyang told him that he called him to invite him to join the Jun Alliance. This is a great chance, and it will be good to take advantage of it. The Jun Alliance is an organization personally created by senior brother Uyang Jun, which recruits the geniuses of the mystic elder sect. Li Hong is also a member. Once Chin Nan joined the alliance, there would be nothing he couldn't settle with the sect. Even if he kills someone in the sect, it won't be a problem. Chin Nan will only have to follow U Yang's orders. Chin Nan thanks for this invitation, but he has no intention of joining the Jun Alliance, as he is used to the freedom he now has. And I had already decided to say goodbye to him, since I did not see any further conversation about this. Chin Nan had already turned around to go about his business. However, U Yang Jun shouted and ordered him to stand where he was. Don't be arrogant about your talent. Chin Nan should be grateful that U Yang Jun personally invited him to join the alliance. How soon did he have the courage to refuse? If Chin Nan left now, U Yang would consider it an insult. Chin Nan's life depends on U Yang's words. If he decides that Chin Nan must die, then Chin Nan will die. But Chin Nan did not appreciate this and replied that he would look forward to it. Li Hong was angry with U Yang Jun. He shouldn't have spoken to Chin Nan like that. When it comes to talent, they are not much different. Uyang Jun had already raised his voice to Li Hong and told her that she shouldn't have talked to him like that. If it weren't for his brother, he would have killed her long ago. To which Li Hong replied that if it weren't for his brother, even considering that Uyang Jun is the son of a sect leader, she would not have helped him. Uyang decided that it was useless to argue with her. He ordered her to find Leng Feng and tell him to deal with Qin Nan and that he doesn't have to worry about the consequences of this matter. Angry, Li Hong chuckled, turned around and left. It looks like a new conflict is brewing. Uyang Jun harbored a grudge against her. He wants to see how long she can hold out against him. He was now wondering how long it would take for Chin Nan to come running to beg for his life. Chin Nan returned to his home, the third residence. The weather was excellent, sunny, and the air temperature was comfortable for training. Chin Nan had lost a lot of time. He needed to hurry up and start training. The boy sat in the lotus position and began to meditate. However, someone disturbed his peace. Someone came to his residence and said that Chin Nan is really a secretive guy. The guest did not threaten the boy's safety. It was his good old friend Gong Yang. He asked how many more aces Chin Nan had up his sleeve. It is becoming more and more difficult for him to understand. Chin Nan was very happy to meet him again. It's not like he's trying to hide anything. It just doesn't matter whether Chin Nan says it or not. They will still remain brothers. Chin Nan invited him to sit at the table and drink tea. Gong Yang noticed that Chin Nan seemed to have some problems this time. Just recently, Chin Nan encountered Uyang Jun. He asked Chin Nan if he knew who he was. Chin Nan sipped his tea and said that Brother Yang should know his temperament well. Chin Nan only respects those who respect him. He doesn't care who Uyang Jun is. Gong Yang knows Chin Nan's temperament. But this time, everything is more complicated than Chin Nan thinks. First of all, Uyang Jun is the son of the current leader of the mystic elder sect. 
Chin Nan wondered, it's no wonder why this Ouyang Jun has so much impudence if he is the son of the leader of the Mystic Elders sect. Gong Yang continued the story. Besides, Ouyang Jun is engaged to Xiao Qing Shui. These words surprised Chin Nan very much. At first, he didn't even believe these words. Gong Yang heard that Xiao Qing Shui's parents were sect elders, but they died in an unfortunate incident. The sect leader decided to adopt Xiao Qing Shui. Then, after some time, he proposed that she marry Ouyang Jun once he reached the realm of the martial emperor. And also, Elder Mo Qing, who attacked Qin Nan before being sent to the Battle Luck Pavilion, also obeyed Ouyang Jun. Qin Nan got angry and said that Ouyang Jun was a daredevil. Nothing much happens between Qin Nan and Qin Shui, however. He was so angry that he set Mo Qing against Qin Nan. Gong Yang asked, Shouldn't Qin Nan be more concerned about Xiao Qing Shui's situation? To which Qin Nan replied that this was confusion. He doesn't have any special feelings for Xiao Qing Shui. He was just grateful to her since she helped him a lot. After Gong Yang told Qin Nan everything and informed him about it, he felt better. Now he doesn't have to worry so much about it. But you still need to know that Qin Nan should not retreat if anyone dares to disrespect him, even if you have to turn the whole world upside down. Moreover, Gong Yang learned that the sect leader and the great elder were not on the best of terms. Since Ouyang Jun could not take Qin Nan to himself, he will try to suppress him. This is not surprising after he threatened to kill Qin Nan as soon as he rejected the offer. Gong Yan shared all the necessary information with Qin Nan and will no longer occupy his time. Qin Nan should train more and try to reach the martial emperor realm as quickly as possible. Ouyang Jun, with his character, will definitely try to get to Qin Nan. Now he is just one step away from the realm of the martial emperor. Qin Nan needs to quickly become stronger in order to be able to bypass his new opponent. Qin Nan used all his acquired funds to quickly improve his body and his abilities. He cultivated persistently, spending all his time on it. Three days have passed since Qin Nan began training. He did not waste this time in vain and achieved new growth. Chin Nan had finally reached the Great Secret Realm stage after three days of training. Now it's time for practical training with the sword. Young Master Chin Nan took a fighting stance and, using a cutting blow, struck a stone several meters away from him. Small pieces of stone scattered in different directions from such a powerful blow. With his current strength, the third level of the Xiantian Realm will not be a hindrance to him. Just after finishing his training, he heard someone near the entrance to his residence shouting and calling him. It was Leng Feng who came. He challenges Qin Nan to fight. It seems that he has finally come to take away the seven deadly sins, these outstanding swords. Qin Nan went out to his yard. Meanwhile, a crowd of onlookers had already gathered there who would like to watch the performance. Leng Feng had already heard a lot about Qin Nan. Therefore, he will spare him if Qin Nan just gives him the swords of the seven deadly sins and they will simply go their separate ways. This made Qin Nan laugh. He knows that Lung Feng is one of the top ten inner disciples, and that he had reached the seventh level of the Xiantian realm. He had even reached the initial stage of the secret realm. If he wanted to kill Qin Nan, then it would not be a problem for him. But don't let him think that Qin Nan cares about this. He never looked for easy ways, and will be ready to fight for his honestly earned swords. Leng Feng decided not to stand on ceremony and start fighting Qin Nan for the seven deadly sins. He really needed these swords. The disciples did not understand why Leng Feng came to Qin Nan to fight. Perhaps he is planning to kill Qin Nan. But Qin Nan never backs down from accepted challenges. Everyone already knows that. In this case, Leng Feng challenges Qin Nan to a duel in the Hall of Life and Death. If Qin Nan loses then the seven deadly sins will be Lung Feng's. But if Lung Feng loses, then he will bet all his pills and treasures. Qin Nan will be able to take them all for himself if he wins. Does Qin Nan agree? Leng Feng is at the seventh level of the Xiantian realm and challenges Qin Nan to a duel. This is just ridiculous, said the young master. It was obvious that Qin Nan would lose to him and would eventually die in battle with him. Why should he accept this challenge? And Leng Feng is quite interesting. Challenging someone with weaker cultivation to a duel in the Hall of Life and Death, does he really think Qin Nan is so stupid? 
Why would Leng Feng go to such lengths for the sake of a mystical weapon? Ouyang Jun also appeared at the scene. He laughed with Chin Nan because he had heard before that he was not afraid of anything. If this is really the case, then why doesn't Chin Nan accept Leng Feng's challenge? If he were Chin Nan, he would beat the crap out of Leng Feng, making him regret the rest of his life. The crowd that had gathered was surprised that Ouyang Jun had also come here. However, they still did not understand what he was talking about. Chin Nan asked Ouyang Jun what he had to do with his conflict with Leng Feng, and this put him in a stupor. Ouyang Jun turned around and said that Chin Nan disappointed him. He originally thought that Chin Nan was superior to the others, but now it seems he has overestimated its capabilities. Therefore, he asks him to ask for it. Leng Feng said that since Chin Nan does not accept his challenge, there is nothing more to talk about. Leng Feng had already turned around and was about to leave when suddenly Chin Nan asked him to wait. Chin Nan pointed his finger at him and said, since Leng Feng challenged him to a fight in the Hall of Life and Death, how could he retreat without doing anything? He accepts a challenge from Leng Feng, but their fight will take place in two months. The one who loses gives everything he has to the winner. These will be the conditions of this fight. Some disciples were surprised that Chin Nan took Leng Feng's challenge seriously. They believe that Chin Nan hit his head, and it seems that Leng Feng is supported by Ouyang Jun. Does Chin Nan really think that he can defeat Leng Feng? Leng Feng was still silent. Chin Nan asked him if he was really so afraid of these conditions. If this is so, then let him disappear from his sight. But Leng Feng decided not to deviate from his plan. He accepts a challenge from Chin Nan, waiting for him in two months in the Hall of Life and Death. After they agreed and dueled, Leng Feng left with Ouyang Jun. The latter turned around and promised that he would arrange Chin Nan's death. After this, Chin Nan met with Gong Yan again. Gong Yang asked him why he insulted Ouyang Jun again. Chin Nan even accepted Leng Feng's challenge. Chin Nan asked Brother Yang to calm down. Ouyang Jun had already crossed the line, so there was no point in poking him. Besides, it's just a duel with Leng Feng. It won't be as bad as he thinks. But does Chin Nan have a chance of winning? Leng Feng is at the seventh level of the Xiantian realm. Chin Nan is absolutely no match for him. Does Chin Nan think that he can raise his cultivation to six levels in just two months? Chin Nan agreed with Gong Yang's words. However, the martial world has always been cruel, and the paths that the strong chose were always filled with dangers. In two months, if Chin Nan loses, he will use his skull as a stepping stone to the fame and prosperity he so seeks. And if Chin Nan wins, then he will become the first among the external disciples. Therefore, Chin Nan knows that he is taking risks, but this is his path, which he himself decided to follow. Since Chin Nan has already decided everything, then Gong Yan will not object. He only has a request for Chin Nan. Don't you dare lose in this fight. To which Chin Nan smiled and said that this is Leng Feng. Chin Nan is too tough for him. By then, he will surpass him in skills. Meanwhile, to the Chin Nan residence, Bai Heng brought all the pills that he exchanged for power fruits. Chin Nan sat down in front of this large pile of bottles and was about to start taking the martial emperor pills that Bai Hung exchanged for him. Young Master Chin Nan should make the most of the time he has. These 4,000 martial emperor pills should be enough for his soul to advance to the mystic class. About 15 minutes had passed since Chin Nan began to consume the martial emperor's pills, but this still did not lead to signs of improvement. By then, Princess Miao Miao had returned. She turned to Chin Nan and said that, as expected of a princess's servant, he actually dared to challenge that idiot at the seventh level of the Xiantian realm. She made fun of Chin Nan's chances. It seems she will have to look for a new servant in two months. Chin Nan decided to give her a bunch of compliments, in the hope that the princess would share the pills with him. This way it would be easier for him to achieve the desired level of body hardening. But this made the princess angry, because she is now broke. As a servant, Chin Nan didn't even give her the pills he received. He should have been grateful just because she didn't punish him for it. But since she doesn't have any pills, Chin Nan decided to go. He will continue to cultivate, and she can do whatever she wants. She stopped Chin Nan and said that although she is poor now, she has a great offer. With it, Chin Nan would be able to obtain 80 to 100,000 martial emperor pills without any problems. Chin Nan decided to first ask her what she was offering him. 
but she whispered in his ear that that's not how it worked. Chin Nan must do this first, and then she told him her plan, from which Chin Nan simply pulled away and was horrified. Is this even doable? The princess was embarrassed by this. She simply looked for the elders and hall leaders, and then borrowed pills from them. She managed to get a lot of pills this way. Chin Nan listened to her and still agreed that he should try to do this, although he really didn't want to get pills this way. After the princess revealed her brilliant plan to obtain the pills, they began to implement it. Events moved to the discipline hall. Chu Yun and Xiao Leng meditated and trained there. The princess approached them and gave them a letter. She said that this letter was from Chin Nan. They opened the letter and began to read together. It said that Chin Nan was asking him to borrow some pills. Further events took place in the discipline hall, in the conference room. This month, a total of 37 important cases related to fighting were observed. The discipline leader asked that all general violations be sent to the discipline hall elder. Princess Miao Miao also came to this meeting. It seems they are all here. She came in successfully. She said that she had arrived on behalf of her servant, Qin Nan, to bring these letters to all of them. They all read the letters that were addressed to them from Qin Nan. They also contained a request to lend him some pills. The leader of the skill library, the leader of the treasury, the leader of the hall of fame, and the leader of the hall of life and death also received such a letter. Princess Miao Miao visited the four halls and delivered letters from Qin Nan to everyone, each of which was a request for pills. After she distributed letters to all the highest ranks from the mystic elder sect, events moved to the peak of the outer realm to a place where everyone gathers to meditate. Princess Miao Miao hovered over the square and ordered all the students to rise. She told everyone that she was a revered elder of the mystic elder sect. She is here on behalf of Chin Nan to tell everyone something important. The princess distributed similar letters to everyone. It was possible to reach a large number of students at this time. The students read the letters and began to discuss them. Chin Nan really, for some reason, asks for pills from the entire sect. They began to ask each other if they would lend him the pills, because apparently he was not going to return them later. One of the disciples was willing to lend him one or two thousand Giantian tablets. He is a little afraid that if he ignores this, Chin Nan will not like him. It's better not to mess with him. Elder Miao Miao is covering for him. Nothing bad will happen if they lend him some pills. Another student also agreed to lend it to him even if he is not going to return them. The main thing for them is to be left alone. The second elder was also asked if he would lend the pills to Chin Nan. But the elder sent him to hell, because Chin Nan insulted young Master Jun. Why would you help him? But we must not forget that behind Chin Nan is elder Miao Miao, and no one can afford to insult her. He still offers to give him some pills, to which the elder agreed to lend him some tablets. By then, Chin Nan had already accumulated a very large mountain of pill bottles. He didn't even know how to transport them all and where to store them. He was incredibly happy that they actually managed to get so many pills. I wonder how many there are in total. This will definitely be enough to improve the hardening of the body. Princess Miao Miao counted and said that there were 500,000 Martial Emperor pills. That's a lot. Chin Nan was very surprised that he managed to collect such a large amount. The princess borrowed 100,000 from Elder Shan, also 20,000 from each hall leader. This is already 200,000 martial emperor pills. Another 100,000 tablets were obtained thanks to her charm, and this amount was lent by internal and external disciples. Then, Elder Zhang Taiyi, who accompanied Chin Nan to the Pavilion of Battle Luck, lent a total of 30,000. There was also another inner disciple named Gong Yang. Chin Nan was shocked by her stories and asked her if she wanted him to die due to so many debts. She was running around all the time, wasting her time, and he was also unhappy. Don't forget that he will have some extra pills, so he can return them right away. Chin Nan thought for a moment and realized that she was right. And the princess at that time was angry that she got such a stupid servant. She hugged Chin Nan and said that she had been so kind to him by coming up with a plan and collecting the pills. In return, she only has one small request. She hopes that Chin Nan will not refuse and will fulfill it. He didn't listen to her and thought that she wanted to take some of these pills for herself. After all, they will have to be returned in the future.
and she answered him that of course he was a miser. But the princess did not need his pills. If she was right, then Chin Nan was collecting these martial emperor pills for his soul. For the same reason, Chin Nan accepted Leng Feng's challenge. In any case, the princess's request will be simple. The princess just wants to see what Chin Nan does to her soul by taking these pills. But Chin Nan replied that this was impossible. Even if he doesn't receive a single pill, he will never accept her request. Chin Nan collected all the pills he had obtained into a bottomless bag and threw it at the princess, saying that he no longer needed these pills. The princess was very excited and surprised by this. She grabbed the bag and got angry at him. Lastly, if he doesn't want her to see it, then so be it. Who cares? She swung her hand and threw the bag back to Chin Nan, shouting at him to take it. It seems that he really offended her by not showing her what he does with his soul when he takes the martial emperor pills. Chin Nan mentally thanked her. The soul of the god of war is his biggest secret, and also the strongest ace up his sleeve. He asks her forgiveness for not telling her anything. Chin Nan, along with his war god's soul, stood near a huge pile of martial emperor pill vials. He thinks that this number of pills will be enough to upgrade his class. Young Master Chin Nan began to absorb them all at an incredible speed. He very quickly absorbed 1,000, then 2, 3. After a while, the counter had already exceeded 100,000 Martial Emperor pills. But even 100,000 Martial Emperor pills were still not enough to improve the soul of the God of War. This soul is like a black hole. How many more pills will Chin Nan have to swallow? He had to forget, because it didn't matter how many pills he had to take. Chin Nan must promote the soul to the mystic class today. I had to continue to confidently move towards my goal. Chin Nan has already absorbed 200,000. A few hours later, the bottles of 450,000 Martial Emperor pills had already been emptied. But this was still not enough to recruit the coveted mystical class. There were 50,000 last pills left. He prayed that this time everything would work out. Chin Nan consumed the last of his pills. There were already 10,000 left until the round sum of half a million. And finally the soul began to move to a new class. Chin Nan was already overjoyed that he only needed 500,000 Martial Emperor pills to reach the Mystic class. But it looks like he fell short again. How can this be? Chin Nan still didn't understand why he didn't move on. This is impossible. The soul of the God of War is outstanding. It couldn't be that she couldn't promote to the Mystic class. The only explanation could be that these 500,000 Martial Emperor pills are still not enough for promotion. He had already asked the entire sect for pills. Who else could lend them to him? Further events unfolded at the peak of the Inner Kingdom in the First Residence. Recently, the revered elder was collecting pills throughout the sect on behalf of Chin Nan. What is he trying to do? Maybe. Does he practice some scary techniques that require a large number of pills? What are you afraid of? Ouyang Jun asked Leng Feng. He had already spoken to the skill library leader. Leng Feng could go with him and cultivate in the sky room of the lunar pavilion. In the next two months, with the help of some herbs, you may not be able to reach the middle of the martial emperor realm. But it will not be a problem to reach the ninth level of the Xiantian realm. Chin Nan only has a 10th grade soul. No matter what kind of secret technique he uses, Chin Nan will not be able to reach the 9th level of the Xiantian realm in such a short period of time. Leng Feng thanked Ouyang Jun for access to the celestial room of the Lunar Pavilion. Then, in the middle of their conversation, an arrow flew through the window and stuck into the table. There was a note on the arrow. The arrow hit the table where Ouyang Jun was sitting. He was very surprised by this. He stood up and unfolded it to read. He read the letter and everything was written there, the same as what all the other students and members of the sect received. Chin Nan asked them for 100,000 martial emperor pills, since they are geniuses, and it would obviously not be difficult for them to borrow such an amount. Leng Feng asked Ouyang Jun not to be angry. He feels like Chin Nan wrote this letter on purpose to provoke them. Leng Feng thinks that they should not give him what he asks for. You just need to leave him alone, and when the time comes, he will kill him. Ouyang Jun became even more angry with Chin Nan, since he dared to provoke him by asking for pills. 
then he will fulfill his wish. Leng Feng was a little shocked by this turn of events. Would he seriously give Qin Nan a hundred thousand martial emperor pills? Of course, he would lend them to him, but not the hundred thousand martial emperor pills. And he decided to prepare something special for him. Uyang Jun took out a small bottle. Qin Nan is stupid if he thinks that he will give him the martial emperor pills. Let Leng Feng go and personally hand over this body tempering pill to him. This should be enough for him, right? Leng Feng accepted the request from Wu Yang Jun and immediately decided to go to Qin Nan to give him the body tempering pill. Leng Feng, at the request of his elder brother, handed over the bottle to Qin Nan. The boy wondered if they wanted to humiliate him by giving him just one body hardening pill. But he doesn't mind at all. Even if it's just a body toughening pill, it's still a pill. He won't waste it. However, he is afraid that this will certainly not be enough to raise the level of the war god's soul. It seems that Chin Nan will have to go and look for Elder Shan to borrow more pills from him. As soon as Chin Nan took the one remaining body tempering pill he had, the soul of the god of war began to exude a strong aura and glow. This happened, and his soul moved to the level of the mystical class. Chin Nan laughed with joy. Even one such weak pill brought such great benefits, raising the class of his soul. If Lung Feng and Uyang Jun found out about this, Qin Nan could only imagine how angry they would be about it. The war god's soul began to glow, and Qin Nan looked at it. She showed him a vision in which the elders fought against a very powerful dragon. After that, a man appeared above the dragon and the entire battlefield. His appearance glowed very strongly, and everyone covered their eyes from such a bright light. Chin Nan thought about this vision. He wondered what kind of war it was. Who is this person who stopped her? And also, why did Chin Nan suddenly shed tears when he saw this vision? But it doesn't matter. One way or another, it is somehow connected with the soul of the god of war. Chin Nan is afraid that he will only be able to find the answers when his cultivation is strong enough. The most important thing now is to find out how magnificent his first-class mystical soul is, hoping that it will not disappoint him. Chin Nan took a closer look and noticed that this was the union of thunder and wind. He didn't think that a first-class mystical soul would have such an effect. That was incredible. With her and the abundance of qi in the third residence, it would not be difficult for an atavistic cultivator like Chin Nan to make a breakthrough at all. Now, all that remains is to see how fast its cultivation will be in the future. The soul of a new class opens up new spaces for improvement. Three days have passed since Chin Nan advanced to the mystic class of his soul. He continued to cultivate and was able to reach the third level of the Xiantian realm. This is truly the real power of a first-class mystical soul. In three days, he was able to break through to the third level of the Xiantian realm. At this rate, in the remaining 50 days, he will be able to raise his cultivation to the fifth level of the Siantian realm, and maybe even the sixth. However, he needed 500,000 martial emperor pills to achieve all this. Is faster cultivation speed really the only advantage he will gain? Unexpectedly, Chin Nan noticed that his soul of the god of war began to glow with a purple glow. He was perplexed by this. He wondered why the soul began to emit purple light. This purple glow seems to have a mysterious energy. Chin Nan can't see what's behind him. He doesn't know how to understand this. No matter, time will tell. There is no point in thinking about this now. Now that Chin Nan has reached the third level of the Xiantian realm, also known as the boundary of the Xiantian realm, he must try to release his qi. Releasing qi means releasing qi from one's body, which then solidifies and takes the form of blades, swords, spears, and other weapons. In other words, only by perfecting the technique of releasing qi can a person be called a true expert of the Xiantian realm. If qi accumulates inside his body, how can he release it? Should this happen through the meridians, blood vessels, or through the pores, it all comes down to one question. How to let it out of the body? But Chin Nan couldn't do any of these things. He can't let her out. At this rate, he will only tear himself into pieces due to the pressure of qi. Chin Nan did not understand how to start releasing her from his body. The princess came to Chin Nan again. She said that releasing qi itself is a difficult process to understand. How can it be released from human flesh? 
It is very disrespectful of him to be such a stupid servant, since he cannot comprehend the secrets of Qi. Chin Nan was happy to see her and agreed with her words. His flesh cannot withstand the pressure of the Qi, so it cannot be released from his body. Maybe he should think in a different direction? Qi is contained in his body and he can control it at will, then he can gather it around his body. Chin Nan decided to try again using newer knowledge. And he succeeded. He was very happy about it. To release Qi, you just need to disperse it throughout the body and then collect it on your flesh, which will subsequently give the desired effect. Chin Nan managed to gather Qi throughout his body so that it could then harden into a weapon with which he was able to split the earth and stone in front of him. The young master was incredibly happy about his new skill and such incredible strength. The training was not in vain, and he achieved success. Chin Nan thanked Princess Miao Miao for the necessary and correct advice on dispersing qi energy throughout the body and then controlling and collecting it for the subsequent strike. The princess was also happy about this, but she wanted Chin Nan to thank her somehow. 100,000 martial emperor pills she thinks will be enough. But even if he was going to give her pills, he is so poor now that he doesn't have a single body toughening pill. Where would he get the martial emperor pills for the princess? The princess was confused by this, she asked Chin Nan. Had he really already spent all 500,000 martial emperor pills? The aura emanating from Chin Nan's body is at least 10 times stronger than it was before, and more mysterious as well. What exactly did the boy do? Chin Nan didn't really want to share this information and decided to say that he noticed that the princess began to look even more beautiful. The princess immediately realized this and asked him not to try to change the subject. Perhaps something has changed with Chin Nan's war god eyes after his promotion. Chin Nan's eyes lit up and suddenly he realized something. The eyes of the god of war have become stronger. Before this, they could only show that the princess's cultivation had reached the martial ancestor realm. But now, they can see absolutely everything. Princess Miao Miao's cultivation base is simply terrifying. No wonder Elder Shan is so kind to her. Her strength surpasses even his. But this power seems very weak, as if the princess was injured and now cannot use her full power. Although she has not been fully restored, her cultivation has already reached the pinnacle of the martial ancestor realm. If this is true, then who hurt her so badly? It doesn't matter. Chin Nan's cultivation is still too weak. It's pointless to find out its history since he won't be able to help now anyway. At the moment, the important issue is to increase Chin Nan's cultivation. Chin Nan decided to ask Princess Miao Miao for some ancient spiritual liquid. The ancient spiritual liquid contains noble chi. With enough of it, along with Chin Nan's soul, he would be able to dramatically improve his cultivation to match Lung Feng. But the princess refused him. She said she would never give it to her. Therefore, Chin Nan asked that if she gave him the ancient spiritual liquid, then he would repay her with twice as many pills in the future. The princess set a price for him. For one drop of ancient spiritual liquid, Chin Nan must give a thousand martial emperor pills. This did not please Chin Nan and infuriated him. This price is just a robbery in broad daylight. The princess was cunning. So she said that if Chin Nan did not want to accept such conditions, then there was nothing more to discuss. Although this made Chin Nan angry, he had no other choice. A thousand. A thousand. In any case, he already owed 500,000 martial emperor pills. If he owed a little more, it wouldn't change the situation much. Chin Nan agreed to the princess's terms and asked her to give him 100,000 drops of ancient spiritual liquid. The princess did not expect this. She answered him that she was not a cow who could be milked whenever she wanted. She doesn't have that much. Young Master Chin Nan looked at her chest. Perhaps she was hiding something there, for which he received a slap in the face from the princess. Servants were not allowed to behave this way in the presence of the princess. She only has a hundred. She asked if Chin Nan would take that amount, to which he happily replied that of course he would take everything he had. Even insects have some meat in them. Princess Miao Miao was in no hurry to give him a hundred drops right away. She wanted them to make it official first. Chin Nan believed that they were on good terms, so they could do without it. The princess made it clear that without signing the matter would not happen. She asked him if he was going to sign, if not, 
than even if he didn't ask her for a drop. Chin Nan agreed. He had no other choice. He signed an official document stating that he was borrowing 100 drops of ancient spiritual liquid from her at the rate of one drop per thousand martial emperor pills. But not so fast. The princess walked so much that now her legs hurt. She asks Chin Nan to come over and give her a foot massage. She had already sat down on the table and held out her foot to him. Chin Nan did not want to give her a massage and said that she was asking too much. In addition to the fact that he would still owe a hundred thousand martial emperor pills, Princess Miao Miao took the contract in her hands and asked Chin Nan again whether he would do the massage or not. After all, he wants the ancient spiritual liquid, and it would be better for Chin Nan to return the hundred thousand pills as soon as possible, otherwise she threatens to kill him. Chin Nan had to overcome himself and agree to give her a foot massage. After all, it was more important for him to defeat Lung Feng and then Ouyang Jun. After massaging her feet, the princess decided to torture Chin Nan some more and asked him to bring water. Then she felt hungry and wanted to eat. Chin Nan ran around and fulfilled all her requests. Three hours passed, Chin Nan lay exhausted on the floor. Sweat was dripping from his forehead. He had to struggle a lot to please the princess. He lay there and thought that he was finally freed from this devil. And this is his reward. Chin Nan held in his hands a small bottle containing 100 drops of ancient spiritual liquid. Now it's time to find out how much his cultivation will increase after he uses this bottle. There were rumors throughout the sect that Ouyang Jun actually allowed Lung Feng to go to the heavenly room. He's helping him too much. Chin Nan is so careless, challenging Leng Feng was too rash a decision. Meanwhile, Lung Feng was already sitting in the heavenly room of the lunar pavilion and training to obtain the ninth level of the Xiantian realm. Leng Feng believed that when he left this place, this day would be the last event in Chin Nan's life. A month passed after Chin Nan's training, he was still in his residence. He trained hard and spent all his time on it. And finally, Chin Nan achieved a breakthrough and was able to reach the fifth level of the Xiantian realm. As expected from the soul of the god of war, ancient spiritual liquid and atavistic cultivation. This combination allowed for so much progress. Chin Nan still had 50 drops of ancient spiritual liquid left. With his first-class mystic soul and atavistic cultivation, he would reach the eighth level of Xiantian in the remaining month. At the same time, it was impossible to waste a second of time that he could spend on training. Because his opponent could achieve even greater success than himself, Chin Nan heard that someone was behind him. He didn't expect to see Xiao Qing Shui. He asked why she was here, and didn't she leave to carry out a mission from the sect. She came to tell him something. Qin Shui hopes that Qin Nan will give up in the duel between him and Leng Feng. Qin Nan didn't understand what she was saying. Does she really think that Qin Nan is no match for Leng Feng? Ever since she met Qin Nan in Ling Shui City, everything he did was absolutely amazing. Like miracles beyond her understanding. To be honest, she believes that Chin Nan can do what others think is impossible. And she is sure that he can defeat Lung Feng too. It's just that if Chin Nan decided to give up, then she can guarantee that Ouyang Jun won't lay a finger on him again. Chin Nan told her that she should know his character. Chin Nan simply cannot surrender to Leng Feng. He must defeat him. If Chin Nan thereby enrages Ouyang Jun, then come what may. Chin Nan was never afraid of anyone. Qin Shui had tears in her eyes and begged Chin Nan to surrender to him. She has never asked Chin Nan for anything before, and she really doesn't want to see him as Ouyang Jun's opponent. Chin Nan was upset by these words, looked down and said that he would surrender to Leng Feng. The next day, everyone was already talking about Chin Nan surrendering to Leng Feng. The disciples didn't understand what was wrong with this guy. He was so self-confident, and now he chickened out. This is simply disrespect for their mystic elder sect. Xiao Leng became angry when he heard this. He ordered everyone to shut their mouths. Big brother Qin Nan never gives up. If they dare to sow rumors again, they will deal with him. But the disciples told him that they had no use for these rumors. The news that Qin Nan was surrendering came straight from the elders. And since Qin Nan turned out to be such a coward, then why can't they talk about him? Xiao Leng did not like this and made him even more angry. Are they tired of living? Chu Yun approached him and said that these were not rumors at all. Senior brother Chin Nan really gave up. 
Disappointment was visible in her eyes. Xiao Leng did not want to believe it, and for him it seemed unthinkable. He was very curious about what provoked him to give up. Mozik Xiao never thought that Qin Nan would give up. Perhaps he was really scared of Leng Feng. Huang Long didn't think that was the case. Ever since Qin Nan entered the sect, he had never lowered his head. Even the first elder and Nangong Cheng could not force him to do this. Even when it was the great geniuses of the Raging Flame sect and the Qing Nu sect, he did not allow himself to be trampled by them. Some Leng Feng would never be able to make Qin Nan feel fear. Most likely, they do not know some important detail that happened to Qin Nan. Further events took place in the pavilion of Elder Shan. Gong Yang came to him and told him that Qin Nan had decided to surrender. Elder Shan only said that this was simply stupid. Shan spent so much on a man who can't even keep his word. He didn't even have the courage to fight. Gong Yang further said that he felt like this was all for a reason. They know Qin Nan's character well. He is not the type to give up. He feels like someone pushed him to this decision. Pushed? Shan asked, very surprised. He doesn't care about that. He shouldn't have given up. Although it was stupid of him to challenge Lung Feng. But Shan still hoped that Qin Nan would surpass himself and once again create a miracle. Even if he ended up losing to Leng Feng, he would be considered an honorable man of his word. Gong Yang asked for a little more time for Qin Nan. It's not over yet. Gong Yang thinks that his next appearance will show what kind of person he really is. After a rather tense conversation and the telling of bad news, Gong Yang went on about his business. Old man Shan just watched him go. Shan was not alone in the pavilion. His older brother was also with him. Shan told him that he never expected that Qin Nan would give up. To which the elder brother asked him not to worry. Finding Qin Nan was already not an easy task. You need to trust him. This young man will prove himself. If his predictions are correct, then Qin Nan will soon cause a storm that can alarm the four top sects and the entire Luohei kingdom. Qin Nan met with Bai Heng. Qin Nan was already talked about by the entire sect. Qin Nan replied that he didn't care what they said. He called Bai Heng here today to ask for advice. Is there any way that Qin Nan can obtain a large amount of pills? Bai Heng was a little scared. He asked Qin Nan if he really planned to return all the martial emperor pills that he had borrowed. Qin Nan confirmed his intentions. He doesn't like being in debt to anyone. They all helped him by lending him pills. Now he must repay them. Bai Heng told him that if he wants to earn pills quickly, there is one way. Qin Nan can accept assignments from the Hall of Fame. The most common are the destruction of animals and monsters. Qin Nan decided to remember this method and went to the Quest Hall of Fame. A huge broken stone floated in the middle of the square. The assignments were written on it. Quite a lot of people gathered around this stone. One of the tasks was to go to the Northern River and find out about the strange behavior of a clan of mermaids. After this, it was necessary to inform the sect about the results of the research in order to receive 1,000 Giantian pills. The second task was that the customer was looking for a clear centifolia flower. He will pay anyone who brings it. He pays a 1,000 martial emperor pills for it as a reward. There was also another task for 5,000 tablets. It was necessary to find out the reason for the strange behavior of the monsters on the demon mountain. But all these tasks came with very little reward. The largest among them is the 5,000 Martial Emperor pills. At this rate, Qin Nan would have to collect 500,000 Martial Emperor pills for a hundred years. But Qin Nan forgot that he would need to return 600,000 pills because he still owed Princess Miao Miao. Surely there won't be quests with bigger rewards here. Qin Nan noticed another advertisement. It said that a team was being recruited to defeat the monster, which is located on the Mountain of a Hundred Emperors. There is only one free space left. There are no restrictions on cultivation. The reward will be 30,000 Martial Emperor pills. Such a sum for completing the task already satisfied the young master Qin Nan. While Qin Nan was looking out for assignments, someone approached him from behind and asked if he was Qin Nan. After that, Qin Nan turned around and replied that it was indeed him. He also asked who was contacting him. His name is Pan Kun, and today he was lucky enough to meet the famous Qin Nan in the Hall of Fame. Pan Kun said that he had admired him for a long time. Qin Nan was pleased that he became a household name, 
but he was also sure that now his name was not known in the best light. Pan Kun said that he constantly hears about Chin Nan's courage, and he doesn't dare think about difficulties. It was simply impossible for some Lung Feng to force him to voluntarily surrender. What actually prompted Chin Nan to make such a difficult decision? But since junior brother Chin Nan can't talk about it, Pang Kun won't ask this question anymore from now on. He was wondering why Chin Nan came to the quest stone. Senior brother Pan Kun probably knows that just recently Chin Nan asked for pills from the entire mystic elder sect. And he's right. Chin Nan needs assignments to pay off his debts. Pak Kun asked him if he planned to pay off all his debts. He was very impressed by Chin Nan's decision. Perhaps he has a task suitable for him. Chin Nan even perked up after saying this. He was very interested in what kind of work or task his new acquaintance Pan Kun could offer him. It was possible to destroy the initial battle monster. For this, he will receive 10,000 Xiantian pills. For destroying an average monster, you could get 50 Xiantian tablets. And for an advanced person, 100,000 Xiantian tablets. With Chin Nan's current strength, it would not be difficult for him to defeat a beginner or average battle monster. It turns out that he can quickly earn a large number of pills. More importantly, by defeating monsters, he can improve his skills and gain more combat experience. For Chin Nan, this was the best option he had seen on the notice board so far. He agreed to start working on hunting battle monsters. This mission focuses on capturing different types of monsters. Where would be the best place for him to start hunting? The best place to go was to the Long Hu mountain range. There are many monsters on this ridge, and Chin Nan will also have a chance to return to his family to see how his father and the others are doing. After this, Chin Nan decided to meet Princess Miao Miao at the peak of the inner realm in the third residence. They sat down at the table to discuss Chin Nan's future plans. She asked the young master what he liked from the princess. Just so he knows, the princess is very busy. Every minute spent is equal to a million martial emperor pills. Chin Nan told her that he accepted the task. He goes to the Long Hu mountain range to hunt the monsters there. Therefore, he would be absent from the mystic elder sect for a while. Princess Miao Miao said it was great. She would have several tasks there for Chin Nan once they reached the Long Hu mountain range. He is her servant, so he must obey her orders unconditionally. Chin Nan was indignant. He asked what other missions she would have there for him. If they're the same as finding crystal flowers on an autumn mountain, then he's all for it. But half of the proceeds will be his. And this is not disgust. This angered the princess. Apparently, Chin Nan forgot that before that, on the top of the autumn mountain, when the Trade Alliance and the other three sects wanted to harm him, only thanks to her, he was able to leave there unharmed. Is this how he treats the man who saved him? Does he care at least a little about his status? Chin Nan agreed with her. He really owes her. Chin Young Master agreed to help her for free only once and no more. Then he wants to receive his share of the proceeds too. Princess Miao Miao agreed to these conditions and asked Chin Nan when they would go to the Long Hu Mountain Ridge. Chin Nan told her that they were leaving right now. At the peak of the inner realm in the first residence, Ouyang Jun and his younger brother Lung Feng were sitting at the table. They discussed their future plans on how to take revenge on Chin Nan. They laughed and heatedly discussed what Leng Feng had just been told that Chin Nan had left the mystic elder sect. He feels like Chin Nan can no longer be here. Ouyang Jun added that Chin Nan had truly given up. What a coward and timid child he is. Ouyang seriously still doesn't understand how a person like Chin Nan could gain the trust of a great and revered elder. Leng Feng heard that after Chin Nan surrendered, the great elder was furious and very disappointed in him. He was just pretending, don't take him seriously. This elder had quite high expectations for Chin Nan. Otherwise, why didn't he force him to tell the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion? Ouyang Jun asks Leng Feng to gather all the geniuses of the Jun Alliance and order them to monitor Chin Nan and then eliminate him. Leng Feng was angry that the revered elder went with him. This will definitely make the task of eliminating Chin Nan more difficult. Ouyang Jun laughed menacingly and said that it would be better to postpone this for a while because Chin Nan would still return back to the sect. After that shameful insult, 
Ouyang Jun would definitely not back down. Qin Nan must die. Qin Nan and Princess Miao Miao went to Lin Shui City. It was a small town located near a cliff. Local residents were engaged in trade and transported various goods. After traveling for three days, Qin Nan and the princess finally arrived in Lin Shui City. First of all, Qin Nan decided to go to his family, to his parents' house. There were a couple of guards standing outside their house, wondering who it could be and why they were standing there. These three days, Qin Nan was cultivating. And after taking three drops of ancient spiritual liquid, he was able to reach the sixth level of the Xiantian realm. Princess Miao Miao glanced at the thugs who were standing outside the residence and asked Qin Nan if this was his family. Quite sparse. Qin Nan and the princess were about to go inside, but the guards who stood at the entrance tried to stop them. The guard told them to stop and introduce themselves. This is the residence of the Qin family, so they are asked to leave immediately unless they have an invitation. But Qin Nan and the princess used some kind of technique to move inside with incredible speed. In their place, there was a bright flash that rushed upward, but the guards themselves could not even understand where they had gone. There were four people in the Qin family meeting room. One of them said that it would be best if the Qin family did not interfere with the incidents occurring in the Longhu mountain range. It attracted the attention of the four top sects of the Luohi kingdom. Unexpectedly for everyone, Qin Nan and the princess appeared inside the building with a roar and bright flashes. The man inside the residence was very surprised and still did not understand who had entered so boldly. When the dust settled and everything calmed down, Qin Nan greeted his father. It was Qin Nan's father. He was very happy to see him again. Since they haven't seen each other for a long time and a lot of interesting things have happened in their lives, the father approached his son and hugged him. You're a little asshole, he said. Well, finally, Qin Nan decided to visit his father. Father immediately noticed that Qin Nan's aura had become much stronger. He asked his son how far he was able to progress in cultivation. Qin Nan proudly answered him that hard training was able to bring him to the sixth level of the Xiantian kingdom. Father and the rest of the family were pleasantly surprised that Qin Nan had reached the sixth level of the Xiantian realm. This was excellent news. The father was proud of his son. His Nan has a great future. After that, the father glanced at Qin Nan's companion with whom he came. The father asked who it was. Qin Nan replied that this was the revered elder of the mystic elder sect, Princess Miao Miao. She came with him to carry out a mission in the Longhu mountain range. Father did not really like the words that Qin Nan was going to the Longhu mountain range. Under no circumstances should you go there, the father said. The entire mountain range is occupied by the four great families. If they see Qin Nan there, they will immediately kill her without question. Qin Nan asked who these four great families were. His father began to tell him that four great families had existed since the Luohe kingdom was founded. Although they are not comparable to the top four sects, every family has a martial emperor expert, so ordinary people should not mess with them for their own safety. Qin Nan asked, Experts from the martial emperor realm? Father and Uncle San need not worry. They will not dare to harm Qin Nan since he is a disciple of the mystic elder sect. His father corrected him. In normal times, this would have been the case, and the four great families would have been afraid to throw a word in his direction. However, things are different now. Something strange happened on the mountain ridge, because of which the roar of dragons and the roar of tigers could be heard there. Qin Nan thought about it. It seems that this is the phenomenon. The boy always considered it a rumor. He thinks that the four great families went to the ridge to take away the rare treasures that would appear there. But since he had such an opportunity, now Qin Nan wants to get to the Longhu mountain range even more. Princess Miao Miao also supports him in this decision. The princess laughed lightly. These four great families dared to occupy the entire mountain range? Not bad. They all don't have to worry. As long as Princess Miao Miao is here, they won't be afraid of them. Qin Nan also asked father and uncle San not to worry. Princess Miao Miao is an expert in the martial ancestor realm, so it would be better to listen to her. Nanya's father and uncle were very surprised by what they just heard. They would never have thought that such a small and fragile girl could be an expert of the martial ancestor realm. 
She stood in an elegant pose and folded her arms across her chest. The princess was very proud to be admired. Nanya's family still couldn't believe that she was an expert of the martial ancestor realm. The princess asked Chin Nan if he had finished his business and conversations here, since they needed to hurry to the Long Hu mountain range. Otherwise, they might simply not have time to pick up the treasures that quite a few people were hunting for. Chin Nan's father and Uncle San were still very surprised and could not utter a word. They were delighted to have such a girlfriend with Chin Nan. But before moving on, Chin Nan had a small request for the princess. Chin Nan hopes that the princess can create a protective barrier for the Chin family here. The phenomenon at Long Hu Mountain Range caused the four great families to become alarmed. If something happens, the Chin family will not have enough strength and resources to protect itself. Chin Nan also won't be able to stay here to protect her family all the time. So the best thing to do is to create a protective barrier. The princess winked at Chin Nan and said that she agreed to create a protective barrier for the Chin family. But Chin Nan will have to complete more tasks for the princess when they go to Long Hu Mountain Range. Chin Nan didn't like this, so a bulging vein appeared on his face. Chin Nan asked the princess if everything was not enough for her. He's already broke, and she still demands something from him. The princess is an expert of the martial ancestor realm, and a revered elder of the mystic elder sect. A minute of her time is comparable to millions of martial emperor pills. How dare Chin Nan ask her to create a protective barrier for free? She just asked to do a little more, but Chin Nan blatantly says that she is using him. She asked again if his reputation was important to him. After this, Chin Nan thought about it and decided to agree to her terms. Everyone went out into the courtyard and the princess began creating a barrier. Destroy the fictitious, strengthen the original, return to normal, the secrets of the ancestors, neither extreme nor fair. A protective dome began to form over the entire city. It was very large in size and could protect against various impacts. Nanya's father was very surprised at how strong the barrier the princess was able to create. The barrier is capable of destroying anyone at the peak of the martial emperor realm instantly. Princess Miao Miao landed after finishing creating a dome over the city where the Chin family lives. Chin Nan was very grateful to her for this. The princess cooled herself with a wave of her hand and asked if they could now go to the Long Hu mountain range. Chin Nan was very happy and replied that they would definitely move on now. Chin Nan walked up to his father and said that once he completed the task, he would come again to see him. His father told him that everything was fine and he shouldn't worry so much. The princess grabbed Chin Nan by the collar and immediately went to their next location. It was necessary to end this empty talk and start doing things. Uncle San told Chin Nan's father that he had a really good son. In his hands with his son, the Chin family can become even stronger than the four great families. The father replied that with the protection of the martial ancestor realm expert, Nanyu was in no danger. He is under serious protection, so everything will be fine. The father was truly proud of his son and who he had become. Chin Nan no longer lives in the same world as their family. His future is not limited by Lin Shui City or the Chin family. It is now in a much greater place. Father and Uncle San watched as Chin Nan and Princess Miao Miao set out on a mission. Chin Nan and Princess Miao Miao had already reached the Long Hu mountain range. The princess threw two cards to Chin Nan. You need to follow the directions on them and bring her the things that are marked on these cards. She will go first. Chin Nan caught the two cards and asked her where she was going. It was not a very good idea to separate, but nothing can be done. Princess Miao Miao, without answering this question, simply slipped away among the trees. Chin Nan didn't even have time to say anything else. Hearing about the phenomenon at the Long Hu mountain range, she instantly became nervous and looked like she wanted to get to it quickly. It seems that she decided to immediately take advantage of the rare opportunity in the Long Hu mountain range. Chin Nan got angry and stomped his foot on the ground. She decided not to take him with her. Chin Nan didn't like this very much because it would be better to stick together. No matter what, it's a rare opportunity. Right now, Chin Nan still won't be able to do anything about it. Young Master Chin Nan must concentrate on finding the right things from the map. Chin Nan looked at the map and followed its marks. First, we had to go 300 meters to the west. After this, take 300 steps south, and then three ancient trees will appear, 
which will serve as a guide. After three ancient trees, it was necessary to go 300 meters to the northwest. But why cross the river? Chinnan then walked out to some large stone. It looked like he had found this place. He decided to use the eyes of the god of war to make sure that there was an artifact there. This is a bottomless stone. According to legend, it is from it that Hutian class weapons are forged. With this stone, Chin Nan will be able to awaken the seven deadly sins, transforming them back into Hutian class weapons, revealing their true strength. Chin Nan was upset because he realized that there was no point in thinking about it anyway. He had already made a promise to the princess that he would complete this task for her. Chin Nan is going to remove the stone from there and then give it to the princess. Young Master Chin Nan took out his sword. It was already lit with flames. The boy was preparing to split a rock with one blow, inside of which there was a bottomless stone, so that it would be easier to get it out of there. The boy gathered all his strength and carried out a powerful attack on the rock. He was able to cut it, and the treasured bottomless stone flew out of the cliff. Chin Nan had already caught him deftly, but as it approached the boy's hand, the stone glowed even more intensely. It was a powerful blue light, and at the same moment, the stone jumped out of his hands. Chin Nan was very surprised that some stone was trying to escape from him. Chin Nan thought about it and remembered one legend. It seems that this is indeed true. The stone actually has some level of intelligence. Chin Nan decided to immediately use the eight mystic steps technique to try to keep up with the stone and take it away. He was quickly able to catch a pebble running away from him. The mission was accomplished, and it was necessary to go to the next point. Chin Nan put the stone in his bag and moved on. He was already leaving when suddenly behind him, another flash was heard. Along with the light, pieces of ice also scattered from that place. Chin Nan turned around to assess the level of threat. Out of nowhere, an ancient ice beetle jumped out from behind him. He truly took the boy by surprise. The ancient ice beetle immediately began to attack him. It was necessary to act decisively and defend against him. It seems that this beetle is the protector beast of the bottomless stone. Chin Nan took out his sword, sparks and flames bursting out of it. Some beast at the third level of the Giantian realm dared to attack young master Chin Nan. The boy decided to play with it. Chin Nan took a fighting stance, and with a sharp blow of his sword, struck the beetle right in the center of its head. Sparks flew off the sword and pieces of ice flew off the beetle. Chin Nan was very surprised by this. This ancient ice beetle had very strong defenses. He didn't have a single scratch from such a strong blow. Chin Nan decided to attack him again. The beetle drove him crazy and this beetle will not live to see tomorrow. Young Master Chin Nan continued to attack the ancient ice beetle and was still able to break through its defense. The beetle's wings fell off and it fell to the ground, dead. He has finally died, Chin Nan said. Apart from his strong defense and strong shell, he is a fairly light opponent that will not be able to cause any major damage. But don't ancient ice beetles usually live in groups? Why was there only one here? So Chin Nan was lucky that he was the only one here. If there were a hundred here, Chin Nan would run away faster than the wind. Chin Nan walked over and stroked the dead bug. This ancient ice beetle is also not bad. You shouldn't let the goodness go to waste. The young master decided to get something useful out of it. Maybe something would be useful to him. Suddenly, the sky above Chin Nan darkened. Hundreds, maybe thousands of ancient ice beetles began to fly out of the huge tree. All that could be heard everywhere was their buzzing. It was already very dangerous to continue to be there. Chin Nan heard their buzzing and saw a huge dark spot rushing towards him at great speed. He broke out in a cold sweat. He urgently needed to come up with some kind of plan. Chin Nan began to flee. The young master used the skill of the eight mystical steps to quickly break away from the flock of ancient ice beetles. He needed to speed up and hurry, but the beetles turned out to be quite fast. Chin Nan realized that he would not be able to escape, so he would have to let them taste his blade direction technique. Chin Nan took out his blades and was ready to fight them. The young master rushed at the ancient ice beetles and began to attack them. The young master jumped up and began performing slashing attacks. All that was left of the beetles was pieces of their chitin. Chin Nan was able to fight off the beetles that caught up with him. There were only two of them, and they were already lying dead. 
even though they had strong protection. But in the distance, many more ancient ice beetles were flying towards him. The beetles were getting closer and closer to the young master. They began to surround him. Chin Nan decided to use Thunder Sword Art against them. After such an attack, some of the beetles had their heads crushed. These ancient ice beetles have terrifying defenses. Even after a huge number of strikes using the direction of the blade, he was only able to kill eight. This has already pretty tired the boy. Things were bad and things couldn't go on like this. If Chin Nan doesn't stop now, he will end up dying from fatigue fighting these ancient ice beetles. He needs to find a way to defeat them in just one go. Chin Nan turned on his war god eyes to be able to understand his future plans. The young master saw something and used a hundred steps of the floating blade against it. He launched his blades upward into the middle of a cluster of ancient ice beetles. His sword stabbed into each of them and exploded in the sky. Chin Nan had to cover his head and face from the falling pieces of beetles. But the invasion of beetles still haunted the boy. He used the eight mystic steps technique again, but a beetle flew out right in front of him and broke through the young master's defense. After this blow, Chin Nan began to bleed from his mouth. These beetles were very smart. They sacrificed their own to save themselves. Chin Nan continued to run away from them, but another beetle followed him. Chin Nan had to stop to fight off the pursuit again. The defense of these beetles is simply insane, and they are also very smart about attacking in a huge swarm. Chin Nan really can't leave here alive. The young master continued to fight them off and noticed one important thing. It seems that these ancient ice beetles are afraid of fire. Maybe Chin Nan will be able to break through their defenses with fire-related skills. The young master continued to fight them off further. Chin Nan took the sword in both hands and swung at the ancient ice beetles in a jump. He screamed, Damn monsters, die! But suddenly, Chin Nan realized that he did not know a single firefighting skill. This was a problem for him, and with so many beetles, it was already necessary to do something. A huge crowd of beetles was moving closer and closer to Chin Nan. He swallowed his saliva. The young master was already starting to get nervous. For now, he needs to keep his distance from them. Chin Nan once again used the eight mystic steps technique to increase his distance from them. Their only weakness is fire. But what should Chin Nan do? Because he does not have enough strength to deal with them and does not have firefighting skills. The young master had a brilliant idea. He must create his own fighting skill. He had previously independently invented the art of the blade. Now that his cultivation, his soul, and his knowledge have greatly improved, wouldn't he be able to invent a firefighting skill? Chin Nan's powers have always been suited to blade art, so he must invent a fire skill for the blade. This was the only option for salvation. One day, Chin Nan came across a martial skill called Ice Strike. Such a blow causes a stream of icy wind. Using the attack of the wind element, Chin Nan will use it as a basis in creating a fire skill for the blade. Chin Nan's blade is the blade of his heart. The vast heavens and earth have no boundaries. The sun rises in the east, scorching the entire earth with fire, but cools down with the onset of night. The young master ran from the bugs and invented a new skill on the fly. Chin Nan turned around and saw that the beetles were already approaching very close to him. The young master turned around sharply and launched a series of rapid fire weapon attacks. Pieces of ice and shell flew off from the beetles. The boy was able to fight off most of the beetles, but one of them was still able to get close to him. He managed to bite him. Chin Nan was unable to repel his attack. Chin Nan's speed was not enough to hit all the targets that attacked him. These beetles acted in unison, as if they were one mind. From such a blow, Chin Nan lost his balance and simply fell on his back. It was very dangerous because there were more and more beetles. Young Master Chin Nan knelt down and began to prepare his strong attack. He folded his hands and began to read the text. The heavenly accumulating strike collects energy from the heavens of the earth and the ocean. It was already very dark around Chin Nan due to the fact that thousands of beetles were blocking the glow of the sun. The young master looked shabby. He had less and less strength. He collects energy from the mountains and everything that exists. More and more beetles flocked to Chin Nan. They were literally already clinging to him from all sides, so that only the boy's head was visible. But he did not stop and continued to try to implement a new fiery skill. 
There were already so many beetles that even the young master's head was not visible. It was a mountain of ancient ice beetles. And yet, Chin Nan succeeded. A very bright light began to break through from the center of this pile. Chin Nan burst into flames and screamed, His blade is the blade of his heart. If his blade ignites, then his heart also ignites. The young master finally understood. He created a fire blade skill. Everything around him was blazing in the flames of fire. However, this did not cause any damage to Chin Nan himself. It looks like the plan worked as expected. Next, he raised his blades of the seven deadly sins, and they also blazed with flames. Chin Nan directed them towards the rest of the ancient ice beetles, shouting for these herbs to die. There was a huge horde of ancient ice beetles above the young master's head. It was impossible to count them. Chin Nan pointed his blades upward and began to prepare a fire-accumulating blade art attack that would strike them all. The seven deadly sins flew and killed the ancient ice beetles while still in the air. They easily pierced their durable chitin. Well, now who will run away from whom? asked Chin Nan. All these bugs will be here forever. After such an incredible attack, the dead carcasses of the beetles, as well as their various parts, wings, legs, fell down, burning out to the end. It seemed that Chin Nan had succeeded. He was able to come up with a new skill and immediately implement it. After such a long and intense battle, Chin Nan decided to walk around the area and collect cannonballs from them. He counted only 40 cores from ancient ice beetles, although he killed more than 300. But the guy didn't get upset, because it didn't matter. One way or another, for 40 cores you can get approximately 400,000 Xiantian tablets, and these can be exchanged for 4,000 Martial Emperor tablets. This is a pretty good catch. The Longhu mountain range is filled with monsters, and danger awaits Chin Nan everywhere. Given his severe injuries, he will only be able to use part of his strength for now. If he went to look for the Flower of Nine Variations now and encountered a strong monster, most likely there would be nothing left of him. The young master was no longer in danger. Chin Nan sat down in a comfortable meditation position. He should first recover before he goes further in search of the Flower of Nine Variations. Recovery will not take long to arrive. Three hours had passed since Chin Nan began his recovery. He can now use 70% of his power, which is comparable to the fifth level of the Xiantian realm. This is more than enough to continue his journey along the Long Hu mountain range. Chin Nan got ready and had to move on. He used his skill to move quickly and reached a small cliff. He stopped and began to look at the map. It was impossible that there was anything wrong with the Meow Meow Princess card. The nine variation flower should be here but Chin Nan doesn't feel its aura at all. So far, the young master does not understand what is happening. Chin Nan looked around, thought, and considered his options. Perhaps someone has already taken it, and it would be necessary to be on the alert. He rolled up the map and hid it, because he heard some sounds coming from the treetops. There were a lot of leaves, so he couldn't see whether there was anyone there or not. To do this, the young master used the skill of the eyes of the god of war. He looked around, and didn't see anyone, perhaps it seemed. But it seems that with the help of the god's eyes, he was able to notice some special plant. Chin Nan decided to come closer, and realized that this was exactly the flower he was looking for. This flower has nine different variations. It will be difficult for ordinary people to recognize it. Even using hidden techniques to enhance vision, it is very difficult to reveal the secrets of its transformation. Chin Nan can't believe that he could really forget about it. This little flower almost managed to fool him. Young Master Chin Nan bent over it to collect it. But it seems that the flower of nine variations also wanted to live and tried to escape from it. But the boy won't let him do it. As Chin Nan bent down to pick the flower, he was spotted by an eagle flying high above him. At the same moment, the bird began to swoop down on the boy to attack him. Chin Nan was on guard, so he immediately felt something was wrong. He turned around to concentrate on a target that could threaten his safety and life. This bird of prey has already put out its paws with huge claws at him in order to grab the boy with them and take him to his nest. However, the young master was already ready for this, and at the last moment was able to jump to the side. It was a black-winged bird, 
an advanced martial beast. He had the sixth level of the Xiantian realm, and this bird was also the protector beast of the flower of nine variations, which is why it attacked Chin Nan when he tried to collect the flower. After Chin Nan dodged the diving attack, he noticed that the flower began to run further away from him. At this time, the bird was already entering a new circle of attack on the boy. Once again, Chin Nan managed to dodge the attack. Chin Nan got angry and took out his blade. It was already blazing with flames. Perhaps the fire will also cause additional damage to this beast. The young master used thunder sword art and performed an attack against the bird. After that, he used the hundred step floating sword technique to catch the flower. Chin Nan grabbed it tightly by the trunk and immediately tried to stuff it into the bag so that the plant would not be able to escape from it again. But at that moment, the bird again tried to attack the boy from above. Young master Chin Nan was already prepared for this, and nothing stopped him from repelling this attack. Chin Nan was the first to launch a thunder sword art attack. Then, with eight mystical steps, he quickly jumped towards the beast's head to finish it off. While Chin Nan was fighting the bird, someone was watching him. The young master should have already finished off the black-winged bird, but a volley of arrows flew towards them. Chin Nan had to interrupt his attack and retreat from the bird. This gave the beast a chance to fly very high up so that Chin Nan and no one else could reach it. This infuriated Chin Nan because 50,000 Giantian pills disappeared from his hands so easily. Chin Nan had not yet had time to lower his head while he was looking at where the bird had flown away when some group of people came out. Perhaps they will also pose a danger to him. A small group of seven hunters came out to him. They all had bows and arrows as weapons. The leader of their group came up and told Chin Nan to give them the flower of nine variations. They saw that the boy was able to take it for himself. Chin Nan smiled and asked, What if he doesn't want to do this, give away the flower? He honestly got it in a fight with a bird even if it flew away. It was they who prevented him from finishing the job. This answer would not suit the leader of the hunters, and he became very angry. If Chin Nan is not going to give him up, then they will obviously finish him off. It seems that without having time to rest from the two previous contractions, another one fell on his head. Without saying another word, the leader of the hunters immediately decided to punch Chin Nan. His fist was surrounded by flames and energy. It seemed like a pretty strong attack. Chin Nan was already prepared for this and simply remained calm. The young master carried out a counterattack and was the first to slap the unknown enemy. The latter immediately lost his balance and was already falling. He flew several meters back, rolling around like a thrown stone. His accomplices were very surprised by the force of such a blow. No one expected that they would encounter such a strong opponent. The boy who was hit by Chin Nan did not understand how strong he was and asked what level he was. Chin Nan slowly took out his seven deadly sins blade. Oh asked a rhetorical question to this guy decided to attack without even knowing what your opponent's cultivation level is? And he's funny! Chin Nan unsheathed his flaming blade in front of him. His offender immediately became afraid. He asked not to approach him. After all, he is the second young master of the Dong family, Dong Yuehao. Chin Nan laughed that this guy was from the Dong family, one of the four great families. It's clear where he gets so much courage from. However, why shouldn't Chin Nan care about this? Even if he were the emperor, Chin Nan would make him pay for daring to steal his things. Chin Nan put the blade to his head and asked who Dong Yuehao was. Chin Nan had never heard of such a thing. They only scared the black-winged bird away with their attack. For her, he could get 50,000 Giantian pills. The guys need to hurry up and pay him, otherwise they will see his sword cut off the head of their leader. The boy, on his knees, realized that Chin Nan was not from the four great families. The Long Hu mountain range was occupied by four families, and the rest were prohibited from entering. He says that Chin Nan entered here illegally, and this is regarded as an act of disrespect for the four great families. Chin Nan told him that these were just big words. The Long Hu mountain range is a natural area. On what basis did the four great families seize it? This guy is in no position to ask Chin Nan who he is right now. Chin Nan still held his blade at his opponent's neck. 
this guy could no longer find words to somehow get out of the situation. Therefore, Chin Nan said that there was no longer any need to waste time on empty talk. Either he pays, or let him prepare to die. Dong Yue Hao was already extremely scared. He asked Chin Nan how he dared to behave so brazenly towards a member of the Dong family, one of the four great families. Does Chin Nan want to die himself? The young master is already pretty tired of this. It seems that the boy still does not fully understand the situation in which he finds himself. He is not in a position to threaten Chin Nan. Chin Nan hit this kid with force. Rocks and small bolts of lightning were flying around. This boy's companions were already as scared as Dong Yue Hao himself. Some of them turned away. After that, Dong Yue Hao and his partners gave Chin Nan all their pills, just so that he would stop beating him. Each of them began to take out their bag and put everything in a pile in front of Chin Nan. Chin Nan looked at the mountain of pill bottles they laid out for him. This was quite a large number of tablets. Chin Nan didn't even expect that they would have so much with them. The guys picked up their brother-in-law and took him by the arm. Something is wrong. Although the four great families are the best in the Luohi kingdom, they are still far from being the top four sects. These disciples aren't even great geniuses. So why do they have so many pills? Chin Nan absorbed a bunch of vials and pills into a bottomless bag and asked where they got so much money from. He was told that to travel to the Longhu mountain range, the four great families had mobilized everyone, including a large number of martial emperor realm cultivators. Moreover, these are only remnants of what was allocated to them. Leftovers? It seems that the four great families are serious. If Chin Nan robbed all of their disciples, not only would he be able to pay off all his debts, he would also have some left over. Today he will spare them anyway. But next time, if they get in his way, they won't survive. Chin Nan collected all his things, turned around and continued to carry out the princess's tasks. As soon as Chin Nan walked away from them, their leader used some kind of rune. It sounds like it sounds a thousand miles away and is only used once. Using it, you can find out the location, information about a person, and this information will spread a mile in five seconds. Chin Nan did not expect such a setup because now everyone who heard this signal will run to this place. The young master had no choice but to turn around and kill the vile guys. During his attack, Chin Nan manages to notice that an unusually powerfully launched arrow is flying at him, he has to interrupt his attack in order to dodge the arrow and not fall under its trajectory. The arrow falls right in front of the place where the young master jumped. It pierced the ground and emitted quite strong radiation. Chin Nan looked up and saw many more such arrows flying at him. It was necessary to act decisively and make a decision in which direction to jump away from them. Young master Chin Nan jumped onto a tree branch, but even there several pairs of arrows stabbed in front of him. Someone else had been watching them all this time and chose the right moment to attack. Next, Chin Nan jumped onto a stone and arrows also flew to that place. He jumped even further and the arrows that flew at him destroyed the stone. It was a very powerful salvo. After Chin Nan landed, he saw another archer. It was Dong Shao Shu, the great genius of the Dong family. He had a ninth grade soul as well as a sixth level Xiantian realm. He was equipped with a very large number of arrows, and he was a serious opponent for the not yet restored Chin Nan. His younger brother Dong Yue Hao ran up to him. He was very glad that his older brother came to his aid. He complained to him about Chin Nan and said that if not for his intervention, then there would be no ashes left of them. Dong Shao Shu became angry with Yue Hao and ordered him to close his mouth. Dong Yue Hao is such a coward that someone like him is not worthy of being called his brother. He can't even defeat a stranger. From that day on, he tells him not to dare call him his brother. Otherwise, he will suffer rage, even though he is a member of his family. After this, Shao Shu turned to Chin Nan. He surprised him by being able to repel his attacks twice. It seems that he has already reached the sixth level of the Xiantian realm. He says that Chin Nan is not an ordinary person and asks him to tell him his name. And maybe he will let him live, given his status. Chin Nan did not say his name, but rather asked him if he thought too highly of himself. Chin Nan didn't care at all about who this guy from the Dong family was. 
Xiao Shu smiled and asked where so much courage came from. At such a young age, Qin Nan had already reached the sixth level of the Xiantian realm, so this young master really had a reason to behave this way. However, he should know that there is still a difference between them. In Xiao Shu's eyes, Qin Nan is an insect. If he wanted to kill him, Qin Nan would no longer be standing here. But since Qin Nan wants it so much, Xiao Shu will not hesitate, and he is going to continue the battle. But his actions were interrupted by another group that was nearby and came to the noise. The leader of this group was Shi Feng Xiao, the great genius of the Shi family. He had a ninth grade soul and also a sixth level Xiantian realm, just like Xiao Shu. Dong Xiao Shu asked him why he came here. But Shi Feng Xiao did not report to him in any way and said that since Xiao Shu himself came here, then why couldn't he? Shi Feng Xiao switched to Qin Nan. So are you the one who broke into the Longhu mountain range? Qin Nan behaved the same way as Feng Xiao and asked why he cared about this. It seems that another conflict between geniuses is brewing. This already angered Feng Xiao and he was furious at the impudence of the young master. His words were interrupted by the visit of another group. The girl from this group said that it was interesting. This was the first time she had met such a person who dared to speak in such a tone with Dong Xiao Shuyu and Shi Feng Xiao. This time, a group from the BEI family came to visit them. Their main name was Bei Zhou. She was also a great genius and had similar characteristics as Xiao Shu and Feng Xiao. Dong Xiao Shu and Shi Feng Xiao looked at Bei Ru in surprise. And she came too, really? This was clearly not part of their plans because they wanted to deal with this matter quickly. They had not yet had time to greet each other when another group of treasure hunters came out to them. It appears that many groups heard the signal. They were very interested in what provoked the geniuses from the four great families. Nan Chen came out to them. He is a great genius from the Nan family. He looked very confident and menacing. Everyone turned their attention only to him. Dong Xiao Shu didn't think that even Nan Chen would come. He was a little excited about this meeting. They all gathered in front of Qin Nan. He had previously said that Xiao Shu was not worthy of knowing his name. Now such people are standing in front of him. Will he still remain silent? After that, he laughed. But after him, Qin Nan himself laughed. He was very surprised that the geniuses of the four great families were so interested in his name. He will tell them his name only once. Let them prepare to listen. Qin Nan smiled and was confident. He shrugged his shoulders and said that he was the one and only Qin Nan. Then he pointed at himself with his thumb and repeated his name again. After they heard his name, some sweat ran down their cheeks. Some simply froze. They were very excited and nervous afterwards. Is he Qin Nan? The same Qin Nan from Lin Shui City? Qin Nan didn't think that his name was already so famous. As he already understood, they all know him. This is great and even easier, he said. The young master asked them who would drive him out of here. Bei Zhou used the precious communication pendant to mentally discuss the future plan with the rest of the geniuses of the great families. Qin Nan is a great genius of the mystic elder sect. He is too tough, Shi Feng Xiao asked. They can't just let him go. But what about the dignity of families? Dong Xiao Shu had heard that Qin Nan had previously surrendered on his own after challenging Lung Feng to a duel. This caused him to suffer greatly from his reputation. Xiao Shu also heard that two of his teachers were very disappointed with him. Qin Nan's reputation in the mystic elder sect has declined. Bei Zhou objected because Qin Nan is still a disciple of two martial ancestor realm experts. If they offend Qin Nan, they will offend them too. Won't those who support him try to get revenge if they do something to him? Xiao Shu asked why Miss Bei Zhou was so impatient. He didn't finish speaking. No matter what, they must let him go because of the mystic elder sect. And also because of the two martial ancestor realm experts standing behind him. They cannot afford to offend anyone, but they cannot let him go so easily. They had already encountered Qin Nan. If they let him go just like that, he will definitely not be happy. And if they don't let him go, they will anger the elders behind him. Since they can't do either, they want to compromise. They will use it and then let it go. Qin Nan has a lot of pride, so he won't say that they took advantage of him, otherwise he will fall in the eyes of society. Moreover, they would be able to compensate for the losses of their four great families. The rest of the great families asked Xiao Shu how they could take advantage of Qin Nan. 
Xiao Shu thinks that they all know that Qin Nanya has passed the fifth floor of the Battle Fortune Pavilion, hiding its secrets. The secrets of the Pavilion of Battle Luck are incredibly valuable. Even the four great sects and the trade alliance want to get their hands on them. If the four great families recognized them, they would rise in status incredibly, and they might even be able to surpass the four great sects and the trade alliance. The chance to become much stronger is right in front of them. It was necessary to decide on this matter. All the members from the four great families put their hands together and agreed to this plan. Bei Zhou asked, what if Chin Nanya refuses to tell the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion? Dong Shao Shu smiled evilly and said that if Chin Nan refused, they would kill him. The rest of the members were confused by this part of the plan. No one wanted to go through with it. Dong Shao Shu heard that Chin Nanya is merciless and always takes revenge on his enemies. They just insulted him. Do they think he'll get away with it? Bei Zhou agreed that Chin Nan would not leave it so easily. He will definitely strike back. In that case, they should get ahead of him. With the secrets of the Battle Fortune Pavilion, their families could become as strong as the Four Great Sects and the Trade Alliance. Will the Mystic Elder Sect and the Two Great Teachers be able to go against them? Bio Zhou was still nervous. She asked Xiao Shu what if the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion were useless to them. After all, no one knows what kind of knowledge could be stored there. In this case, they will sell these secrets to the other three sects and the trade union, while they themselves will seek refuge. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. If they miss it now, there will be no such opportunity in the future. Shi Feng Xiao was confident in Dong Xiao Shu's words and supported his plan. He wanted to take a risk and get the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion. Nan Chen said that stop chatting. If you have decided, then you need to get down to business. It's time to end this. Xiao Shu asked Bei Zhou what about her. She told him that if they all agreed, then she would also support this plan. In this case, if everyone agrees, then Xiao Shu will ask Qin Nan to tell him the secrets of the Battle Success Pavilion. And if he refuses to talk, then they will simply kill him together. They emerged from the mental discussion of plans where Qin Nan did not hear them, and Xiao Shu decided to play his role. He said that when they first collided, he did not know that it was Qin Nan. Xiao Shu hopes that he will forgive him. Moreover, they had just concluded that since the mountain range was occupied by the four great families, anyone who set foot on it must be killed. Qin Nan was already prepared for anything. His eyes began to glow with a slight yellow light. He smiled and asked if the four of them were going to kill him then. To which Xiao Shu replied that if it had been anyone else, they would have killed him without any problems. But here the enemy is more interesting. Therefore, they decided that if Chin Nan offered them anything, they would let him go. In this case, their families can take responsibility for everyone else. Chin Nan asked them what they wanted from him in that case. After all, he doesn't have any particularly large treasures. Dong Xiao Shu said that if he shared the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion, then that would be enough as a price. They don't need much. Chin Nan was excited by this request. The secrets of the Pavilion of Battle Luck, and this is what they call that they don't need much? Chin Nan laughed, saying that this was very interesting and funny. This reaction confused Dong Xiao Shu. He did not expect Chin Nan to answer him like that. Chin Nan's aura became terrifying. He was truly angry. Even the trade union could not get these secrets from him. And then some four great families dare to ask him for the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion. He tells them all one last time. Let them give up all their valuables and run away from here in fear. Otherwise, his punishment will overtake them too. Dong Xiao Shu tensed. He clearly did not expect such an answer from Qin Nan. The young master further told him that he had just humiliated his brother only because he was not strong enough, and he wanted to break all blood ties with him, which was not nice. It's not fair to join forces just to rob someone. If Qin Nan had been Xiao Shu's father, he would have thrown him into the grave pit long ago. Dong Xiao Shu did not listen to Qin Nan any longer and began to attack him. He decided to immediately use his strongest skill, Dragon Whistling Fist. Shi Feng Xiao shouted, This is a dragon fist! Because of his whistling, he may not even be able to take this blow. Qin Nan will take this blow painfully. Nan Chen added that Qin Nan is so unstoppable, he dared to offend their families. Death is his only repentance. 
Chin Nan also swung his fist to hit the impudent Shao Shu in the face. But Chin Nan's attack was more swift, sharp, and powerful. Shao Shu could not predict such a blow from the young master and was already falling back. Shi Feng Xiao became nervous. What is this? A secret kingdom? Shao Shu started bleeding from his mouth. He didn't expect that Chin Nan had reached the great stage of the secret realm. Yes, he is worthy of being called a great genius of the mystic elder sect with such abilities. Shao Shu went crazy after such a spit in the direction of his genius and greatness. But he said that this would not help Chin Nan, and he took out his battle spear. Very good and high-quality weapon made of durable steel. Shao Shu attacked Chin Nan with his spear. He quickly launched punches that Chin Nan easily dodged. This is a good spear, said the young master. It is considered the best among spiritual weapons due to its power. So many quick and sharp attacks had exhausted Dong Shao Shu, and he had already run out of strength. He leaned on his spear and breathed very deeply. Still, he had much more practice with a bow than with a spear. Shao Shu shouted to the others why they were standing and doing nothing. He had already realized that he could not cope with young master Qin Nan alone. Shi Feng Xiao now joins the battle along with Bei Zhou and Nan Cheng. Qin Nan was already attacked from four sides. He was surrounded, but not broken. It was urgent to come up with some kind of action plan to get out of this brawl alive. An aura of flames began to appear around Qin Nan. She was getting bigger and bigger. Qin Nan joked to them that they had a good attempt to kill him, but now everything will change. The flames coming out of Qin Nan were already reaching his rivals. Dong Shao Shu was already shouting to his brothers in arms to help him, otherwise he would simply be burned. Shi Feng Xiao created an energy shield in front of him to try to repel Qin Nan's attack. But Qin Nan could no longer be stopped. Shouting that they are no match for him, he cuts Shi Feng Xiao's energy shield, and it bursts into dozens of particles. He was slightly injured and fell, and Bei Zhou and Nan Chen immediately began to protect him. Young Master Qin Nan swept away everything that was near him with a sweeping attack. It was impossible to survive in such a meat grinder. His attack was very powerful and terrifying. Xiao Shu was already screaming in panic, but still decided to make one last push. Dong Xiao Shu quickly took out his bow and began firing volleys at Qin Nan. There was no difference in his skill with a bow. Qin Nan easily fought off Xiao Shu's shots, cutting the arrows that were flying straight at him with his sword. Everything seemed to be in slow motion. Then the young master Qin Nan closed the distance to Xiao Shu and was able to hit him with a cutting blow. Blood gushed from Xiao Shu's mouth. It looked like these were the last minutes of his life. Shi Feng Xiao comes to his aid again. He uses the rings of the sun and moon to bind Qin Nan and deprive him of the ability to attack or evade. He never expected that such a weapon would be used against him and fell into one of the rings. Shi Feng Xiao was happy that he managed to shackle Qin Nan. He shouted to his partners Nan Chen and Bei Zhou to use their powers and kill Qin Nan. Nan Chen unsheathed his sword. It was called the Sword, the Killer of Kings, an unusually beautiful and powerful weapon. It gave off a strong celestial aura. Nan was ready to rush into battle. Bei Zhou also decided to use her weapon. She had an underwater netherworld ball, no less formidable weapon than Nan Cheng's sword. Xiao Shu recovered and also joined the attack on Qin Nan. He shouted that today was the last day of Qin Nan's demise and was already preparing his spear for a piercing attack. All three of them attacked Qin Nan at once. It was a very complex combination attack that was difficult to dodge, moreover, being bound by the ring of the sun and moon. Qin Nan deftly jumped out of the ring of the sun and moon and jumped away from the place where all their blows were aimed. They can't lock it even with the rings of the sun and moon. Young Master Qin Nan jumped high above them. They were perplexed by his next step. But it looks like Qin Nan has prepared their demise. With a powerful fire attack, he hit three of his offenders at once. Shi Feng Xiao did not believe this nonsense. The sun and moon rings are the ultimate spiritual weapons, so powerful that even some of the celestial weapons are inferior to them. Even if it happened by accident, it would take Qin Nan an enormous amount of time to get out. Shi Feng Xiao didn't understand how Qin Nan got out of his rings so quickly. He decided to try again. It must just be a mistake. He commands the sun and moon rings to lock Qin Nan away. 
Chin Nan was prepared for this and said that Shi Feng Xiao could not use the same trick twice. The young master invites him not to waste these weapons just like that and give them to him. Chin Nan used some force to catch the ring with his hand. It literally fell into his hands. Young master Chin Nan amazed Shi Feng Xiao. Blood started gushing from his mouth, and he screamed that those damn sun and moon rings weren't working. But this did not kill him yet. It simply disarmed him. Having dealt with one of the opponents, Chin Nan switched to the others. They were already very afraid after they saw that he quickly dealt with their partner. With deft blows, Chin Nan attacks his opponents, and they drop their weapons. Chin Nan carried out such an attack so that he could knock out their weapons without killing them. The four great families are so rich that they gave such scum the highest quality spiritual weapons, but they were never able to use them properly. Dong Xiao Shu shouted for Chin Nan to hand over their spirit weapon quickly. They were like children who had their toy taken away, but giving away such weapons was no longer in Chin Nan's plans. He collected all their weapons into a bottomless bag, and he said that he would be very ashamed if he allowed people like them to own these weapons. He takes it all for himself. Shi Feng Xiao orders all his students to follow his instructions. It was necessary to kill Qin Nan and take back the rings of the sun and moon from him. They all immediately rushed towards Qin Nan according to their teacher's instructions. Bei Zhou also ordered her students to attack the young master Qin Nan and take her weapon, the ball of the underwater netherworld, from him. Nan Chen also ordered his disciples to take away his weapons. They all wanted to kill Qin Nan. They had almost reached Qin Nan, however. The boy stood motionless, as if several dozen people were not rushing towards him. The young master used the destructive lightning technique. His circular attack cut down all the disciples who were set against him by geniuses from great families. They were all amazed by Qin Nan. They fell and groaned in pain. For him, these were very easy opponents, even if there were many of them. Qin Nan asked, What's going on? Did they really not eat at all? Where is all their strength? Chin Nan prepared his swords and rushed to attack. So many people attack him alone. They can't even defeat one person. They're just a bunch of clueless idiots. The young master quickly runs up to one of the guys and pierces him with swords. The enemy had poor movement, so he died. Then he attacks a whole group of opponents. Their blows were too weak, so they also died. Chin Nan killed them one by one. How can they call themselves great families when with such strength they can only call themselves lower families? Chin Nan had no equal in this matchup. Nan Chen was already very angry. He shouted that Chin Nan was a freak, and now he would shake the crap out of him. He calls on the stones of the Forbidden City to kill Chin Nan. The boy had already prepared his fist to repel this attack. Chin Nan will destroy his soul with one blow. Chin Nan accumulates an incredible blow and punches the stone flying at him. This stone breaks into hundreds of smaller pieces. After this, Nan Chen also began to gushing blood from his mouth. He's already taken too much damage. Nan Chen fell to his knees in front of Chin Nan. He barely uttered words and said that Chin Nan had destroyed his soul. He's a bastard. How can he be so strong? Chin Nan came closer to him and simply replied that it was not Chin Nan who was strong, but they were very weak. After that, Bei Zhou approached Chin Nan. She said that the genius of the mystic elder sect is truly extraordinary. With four geniuses and so many people attacking him, Chin Nan was able to fight to the end this outstanding talent. Bei Zhou loves strong men, because only strong men are worthy to be her slaves. She decided not to use brute force, but to try to get into Chin Nan's head and subjugate him. Chin Nan answered her, do you want him to obey you? Don't you think too much of yourself? He was clearly not happy with this outcome of the fight. She agrees that Chin Nan is very strong. But if he were at the peak of his powers, she would not be at his level at all. But now Chin Nan had a difficult fight. He was very tired, and therefore he could not defeat Bei Zhou. She decided to use all her feminine forbidden techniques and asks young master Chin Nan to be a good boy and obey her. She asks to be her servant. She tried to touch Chin Nan's hair, but he swatted her hand away and said that she didn't deserve it. But she did not agree with this and said that it was not for him to decide whether she deserved it or not. Bei A. Zhou deliberately spoke to Chin Nan's ears so that she could get closer to him and prepare her insidious attack. Her soul appeared behind Bei Zhou. She looked like a princess of the dead. 
Her aura was terrifyingly powerful. It looks like the legend turned out to be true. The guys who were nearby were horrified that Bei Zhou had released her soul. They were frightened by what they saw. Shi Feng Xiao got angry. Bei Zhou used them. She took advantage of the rest of the great families to weaken Qin Nan. According to legend, Bei Zhou awakened a mysterious soul with terrifying abilities. This is a power that can only be used once in a lifetime. And with its help, you can capture people. If successful, she will be able to disorient the enemy and force him to obey her orders. She will be able to use such a person as she wants. He will be completely under her control. If she captured Qin Nan, then with his potential and talent, the Northern family would become the strongest of the great families. And she will become even the strongest in the world. The remaining seven could even become servants of the Bei family. They shouldn't let Bei Ru do what she wants. They have to stop her. Nan Chen asked, how can she be stopped now? Nan Chen was very badly injured by Qin Nan, and now he will not be able to take a single step. In this battle, he is almost useless. Dong Xiaoshu was also very wounded and could not fight any further. Bei Zhou continued to work her magic. The sky is above the ninth ascension, and the earth is below the ninth destruction. The heavens parted in four wide and clear directions, and the earth parted in four dark and demonic directions. Her soul said that she gave three of her lives for this awakening. This is a very big price to pay for this. When the demon magician appears, her magical powers will descend and the heavens will turn into an endless cycle of animals. Bei Zhou's soul attacked the already damaged and exhausted Dong Xiao Shu, Nan Chen, and Shi Feng Xiao. From the many explosions, they simply flew back and fell. Their disciples were weaker, so they lay on the ground and could not get up. The geniuses from the great sects received less damage, so they were still able to rise to their knees. They had many injuries and wounds after this strike. Bei Zhou turned to Qin Nan. She said that it was an honor for him to be enslaved by her soul. From now on, Qin Nan will be her slave. After this, Bei Zhou orders the demon mage from the underworld to take over Qin Nan's body. Her soul released huge chains that were supposed to capture the young master. Shi Feng Xiao had already risen to his feet. He was scared by Bei Zhou's terrifying soul. It was a soul attack. With her, Bei Zhou's potential is simply incredible. And with the power of Qin Nan, a great genius, the northern family will rise to the top. Shi Feng Xiao made a decision that they should not allow Bei Zhou to take possession of Qin Nan. They could not allow such a strengthening for her family because they themselves would then become servants for her. Nan Chen asked how they could stop her now. Bei Zhou's soul suppresses him, so now he can't even lift a finger. Dong Xiao Shu was also suppressed by Bie Rao's terrifying aura and could not really move. Shi Feng Xiao could not allow this. It would mean a failure in the development and formation of their great families. Bei Zhou laughed ominously. Qin Nan is now her servant. But Qin Nan himself did not think so. He ordered her to close her mouth and released his soul of the god of war. His soul broke the shackles of Bei Zhou's soul and thereby killed her soul. Xiao Shu and Feng Xiao were extremely surprised that Qin Nan managed to defeat Bei Zhou's soul only with the help of his qi. This is scary. They can't believe that Qin Nan is so strong. No wonder he doesn't care about all of them at all. Nan Chen added that Qin Nan was strong enough to wipe them all out with ease. It's just ridiculous that they would try to steal from such a powerful person. Bei Zhou now lay exhausted and bloody. She was furious that Qin Nan had destroyed her soul. But did she really think that Qin Nan would bow to her with such and such strength? She and her soul are just useless trash. Bei Zhou tried to rise to her knee and said her last phrase, you, and fell to the ground dead. Qin Nan angrily asked who else wanted to fight him. But everyone lowered their gaze and simply remained silent. They already had little chance of defeating Qin Nan, but now they are zero. It seems that none of them will dare to attack anymore. So now we can talk about whether we should let them all go or not. They all clearly deserved a fair punishment. Qin Nan approached the remaining survivors and ordered them all to give him all their pills, spirit weapons, and everything else one by one. And if anyone disobeys his instructions, he will kill them all without any exception. First, they all needed to be disarmed and the pills collected from them. 
Perhaps all these treasures would be enough to pay off all his debts. Chin Nan now raised his voice and told them to quickly hand over all their belongings and treasures. The boys were already shaking with fear of Chin Nan. They frantically began rummaging through their pockets to pay Chin Nan and receive a pardon from him. Shi Feng Xiao gritted his teeth and handed the treasure bag to Chin Nan. In front of the young master, there was already a small pile of bags. He couldn't believe that these losers from the four families were so rich. Chin Nan also remembered that Bei Zhou was lying behind him. He also needed to collect all the belongings and spiritual weapons that she had with her. Chin Nan walked up to her and bent down to collect her things. He went into her pockets and also found a pouch containing her funds. Damn, she is very rich, the young master thought. Chin Nan looked into the bag and saw something there. He was very interested in this because the subject was unusual. Inside the bag was a piece of an ancient map. It depicted mountains, perhaps the Longhu mountain range, and also a small lake near it. Chin Nan began to take a closer look at the map. It turned out to be not so simple. The map is made of demon skin, and it probably shows where valuable jewels are hidden. What a pity that this is only part of the map, so it is not possible to determine what is shown on it. There may be many such places on these lands. Chin Nan, a little upset, exhaled heavily. But the obvious fact is that the map is divided into exactly four parts. Since Chin Nan found one part from Bei Zhou, it means that the remaining parts will be from Dong Shao Shu, Shi Feng Xiao, and Nan Chen. Chin Nan turned to them and ordered them to hand over all the pieces of the map. Xiao Shu replied that they and their four families were to blame for this incident. They apologized to Chin Nan and gave all the pills and jewelry, but they can't give him the card. Chin Nan smiled. It seems he was right that the map was divided into four parts between them, and the remaining three parts are definitely with them. Young Master Chin Nan took out the sword. Its aura was terrifying and terrifying. Chin Nan told them that this was nonsense. Either they give up the card, or they will die. And this is fair, because they themselves wanted more than they could swallow by threatening Chin Nan with death. Shi Feng Xiao shouted at Chin Nan not to be arrogant. He did not yet understand that Chin Nan would not joke with them. Sweat seeped from Dong Shao Shu and Nan Cheng's faces. They were not so brave because they were wounded and soberly assessed their position. Chin Nan's sword glowed even more intensely, and electric circuits began to sound around it. If Feng Xiao refuses to give part of the map, then let him convey greetings from Chin Nan to the devil in hell. Feng Xiao clenched his teeth and could not say anything more in response. Dong Shao Shu asked Feng Xiao to calm down as Chin Nan was stronger than them. If they don't give up the card, they will definitely die. It's better not to make him so angry. They took out their map pieces and sweetly handed them to Chin Nan. Shao Shu understood that life is much more important than any treasure. Shi Feng Shu and Nan Chen did not want to give up their parts of the map, but they had to, because then Chin Nan would have killed them all if they had not listened to him. Chin Nan folded the pieces of the map and told them to get lost. He kept his word and released them alive. In joy, they rushed to run wherever their eyes looked. They were happy that they could at least save their lives. However, Chin Nan had something in mind and was waiting for the moment. They had not yet run that far before Chin Nan caught up with Dong Shao Shu and stopped him by placing his hand on his shoulder. Chin Nan told him to wait a little longer. From such a turn, Xiao Shu had sweat running down his face. He fearfully asked Chin Nan what else he needed from him. He already gave away all the treasures, as well as part of his map. Chin Nan's request was very simple. He asked Xiao Shu to apologize to his younger brother. Xiao Shu objected. Who was he to apologize to him? Chin Nan did not stand on ceremony with him and punched Xiao Shu in the face. With such force, the quiver of arrows flew away in the other direction from him. The young master once again told Xiao Shu to apologize to his younger brother. Xiao Shu was lying on the ground and holding his face. Before he could even begin to speak, Chin Nan gave him another powerful slap. The young master asked if he was going to ask for forgiveness from his younger brother. Chin Nan gave him dozens of slaps at great speed. Xiao Shu's face turned left and right from the blows. Chin Nan still continued to ask him if he would apologize. You just need to apologize to him quickly. Xiao Shu asked him not to hit him anymore. 
His face already looked like a potato. He asks for forgiveness. He is sorry, very sorry. He turned to his younger brother and said that he was wrong to treat him like that. He mocked him and abandoned him. He very much asks for his forgiveness. His younger brother forgave him. Chin Nan decided to ask another question. It concerned his family. The young master asked why their great family went to the mountain range. Xiao Shu replied that they came here for the secret treasure of the cross. The secret treasure of the cross was accidentally found by their ancestors of the four great families, who wrote in the prophecy that when the roar of dragons and tigers is heard, the secret treasure of the cross will appear. They also said that if they could find the secret treasure of the cross, their four great families would become as great as the four great sects. Chin Nan thought, no wonder these families caused such a commotion, since they even occupied the mountain. Chin Nan asked what this ancient map was and where the Dong family elders were now. Xiao Shu replied that the ancient map led to another cache on the Longhu mountain range. They were originally supposed to join his search, and the elders of their family should now be far away in the mountains, just in search of this treasure. Chin Nan understood everything today. Thanks to the ancient map and the pills they gave him, he will spare him. But if Xiao Shu provokes him again, he will beg for death, not even for mercy, since there will be none. Xiao Shu began to bow to young master Chin Nan in gratitude for sparing him. This gang was finished. Chin Nan hopes that they will never do anything stupid again. Chin Nan turned around and deftly jumped onto a branch to quickly get to the required place. Young master Chin Nan saw a certain cave and decided to go into it. He looked around. There was no one around and he couldn't hear anyone. It should be safe here. Chin Nan decided to check what belongings he managed to collect from the great families. He dumped an even larger pile of bags out of the bag. She even glowed from the fact that she had mixed so many valuable items into herself. Chin Nan even had to squint his eyes at first so that it would not seem so bright. These howling wind bags contain three family martial arts. Yes, they even have two spiritual artifacts. Although they are not as good as the rings of the sun and moon, they will do. Next, Chin Nan decided to count how many martial emperor pills he managed to collect. Nan Chen had a lot of these pills, I wonder why he needed them all. And Dong Xiao Shu had even more of them than Nan Chen. It is not at all clear why they took so much money for the campaign. Chin Nan fell on this entire mountain of treasures from above and hugged them. He suddenly became fabulously rich. But all these funds will still need to be paid back as debt repayment. The young master counted 360 martial emperor pills here. The health elixir costs 80,000 martial emperor pills. All martial techniques would cost at least 30,000 martial emperor pills. Along with the ring of the sun and the moon, the spear of the eastern dragon, the pearl of the Styx Sea, and the sword that kills kings. In total, Chin Nan would be able to obtain 520,000 martial emperor pills if he sold all of these things. Just a little more than enough to be able to pay off all his debts. And this is only from the disciples of the four great families. Surely the elders will have even more of everything. If Chin Nan takes away their property, it may be enough to raise the class of the war god soul again. But it's better not to do this. It was difficult for Chin Nan to deal with the disciples, and the elders will be even stronger. Among them, there are even experts from the realm of the martial emperor. If Chin Nan decides to rob them, he will simply die. It's better to forget about this idea for now. What's more important is the secret treasure on this ancient map. It's time to go looking for him. Chin Nan sat down and began to put the pieces of the map into one. It was necessary to first see where this secret place was, and then move there. After young master Chin Nan connected the card, extraordinary power was released from it. She illuminated the entire cave in which the boy was. The force was such that it broke through the entire ceiling of the cave and the entire mountain in which it was located. As soon as the flash subsided, an unusually strong and powerful beast appeared in front of Chin Nan. He looked like a tiger and a dragon at the same time. This beast easily pinned the boy's body to the floor. His paw was the full height of a young master, and his claws were the size of a boy's head. Unexpectedly for Chin Nan, the huge beast began to glow from within, pillars of light and lightning bursting through it. After that, it broke up into thousands of small particles. 
Thousands of small particles began to gather into something single. Right in front of Chin Nan, who was lying down, a real secret map was assembled from these particles. As soon as the young master tried to touch her, she immediately dissipated and disappeared. But Chin Nan managed to remember what was on the map and was able to find out the location of the treasure. He looked out of the cave and saw similar landscapes. It was hidden here. Chin Nan fell to his knees. His eyes hurt sharply and he grabbed his head. He thought that maybe there was something wrong with his soul. The young master stood up, only one eye glowing as if the vision of the god of war had turned on. Is it really this that affects him? Yes. The eyes of the god of war show him the way to the treasure. Something so important that even the eyes of the god of war turn towards him. This means this is definitely something special, some kind of rare treasure. Chin Nan needed to go there quickly. He jumped out of the cave and headed towards the place of the treasure, focusing on the eyes of the god of war. The group of the great four families were still recovering in the middle of the forest. Shi Feng Xiao was angry that Chin Nan had robbed them all. They can't forgive him that easily. Dong Xiao Shai also supported this opinion. Chin Nan will not get away with disfiguring his beautiful face. Nan Chen made fun of Xiao Xiai and said that he was already tired of his face. It was already ugly before. Thanks to Chin Nan, he at least became human. They had a conflict brewing within the group between families. Each of them showed the power of their aura. Xiao Xiai asked if he heard what Nan Chen said. Chen encouraged him to fight and decide who was stronger. Only Shi Feng Zhao could separate them. He pushed them to the sides and asked them to stop these stupid quarrels. It was necessary to immediately use the Thousand Mile Talisman and call upon the elders. When they arrive when called, they will definitely deal with Qin Nan. The other two also agreed to this plan. Xiao Xiai crushed the Thousand Mile Talisman and angrily said that Qin Nan was just a monster. He stole his pills and dared to humiliate him in front of everyone. He made him apologize to that scumbag little brother. But after they gave the cry to all the elders, for some reason they still did not appear. They had been gone for a long time. They must have had some problem. Shi Feng Xiao asked everyone not to panic. It is very possible that the elders of their great families have found the treasure of the cross, so they cannot come on time. Chen added that the secret treasure is their top priority. They think the elders will appear soon. Objects of different luminosities appeared in the sky. Everyone looked up at the sky. It seems that it is indeed the elders who have arrived. All the disciples of the great four families were happy that the elders had finally arrived and would now help them. When the elders landed and approached the students, their faces changed. The faces of the geniuses showed bewilderment and misunderstanding. Shi Feng Xiao asked what happened to them. Shortly before, when the elders had just begun to follow the right path in search of the treasure of the cross, a young girl who knew martial arts appeared out of nowhere. She defeated them, took everything they had, and promised to kill them if he ever set foot on the mountain again. This surprised the guys even more. Did she single-handedly defeat all the elders at once? They couldn't wrap their heads around how this could happen. Against such a martial ancestor realm expert, they had no chance of finding the ancient cross treasure. The elders can only hope for the treasure that is in the hands of the younger generation of the great four families. The elder had just decided to ask if this group had found the treasure and why they used the thousand-mile talisman to bring them here. The guys didn't know what to say now. When they went in search of the treasure, along the way they met Chin Nan, who stole everything they had, including the map, which they did not want to give him at first. The elders became worried that the map had been taken from them too. Who is Chin Nan? The same Chin Nan from the Lin Shui famine, from the Chin family. Yes, it's him, Shi Feng Xiao confirmed. The elder said that they must return the map. It is their only hope for the future. Without her, they will not be able to become truly great families. But how can I get it back? Chin Nan is the great genius of the mystic elder sect. He is under the protection of two experts from the martial ancestor realm. This angered the elders. Is it really true that there are such strong martial ancestor experts behind Chin Nan? And nothing can be done about it? While they were trying to figure out what to do next and how to return the ancient map, another group joined them. Their leader looked around to assess the degree of danger. It was B.E. Lexue, Bei Zhou's father, the patriarch of the northern family. 
He asked what happened to them and what they were all doing here. The elder approached the patriarch of the northern family and tried to start telling what exactly happened here. B.I. Lexue did not like this and began to get angry. Did they meet someone from the martial arts world? And she's now on her way to find the ancient treasure of the cross? And some Qin Nan could defeat all the members of the four families? He began to look around again in search of his daughter. The patriarch asked where his daughter was. They were all here, but his daughter was not there. They led him to the body of their daughter, who was laid on a small bed. The disciples informed him that she had been defeated by Qin Nan. Bei Lexue rushed to his daughter. He took her under the neck and lifted her a little. There was only shock on his face at what was happening. This infuriated him even more. He shouted that Chin Nan was a damn animal. It is an honor for him to be his daughter's servant. How dare he kill his daughter? Then he simply repeated one phrase that he would kill Chin Nan. Patriarch Bei Lexue took out the dragon mirror. It emitted a strong green glow. A dragon was imprisoned inside this mirror. It was as if he was swimming in it, wriggling. Bei Lexue released it. It was an unusually strong creature. Everyone's attention was focused only on this dragon. Shi Feng Xiao shouted that this was the treasure of the northern family, the dragon mirror. Treasure of the northern family, the Jiao dragon mirror is a celestial weapon that, when activated, can see all creatures within a radius of a thousand kilometers using the dragon's shadow. Qin Nan would not dare to escape from them. The elder addressed the patriarch of the northern family. Qin Nan is the great genius of the mystic elder sect. Moreover, there are two martial ancestor realm experts standing behind him. B.I. Liaxue said that he doesn't care about it. If anyone dares to hurt his daughter, if he is the son of a king, he will kill him. His anger knew no bounds. Patriarch Bei Liaxue asked if they were afraid of this Qin Nan. But for some reason, everyone looked down or began silently looking at each other. And what are they afraid of? Longhu Mountain Range is very far from the mystic elder sect. And Qin Nan was also occupied by their great families. Without the permission of the four great families, it will be impossible to spread the news. Now that the dragon and tiger treasures are revealed, the beasts will be furious and they will be able to kill Qin Nan. They could blame it on the mountain monsters, and his sect wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Now that the martial ancestor realm expert is hunting for the ancient cross treasure, their only hope is the map. Don't they all want her back? Dong Xiao Shu supported the patriarch, saying that he was right. We need to return the ancient map, and also return the weapon tablets he stole from them. Shi Feng Xiao said that it is not that important. Qin Nan hides the secret of the Battle Luck Pavilion. The Northern Elders know this, don't they? If their families can obtain the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion, the Elders and Patriarch Bei Liaxu did not yet know that Qin Nan kept the secret of the Battle Luck Pavilion. They immediately became interested in what exactly was stored in this information. The Elders want to catch Qin Nan and force him to tell the secrets of the Battle Luck Pavilion. You will first need to learn the secrets of the Pavilion of Battle Luck, and then kill Chin Nan. So if everyone agrees to this plan, then the Patriarch will use the Dragon Mirror to find Chin Nan. Patriarch Bei Liaxu began activating the Dragon Mirror. It glowed green and the dragon inside began to move. Lightning flashed across the dragon's body. Patriarch Bei Liaxu looked into the Dragon Mirror and saw Chin Nan moving through the forest. Young Master Qin Nan deftly and quickly moved along the slopes of the mountain range and followed where the eyes of the god of war led him. Qin Nan doesn't know why, but it seems to him that he is no longer so far from the place that was indicated on the ancient map. Qin Nan stopped and felt the dragon watching him. He didn't understand how this was possible because he had just been gone. The dragon began to chase Qin Nan in the middle of some green space. The young master kept trying to escape from him. This dragon is definitely too much for him, and he needs to leave this place as soon as possible. Chin Nan decisively accelerated and used all his strength to move away from the green dragon. Chin Nan stopped and realized that the green dragon was not chasing him. It seemed like there was something wrong with this dragon. Chin Nan decided to test it with the ability of the war god's eye. That way, he could see right through it. Chin Nan took a closer look, and it turned out to be just a shadow. It wasn't a real dragon. This dragon is just a shadow, and it looks so natural and realistic. His eyes look especially realistic. 
They were crystal green with indescribable depth. Is someone really using this dragon's shadow to spy on Qin Nan? The young master thought, such magic should be beyond the capabilities of ordinary people. Could it be one of the four great families watching him? Surely it's them, Qin Nan believes. After all, he robbed their brats. They won't just let him go. Thus, they use this dragon to hunt down Qin Nan and then surround him and kill him. If Qin Nan had known this earlier, he would have simply killed everyone there. The young master thinks that they already know about his location and are moving towards his soul. All the geniuses of the four great families are weaklings. But with the elders, you will have to work hard. Without Princess Miao Miao, he cannot cope with them. Once trapped, Qin Nan would not be able to escape alive. Young Master Qin Nan urgently needed to get out of sight. He ran even faster, trying to somehow hide from the green dragon. But it seems that Qin Nan will not be able to hide when he is being followed by this shadow. We need to find a way to avoid the dragon. What will Qin Nan do next? Unexpectedly, the young master's eyes shone. They literally began to blaze. A beam of very strong energy shot out of his eyes and hit the green dragon. Qin Nan attacked him from his eyes. The green shadow dragon's body began to explode. Young Master Qin Nan didn't even know that his eyes had such power. He didn't understand what happened. But in this way, he was able to drive away the dragon. It was very similar to the feeling of being guided by the eyes of the god of war. It seems that by connecting the card together, the beast that emerged from it gave Qin Nan special vision. In any case, he needs to see where the eyes of the god of war direct him next. Qin Nan did not waste a moment and quickly moved on. All this time, Patriarch Bei Liaxu and the elders continued to monitor Qin Nan. Their dragon mirror was still working properly. Bei Liaxu was already red from the anger and rage he felt towards Qin Nan. The patriarch shouted, It's him, let's go. He wants to tear him into pieces. He is a non-resident. Suddenly, the dragon mirror began to glow very brightly and eventually burst. Hundreds of sharp pieces flew into the faces of the elders and Patriarch Bei Liaxu. They almost managed to cover themselves from the flying fragments. The dragon mirror is broken, but how is this possible? The dragon mirror is a celestial weapon. Even an expert from the martial emperor realm would not be able to break it. Is there really someone stronger than the martial emperor realm with Qin Nan? The elder ordered all family members to return to the Luohe kingdom. From this day forward, let them never mention the secret treasure or provoke Qin Nan again. The elder of the southern family also told his people to leave. The western family supported this idea and are also retreating. This angered patriarch Bei Liaxu, who called them all a bunch of losers. He couldn't understand why they were so afraid of that fool Qin Nan. Just think, a damn expert of the martial emperor realm. B.I. Liaxu would never believe that an ordinary disciple of the mystic elder sect would be accompanied by people above the martial emperor realm. The dragon mirror is destroyed, since they can't find that freak Qin Nan now. Then they will try to destroy the Qin family. Qin Nan still continued his movement towards the treasure. The war god's eyes are becoming increasingly weaker. Has Qin Nan finally arrived? Everything around became dark. Qin Nan stopped and looked around. The whole space began to change and he stopped understanding what was happening. He needs to get out of there as soon as possible. Some dark entities slowly began to move towards Qin Nan. The young master shouted to them, How dare some ghost organize such a circus here? The young master began to be surrounded by these dark entities. There were a lot of them, and they were slowly reaching out to him. Qin Nan didn't like this and decided to use suppressive justice, holy flame. From such a bright glow emanating from the young master Qin Nan, the essences began to burn and disintegrate into small particles. After that, the others began to move away from the light that Qin Nan was emitting. The boy didn't understand what was happening. Why has the surrounding area changed so dramatically? And why are there so many ghosts here? Qin Nan looked into the distance and noticed the silhouette of some buildings that were located at the very top of the mountain. These were nine ancient palaces. They were located on the top of a flat mountain. Everything there was covered in fog and illuminated by small flashlights. Qin Nan used his god eyes to get a better look at these nine ancient palaces. What a majestic place this is. He is sure that that army of spirits is somehow connected with these buildings. 
The eyes of the war god simply forced Chin Nan to go there. Maybe these nine palaces are exactly the place where he was supposed to come. There was only one option left, to go and check it out for yourself. Chin Nan deftly began to jump on parts of the rock to rise higher. He stopped to the side of the city to examine it from a distance. These nine palaces are full of mysteries. How can they be connected with the eyes of the god of war? Chin Nan realized that one palace equals one level. The young master wondered, where did this come from? Is it possible that each of these palaces is a test? What is the connection between the nine palaces and the eyes of the god of war? Why did they bring Chin Nan here? Maybe this is the ancient treasure of the cross? Chin Nan still didn't understand anything. He decided to approach them. In any case, he would have to go there and find out everything for himself. Young Master Chin Nan walked to the main entrance. In front of the entrance, there were very large columns on either side. And in the center in front of the entrance, there was some kind of sign. Chin Nan looked around and decided that there was clearly something wrong with this place. He was very interested in what could be inside these buildings. The boy's eyes lit up even brighter. It didn't matter how strange it was, because his war god eyes would be able to see everything. Approaching the steps that lead to the main entrance, Chin Nan stopped. He suspected something, so he was in no hurry to get ahead of himself. He continued to be on guard. There was an explosion right in front of the main entrance. It was clear that someone was thrown out by the blast wave, and also in the dust, a silhouette was visible. It resembled a princess. Chin Nan ran over there, and it was indeed Princess Miao Miao. She looked shabby. The young master asked her where she came from and what she was doing. Princess Miao Miao has not yet reacted to Chin Nan. She was fighting with someone inside this building. She walked up to the entrance, pointed her finger at him, and said that she herself was Princess Miao Miao, and they dare to disobey her. If it weren't for her current cultivation, she would have killed them all long ago. The princess looked angry and angry. She stopped, turned around, and noticed that Chin Nan had approached her. She was at a loss as to why Chin Nan came here. Chin Nan noticed that Princess Miao Miao's dress was a little shabby and torn in some places. Looks like there's some pretty strong competition there. She asked the boy what he was staring at. The princess asked him a question about what he was doing here. Chin Nan was about to ask her the same thing. What is she doing here? How did she know about the nine palaces? The boy doesn't think she's ever been to the Long Hu mountain range. The princess folded her arms across her chest and asked why she had to tell him where she was. Is this how he treats his teacher? Next, she asked him where the stone and flower of nine transformations were, which she ordered him to find. Chin Nan bowed to her and said that he had found them. He held them in his hand, but was in no hurry to give them away. Princess Miao Miao rushed to take these items from him. But Chin Nan pushed her away with his hand and asked her to wait. He has only one request for her. He asked her to tell everything she knew. Otherwise, he will not give her either the stone or the flower of nine transformations. These were his conditions for further joint interaction. Princess Miao Miao did not answer and simply slapped her slave, Chin Nan. The boy screamed in pain. This girl is quite strong. She took him by the clothes and pulled him towards her. The princess was unhappy and angry with him because he dared to blackmail her. Yes, he was a daredevil and dared to do something like that. Princess Miao Miao began to slap the young master one after another, saying that he thinks too much of himself. She wanted to teach him a lesson so that Chin Nan would no longer allow such nonsense. Chin Nan could no longer tolerate her bullying, fell to his knees and handed her a flower. He asked her to stop. He was just joking. Chin Nan wants to repay her for putting up a protective barrier for his family. He did not want to blackmail her in any way. Chin Nan moved even closer to her and held out the flower of nine transformations on both hands. She said that this is how servants should treat princesses. After that, she decided to intimidate him again to consolidate the result. She showed her terrifying aura and said not to dare to joke with the princess like that again. Otherwise, she will kill him. Chin Nan understood everything. She is too cruel. We need to get out of here quickly. He just wants to ignore her. Or she will kill him sooner or later for some minor mistake. Young Master Chin Nan was about to leave when the princess ordered him to stop. Chin Nan turned his eyes in her direction. He was afraid to turn his whole body. There was already sweat on his forehead from stress. 
He decided to turn around and awkwardly asked her if she wanted anything else from him. The boy's hands were already shaking from fear of her. She laughed and began to approach him. This frightened Chin Nan even more. He won't come here again and asked her not to hit him. Chin Nan rolled up his sleeves and showed how badly he was injured. If she hits him again, he will die from it. And if he dies, then there will be no one left to look for the secret medicine for her. Therefore, he asks her to be more prudent. The princess decided to continue shouting at him. What makes him think that the princess is going to scurry around to beat him? She's not the type of person who bullies the weak. Chin Nan tried to object to her and said that this was all wrong. She was holding his clothes again, but her face had already changed from angry to scared of what she was doing. She asked him to repeat it again. Chin Nan said that what he really meant was that she was very beautiful and as beautiful as the moon. She smiled and said that it was better this way. Chin Nan breathed a sigh of relief. It was very close. He was almost beaten by this crazy woman again, but he turned out to be smarter and simply said nice words to her. Chin Nan decided to ask her again what she wanted from him and why she stopped him. Still, he was interested in finding out. Princess Miao Miao folded her arms and said that she just wanted to offer him a great opportunity. Chin Nan wondered what kind of opportunity she wanted to offer him. The princess said that they could go together to search for this cross, and both she and Chin Nan would benefit from it. Chin Nan looked at her in surprise and asked again, You and me? How can she make such a terrible comparison? The princess was embarrassed again. She asked the boy if he still doesn't like something. She thinks 10% is enough for him. If he had not been her servant, he would not have received even 1%. Chin Nan said that he was just some cultivator, and she was one of the strongest warriors in these lands. How can they work together in this? Chin Nan turned around and walked away. He said that he was not interested in her 10%, so let him go and find some other assistant for such a small payment. The princess caught up with him and asked if Chin Nan would agree to 20% of all the proceeds they were going to receive. But Chin Nan was silent. Then she offered him 30%. This is her highest rate. But Chin Nan continued to ignore her. With sadness on her face, she offered him 40% of the spoils, and this is her last word. If the young master still doesn't agree, then just let him forget about it. Young master Chin Nan paused and thus, without a word, managed to increase his rate from 10% to a full 40%. A wide smile spread across his face. He was satisfied with this distribution. Princess Miao Miao asked Chin Nan if he was bullying her for an hour. She clearly didn't want to share such a large percentage with her servant. Chin Nan replied that the princess was wrong. He didn't do anything bad to her. He was just trying to get a little more benefit for himself. This made the princess very angry. She again lit up with a strong aura and pointed her finger at the boy. It seemed that now she would simply destroy him with one glance. Chin Nan bowed to her and said that time is money. We need to talk about business. He asked why she needed him. And what is in this treasure of the cross? The princess explained her plan of action and what would be required of Chin Nan. She wants him to use his war god's soul eyes to see through the obstacle. She doesn't know too much about the ancient treasure of the cross. From what they know, there are three treasures in each underground hall, one of which is a very valuable item. After speaking about treasures, Chin Nan's eyes lit up with joy. He asked what the princess was waiting for. She needed to go there. They had already decided not to waste a second and began to quickly go inside to get all these treasures. The thirst for these treasures added incentive to them. Chin Nan and Princess Miao Miao went inside the main hall of the palace. In the middle of the room, they saw an unusually strong sword that emitted a powerful aura. Chin Nan recognized this artifact. It was an ancient natural sword. Precious battle swords are divided into spiritual, noble, natural, royal, and imperial. Among the entire Luohi kingdom, you can count the owners of natural weapons on one hand. The princess looked questioningly at Chin Nan and asked why he reacted like that. It's just a natural weapon, nothing special. She decides to move on and not pay attention to this sword. Chin Nan decided to use his war god's soul eyes and noticed that this formation was so strong. If activated, it would explode with such force that even a martial ancestor realm expert would be severely injured. 
Does Princess Miao Miao want to work with Chin Nan on her own initiative? The princess asked what Chin Nan was thinking about. Is he confident that he can destroy the formation? The young master came closer to the sword. He said it was no problem. It just needed a little time and everything would be ready. A whole hour passed. Chin Nan kept trying to destroy the formation protecting this beautiful sword. And in the end, he managed to destroy it. The formation broke up and opened access to the sword. The princess immediately said that she would get this weapon. She ordered Chin Nan to stop. He couldn't take it. From the entire palace, only two treasures can be taken. If Chin Nan takes it, they will not be able to take the main treasure. Chin Nan immediately stopped. He asked her if she was lying to him. The princess answered him that she was an expert in the martial ancestor realm. Why would she lie about some weapon? Chin Nan folded his arms and laughed lightly. He said that then, as long as they were here, he would trust her. Chin Nan began to move away from the pedestal on which the sword was, and he himself jumped straight into the young master's hand. Chin Nan still doesn't understand what happened. The sword glowed and began to burn. Immediately after this, the ceiling began to collapse. And then everything collapsed there. Chin Nan and the princess managed to jump out of there at the last moment. Chin Nan watched as the nine-story pagoda of the underworld began to collapse. Bricks and blocks fell away from it. Chin Nan looked at all this with his mouth open and did not understand what happened. How could Chin Nan be such an easy bait? It was just some Xiantian realm weapon. Now it's all over. There's no way they can find the nine symbolic words. Why did she even decide to work with Chin Nan? because he infuriates her so much. Chin Nan was at a loss. He had nothing to do with it, because the sword itself flew into his hands. Besides, if she hadn't initially hidden anything from him when they went to the palace, maybe all this wouldn't have happened. The princess was very angry with the boy. Chin Nan might still be useful, so she decided to forget it. Now, they immediately go to the nine-story pagoda of the underground world. Nine-story underground pagoda? How does this relate to the nine palaces? Chin Nan asked. And the princess must tell him about nine symbolic words. Otherwise, Chin Nan will break their cooperation. The nine symbolic words include Lin, Bin, Dao, Zi, Ji, Zhen, Li, Zai, Qian. Each word is a separate imperial weapon. When united, they will form a formation of nine symbolic words, forming a weapon comparable in strength to the weapon of a combat commander. And that's not all. Only by combining all nine words you can get the tenth word. Weapons of the kingdom of a combat commander. The boy asked her. Are these nine symbolic word weapons so powerful? If nine symbolic words are so terrifying, then what will the tenth word be? The princess told him that according to legend, whoever finds the tenth word will be endowed with heavenly power. That's why everyone wanted to find them. The princess originally had a chance to find the nine words, but Chin Nan ruined everything. Now everything is ruined, and they missed the tenth word, Jean. This angered the princess. Chin Nan thought about the word, Jean, as if he saw it through all spaces. The young master felt something inside himself and did not understand what was happening. Is the mutation of the eyes of his war god soul connected with the tenth word? The princess walked up to Chin Nan and asked what happened. Chin Nan told her that he was fine. Let him continue to move forward. The princess decided to tell that the secret treasure of the cross has existed for a long time and moves throughout the continent, opening every year. Although they may not be able to find the nine symbolic words, there are still plenty of treasures in the nine-story underworld pagoda. The princess suggested continuing to work together and then dividing everything in half. Chin Nan agreed to this condition. He will find out what the connection is between the changes in his soul of the god of war and the tenth word. It was dangerous in the tower. If he went alone, he would die. By teaming up with Princess Miao Miao, not only will he be safe, but he will also be able to find a lot of treasures, so he has nothing to lose. The princess went inside and called Chin Nan. They went inside where more animals were waiting for them. They were all very dangerous and strong. They attacked Chin Nan, but the princess managed to protect him. 
She put her blades forward and launched them with incredible force at all the monsters at once. Princess Meow Meow used the absolute seven sword formation. She hovered over the animals and destroyed them in every possible way. Pieces of their flesh flew in different directions. She dealt fatal blows to the animals that guarded these treasures. They were nothing to her, but Chin Nan would find it very difficult to fight them. The princess asked, Is this all their power? Even the demon king was easier to kill than cutting vegetables. Chin Nan decided not to contradict her. Otherwise, she might just snap her fingers and the monsters would not envy him. While the princess was finishing off the last monsters, Chin Nan noticed something that fell out of one of the beasts. It looked like it was a demonic core, which meant it could be considered a treasure. Chin Nan decided to pick it up. It really turned out to be a demonic core. There are so many cores here, and they all belong to the demon kings. The young master began to shout that they had become rich. Chin Nan ran around and collected the cores of the demon kings, saying that they were all his. Meanwhile, Princess Miao Miao was still dealing with the remaining demons. It took time to deal with them all. There were more and more monsters. One of them was able to get to the princess and injure her a little. She shouted at Chin Nan to stop this idiot from running around collecting demon cores while she was risking her life for him. He needed to run away from there. She told Chin Nan to sneak to the second floor. These monsters can no longer be stopped. The princess will no longer be able to detain them here. But Chin Nan was obsessed with collecting rewards. This angered Princess Meow Meow, and she kicked him in the ass to make him stop packing his belongings and go to the second floor. Chin Nan flew over the ominous jaws of these monsters. Their fangs were very sharp and their jaws powerful. No one would want to be in his place now. Seven colored demonic glow, Princess Meow Meow shouted and charged a ball of lightning to attack the monsters. She blew up all the monsters and shouted that they should all burn in hell. Demonic cannonballs began to fall everywhere. Chin Nan lost his mind and began to collect them all, saying that they were all his. He had not seen such a large number of awards for a long time. Chin Nan and Princess Miao Miao moved to the second floor of the pagoda. The young master sat near a pile of demonic cores and counted how many of them he managed to get. He counted 360 demon cores. Chin Nan shouted that he was fabulously rich. The princess made fun of him that he was ready to sacrifice his life for a few hundred cores. He was so petty. As a servant of a princess, he acted unworthily. While Chin Nan was enjoying all the good he had acquired, the princess noticed something. She instantly jumped towards the huge crystal and tried to destroy it. Chin Nan stood up and asked the princess what happened. He was excited. There were a lot of such crystals there. The young master approached it. It was a stone of intuition. Chin Nan hugged the intuition stone and even began to salivate at the sight of such a reward. There must be about a thousand small stones there. Chin Nan can transform them into martial emperor pills. It's all his. Princess Miao Miao looked shabby after she tried to destroy the intuition stone. These diamonds are protected by an ancient castle, she told Chin Nan. It's hard to break even for her, but the young master may try to destroy it too. Chin Nan decided to accept the challenge. He used his war god eyes to get a better look at the defense. It was quite an interesting print. The princess asked him if he could break it. Chin Nan smiled and said that he could. But it is very difficult to destroy, so he wants half of the stones that will appear after its destruction. The princess got angry. This is already robbery. She tells him that the agreement was to divide everything received 40 by 60. Chin Nan turned around and said, Okay. He hopes that she still has practices in mind that can deal with such a seal. The princess asked him to stop. She agrees to divide everything in half as long as Chin Nan doesn't leave. The young master asked her if she was sure of this. Will she retract her words in the future? The princess gave her word and asked to go and destroy this seal. Chin Nan asked her not to worry. He is sure that she will still refuse because she is a strong expert. He was no match for her if she decided not to share with him so he offered to sign the contract first. Princess Meow Meow slapped the boy in the face instead of signing the contract. She was already on the verge and threatened him that if he continued to whine like that, she would beat him to death. Chin Nan came to his senses and said that there was no need to be so cruel if she just didn't want to sign the contract. 
Young Master Qin Nan approached the Intuition Stone and began to try to destroy its protective seal. This turned out to be not as easy as he thought and may take some time. It had already been two hours since Qin Nan started his attempts, but the protective seal still remained on the Stone of Intuition. It was necessary to come up with a special way to dispel it. Qin Nan put in even more effort and succeeded. He began to run and break all the protective seals on these intuition stones. He ran around and collected all these crystals. Wealth clearly overshadows the young master's mind. There were so many crystals that Qin Nan couldn't even collect them all. This must have been heaven for Qin Nan. He ran among these crystals as if through a field of daisies. Princess Miao Miao slapped the boy's face again. They agreed to divide everything in half. How dare he take them all? Chin Nan must give the intuition stones to her. They belong to her. He doesn't want his death. Chin Nan asked Princess Miao Miao who bit her like that. He sees that she's gone crazy. Chin Nan didn't want to stress her out. He just put everything together for her. The princess took the bag of intuition stones from him and told him to stop talking such nonsense. There are still ten stones missing here, and she wants to have all of them. Is the princess really that greedy? Should a martial ancestor realm expert really be so worried about a measly ten stones? Chin Nan invites her to go to the third floor. There are even more treasures there. This angered the princess, and she asked Chin Nan not to forget that he was still her servant. If he had dared to deceive her, she would have dealt with him as soon as they left the pagoda. Then they moved to the third floor of the pagoda. There was a huge golden dragon and a phoenix. Chin Nan looked at everything around him. It was beautiful. It looked like it was some kind of security seal. Chin Nan saw a lot of spiritual weapons that were there. He knelt down in front of them and began to bow. He wanted to get each of them. Such a number of powerful weapons could not always be seen even at auction. The princess told Chin Nan that this was the forbidden seal of the dragon and phoenix swords. Such a powerful protective seal that even she could not break it. She asked Chin Nan if he could destroy it. Chin Nan happily said that he could do it. But this time he wants 60% of the spoils for himself. This infuriated the princess again. She hit him very hard. In her opinion, Chin Nan had completely lost his fear. Does he think she's that stupid? Chin Nan held his face and tried to explain himself to her. She misunderstood him. He really didn't intend to take advantage of the situation this time. As he said, the forbidden seal of the dragon and phoenix is very difficult to break. Even she can't do it. He invites her to imagine how much it would cost him to destroy this sadness. Is it wrong for him to ask for a little more pay for his work? The princess did not appreciate the boy's speech and only became angrier. Stop talking nonsense, she told him. Fifty-fifty, otherwise they diverge here and now. Chin Nan agreed to divide everything in half. This time he will give in to her because she has been kind to him. But just this time, if it happens again, he will ask for sixty percent. Young Master Qin Nan and Princess Miao Miao approached the spiritual weapon, which was protected by the dragon and phoenix seal. It looked incredibly beautiful and powerful. Qin Nan examined this seal and understood what needed to be done. He asked the princess to hit this seal and take three steps to the left. The princess did not understand Qin Nan's plan and asked if he had gone crazy. This is the strongest point of the forbidden seal. Does Chin Nan want her to die by attacking the seal? Chin Nan asked to do as he says. The young master was confident in what he was saying. The princess decided to trust the boy. But if they don't get through the seal, he'll get hit in the face from her again. She shot a beam of energy in the form of a laser from her finger. Once the beam hit the protective seal, there was no retaliatory strike. It was strange. The princess did not even suspect that this could happen. Printing turned out to be not so simple. Chin Nan asked her to step to the right and punch down into the air, after which she had to take ten steps to the left and punch into the air again. Next, you had to step back and hit that purple flash. Great, Chin Nan said. The princess still did not understand what the result was after this. They stood in front of the spiritual weapon. The princess got angry and pointed her finger at them. Is Chin Nan joking with her? The seal is intact. Where did it break? Chin Nan silently rushed towards the weapon. Princess Miao Miao asked what he was planning to do and ordered him to stand where he was standing. Chin Nan ran to the place where the protective seal should theoretically be. 
He could walk there calmly and not take damage. The princess asked how this was possible. Although Chin Nan's cultivation is weaker than that of the princess, his eye power and understanding of seals are much stronger. It turns out that they were unable to destroy the seal because it had already been broken before. It was all an illusion. The princess decided to lie to him and said that she knew that it was not a real seal. She was only testing Chin Nan's eyesight. He doesn't need to teach her. Unexpectedly, the seal began to work. It hit the princess, and it even ruined her clothes. Chin Nan forgot to tell her, although this seal is not real, if you take a wrong step, you can still cause the seal to react. The princess asked him in surprise why he had not told her this before. Chin Nan smiled and said that she already knew everything herself. It was not for him to teach her. They collected the weapons that were under the protective seal on the third floor. The princess was still angry with Chin Nan. When they leave here, she wants to teach him a lesson for all this. She couldn't wait to do it anymore. Then they went to the next fourth floor. The princess suspected something was wrong on this floor. Very strange. It shouldn't be like this. Chin Nan did not notice anything and did not know what was happening. They saw nothing interesting here and decided to immediately go to the fifth floor. They went to the fifth floor. There was a small room there, also empty. It looked quite strange. Princess Meow Meow moved on. She had to continue to rise. Then they went to the sixth floor, and it also turned out to be empty. It just looked different. Nothing had changed on the seventh floor. It was also empty. There was nothing left to do but climb further. They reached the eighth floor. Chin Nan said that this is simply impossible. All these next floors were empty. The first three floors were filled to the brim with monsters, seals, and treasures. The next floors simply cannot be empty. He asked Princess Miao Miao if she was hiding anything else from him. She was surprised that Chin Nan decided to ask about this. Does she really think that she can hide something from him? The princess doesn't know anything about it either. Chin Nan decided not to escalate the situation and asked how he could doubt the princess. It was a misunderstanding. Maybe the treasure is just on the ninth floor. We need to go to the ninth floor and check it out. Princess Miao Miao immediately switched gears, became kinder, and agreed to move to the ninth floor. Chin Nan exhaled because he didn't get hit in the face by her again. They continued through the ancient towers and reached the ninth floor. In the middle of it stood a large stone, and on it lay three boxes. Chin Nan decided to immediately examine them with the sight of the god of war. The ninth floor is different from the rest. There are three wooden boxes there. The boxes are made of ordinary wood, but they emanate a mysterious magical aura that covered the entire sky. Even his war god eyes cannot look into them. These three boxes must be treasures. Chin Nan wanted to take them all for himself. He really needed them. The princess approached the pedestal and said that this wooden box would be hers, and he can take the rest for himself. This time, it was a pretty fair decision from her. Unexpectedly for them, an explosion occurred near Princess Miao Miao. She managed to close herself in order to somehow protect herself from it. Chin Nan and the princess were already on alert. Some malicious voice told them how impatient they were and asked what they had forgotten here. In the distance of the room, they saw very large and red eyes. After this, the creature came out to them. It was a huge, horned, ancient dragon. The creature asked them, Do you care about this sect? This is the monster of the martial ancestor realm. They can force a battle on Princess Miao Miao. Damn, how could there be such a strong monster on the ninth floor? Will the princess be strong enough to defeat him? It was a demonic tiger dragon. The princess wondered who it was but it turned out to be this creature. Instead of staying at the Long Hu mountain range, he decided to come to the nine-story pagoda to his own death. The demonic tiger dragon replied that their sect was the most noble. And she still dares to call him a monster? He will kill Princess Miao Miao for such rude words. Princess Miao Miao has also prepared for battle. She wants to see who will kill who. The demonic dragon tiger immediately rushed to attack her. Its advantage was unpredictability. The princess attacked him first and hit him straight in the mouth. This caused him to stand on his two hind legs and growl in pain. She seriously injured him. The princess continued to attack the demonic dragon tiger with all her strength and means. Chin Nan watched this from the side. The battle between these two is simply terrifying. Chin Nan decided to go back down to the eighth floor and come back when they were finished. 
Otherwise, their energy and terrifying aura will simply kill him. Chin Nan used his war god vision to assess the situation. With their help, the young master looked across the floor at the battle between the princess and the demonic dragon tiger. Nine words of truth have arrived. Fights are prohibited. Princess Miao Miao and the demonic tiger dragon immediately stopped. Some silhouettes were descending towards them from above. They had an extremely strong aura. The entire tower glowed from within. Princess Miao Miao and the demonic tiger dragon said their name in one voice. Nine words of truth. Are these nine scary silhouettes the spirits of the nine words? Why then can the eyes of the war god Chin Nan see them? Could the eyes of the god of war have something to do with their arrival? Chin Nan tried to understand what his ability to see them was. Princess Miao Miao spoke to the nine words of truth. She was glad they came. They have something that the princess needs, and if they give it to her, then within the next hundred years, she promises to understand them to the level of emperors. The demonic dragon tiger said that this was just ridiculous. Does the princess really think she can get the nine words by offering some kind of emperor title in exchange? She must not know the history of the nine words of truth. Rumor has it that the nine words hide a huge secret, but he doesn't know what it is. However, their level had long surpassed that of the emperor. If this were not the case, how would they attract this sect? The princess rushed at the demonic dragon tiger. Yes, he wanted to die. But the dragon tiger answered her that she simply could not kill him. Princess Miao Miao tried to attack him again. She began to burn his face with her strong energy attack. The nine words of truth ordered them to stop and fired beams at them. They exist only to pick up a successor who will continue to take them into account. If one of them turns out to be the successor, then he will be allowed to take everything here, including the nine words of truth. The princess asked them how they could become one. Nine words of truth replied that the three of them would only have to take one test, but only one of them would be able to pass it. The loser will have to say goodbye to his life. They asked if they were willing to take part in such a test. The demonic dragon tiger laughed. He further said that they must participate. The blood of dragon and tiger flows in his veins. They cannot surpass him. Princess Miao Miao asked, what other test? She will receive nine words of truth now. It cannot be otherwise. Princess Miao Miao flew above them, and an energy shield consisting of lightning formed around her. Her body gave off a strong aura. Chin Nan and the demonic tiger dragon were very surprised and watched to see what Princess Miao Miao would do next. She used her power to try to take away the nine words of truth. Princess Miao Miao shouted that she had to get them now. Nine words of truth told her that she was already crippled. Having spent her strength, she hurts herself even more. Even Ichimuko ointment will not be able to restore her to her former strength. Princess Miao Miao tried to break through the defense of the nine words of truth, but all that energy bounced back to her and damaged her. Everything was not as simple as it first seemed. After this, Princess Miao Miao began to squirt blood from her mouth and screamed in incredible pain. The nine words of truth thwarted her attack, and she was unable to achieve her goal. The princess went down to the floor and wiped the blood from her lip. For the sake of the nine words of truth, no matter what, she will get them, and the ointment of a fleeting life. Princess Miao Miao licked the blood from her finger and said that she would give everything for this. After that, she coughed up blood again and screamed. She asked why the nine words of truth were blocking her powers. The princess will defeat them here and now. The princess screamed in pain again. She shared that she didn't think the nine words of truth would be so powerful. So she will take part in the test. She will receive an ointment of fast-growing strength. The nine words of truth turned Chin Nan's attention. They asked, is this the same Chin Nan who called them here? They, the nine words of truth, traveled throughout the continent in search of a successor. A thousand years ago, God himself came down to them. Since then, they have been following his instructions and looking for a successor. At the same time, they had to look for the ancient treasure of the cross. Not long ago, the gods sensed Chin Nan's arrival and told them to reveal the secret of the cross treasure to bring him here. Now that Chin Nan is here, they have completed their mission and are returning it to its rightful owner. 
They had one of the boxes that gave off a very strong aura. The nine words of truth conveyed it to young master Chin Nan. Chin Nan first examined her with the eyes of the god of war. He wondered who these nine words of truth were. And why did they start looking for Chin Nan a thousand years ago? According to legend, Chin Nan cannot open it yet. After Chin Nan takes part in the test, only then will he be allowed to open the box and find out what kind of divine treasure it is. Young Master Chin Nan held this incredibly rare and powerful box in his hands. He agreed to take part in this trial. The Nine Words of Truth once again asked Princess Miao Miao and the demonic tiger dragon if they wanted to take part in the test. Only one of them can become the winner. The remaining two will die immediately. The princess agreed to take part. The demonic tiger dragon also agreed. Although it sounds like the test was specially created for Chin Nan, Dragon Tiger, as a disciple of the Heavenly Dragon and Thunder Tiger sect, cannot help but take part. Chin Nan folded his hands on his chest and laughed at the demonic Dragon Tiger. He was simply crazy, Chin Nan thought. Now that they have all decided that they will take part, the test can begin. Therefore, the spirits of the Nine Words of Truth began to prepare a test for them. The demonic Tiger Dragon bit the stone and could not do anything with it. To destroy this stone, you need to have the power of the Martial Emperor Realm. But his cultivation was sealed. How is this even possible? Is Nine Words of Truth mocking him? The demonic tiger dragon and Princess Miao Miao looked up. Some strong energy rushed into the sky. It looks like Chin Nan opened this box. A few minutes passed later. They began to feel frightening pressure from that side. What kind of divine creature was this? The princess also had no idea what it was. Mentally, Princess Miao Miao was for Chin Nan. She didn't want anything bad to happen to him and was very worried about him deep in her soul. After he opened the box, a fiery eye appeared in the sky. Chin Nan looked at him with his head up. Some lightning and energy appeared above Chin Nan. After that, Chin Nan began to fall and the terrifying pressure disappeared. Chin Nan was lying on his back. The demonic tiger dragon believed that Chin Nan had fainted but did not understand what had just happened to him. Chin Nan's body began to emit a lot of electromagnetic pulses. He was like an electric coil. It was so powerful that it knocked back the demonic dragon tiger. Looks like this guy was taken. Princess Miao Miao ran up to him. He has no chance of survival. Chin Nan will die. She fell to her knees and sobbed. She didn't know what to do. The princess shouted that Chin Nan could not die. He still owes her 100,000 martial emperor pills. How can he die? She mocked him so often. Didn't he say that he would take revenge for this? Come on, stand up and take revenge on me. She didn't want to believe that Chin Nan was dying. The princess said that she was his master and did not allow him to die. Where did he get the courage to die? Let's come back to life. The demonic tiger dragon said that Chin Nan is not dead yet. He is not breathing because his life energy was taken away. But his soul is still here. However, he doesn't have long to die, and once his soul is taken, he can never be brought back. Princess Miao Miao asked the demonic dragon tiger if there was any way to bring Chin Nan back to life. She was very worried about her servant, even though he was not always obedient. Tiger Dragon replied that Chin Nan's vitality had been stolen. Therefore, the only way to get it back is to use the elixir. If she reversed his yin and yang, she could bring him back to life. The princess crossed her fingers and sat down to recite some text. Every flower, every blade of grass, every stone, every grain of sand in this world, she is the creator. And on behalf of the creator, she calls out to heaven and earth. Princess Miao Miao begged and prayed for the power of immortality, the power of her origin to come to her. With her nine lives, she will be able to bring Chin Nan back to life. She sat over the young master Chin Nan and tried to resort to powers that could revive him. The demonic tiger dragon said she was crazy. She destroys her own powers. Even considering that she is a nine-life ginseng, she will be very traumatized after this, hardly able to recover. Moreover, his strength is so enormous that even if it brings Chin Nan back to life, it cannot be restored. The princess asked the dragon tiger what he knew about Chin Nan. If he had not made a blood pact with her that restored her soul, she would have been dead long ago. Therefore, she is in his debt. 
It is Chin Nan who gave her a second life. She will not let him die. After her attempt to revive Chin Nan, she fell and screamed in pain. There was less and less time left. Chin Nan had to be saved. The demonic dragon tiger couldn't believe that this guy was so dear to her. He will help Chin Nan, and whether he survives or not, Chin Nan will decide for himself. The demonic tiger dragon tried to bring the young master back to life. He created a sphere inside himself and released it outside. Lightning was heard around this object. It was an extraordinary artifact. The demonic tiger dragon infused this artifact into Chin Nan's body. This was the only way to bring him back to life. They hoped that it would not be in vain. After the demonic tiger dragon brought life into Chin Nan, it made him very weak. Helping girls costs a lot. Princess Miao Miao leaned towards Chin Nan. She put her hand to his cheek and said that he simply had to come back and wake up. Chin Nan lay in oblivion. There he saw his soul of the god of war. He asked the left eye of the god of war why he took his body. The god of war doesn't need friends. Friends only slow Chin Nan down. If he is willing to sacrifice this ignorant friendship, then he will not take it away. Chin Nan got angry and said that the soul of the god of war is just something. Ever since Chin Nan received it, they had been trampled upon by the best. But Chin Nan will not go against himself for the sake of strength. He is not the god of war. He is Chin Nan. Chin Nan knows that the god of war is mysterious and powerful. But if he tries to take something of him, then a mortal like Chin Nan simply will not give up without a fight. Chin Nan is not afraid to fight the war god's soul. The young master encourages him to see which of the two of them will win. The god of war just laughed at Chin Nan's words. This is courage, not bad, he said. After this, the war god's soul used a power that made Chin Nan unable to even move. His power was unshakable. He lifted Chin Nan up and began emitting power and energy towards him. After this, the soul of the god of war congratulated Chin Nan for passing the test. Now, from now on, he is his master. Master, how about taking it with you to the nine sacred places? Chin Nan looked at his hands and still didn't understand anything. The demonic tiger dragon and princess Miao Miao were still around Chin Nan. She held Chin Nan's head and looked at him. She was very upset that everything turned out this way. The demonic tiger dragon asked her if she was really in love with him. She responded by asking him why the hell he was talking about love. Has he gone crazy? Chin Nan turned to the left eye of the god of war. What a pity that he could only open this ability due to the low level of his cultivation. We'll have to wait until Chin Nan becomes more experienced to open up even more opportunities. The ancient demonic tiger dragon asked for no more fighting. He lay there and was exhausted. The boy held the princess in his arms. Young Master Chin Nan said to have the nine words of truth come out to him immediately. Nine words of truth congratulated Chin Nan. He had earned the trust of a divine creature. He passed the test and can now leave this place. But Chin Nan, before leaving, would like to ask them for something. He needed the balm of life. Since Chin Nan is the successor of a divine creation, he can ask and the nine words of truth cannot refuse him. However, based on their rules, only by becoming their successor can he take something from them. Why not now great Chin Nan become the successor of the nine words of truth, and then he can ask them for anything he wants. They will unconditionally follow his instructions. Nine words of truth asked young master Chin Nan if he agreed to become their successor. This was a very important and responsible moment for Chin Nan. The demonic tiger dragon was surprised. The nine words of truth want to make Chin Nan their master. Who is this guy that they are asking him to become their successor? Chin Nan asked them what the conditions would be for becoming their successor. They told him that all he had to do was help them complete one task, which Chin Nan could easily handle. Chin Nan decided that this was a waste of time. There is no benefit for him to become their successor and he does not need their help either. He just wants them to give him the balm of life. The demonic tiger dragon asked Chin Nan if he knew what it meant to be the successor of the nine words of truth. Otherwise, Chin Nan is pretending to be someone unknown. Has he gone completely crazy? Let him not show off and agree. Chin Nan asked him what difference it made to him whether he agreed or not. He further asked the nine words of truth, besides becoming their successor, what other ways are there to obtain the balm of life? 
The demonic tiger dragon appealed to the spirits of the nine words of truth. Chin Nan refused, which means that they can choose his tiger dragon to become their successor instead. He will complete their task. The spirits of the nine words of truth listened to the demonic tiger dragon and said that he was not strong enough and his skills were not enough to complete the task. The demonic dragon tiger became angry and electricity began to run through his body. He was angry that they underestimated his great clan. Now let them not expect mercy from him. He is preparing to attack them. The demonic tiger dragon tried to attack them, but was thrown back by a strong energy wave, like a small kitten. He fell on his back and lost consciousness. His strength was not at all enough to cause the nine words of truth to reach the spirits. The spirits of the nine words of truth said that they could give Chin Nan the balm of life, but they hope that Chin Nan will repay them in kind. The Nine Words of Truth Spirits are afraid that they will need his help in the future. Young Master Chin Nan smiled and said that he would be happy to help them in the future, since if they gave him the balm of life, he would be in their debt. The spirit of the nine words of truth handed over the box with the balm of life. It was extremely necessary for the young master. They also hope that young master Chin Nan will keep his word and help them in the future. Chin Nan caught the box and asked them not to worry. He keeps his word and has never let people down. Since he accepted this offer, he will definitely help them as best he can in the future. At this point, they completed their task and went about their business further. Young Master Chin Nan still continued to hold Princess Miao Miao in his arms. He was indebted to her, so he wanted to get the balm of life. When the spirits of the Nine Words of Truth left, their terrifying aura also left with them. The demonic tiger dragon laughed as he was happy about this. He was glad to have his strength back again. Electrical discharges began to run through his body again. He looked angrily at Chin Nan and remembered that the young master had said something about him. While the tiger dragon's powers were sealed, Chin Nan dared to attack it with his eye magic. He gives him a chance to atone by giving him all the treasures, otherwise he will kill him. Chin Nan's left eye began to glow. He asked the demonic tiger dragon if he really wanted to do this to him because Chin Nan's rage would be boundless. The demonic tiger dragon gave up and let Chin Nan go for now. But the boy must remember that the demonic dragon tiger spent a thousand of his years to save him, so he owes him. And when he needs Chin Nan, he will have to drag his ass to him. Suddenly, Princess Miao Miao came to her senses and stood up from Chin Nan's arms. Now that the demonic tiger dragon knew the princess's secrets, she couldn't let him go so easily. She might spare his life if he became her servant's personal mount. For a demonic tiger dragon, this was outrageous. He is from the line of heavenly dragons and thunder tigers, and she wants Chin Nan to be his rider? The princess replied that he was the princess's servant. It was an honor for him to be his mount. The demonic dragon tiger refused this. There was no way he would do this. Princess Miao Miao asked him, Is it so difficult? She invites him to come with them. Chin Nan said that the demonic tiger dragon does not have to carry him, and he still knows too much about them so they can't just let him go. He's not so bad, why don't they all go together? The demonic tiger dragon agreed. This is the word of a person. He was tired of being here all the time anyway. He thinks he could use a breath of fresh air. Chin Nanya handed the princess her things. She thanked Chin Nan and said that it was great that the princess's servant had done such a good job. Chin Nan now no longer owes her 100,000 martial emperor pills. After that, Princess Miao Miao got ready and went to make the balm. She said they would meet later. As soon as she left, Chin Nan released his war god's soul. The vision of wind and lightning, his soul is incredibly strong. Now that Chin Nan is in the middle of the martial emperor realm, his body's chi has taken on a liquid form. Only by invoking the sorrow of kings and spiritualizing your body can you become a real king of martial arts. Without cultivation, Chin Nan cannot afford to damage his body. But someday the time will come and Chin Nan will find a secret technique to be able to strengthen his body. And divine consciousness. Chin Nan discovered the divine sense in himself when he reached the middle of the martial emperor realm. This is his chance. If Chin Nan improves his understanding enough, it will also be very powerful. In addition, 
Qin Nan has 577,000 martial emperor pills, as well as five spirit weapons and 360 demon cores and 540 crystals. This was a lot, considering that Qin Nan was broke before. Moreover, Princess Miao Miao forgave him the debt of 100,000 martial emperor pills. If you convert all these items into pills, Qin Nan will be able to upgrade his soul to the ninth mystical class. One day, Princess Miao Miao had already returned Qin Nan's power. This means that she will definitely return to the mystic elder sect to improve her soul. Now it's better to spend time training. Young Master Qin Nan sat in the lotus position in the middle of the clearing and began to train. Eight days had already passed since the recent events. Meanwhile, a noble eagle flew over Qin Nan while he was training. Qin Nan noticed the eagle. He finished his training, stood up, and put out his hand for him to sit on it. Eagle brought him some kind of note. Qin Nan opened it to read it. It said that Patriarch B.I. Lexue had dispatched many cultivators from the B.E.I. family to deal with Qin Nan's family. But thanks to the protective dome left by Princess Miao Miao, everyone in the family knows how to defeat them. They tell Qin Nan not to worry. Qin Nan squeezed the piece of paper in anger. However, with the lesson he taught to the northern family, he thinks that the four great families will not dare to attack the Qin family again, and his family won't be in danger anytime soon. Qin Nanya was planning to return to the Qin family to resolve some problems, but it seems that this is no longer necessary. When Princess Miao Miao creates the bomb, she will return to the mystic elder sect. While Qin Nan was training, Princess Miao Miao had already returned back to the young master. She told him that she had done everything and the bomb was ready. Now we could move on. Five days have passed since Princess Miao Miao and the demonic tiger dragon returned to Qin Nan, and together they went on in search of adventure. Meanwhile, the demonic tiger dragon transformed into a human form. The demonic tiger dragon's name was Yao Chen. He asked Qin Nan why there was only one martial ancestor realm practitioner in this sect. Yao Chen doesn't think he wants to stay here. Princess Miao Miao told Qin Nan that he no longer needed this mystic elder sect. In any case, Qin Nan is already in the middle of the martial emperor realm, a genius with a seventh grade mystical soul. She says that Qin Nan can go to the two great sacred lands of the lower continent and become one of the saints. The young master thought about these words of the princess. The Changlan continent is divided into upper and lower territories. And on the lower two sacred lands are the highest forces in which the strongest geniuses from the entire lower territory of the continent gather. After Qin Nan spends his savings and improves his soul, he wants to meet with Elder Shan to discuss the matter. But first of all, Qin Nan will go to exchange treasures for pills. While Qin Nanya and his friends were walking on their way, the following was happening at the top of the Inner Realm Mountain. Uyang Jun turned to Qin Shui. He told her that he had now become the king of martial arts. According to their agreement, she must marry him. Uyang Jun walked closer to her and touched her chin. He noticed that she was restless and asked if she was still thinking about Qin Nan. He assures her that if she had not begged him then, he would not have let Qin Nan go, even if he admitted defeat. Xiao Qing Shui felt as if she was out of place. She was worried and said she knew about it. She will marry Wu Yang Jun, so don't worry about it. He moved even closer to her, but this only scared her. Wu Yang Jun said that in just a couple of days, the mystic elder sect would become his family's domain. Everything will not be the same as it was before. He wants Qin Shui to prepare better for this. This moment was interrupted by Li Hong, who entered Wu Yang Jun's residence and brought them bad, or perhaps good, news. She announced that Qin Nan had returned to the mystic elder sect. Wu Yang Jun clenched his fist and smiled sarcastically. It's good that Qin Nan is back. This time he will definitely learn his life lesson. Meanwhile, Qin Nan visited the Hall of Fame at the mystic elders sect. He had to return there to exchange the treasures he had obtained all this time for pills. When Qin Nan went inside and came closer, the manager asked him if he had completed his task. He probably confused him with someone else and asked what some inner disciple could give him. His time is too precious for him to waste it on trifles. Qin Nan asked him in response why he judges a person by his walk. 
Chinanya, on the contrary, was afraid that the manager would not have enough pills for him. The manager laughed. It was funny. Let Chin Nan not think that the manager will not be able to pay for some demonic core. Young Master Chin Nan took out a bag of treasures and poured out a whole mountain of demonic cores. It would be better if the manager took a closer look now. This pile of demonic cores was even taller than the manager. She shone and illuminated everything around with her brightness. The manager couldn't even believe his eyes at first. Chin Nan climbed up the mountain of demonic cores and took one in his hands. The young master believed that there were exactly 360 high-level demonic cores here. What does the manager think about this? The manager was already confused about who Chin Nan could be. Even the martial ancestor would not be able to kill so many demonic monsters. It seems that the manager was wrong, judging by Chin Nan's appearance. The manager got a little nervous and rubbed the back of his head. He hopes that Chin Nan will forgive him if he could have offended him in any way. Chin Nan crossed his arms and laughed. He asked what the manager told him, and he also asked whether the demonic cores were enough for him. The manager was already rubbing his hands and pulling the demonic cores towards himself. He said, that's enough. The manager pays 20,000 martial emperor pills for these cores. Will Chin Nan be satisfied with this? Chin Nan happily replied that he agreed to the deal. The young master didn't expect that these demon cores would pay off so well. We'll need to get more of these in the future. The manager took the demonic cores and took the emperor's bag of pills with him. He introduced himself, his name was Ma Qian, and handed the boy a bag. And he asked how he could contact the young master. The young master replied that his name was Qin Nan. They were both happy with this deal, and Qin Nan said that he had other things to do and had to leave. Qin Nan was already leaving to go about his business, and the manager looked after him and wondered how he knew the name Qin Nan so well. He might have heard of this guy before. Suddenly, the manager realized who Chin Nan was. He was angry that Chin Nan would return to the mystic elder sect right now. At the peak of the inner realm, in the first residence, Li Hong communicated with U Yang Jun. She told him that according to the tip, Chin Nan went to the Hall of Fame and made a deal with Ma Qian, one of the inner disciples. He is now in such a bad situation that he can only earn pills by completing tasks. Also, Qin Nan goes to the rare treasure hall to sell his treasures. U Yang Jun was provoked by these words. Qin Nan needs pills so badly. U Yang will make sure Qin Nan doesn't get what he wants. He asked Li Hong to send someone to take care of Qin Nan and take all his things. Lady Qin Shui heard this and shouted U Yang Jun's name. Didn't he promise that he wouldn't touch Qin Nan again? This angered Qin Shui because her future husband did not keep his word. He immediately asked Xiao Qing Shui not to dare speak to him in such a tone. Ouyang won't kill him. He'll just rob him. It's the least he can do with it. Don't let her start heating things up. Xiao Qing Shui cried in grief and fell to her knees. She was very sad about how her future husband was treating her now. She was offended that for the sake of Qin Nan's safety, she asked him to abandon the duel. Qin Nan came to the second floor of the treasury. There were quite a lot of people there all of them trading in their treasures for pills or buying them themselves. Everyone could choose something to their liking. The boy approached the elder and said that he wanted to sell some battle treasures and spiritual weapons. The elder asked the young master to tell him his name and level. Chin Nan was very surprised by this. He wondered, since when did such a rule appear in the mystic elder sect? He is Chin Nan, the third residence of the inner realm. So are you Chin Nan? the elder asked. He asked to show him the martial treasures and spiritual weapons that Chin Nan was going to trade. He was wondering what the boy brought him. Chin Nan laid out all his spiritual weapons and artifacts on the table in front of him. This was not a small fortune. Even the elder had not always seen someone bring so much treasure at once. The students noticed what Chin Nan posted and were very surprised. They were surprised that Chin Nan had eight spiritual weapons and four martial artifacts. The student was sure that it was all from some grandiose place. The elder took a look at the ring of the sun and moon. After that, Chin Nan said, although these artifacts are good, they are not comparable to those stored in the mystic elder sect. And these spiritual weapons have been hidden for a very long time, so they are no longer as strong as before. But since Chin Nan is trying to bring honor to their sect, then all this will cost a thousand martial emperor pills. 
Chin Nan did not expect that the elder would lower his prices so much. A thousand martial emperor pills is very little. Chin Nan doesn't look like an idiot to believe it. The elder was angered by Chin Nan's words. He tells young master Chin Nan to apologize to him right now. Otherwise, he will not receive a single martial emperor pill. Chin Nan thinks that this elder will be the one who bows to him and apologizes for his shameful behavior. The elder answered him that this was nonsense. Why would he kneel in front of the boy? Has he gone completely crazy? This made Chin Nan completely angry. He turned on his left eye of the war god's soul and shouted for the elder to kneel down in front of him. The elder instantly and unquestioningly fell to his knees. His body seemed to not obey him and continued to kneel. Young Master Chin Nan ordered to call his manager here and right now. All this was observed by some guys who also came to trade in the treasury. The leader of their gang laughed as he watched Chin Nan deal with the manager. He said it was funny. Then he said that the well-known genius Chin Nan was mocking some old man in this small hall. Everyone started talking to each other, isn't it, Zhou Yang? What's happening? It's going to be a good show. Chin Nan answered him that it seems that Zhou Yang is here on Wu Yang Zun's orders. Chin Nan will give one chance for Zhou Yang to get out of here, or he will regret that he was even born. Zhou Yang responded by making fun of Chin Nan that he ran away from the duel with Leng Feng. It seems that Zhou Yang has decided to become Chin Nan's enemy. The young master has one rule. His enemy must bow to him when speaking to him. Zhou Yang's group took a fighting stance. Zhang Yang asked Chin Nan, how dare he humiliate an alliance member? For this, you can end your life here. Since Chin Nan is a disciple of the great elder and a genius with a 10th grade soul, he will spare his life, but slightly embellish his face. Chin Nan became angry and revealed his terrifying aura, his left war god eye also working at full strength. He ordered everyone to kneel before him. The pressure was such that no one could resist this instruction. Everyone who was against Chin Nan fell to their knees. Chin Nan asked them what happened. Weren't they the ones who just said that they would kill Chin Nan? Now what are they going to do now? Chin Nan was already bored with such easy opponents. The young master turned again to the elder and told him to give him 100,000 martial emperor tablets for the weapons and artifacts that he brought. The elder asked him to wait a second, and he would bring everything in an instant. Someone else burst into the treasury room. He shouted at Chin Nan, how dare he do such a thing? Chin Nan turned around. He felt someone strong behind him. It was the deputy head of the Zhang treasury. He is the head of the nine subordinate halls and will be the next head of the treasury. I wonder what the deputy head of the treasury is doing here. The deputy asked everyone why they still hadn't gotten up from their knees. Chin Nan told him that Chin Nan's technique could awaken their minds and weaken their souls, but it would not harm them in any way, because they all bow to him of their own accord. Some time ago, Chin Nan was at the second level of the Xiantian realm, but the deputy had never heard that Chin Nan's cultivation was so strong even now. It's a pity that even if Chin Nan is such a genius, but he offended Ouyang Zun, he shouldn't count on the protection of the elders. Chin Nan used force when selling rare treasures in the hall. Doesn't he know that this is against the rules of the treasury? But since Ouyang Zun had sent a deputy, Chin Nan decided to tell everything as it is. Does the deputy think that forcing spiritual weapons to be sold for a thousand pills is not against the rules? They are all trying to make Chin Nan look like some kind of villain, but he is not someone to mock. Young Master Chin Nan showed the deputy a purple tiger token with scarlet teeth. The deputy knew what the badge meant, so he became very excited when he saw it. The deputy told him that if what Chin Nan said is true, then they really made a mistake. But the deputy must say this. They will not accept treasures that are worth less than three million martial emperor pills. Chin Nan didn't know that there was such a rule in the treasury. Okay, then let's follow the rules. Chin Nan walked up to the deputy, took out his pouch and took a weapon from there. He brought it to the deputy head of the treasury and asked how much this weapon cost. The deputy looked down and replied that his price was 700,000 martial emperor pills. After that, Chin Nan took out one of the magic crystals from there. The deputy told him that the price of such a crystal was 200,000 martial emperor pills. But some spiritual weapons and stones are not even up to half the standard of their treasury. After that, 
Chin Nan took out all his crystals and spiritual weapons. He asked how much five such weapons and 540 stones would cost then. It turns out that they could already be exchanged according to the rules of the treasury. The disciples were extremely surprised by the huge number of crystals Chin Nan had. Even in the entire mystic elder sect, there are not so many crystal stones to be found. It is unlikely that they will be able to pay him even with their entire treasury. The deputy head of the treasury didn't even have a word. Chin Nan asked him if they were ready to trade normally, or if they wanted to smoke these things for a thousand martial emperor pills. Maybe they can't even afford it. The deputy head never said anything to Chin Nan. The young master gathered all his treasures, spiritual weapons, and crystal stones. He was upset that they were doing this to him. Chin Nan turned around and left, saying that the managers of this treasury are a shame. The deputy head of the treasury still continued to lie on the floor. Chin Nan returned to his friends at his residence. Chin Nan had previously said that they would go to the mainland together, but he ended up leaving the demonic dragon tiger in this small house. He can't stay here. In the last half hour, at least 30 different divine senses have spied here. Chin Nan asked, more than 30 divine senses. Doesn't he think this place is too boring for them? Then let the demonic tiger dragon prepare to overthrow this sect at any second. They were already looking forward to the overthrow of the sect. Princess Miao Miao told Chin Nan that the mystic elder sect was such a small thing. Why should he bother with all this? The most important task for them now is to get to these two sacred places as soon as possible. When Xiao Qin Shui asked Chin Nan to surrender to Leng Feng and accept defeat, it seems Chin Nan learned a little more than he should have. He is the disciple of the Great Elder. His status is not lower than Uyang Kun's. Why should Chin Nan be oppressed? The situation in the Mystic Elder Sect must be changed. At this time, Chin Nan was called to come to the second residence as soon as possible. He had something important to discuss with him. Chin Nan turned around and saw Gong Yan there. He was happy to meet him, just in time. Gong Yang came along with Huang Long, Chu Yun, Lung Xiao, and the others. They were very sorry. They didn't believe Chin Nan at first when he accepted defeat before fighting Leng Feng. They only learned today that Chin Nan did this not because he was afraid of defeat, but because the reality was very cruel. Chin Nan still didn't understand what was happening and why they were so worried. He asked them not to worry, because he had planned everything in advance. The sect has been in turmoil for the past month, therefore Gong Yang began an investigation, and only today he found out why all this began to happen. The mystic elder sect is on the verge of crisis. Uyang Zun is about to become the martial emperor. Chin Nan was very surprised and maybe even shocked. Uyang is going to become a martial emperor. Now Chin Nan understood why Xiao Qing Shui asked him to surrender, and Uyang Zun became such an upstart again. A hundred years ago, there was a martial emperor realm expert in the mystic elder sect. After he became the martial emperor, he only had 60 seconds to kill the three great elders of the mystic elder sect. If Unjun succeeds, it will be a disaster for Chin Nan. It's better for the young master to leave here quickly while he still has the opportunity. Uyang Zhang is a very vengeful character. Chin Nan was surprised. He asked them if they wanted Chin Nan to escape again without a fight. This was clearly not Chin Nan's style. Next, Uyang Jun talked with Ling Hu and Xiao Qing Shui. He asked her if there was any news from the treasury. He is sure that Chin Nan was robbed and humiliated. Ling Hu had bad news for Uyang Jun. Chin Nan forced Zhou Yang to kneel in front of him. He also sold five battle artifacts and 540 crystal stones in negotiations with Deputy Chief Zhang. Uyang Jiayu was angry at such disappointing news. Chin Nan must have found treasure in the Long Hu mountain range. It seems that Chin Nan will be the first to be killed by Uyang Jun when he becomes the martial emperor. Xiao Qing Shui was also angry, but only at her future husband. If Uyang Jun even lays a finger on Chin Nan, then after that she will most likely die than marry Uyang Jun. Uyang Jun told Xiao Qing Shui not to even dare threaten him. Who does she think she is? If Qing Shui refuses to marry him, then that means that she is nothing more than a piece of trash worthy of death. Uyang Jun gave the order to gather for the third residence, where Qin Nan lives. Li Hong stopped him and said that his father was only going to attack the sect leader, and they still don't know whether he will succeed or not. 
If Ouyang Jun provoked Qin Nan, he would be suppressed by the great elders. Ouyang Jun cooled down and realized that perhaps he was a little hasty, but he couldn't just leave it like that and let Qin Nan go. If Qin Nan understands the consequences of his actions, then Ouyang Jun will spare him. But if he does not understand, then he will die in the hall of life and death. Gong Yan continued talking to Qin Nan. He said he didn't think it was an escape. You shouldn't be ashamed of this. It's just a precaution. If Qin Nan fails to become a martial emperor, then it is never too late to return. Qin Nan realized that all his friends were worried about his safety. In fact, there was something he didn't tell them. And this is that Qin Nan only gave up because he was asked to do so. She was so kind to him that he could not refuse her. Gong Yang knew that Qin Nan never retreats. But this is a different case. Even if Qin Nan doesn't want to do this, then Gong Yang would ask Qin Nan to leave the sect as a sign of their friendship. He asks not to forget about their friendship. Will Qin Nan leave the mystic elder sect like a stray dog, or will he refuse his friend's request and stay on to fight against Ouyang Jun? The purple dragon token with scarlet teeth that was hanging on Qin Nan's neck began to glow. It seemed that someone was trying to contact the young master. It was Elder Shan himself. He said the following words to the boy. Shan asks to leave Qin Nan's mystic elder sect now and get away from here as far as possible. From now on, he is destroying his status as a disciple in the name of the great elder. From this day forward, Qin Nan is no longer considered a disciple of the mystic elder sect. Qin Nan was very surprised at the words Elder Shan said to him. He asked to wait for him and not make premature decisions. Elder Shan addressed him as a son. Qin Nan is the most talented student he has ever had. Even if this is the rarest chance, he can't let Qin Nan risk it. Gong Yang took Qin Nan by the shoulder and asked him not to blame Elder Shan. He was doing all this for Qin Nan's safety. Qin Nan's future is limitless. He cannot die in some mystic elder sect. Qin Nan was devastated. He didn't know what to do. On the one hand, he wanted to finish the matter with Ouyang Jun. On the other hand, he did not want to upset and upset his friends. While Qin Nan was standing and thinking about his future plans, someone from afar shouted at him to get out of here quickly. Qin Nan looked around and wondered if Ouyang Jun had sent them here to find trouble for themselves. For the third residence, geniuses of the highest blood began to gather. They all called for Qin Nan to come out to them and die. Feng Yu arrived here, and the son of the head of the discipline hall, Zhou Guili, was also with him. He was also here. Did the people of the highest blood also come here to cause problems for Qin Nan? Gong Yang asked them who they were and why they came here. He will protect Qin Nan no matter the cost. Feng Yu introduced himself to Gong Yan. They themselves were surprised that Gong Yan came here before them. They were not at all in a friendly mood against them. Feng Yu and Zhou Guili are both among the top ten geniuses of the inner realm, and Feng Yu is ranked third among them. Gong Yang never thought that they would follow Ouyang Jun. Gong Yang shouted to them that no matter who they were, they did not belong here. So let them get out of here if they want to save their lives. Even Zhang An came to Qin Nan's residence. He turned to Gong Yang and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. Gong Yang was also very surprised to see him here, so he asked why he came. Zhang An said that this information does not concern Gong Yang. Even Zheng An, the inner disciple at the second place of the inner realm, came here. It will be very interesting. He was also hostile towards Qin Nan. The only one he is looking for now is Qin Nan. Gong Yang asked him if he personally had nothing against Qin Nan, then why were he bothering him? Qin Nan is Gong Yang's brother, so he hopes that Zhang An will tell him why he is doing this. Zhang An told Gong Yang that he understood him, but Qin Nan must pay for harming ten disciples of the mystic elder sect. As soon as he gives all his pills, he will agree to let him go. Gong Yang listened to Zhang An and offered to pay him compensation for Qin Nan himself. He had available funds, so he could do it. Everyone started laughing at Gong Yang. Qin Nan has five military artifacts and 540 crystal stones on his hands. Would Gong Yang be able to afford this? If he converted it into pills, it would be tens of millions of martial emperor pills. Gong Yang was very surprised to hear these words about Qin Nan. He asked the young master if this was really the case. 
Chin Nan replied that it was true. He simply didn't have enough time to tell them about it. Gong Yang responded to the detractors that, according to the order of the great elder, Chin Nan was no longer a disciple of the mystic elder sect. Gong Yang doesn't want to disappoint them, but the great elders are in the third residence and will soon leave with Chin Nan. Zhang An thought, since now they can't do anything with Chin Nan, then they can direct their forces to the people who are around him, try to put pressure on the people close to him. Zhang An told Chin Nan that he did not expect to see him such a coward. Chin Nan can run away, but in this case, his friends will take the blow. After all, it is their fault that they made friends with someone like him. Chin Nan became nervous, and he shouted and asked Zhang An what he was going to do with them. It was very mean of him to do this. Zhang An did not answer Chin Nan, but turned to Gong Yang. He challenges him to a fight in the Hall of Life and Death, since they are in the Mystic Elders sect, and this does not contradict the rules of the sect. He can refuse, but then he will remain in the Mystic Elders sect forever, and if he runs away, he will find him and kill him. The other geniuses also said that Xiao Leng and Chu Yun had broken the rules of the sect and betrayed it. Both of them will lose their status as disciples of the Hall of Discipline and will be suspended for a hundred years. Having committed a crime, they will also have to be arrested for at least fifty years. Feng Yu will be their judge, so he will definitely treat them well. He looked like a demon or Satan, saying these words with such mockery. Gong Yang was maddened by such a vile act. He got angry and asked if they call it revenge. Zhang An turned to Qin Nan. He asked if he saw the situation his friends were in because of his insolence and impudence. Gong Yang replied that Qin Nan did not have to give in to these tricks. This is very vile and there is no honor in it. Qin Nan was also furious and felt sorry for letting everyone down. Qin Nan sees that his friends want to help him, but he cannot accept this help. If she doesn't want to retreat, then they will go together. And if they want to stay, Qin Nan will fight for them until his death. He is Qin Nan, and he will not escape alone. Zhang An asked if Qin Nan was done with this nonsense. Today, Qin Nan can either give away all his treasures or watch his friends suffer. He laughed ominously after this phrase. Qin Nan was very angry. The young master called Zhang An a freak and ordered him to stop laughing at him and using force to harm his friends. Qin Nan swears on behalf of the god of war, even if his chi runs out and he is torn to pieces, he will still destroy his enemies. Zhang An floated above Qin Nan. He asked the boy how he would kill them all, and also how Qin Nan even came up with the idea to attack the Royal Alliance. Qin Nan wanted to fight them in a duel in the Hall of Life and Death. Gong Yang tried to dissuade him from this so that Qin Nan would not be foolish. A month ago, Qin Nan was still at the second level of the Xiantian realm. Even if he had a tenth grade soul, he still could not win quickly. First, Qin Nan challenged Leng Feng to battle. And then, fearing for his life, he cowardly ran away. And now he dares to challenge them to a duel in the hall of life and death. Qin Nan said that if anyone can defeat him there, then the winner will be able to take all the things he has. Zhang An was already interested in this proposal. He now wanted to see how they would help Qin Nan give up his miserable life. Zhang An and Qin Nan agreed to compete in a mortal duel in the Hall of Life and Death in order to finally resolve the issue of which of them is stronger and who has the truth behind them. These rumors had already been conveyed to the first residents, Ouyang Jun. If Qin Nan wants a battle in the Hall of Life and Death, then send Jun Man Cheng to him. He will simply cripple him. Qin Nan must not die until Ouyang Jun's father becomes the sect leader. Xiao Qingshui was very worried about Qin Nan. She blamed herself for forcing him to accept defeat. It was her worst decision since the very beginning of this conflict. Qin Nan is so strong and proud. How could he give up so easily? The weather was excellent and sunny outside. Further events unfolded at the residence of Elder Shan. Elder Shan was very sad. Qin Nan doesn't listen to him at all. Shan let the young master go, but he still stayed here. But how dare he leave his friends here? especially when they were now in danger, another elder asked him. Sean said that this elder knows him well. Is this really the one he is looking for? Whether this is true or not is up to Chin Nan to decide. 
The elder is looking for someone who is not only talented in martial arts, but also noble. Zhang An and Qin Nan had already reached the Hall of Life and Death. The manager of this hall wearily asked them who would fight. Qin Nan walked to the center of the square and shouted which of them would be the first to fall at his hands. He was determined and would never back down. His honor was above all. A crazy guy approached Qin Nan. He asked Qin Nan what kind of idiot he was. Let Brother Feng Yu and Brother Zhou Guili not bother themselves. Qin Nan is not worthy of them. Li Baskun himself wants to go out and deal with Qin Nan. Some disciples knew about Li Baskun that he was once able to kill an eighth-level master of the Xiantian realm. But can Qin Nan defeat him? The manager, meanwhile, asked them to follow him to the Hall of Life and Death. Qin Nan asked everyone to wait. He said that Li Baskiong was too weak for him and that the young master did not want to accept such a challenge. This made Li Baskiong very angry. He shouted, how dare Qin Nan claim that he is not strong enough? He considered it a spit in his direction. Young master Qin Nan decided to use the left eye of the god of war to subdue the will of Li Baskiong. Qin Nan ordered him to kneel in front of him. Although Li Baskiong looks very formidable, even he could not resist Qin Nan's skills and strength. He fell to his knees in front of him with such force that even the stone floor beneath him began to crack. After Li Baskiong fell to his knees, Qin Nan slapped him hard, causing Li Baskiong to fall like a sack of potatoes. Qin Nan ordered him to get out of here and immediately, the young master asked everyone who still wanted to die. Feng Yu, Zhou Guili, they were so arrogant. Why are they so scared now? In that case, the two of them, why don't they try to kill Qin Nan together? Gong Yang shouted Qin Nan's name. He believed that the young master was trying to outdo himself. However, it was very dangerous to fight against two strong opponents at once. Feng Yu and Zhou Guili gladly accepted Qin Nan's offer. In that case, the two of them will have fun in this battle. Feng Yu was already flexing his fists. His eyes glowed with an unusual aura, and a vein appeared on his forehead. The manager of the Hall of Life and Death listened to them, and now that they had decided who would fight, they could follow the manager further inside the Hall of Life and Death. Zhang An instructed his two fighters to make sure they cut Qin Nan to pieces. They told Zhang An not to worry. Qin Nan would never get out of here alive. The manager led them to the arena. The fighters came out and stood in different directions. He told them the rules. As soon as they set foot on the battlefield, no matter if they died or lived, the duel would begin immediately. Feng Yu and Zhou Guili were already ready to fight. A strong aura appeared around them. Together, they told Qin Nan to prepare for his death. Qin Nan took out his sword, and there was a fiery aura around him. Young Master Qin Nan only needed one move to defeat them both. Zhou Guili and Feng Yu took advantage of their powers and used the skills of the Sea Monster Lord, as well as the Heavenly Sword of Extermination. Instantly, these incredibly powerful attacks flew towards Qin Nan. Gong Yang was very worried about Qin Nan's life. Xiao Leng added that these two attacks were more than enough to defeat the tenth level of the Xiantian realm. Qin Nan is definitely a corpse. Young Master Qin Nan took a fighting stance and using his incredible dexterity as well as strength, was able to repel back these two attacks. Feng Yu and Zhou Guili did not expect this turn of events at all. They did not have time to either evade the attack directed at them or defend themselves in any way from it. They both fell onto the arena floor. The blow was incredibly strong. Zheng An became angry and clenched his fist tighter. What the hell is this? He shouted. Qin Nan is already in the middle of the martial emperor realm. This is unimaginable. Feng Yu and Zhou Guili were still lying in the arena. They were very frightened by what happened. Feng Yu even started bleeding from his mouth. He shouted that this was not possible. Zhou Guili added that Qin Nan was obviously just a genius with a 10th grade soul. So why was he able to reflect it? Qin Nan held the sword tightly in his hands. He told them to leave this chatter for later. It looked like he was going to end them. Zhang An shouted at Qin Nan not to dare do this. They are both students of the Alliance. In addition, Zhou Guili is the daughter of the leader of the Discipline Hall. If Qin Nan kills her, then the leader of the Discipline Hall will not spare him. Gong Yang told Qin Nan that even if he beat them to death, he still wouldn't be able to kill them. Zhou Guili began to cry and begged Qin Nan not to kill her. 
If he wants, then let him kill Feng Yu. She was wrong, and from this day on she will never go against Qin Nan or his friends again. Feng Yu, in turn, did not expect such a betrayal from Zhou Gili, but young master Qin Nan had already decided everything for himself. There will be no forgiveness for such people, who at first wanted to take his life and the lives of his friends, and after they could not resist, they changed their shoes and began to beg for mercy. With one blow he ended their miserable lives. Ouyang Jun was still at his residence and did not know about what had happened. He believed that Qin Nan was fooled by just a couple of tricks and was even threatened by the god of war. Surely, Feng Yu and Zhou Guili had already killed him in the Hall of Life and Death. Li Hong was also next to Ouyang Jun. She caught the letter that was sent to them from the Hall of Life and Death. Ouyang Jun noticed that this happened quickly. He hopes there is good news for him. She began to read the letter. It said that Qin Nan's cultivation had reached the middle of the martial emperor realm, and he was able to kill Feng Yu and Zhou Guili with just one blow. These words shocked her. Fear was visible on her face. Ouyang Jun was angry about what Qin Nan found on this mountain range? How did he grow in strength so quickly? Ouyang Jun tells Li Hong to send orders to Lung Feng and Tan Jian to go to battle. Also, let her immediately send a message about Zhou Gili's death to the discipline hall. Qin Nan approached Zhang Anyu and ordered him to also enter the arena. Zhang An was just angry and didn't know what to do now. Young Master Qin Nan asked all of them who else from their alliance was ready to fight him. Suddenly someone more powerful came to the Hall of Life and Death. He ordered Qin Nan to show himself to him before he died. Zhang An laughed because the leader of the discipline hall came here to kill Qin Nan. He is extremely glad that Qin Nan's time has come to an end. The leader of the discipline hall was extremely angry and distraught that his daughter had died at the hands of Qin Nan. He knocked out the wall. His aura was terrifying. He asked Qin Nan how dare he kill his daughter, and he promises to pay for it. Gong Yang and the rest of young master Qin Nan's friends shouted at him to run away wherever he could. Because the discipline leader's fury was not comparable even to five opponents like Feng Yu and Zhou Gili, the discipline leader rushed towards Qin Nan at full speed to destroy him. Qin Nan would have already come to an end, but the manager of the Hall of Life and Death came to his defense. He stopped the leader of the discipline and asked how he dared to do such a thing. It is not acceptable for a leader of a discipline to behave this way. The Hall of Life and Death has its own rules and everyone in the mystic elder sect must follow them. The leader of the discipline ordered the leader of the Hall of Life and Death to leave. This is a matter between himself and Qin Nan, to which the leader of the Hall of Life and Death said that it was a duel according to the rules of the Hall of Life and Death. Qin Nan may have killed his daughter, but he didn't break anything. These are the rules. The leader of the Hall of Discipline was very distraught. He swung at the leader of the Hall of Life and Death and shouted, who needs such pathetic rules? The leader of the Hall of Life and Death became defensive. If the leader of the discipline does not stop this now, he will have to use force against him. This still did not suit the leader of the discipline. He was very furious. His daughter was killed, and now there is a traitor on his way. Meanwhile, all the heads of the sect began to gather at the Hall of Life and Death. The first elder of the Inner Realm, the third elder of the Inner Realm, and the first elder of the Outer Realm came here. Also, the first deputy heads of the Hall of Fame and the Hall of Discipline arrived at the Hall of Life and Death. As always, the old man was one step ahead of the skill library leader. They had not seen such a battle for a long time. Those who were already there greeted the leaders of the hall. The discipline leader knew that Qin Nan had reached the middle of the martial emperor realm, and if he were a normal person, he would respect him more than anyone. But the leader of the Life and Death Hall had to get out of the way of the discipline leader because he wants to kill Qin Nan to comfort his daughter in heaven. But the leader of the Life and Death Hall reiterated that there are rules and he cannot change them. Even if the head of the discipline hall contradicts him, he still cannot do it. These words made the leader of the discipline hall completely angry. They ran into it themselves. He really liked their spine, which he would pull out of them. The eyes of the Hall of Life and Death fought against three heads and eight more cultivators. He couldn't handle so many. Why is he protecting Qin Nan? 
No one would believe that the head of the life and death hall was doing this to comply with the rules. The head of the hall of life and death fought against them all and was unable to watch his back. A net was thrown over him, from which he could no longer get out or break it. The head of the treasury threw a magical net over him. This is a seven-color ceiling grid. It can stop even the strongest master for 30 seconds. Why not take this opportunity to kill Chin Nan as quickly as possible? Meanwhile, the leader of the discipline hall had already gotten close to Chin Nan. He attacked him and shouted for the boy to die. The four great heads and eight strong cultivators all want to catch Chin Nan. He wondered when Princess Miao Miao and the dragon would come to the rescue. It was at this necessary moment that the demonic tiger dragon appeared. He roared and asked who dared to attack Chin Nan. He looked at the leader of the discipline hall and his men and was ready to fight them. The leader of the treasury hall looked at him. This is a dragon's head and a tiger's body. So this is a tiger dragon. Meanwhile, Princess Miao Miao arrived on the arena field to help Chin Nan. She cheerfully said that it wasn't a bad show after all. The leader of the discipline hall saw her and became angry, veins popping out on his forehead from tension. Chin Nan turned to everyone and asked them, Do they still want to fight him, or have they already changed their minds? The discipline leader shouted to Princess Miao Miao and the tiger dragon that this had nothing to do with them. It is the law to pay with your life for someone's death. Even if they are martial artists, they should not interfere in someone else's battle. The demonic dragon tiger did not listen to nonsense from the leader of the discipline hall and slapped him in his impudent face. After that, the demonic tiger dragon told him that when he was about to attack Chin Nan, why didn't he think about the contract? Dragon Tiger is here to tell the discipline leader that only he himself can bully Chin Nan. Princess Miao Miao hit the demonic dragon tiger on the head and asked if he was an idiot. And now we could get down to business. The princess ordered everyone who is here now to give her all their things. Nobody is an exception. Let them lay out secret hiding places too.